Welcome to the PGL Major Copenhagen 2024. The story of CS2's first major begins with four region-based RMR events, which culminate with the major itself in Copenhagen. Let's dive deeper into all this. The first two regions are the European RMRs, 1 and 2. 
With a 16-team Swiss format each, they will decide the first teams that make it to Copenhagen. All matches are best of one, with the exception of elimination and advancement matches, which are best of three. The top eight teams proceed to the major, while the next three teams have another chance to qualify through the LCQ, the remaining five teams being eliminated. The EU Last Chance Qualifier is a six-team single elimination bracket, split into two stages, with all matchups being best of threes. Stage one has one round with three best of threes, the winners proceeding directly to stage two. Stage two is three-team single elimination gauntlet, where the last team standing qualifies to the major. Within stage two, out of the remaining three, the team with the best Buchholz score, which is based on their opponent's performance, advances to the second stage directly to round two, while the other two teams face each other in round one of the second stage. In the Asia RMR, eight teams will battle through a double elimination bracket. All matches are best of one, while the advancement and elimination matches are best of three. The best two teams from the bracket qualify to the major. North and South American teams will battle their way through a 16-team Swiss format. Elimination and advancement matches are best of threes. All other matches are best of one. The top five teams proceed to the major, while all the other teams are eliminated. The first Danish major will gather the top 24 teams across the globe. The event is split into three new different stages this year. The first two, opening and elimination stages, are played in a 16-team Swiss format, while the last one, the playoff stage, is an eight-team single elimination bracket. Final RMR standings will determine the major seeding for all participating teams. 16 will play in the opening stage, while 8 will qualify directly to the elimination stage. The opening stage will see 16 teams which will battle each other throughout 4 days to decide who will be in the top 8 and make it to the next phase. Elimination stage will gather 16 teams once again to try to grab one of the first 8 spots which will take them to the Royal Arena, the battleground for the playoffs. There we will witness the greatness of the best eight teams in the tournament, which will fight to decide which one of them will leave its mark in this chapter of Counter-Strike's long history, becoming the winners of the first CS2 Major.
screams, they start digging. They start digging. They start digging. M made in hell. On a deserted island. Take any more. Celebrate like you won the war. Guess you forgot what I'm fighting for. I'll come right back at ya. Better hope I don't catch ya. Cause when I do, I'm gon' smash ya. Now I'm out for blood. I'm I'm out for blood. everybody and welcome to the PGL CS2 EU RMR, the qualifier for the first CS2 major. We have the best teams from across the region ready to compete for their chance to compete at the highest level. And I can't wait to see how it all plays out. My name is Parla and I will be your desk host and a desk is of course not complete without some analysts so let me introduce our first to you. Of course I've got Pimp to my close left, and on the very end of the desk. Maniac, guys, how are you doing? Are we also best of the region, or...? Uh, you're definitely best of the best and best of your respective regions, so just best all around. <laughs> so. Absolutely, best Danish out there. Fantastic, Pretty, just... yeah, top three Danish analysts for sure. Yeah. Top three Danes. Guys, how was your journey here? You excited for the competition that's about to unfold? Very much, you know. I think it's going to be great to, to see these teams duke it out. Of course, as you said, the first CS2 media as well, there's a lot of stake. We know the stake of prize money is up there as well, so the all teams right. are coming in motivated here, Matthew. To play good counter -strike. Oh my god, they are. And for some of these teams, right, the break has been very, very short. Deep run in Katowice means you're basically traveling immediately playing here. Teams like FaZe, for example. So we'll see if they have it in the tank. Guys, let's take a look at the teams that are going to be competing. Let's see which teams are in our field. Okay, we will bring that up short. Yeah, you can see over see to our it's left, beautiful. our qualified participation teams over there. We've got a so four of different types of teams here. We've got definitely got some favorites. We've got some underdogs and potentially some dark horses as well. Pimp, who stands out to you off the bat? I mean, obviously, FaZe Clan, as, as Matthew mentioned, had a deep run in Katowice, one of the favorites, not only to obviously qualify in, in Copenhagen, but also go very far in that tournament. The likes of G2 coming in as well, a little mm. bit shaky. Virtus Pro, we had high expectations for coming into Katowice. They bowed out, they had some more time to practice. And then NIP, you know, a, a bit of a question mark, Navi the same. So a lot of quality teams in here, but I think there's going to be a 
couple of upsets. I mean, listen, we, we're giving out eight spots, right, for mm -hmm. the major immediately. There's going to be last chance qualifier. I felt like there are a difference between six of the teams that we have, and then the rest is a bit messy, right? You mentioned, I think, Internal Fire is also a team that has a lot of promises, yeah. how they played it in Katowice. But then when I was trying to internally figure out, okay, who would I put my money on for seven and eighth? It gets real complicated. It is such a messy battleground between some of these teams. You look at history and then Team A beat Team B, but Team B beat Team C and C lost to D, but D beat A. It's so complicated, so we're just going to have to see. Today is already a very straight defining day with all the best of ones. Yeah, so many best of ones, big chances of upsets. Let's just quickly touch upon that again. Jacob, any expectations right now of who might be the, the biggest upsetters here? Oh, that's a good question. I think Matthew was, was hitting it on the nail, you know, saying that, you know, the, the middle pack of the teams are all very close, especially when you put them into a best of one scenario. You can look at, at you know, the amount of teams coming into it. We only have eight that we can send through straight from the get go. And when you're playing best of one, Pala, the, the, the video becomes insignificant. It becomes all about having a great start, especially with the MR12 we're playing now. So in terms of upsets, I think there's a lot of potential matches today that could be very interesting. Yeah, we also have to discover some of these teams, right? Some are not on the usual radar when you talk about elite Counter-Strike, but a team like Amcal, for example, who beat Astralis on the way to mm -hmm. qualifying for the RMR, like, who are we to say they don't have a chance? We, I, think, I thought they didn't have a chance against Astralis. I was wrong. So we're going to have to give them the time of day. And this is obviously uh, the last chance qualifier structure. It's not, it's not that easy to be there. I think it's only one position that's been sent out of six teams. It's really last chance, as they name it. Yeah, everybody at home, let's keep you updated on exactly how our format is working as well. We will have that on screen shortly. No graphic just yet. Okay, so basically everybody, Swiss format. I can explain guide. very quickly yeah, if as, you want. As everybody already Win mentioned, free. Maniac. Yeah. If you very wanna... quickly, there, there's a simple rule, right? The games are best of one up until there is a consequence to it. So if you are 0-2 in the score lines, which means you face elimination, it would be a best of three. Uh, conversely, if you are 2-0, about to qualify, it would be a best of three. So we're going to do best of one up until it means something, because mm -hmm. Counter-Strike only means something in best of three. And the ground rule is that you win three games, you go through, you qualify for the major. You're no, not necessarily out if you lose three games. There's this last chance qualifier as well. The two, three teams in the group stage goes to that last chance qualifier. But if you finish with a 0-3 scoreline or 1-3 scoreline, so. you're done so you're out of the tournament. So win three, you go three. Uh, you lose three, you're potentially out of the tournament. Yeah, classic, classic, of course, there on the Swiss format. Everybody knows how it works, no surprises. Everybody, just to keep you all informed as well, we are live on Twitch, Kick, YouTube, and Facebook. So take your pick. Live everywhere. We're live everywhere. Cannot we're avoid us. Time. Cannot. We are here, inevitable. Counter-Strike everywhere. Counter-Strike everywhere. All right, and uh, before we get into our first series, why don't we also take a look at our overall schedule for today. You can see it on the screen now. So we'll start off with FaZe Clan versus Nine Pandas, and then we'll move into G2 versus ITB at around 2 p.m. And then we have our third series, Eternal Fire versus NIP. That might be one of the most balanced matchups of the day. And then we'll mm. close things out for the first half of the day. Uh, 4 p.m. 3D Max versus Falcons. That's the first half of our day there, everybody at home. I think I like there's your, a... Uh, yes, you have an IP. Exactly. I feel like there's a, a clear favourite. Is favorite. that fair what I've said there? Like, in the other three matchups, yeah, Pimp, they're yeah. a clear favourite, but Eternal Fire versus NIP might be the most balanced. I feel that's the one where it's 50-50 it's to some degree. I'd maybe even give the edge to Eternal Fire, given I how would. well they played uh, at Katowice. NIP has been very shaky as of lately, so my expectations for them are not really there. I think yesterday they said something along the lines of they want to be competitive from 2025 and onwards, you know, <laughs> so it's it's maybe not the best time for them right now, but Face Clan, Nine Pandas, G2, ITB, Falcons, obviously the favourites against 3D Max. Of course. We, we have our clear favorites here, but best of one, anything can happen. Within the French scene, I think your 3 Max Falcons game might have a little bit of a flavor because you have to imagine a lot of Frenchies were in the Falcons project prior to this whole international overhaul. Sure. So maybe they're going to try to fight for the honor of their friends, you know, the honor of NVK and All Striker and all the people being removed. Like, you know, <laughs> we're going to do it for you guys. We can also take a look at our secondary stream schedule as well because, of course, we are running across not just one, but two streams. You can see the second stream, we're going to kick things off with VP versus Saw, then move into Na'Vi versus Movistar Koi. Then we've got Amkar, one of the teams already brought up as potential Dark Horses, versus Enterprise, and then Bet Boom versus Fnatic. Guys, thoughts on the matches on the secondary stream, favorites, underdogs? Well, I would say if you're a fan of Counter-Strike and at name value, you look at Bet Boom versus Fnatic, just don't let it fool you. 
Bedboom might actually be favorites here. They would be my favorites going into this matchup, even though the Fnatic name obviously comes with a lot of uh, attention and prestige. It's not the case anymore. Fnatic is a very, very deeply rebuilt project with Afro and Body and some new players around the block as well, whereas Bedboom uh, have a bit more tenure. I know the Katowice run for BB wasn't that great. They've shown some frustrations here and there. Uh, definitely a team that can get emotional, but I would still have them favorite over Fnatic. I would agree with that. I'm, I'm very curious to see Virtus Pro as well, how they're going to bounce back. We had high expectations for them coming into Katowice. They look good initially, you know, they look good at, uh, at Copenhagen as well. And then for some reason, they couldn't get it going at, at Katowice. I still have them as one of my favorites to make it through the major. I still could see them as a team not necessarily winning the entire major, but maybe even being a playoff contender. So it all starts right here today with winning that first best of one. Something that we've already touched upon is that we've got these favorites, we've got these titans of teams, no reference intended there, by the way, <laughs> Maniac. Uh, but then on the other side of this equation, we've got these teams that, you know, this isn't an average day in the office for them. There is so much on the line. Even if you just get through the RMR and you guarantee your team that stick of money, for some of these teams, that is so huge and much more important than for arguably the more standout sort of solid teams that we've seen compete at this level year after year. It's a make it a break it for a lot of teams. It's a make it a break it for a lot of individual players as well. You do well at the Armas, maybe even without qualifying. Other teams will pay attention. They'll notice your individual skill level. You could move up in the ranks. You speak about the sticker money. You speak about the prestige of qualifying for the major. This is this is the world championship. This is the, the pinnacle of, of Counter-Strike. Right? Yes. If you want to win any tournament out there, if you could pick one tournament to win, it will be the major. And of course, being the first one ever in CS2 adds a little additional pressure. And that's on the positive side. On the negatives, I think, if you are a player who is underperforming or if a team is having trouble, then you know, messing up, failing up at the RMR is almost a guarantee of changes. I think a lot of players out there might be fighting for their contracts. Yep. You're talking about VP, for example. Uh, Mir is, is a pretty good candidate to talk about whether or not he's got a future within that roster. It's been a little bit complicated. So it's make or break. I like how you put it. And uh, it also is a very unique exercise in the realm of Counter-Strike. This whole best of one that goes straight into another best of one the same day. Imagine you have a bad day. We all have bad days in the office. You all have a day where you just feel flat. Nothing works for you. What if it's today? If you're a professional, it's today. That might have incredible consequences, uh, how tough the road would be to qualify that. That being said, though, and I fully agree with you, the best of one element adds additional pressure. You can't have a bad day, but there's just no time for bad days if you want to be there. No, I'm right? cool with that. I love the consequence. I, I love the tenacity that you got to show up with. I love the fact that there's a lot of pressure on all these players and all these teams, and I know there's a lot of excuses out there from people that if your team is losing, it was a best of one, and the format is bad, blah, 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 blah. If you want to win the major, if you want to qualify for the major, stop sucking and win your game. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for your thoughts. Let's turn our attention once again generally to our matches taking place over the first, on our stream here, on our primary stream. We can go into a bit more detail before we focus in on the first matchup of the day. Yep, just to remind you all, we'll start things off with FaZe Clan versus Nine Pounds. Then we've got G2 Esports versus ITB, Eternal Fire versus NIP, 3D Max versus Falcons. Guys, in this first matchup, FaZe Clan, the very obvious choice. In our second matchup, G2 Esports, once again, I think even though they've not been playing their best Counter-Strike, they would be the team to pick. What are your thoughts on those first two matchups? I think FaZe is, is the obvious favorite in, in the first one. We'll speak more about that later. Whereas for G2, you, you said that some players are right now fighting for their contract. I think some players and some teams right now are fighting to figure out whether or not the current roster they have is the one they want for the future as well. I think G2 is a big question mark. What they did at Katowice match was all right. It was okay, it was you know, right. but it, it's not it's not a team right now that I see winning titles. It's not a team that I see walking into the major in Copenhagen winning that title. And for me, that's not good enough. When you have Manasi, when you have Nico, who, you know, to some extent right now is not the same old Nico, then you're not you're not great enough as it is right now. The JKS removal, bringing in Nexa, I haven't seen the fruits of that one. So for me, G2 is very interesting. I had them qualifying, obviously, but right. I want to see them do it in style. I think that's the key, right? We're not discussing whether or not there's a title to be won here, because everybody agrees they seem far from that form, from that shape. But the, the truth is, if you would have to say, gun to your head, are they going to make it or not to Copenhagen? You'd say yes. Mm. You would have to say yes. Even though it wasn't the prettiest run, I still think they showed a little bit of resilience in that lower bracket in Katowice as well. Beating Heroic, we saw some signs of Nico, the the long gone Nico that we are hoping to see a bit more. So I I'm cool with G2. I think we have a tendency to overreact because we love drama, but that's how we are, you know. That's why we are passionate about the game. Drama always good. If we apply that to G2 versus ITB, is there a chance that ITB can sneak this one? I know G2, as I was saying before, didn't necessarily have the best recent results, not really what they wanted at Kato, but nonetheless, 
clear favourites, but is there a chance there for ITP? I mean, most likely not. You know, I, I think if, if people only watch the majors, you remember what happened in, in the Paris majors as well with, with ITP, where they overperformed massively and, and they were a great success story. So you think to yourself, their names holds a, a bit of a value in that regard. It's a different team, though, different time. If G2 is not winning that best of one, then we start going into that conversation of whether or not they're even making it to the Copenhagen majors. So I, I, I don't see a world where Manesi and Nico is not going to run over these guys. Matthew? Ah, listen, I, I can create a drama if you only can create conversations. Try, give, you know, give us a no, I'm trying just, to make it happen. There's, there's no way. I'm not going to stand here and tell you that ITP is favorites, and, and not in any shape or form, but there are a couple of players out there who are fighting for a second, third, fourth breath in their career. You think of the likes of Misuta uh, once in, in Vitality, Bimas as well, who was a player that used to be uh, in the Elite Counter-Strike fighting back. They even had to bring back Thomas so that sure. they would actually get the spot here. So. No, it's a little complicated. We have uh, obviously the history of Mizuta right there. He had a little bit of a stint in Falcons that didn't really turn out great. I was pretty disappointed personally. I, I really thought that after the Vitality downfall, he had more to offer. And maybe that's that's his platform to showcase that no, he, he isn't done. And that's the thing for, for a player like Mesuda, for a team like ITP, qualifying obviously is the big goal. They, they'd love to qualify for the major. But some of these individual players like Mesuda, like Bimas for that matter as well, they're fighting to once again prove, you know, what they're made of. We had Bimas in Face Clan as well for the extended period. We had him in Mouse. He couldn't really get it going. So as you said, this is not even the second chance. This is the third chance, fourth chance for some of these players to finally break through once more. It's kind of a rough structure right there. Usually players start from like a smaller project and they get yeah. the attention of the, the big dogs and then they join them. And then your Bimas, you're basically basically start with FaZe, then you go to Mouse, and you finish an ITV, like, bro, bro what's going on? You like have to get a, reverse a, that curve. A clean crash live, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit rough sometimes. I think this is one of the most interesting things about ITB is it, you know, on paper, they've got these working individual parts and these players that have, you know, solid history, but can these parts work together and can they make it work in their first best of one against G2? I'm not sure. Sure, uh, maybe in the second best of one. Uh, sure, maybe in the lower bracket. Right. Against G2, I don't see it happening. No, no, me neither. We're, we're going to have to see in, in the all one category. They can make life a little bit complicated for some of the other teams who are a bit sure. more middle of the field, as we mentioned. All right, guys, we are now. it's now time for us to focus in on our first series. Everybody at home, it is FaZe versus Nine Pans. Guys, let's get straight into the details, right? FaZe, Big, big advantage here, surely, Pimp. Yeah, for sure. It's it's one of the best teams in the world. It's it's a team that came out when CS2 came out and played some some beautiful Counter Strike. Vitality overdid them a couple of times in the finals. We saw it again in Katowice. They made another grand final. That time they got dunked, you know, which is a different topic, a like different everybody conversation. Else. We'll get into that one, like everyone else. But fact of the matter is, right now, Face Clan is arguably the most consistent team we've seen in CS2 so far. They continue to make the grand finals, and I don't see a world where, even despite it being a best of one, even despite we know Face Clan can be slow starters sometimes, mm -hmm. what nine pandas have. To to off on the server just doesn't match with the likes of Frozen, Kerrigan, Rob's, you name it. Yeah, I agree with you. I think we, we are stuck. If we want to create the illusion of a very competitive matchup, then we have to go and find all of the conditions and the what-ifs for FaZe. Hey, what if you're a little bit tired from Katowice? This was a very tenuous, tedious run. You had to play a whole lot of games. You were traveling late. Maybe you're not really get used to the setup. Meanwhile, Nanpenda is playing as much Counter-Strike as they can. We, we sort of have to get a very specific perspective on this matchup in order to create competition because the, the quality of the roster and the runs in CS2, as you mentioned, puts them head and shoulders above pretty much anybody here. Uh, the only teams really eliminating them have been Spirits and Vitality in the past. That, that's, a, that's a very short list of teams who could beat them. I 100% agree. You know, creating the illusion that Nine Pandas can make this game competitive is, is tough. However, these CIS teams, when it comes to these qualifiers, historically speaking, mm -hmm. have always been turning up, you know, better than we expected. For Nine Pandas, it's, it's a team filled with a, a decent amount of talent there's a decent amount of experience some in there experience as well. Too. Seast has been in there for quite some time. We know him from his Navi days way, way back. And I'm not going to say that they have a chance of beating FaZe because I honestly don't believe it. But I've been surprised by the CS region and their teams coming into these armors. They always seem well prepared. They always seem to play above and punching about their own weight. And against a team like FaZe, who are known to be slow starters sometimes in a group stage, it's not entirely impossible. But I was wondering... Just let me jump in there quickly. You know, FaZe coming off second at Kato, do you think they're going to be slow starters? If anything, they're going to be feeling warm, surely? See before? I mean, listen, yeah, I think it's, it can be a very slippery slope if you arrive and you feel entitled to a victory because entitled, you were the grand but they should be somewhat prepared. Uh, you, you can be prepared. I think there's, there's an argument to be made for decompression Extra after such prepared, a, like a very deep run in Karavice. You, you might 
relax just a little bit, maybe relax too, too much, okay. whereas some other teams would be extremely hungry. I wanted to add on to Nine Pandas, even though I do not have them winning this, I feel like I might be underestimating them mm. on an individual standpoint because they had some land success as well. There was a victory over Eternal Fire, which yep. we rate pretty highly. We, mm. we have high praises for Eternal Fire. They beat them in the Paris Please uh, land that was in November or December 2023. Glowing had an incredible series at the time. You talk about ID's balance. He used to be a subject of hype. I think that window kind of closed sure. after his spirit days. Um, seized and the experience. I might be underselling them just a little bit in terms of their chances to qualify, not to beat FaZe, but maybe, just maybe I'm being too harsh on that. I think historically speaking, these CS teams are, are always coming in better than we expect them to be. So yes, I agree with you. Beating FaZe is, is one thing, but qualifying and making it into the last chance qualifier, I think that's a realistic goal for the Nine Pandas. It's such a hard exercise as well. If you're a FaZe player, put yourself in Kerrigan's jersey for a second. We Everybody understands how much is at stake here. Everybody understands that this is the first day in a long journey to make it to the major, which is career-defining, life-changing for some of these teams. But a few, a mere hours before, you were in Spodek, on that main stage, you were playing a grand final in front of thousands of people. Now you're in a studio and you have to somehow manufacture the same level of excitement and you have to give you 100% the same way everybody does. And I'm not saying they won't do it, they're professionals, but there's a difference between talking about it and actually doing it. And I think this is why sometimes in these day ones of RMR, some of these lower teams are coming in with very long teeth and they're super hungry and they've been so hyped about this moment, just making it to the RMR and we're about to just swing wide on you every single time. That, that to me can be a risk and that's a cycle psychological factor we can consider. Looking again on the side of nine pandas, how hungry do you think Seized is, their most storied veteran? You know, he's played at the heights, the, the, the top of the top of Counter-Strike, and there's another chance here to potentially write a wonderful story, but, you know, if it's going to happen, we'll have to see. Nonetheless, he's going to be hungry. He, he's surely not wanting to pass out and miss out on this opportunity. I think for a lot of teams and for a lot of players, it's it's life-changing, uh, honestly, to, to qualify. Are you getting the medal scanned? Yeah. That was, <laughs> is that what's happening? I didn't mean to cut you. I just realized it's like in the airport. Oh. <laughs> and I've been cheating at the major, for sure. I, I think uh, I think for Nine Penners and, and C specifically, you know, it, it can be life-changing. He's tried it before. He's been in Navi. He's won trophies. He's had a, a glorious career for that matter as well. So for him, I don't think it's, it's that big of a pressure in that regard. I think for the teammates around him, for some of them, it could be the make it or break it. If you qualify for the major, if you get hands on those sticker monies, if you get into an arena where you can showcase yourself in front of millions of people, for some of these players, it's also a proving ground to other teams mm. out there. I'm not saying Spirit are going to make roster changes or Navi are going to go back to the CS region, but at some point you're looking at who performed at the major, who performed at the AMA, who were the great players when pressure were at its highest, who were able to maybe apply pressure to a team like FaZe in a game like this whenever you go out and sign new players. As much as we want to say that Nine Panthers are going to stick together for the next five years, obviously not. If some of these players are over Overachieving or playing way better or above expectations, other teams will take notice and maybe they can, in that way, fight their way into a major. Pimper Maniac, our map veto is ready, so we can get into that. As we've already addressed, it's best of one Swiss format. So the veto is not going to make too much of a difference, but nonetheless, are there any preferences that either our team could try to work in here? Well, listen, when it comes to best of one, I have a very open opinion anymore. I just don't care about the veto in best of one. That's, that, that might be just personal. I know it's always sort of a handshake. I don't think there's any way to surprise or to corner your, your opponents. You go on Paul Mirage. I'm, I'm sure FaZe is happy about it. I'm sure FaZe have no problem with that. There's one thing when it comes to the vetoes at the majors. We're used to a different veto system. The way it works in these best of ones is that Pandas gets to remove two maps, then FaZe remove three in a row, and mm. then Pandas gets to remove one more, essentially picking the map. It's not like what we normally see. It's a bit different, yes. It's a bit different in terms of the order. At the end of the day, when it's a best of one match, we always end up on a middle ground map yes. where both teams should be relatively comfortable, let's be honest. I mean, unless a team makes an obvious mistake, I think it has happened historically mm -hmm. that some questionable veto were being put forth. I think I remember Cloud9 playing Nuke uh, for Antwerp. That absolutely made no the sense. Back in the days, what existed? It's exactly. Before, you, you, know? you would yeah. never really know. But in this case, it's a it's a relatively uh, reasonable map. I just wanted to quickly mention as well. You, you touched on, on on Seized and his uh, uh, career trajectory. Rather, there are other players who have been able to make comeback very recently. You think Cadian and his arc as a player, where sure. he's been long gone for a while. Snappy as well. He's rising again. So that's to say. You can always sort of work your way back up, and it has to begin somewhere. Absolutely, and we are just about 40 seconds away from seeing this one go live. Yeah, guys, I know it's a best of one. I know predictions sometimes are pointless, but can I get some 
some idea from you guys of where you think this four line might be headed? I think given it's Mirage, it's going to be a, a bit more open than initially thought. I, I think FaZe allowing Mirage into this game is, is a ballsy move, but also one where they feel comfortable. For my money, FaZe is going to win this game. I, I reckon, you know, if Nine Pandas are playing a good game of Counter-Strike, we're looking at seven, eight, maybe even nine rounds to their name. You know, a, a bit of a competitive game matchup, but it should be a FaZe victory. Oh, nine rounds would be competitive. Uh, no, listen, uh, I'm going to go with FaZe. I'm sorry, I wish I could give you something super spicy right now to just rock off your socks, but no, I'm going to be reasonable. And maybe later with face clan. Maybe later. Guys, I think we have time for a few more final oh. thoughts. Nice to see Mirage come out. <laughs> yeah, we definitely map, do yeah. have some more time before this match is raised. So yeah, nice to see. I mean, I'm not like a huge Mirage fan, but I find it like a, a, a Counter Strike classic. I still enjoy watching this match. For me, it's, it's the map. pacing, pacing of the map. You know, it's it's the especially on the CT side. We have maps right now in the pool. Take ancient, take a newbies as an example. When you're playing the CT side, you feel like you're a fish in a barrel. Like there's only so much you can do on that CT side. Where on Mirage, you control the pace on the CT side. You allow yourself to push in palace. You can push down ramp. You can fight for mid control. You can mm -hmm. be aggressive on towards BFs. You have so many opportunities as a CT side to play on Mirage. So I think it's gonna be fun okay, to watch. guys. I've got to jump in now because the game is live. Everybody, this is it, our first match of the PGL EU RMR. We've got FaZe versus Nine Pandas, and of course, it's not complete without some casters as well. Time to hand it over to two of the best. It's Sponge and Machine. Love that. Thank you very much, Parla. Yeah, let's get this one going. Nine Pandas starting on the attack, and FaZe Clan taking to the defense. Oh, looks like we're going to have a V-hit out the gates here. I had to balance at the back of the pack with that bomb. Frozen dual Berettas couldn't be better for the job. Util in the sky, and here they come. Yeah, this could end one of two ways for Frozen. It could be glorious, or it could be one Glock bullet to the head. Just like that, now dead. Still Kerrigan holding on to B for a second. As Glowing comes through, finds the headshot, and bomb down. Looking great to start with this pistol victory. On the retake now, another pair of dual Berettas, which Robs has put to good use. Takes down Glowing on the way in, and already chipping away at Idis Balance. Yeah, gave them a look back into this round, haven't they? Rain on the flank, could be the difference maker. Robs can't connect the dots, and now it's a one on three. Yeah. Opportunity slips away Ooh. as Robs nailing shots. Oh, goodness. If he'd have found his balance, maybe there was some hope. A little bit of a prayer. But Nine Pandas will take the pistol. And uh, kind of running into the trap. Yeah, right. Uh, Frozen hard cleared there. There was not messing about, were there? This is the Klax opener. Beautiful stuff from him. That's one way into the site. Carrigan with the trade, sure. And then they took the fight over towards Market, but did it as a unit. So even though the bodies were given up, not the end of the world. And this is going to be problems. Uh, we're going to have to highlight this throughout. Best of ones in these establishing stages. Losing both pistols, a couple of swing rounds, a clutch here or there. That's the map going down the gurgler. So for FaZe, they're going to take it in spotless fashion of an economical. Rops is into a P250, a Deagle. Sorry, it's a Deagle for Rops and Rain. It's got a P2, is it a P2K? I'm, I'm learning the HUD. I'm learning the HUD. So there's the Deagle. P250 and a Deagle. Okay. That tiny little notch, I can see it. Ah, there it is, yes. Yes, indeed. Yes, yes, yes. You can see C's on our screens. I, I, it's been a while. It's crazy how we just get straight into this emotional warfare that is very important matches. And if you're snoozing even slightly, uh, you can drop the opening game of the RMR, which is your first step in the direction of the major, especially if you're a team like FaZe, right? You were already granted a position in the RMR. You didn't have to play through the open and close qualifiers. Nine Pandas obviously having to do that heavy lifting. Does it surprise you slightly to be taking it to Mirage, where I would imagine the, the playing field is leveled somewhat just by virtue of the map and, and its history? I think, as the desk was discussing, with the best of ones, you're always going to find yourself simmering down to a lot of these. I think they use the term handshake. Yeah. Middle okay. grounds, right? So if you want to try and be tricky in the video, you're probably still going to end up somewhere comfortable for both teams. So I, I think regardless, however you split it, you're going to find yourself in territory where your opponent should be more than comfortable. Yeah, MR12. Best of ones. And we are ready to get the guns out in force. Brokey responsible for mid with Rops. Catching a heavy amount of damage from that HE. Operating now at 47. This is where you'd love it if you're a FaZe fan to see them respond immediately. Obviously, the heartbreak of the Katowice final versus Spirit just the other day. We saw what that meant. The tears on the face of Carrigan. He looked rocked. But this is where you need to be able to pick yourself back up. Heading back around the world after default presence R9 Pandas regrouping and rerouting towards this A bomb site. Plenty of utility for an execute. Jump spotting is broke and in the safest of fashions. Not just the standard ticket jump as now he will make his way over. We'll have the support of Rain and Rops who are currently 
in connector, but Yuto extremely light on. It's just Brokey with a smoke to create a bit of a wall, but here they come, flash over, smoke out. Ooh, nice, ahead of the execution is Rops. He actually takes the fight. Two glowing at the back of that ramp. It's actually Dilladez down, and it's Rops again, a triple on the defense. Just as easy as that, that first phase round seems to have arrived. Yeah, a bit of a pitter-patter in towards the site, wasn't it? They didn't take the space. Brokey, I'm not sure if that's exactly where he wanted his smoke to land, and it will be a save call. 35 seconds on the clock. I just bounce already backing off the bomb in no man's land. Sees on the lurk. Yeah, it's an early orb to be pulling out as well. I just balance he's known to be one of those daddy orpers. He'll get it in his hands as often as he can. No follow through there. That is a little bit disappointing, isn't it, from Nine Pandas? You thought maybe with that execute, the fact that they were able to isolate that side, and Rops just makes it look way too easy. He was kicking up a bit of a fuss during the final versus Spirit. Mm. Some of his teammates were uh, lighter on in that department, but phew, you're getting donked on. Yeah. Well, now it's Nine Pandas getting Rops on. I mean, the fact that it's just him and Kerrigan that have found frags first. You know, everyone else is kind of settling into their seats, making sure that everything feels right and adjusting to the new environment. But fortunately, Mr. Cool collects. You see, Neo's had uh, time for a haircut between events. He's just shaved it all off. Yeah, I mean, it's, he's got the new aerodynamic look. And uh, maybe people caught it where the pregame little huddle as we'll catch Rops on the multi. Beautiful work, essentially winning the round single-handedly. Nice little flash assist there from Rain. But uh, Raban is here with them. Yeah, I Eddie's, saw that. Eddie's not here. We, we saw him in the airport on the way over. So the old coach now part of the management, but here with the team. Tends to be a pretty good luck charm, does old Raban. Oh, are they fighting? They're going to get Molotov'd out of this. Rob's through the smoke, and he's just brought the fight to them. This is a crippling blow, just running up mid. Sees it could be his next victim. Good flash. Team play. I just balanced. This was facilitated an equalizing frag. Job done. You can see Rob's <laughs> this is quite an aggressive maneuver. Yeah, these teammates as well over towards Connector and Short couldn't really contribute for the fight, but setting them up to disrupt this mid control. Nine Pandas will be happy with the four on four. I just bounce now getting an opportunity to work with this AWP, but the sight lines towards A, nobody's home. It's two towards B as Carrigan searches out some info, and there's an awful lot of space here for the in-game leader to pick up. So this is great info. They are aware of the mid presence due to the sound cues and Molly towards window. Bogdan's Law playing in the hands of Seas, and it looks like an A split on the agenda. But the rotation for FaZe, it's making its way over, and they should be aware the hit coming because of Carrigan's push. Rain readies himself. To catch is the swing, a multi-kill from Rain. And yeah, losing its potency for Clax, poor guy. And remember, Carrigan's coming through the underpass. Yeah, he might find this A. Barrel, 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 spotted, seized. Does. Surely get away. Yep, just about trying to save that AWP, but still with 30 seconds left, this is not going to be comfortable at all. No, Carrigan's already hunting him here, so oh, just has to clear no. out this pocket. Deep in the corner, Carrigan, well, he's backed off, so they might just be able to retain this AWP, probably wanting to scoop up an AK or two for their troubles. But uh, multiple rounds now for FaZe. You look at Rops as the tempo setter in middle this time round, but Rain with a nice little multi, three for him. And that is what you want to see. Because when we have these establishing games, when we're opening up, we, we do have the favorites. If they trip over their own shoelaces or if they get surprised or if they get upset, depends on really how you want to frame it. It can be a difficult task to uh, be able to battle through. You get uh, win three and you're through. Lose three and you're out. Happy with that. Nice call, Brokey, as well. So there you go. Tactical timeout to be called from the side of Nine Pandas, but... That info from Carrigan, they were able to rotate in time, understood exactly how this one was going to simmer through, and seems way too easy. But you want to make sure, as you come in as a favorite, that you're not just going through the paces. You need to make sure you are actually dictating the tone of the game. Because if you just let the game come to you, and you know, then you you know four or five rounds down, and it can really get away from you. So this is good signs. Yeah, and it felt like that's phase have, have kind of taken that memo as well and run with it already just looking at the way they've opened up these gun rounds these are the the important like you know you're in the finals you're in the playoff matches you're up against the bigger names they're very tough games but these ones can be just as hard for the big names because you've got the target on your back everybody's studying you everybody coming out wanting that scalp the underdogs the hunger is something that you see the the emotions in the air at the rmrs knowing what qualifying for a major means as, oh see still hold on the, oh yeah that's a miss window smoke yeah, unforced error there from Nine Pandas. It may go unpunished. However, Seized has already relayed that information. He can see it through the boost, directing that. Brokey thinks better of uh, re-peaking. Yeah, Rob's already does have this space, and it's, it's awfully quiet. 
So I do see some issues for Nine Pandas in this round. Glocks are plenty. The AWP, the only real weapon to make some excitement. And yeah. as Rops investigates again, so another info play available for FaZe. First camera can be apps. Frozen's going to get some info clear. in a moment. Yeah. Four Glocks and an AWP walk into a mid. Oh, hello. And Deceased has actually taken down Frozen. Rob's... He can't overcommit on this. Doesn't want to overcook it. Could deliver an M4 to their front door, but he's handled that with class. Dillardez down. Seized another one on the AWP. Yeah, and now, now Rob's is, is overcooking. Hold on. Four Glocks and an AWP. <laughs> How's the map just opened up like this? You can't be dropping around. No, this would be a bit of a tilt -a rooney but you've got Carrigan and you've got Rain. And there's 30 seconds. A sight each. They're going B. They're going to Carrigan. What can he do? A smoke grenade as well. If he could smoke them off, channel them through. Oh, they have the info. Carrigan takes the first fight, takes down Clax. 19 seconds. They need to get this bomb down. Carrigan, last seen on site. I just balance bringing in that M4. He's recovered. That's the bomb down. He's won the round. It's I just balance. Got two to five and nine seconds to do it. It seems they've recovered. And Rain secures it. Good grief. A little bit of a sweaty one there for FaZe. Interesting to see Seas running into the site with the bomb in his hands, knowing that Carrigan has to be somewhere lying in wait. Yeah. So maybe not expecting to be peaks, but uh, regardless, it was just the saved orb. They got some good value for money and made an interesting round out of almost nothing with that Clax man on your camera right now. Kill towards Rops' push. Okay, well, uh, an AWP now available for Brokey. AKs are plenty on the other side. Seize will have to operate without any head armor and a Galil. Double orbs. Yeah, Robs. Nice bit of movement. Gets himself set up as early as possible mid. No one there, no one home. It seems like they're looking at quite a contact walk up ramp. They're just starting to slide in. One it's a good setup to defend against this. Rain first to receive. He has support of Frozen towards the dark position. Now warded off, and it's Dillardez. Good for one. Frozen dips under. An opportunity for the multi, but it's Dillardez with a team kill. He's the only one that's filled the feed. Three kills, two of which he's happy about. Oh dear, Brokey's missed his shot. Dillardez is still throwing out you. Dillardez <laughs> is going on. How's he not? I don't know. Uh, okay, well, Rob's in a one on three situation. I'm not sure he's going to give this one a crack. <laughs> And I said it should have been a good setup, but as soon as Rain goes down to that contact out of the ramp position, Frozen likely spotted coming down the ladder by the apps lurk as well. So the fact that it was a little bit chaotic due to that team kill, but uh, awkward moment there for Dillardez. Most definitely. And a heavy investment, not rewarded whatsoever. Just contact walking up when the, your opponent's gone double AWP. It seems like an inspired call. Yeah, and that's the thing. If one of the orbs was over towards A, uh, they would have just been walking out dry. So the fact that the setup was facilitated elsewhere for FaZe, we will tie things up at three apiece. And Nine Pandas responding after three consecutive rounds for FaZe. Frozen yet to get off that starting block. Currently at zero kills. Brokey with one. It is Romps at eight. Carrying with five and Rain with four. So you saw just there with the HUD, the nice little clutch cam, but uh, not attempted by Rops. Just got to see him saving. No one's going to feel good. There's more than enough for the buy. That was the opener from Dillardez. And wow, well, yeah, if you've got it, you got it. Took your teammate down in the process, but you essentially secured the rounds. Did look a little bit awkward with the stairs play, but it's all good in the hood. Yeah. And they can break face here with a consecutive round nine pandas. Molly getting lined up from Rops towards the top mid box. That'll be deployed as again, rerouting back over towards A. Going to test their luck again. Sandwich position from Frozen. Well, they molly it. Seems unlikely. So if Rain is the man to draw all the attention, Spades essentially have four players gravitating towards this side of the map with Carrigan, the window caretaker. Brokey with the AWP posted be out. And here they come. Flash over. Frozen, Frozen, this is your time. This is it. Lovely smokes, but it's even better from the rifles. Frozen with Sandwich takes a big bite out of the nine pandas. Nothing left for disbalance. He's He's walking into Brokey's AWP, and he was ready. Comfortably collects it. And Didus balances off is revealed by catching the glance of Rob's. But yeah, this one falls flat for Nine Pandas. And you may be wondering, you know, if they haven't been on your radar, Nine Pandas, what, how long have they been cooking? 
got a lot of maps together. Yeah, I was just looking at that. Like, 294 for this roster of five. That's yeah. an awful lot. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> Finally, he's not unlucky, he says. Uh -huh. uh, it's just a, a great little position there from Frozen to get himself on the board. Good to see him bring in some attitude. And uh, second tactical timeout front nine pandas now. But yeah, that's the thing. When you're in the realms of online Counter-Strike and you have all these online qualifiers to play, uh, obviously we spoke about their road to be able to get to the RMRs. You're playing, you're getting a lot of reps in the online environment. And considering we're only in February, Valentine's Day today. Uh, so happy Valentine's Day to everybody out there. Hope you're feeling loved. And if not, you get to watch the game you love. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a win-win in that category. But... Um, yeah, you're starting the year this early for the most important tournament for your next six months, essentially, because we know what happens after this. You don't qualify for the major. Things don't go the way that you're hoping. That's probably where roster changes start to come in. And it won't be double orbs carried through. Frozen was happy to leave that one in the dirt. And it might have to be just a light investment for nine pandas here. You can take a look as we've got the scores on the doors. But that last round, it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence, to be completely honest with you. Uh, they were executing blindly, right? They, they didn't really, they were hoping that, you know, making it look like the similar round, that one different thing was expected out of phase, which is not to be the case. And you've just, like, this is what I'm saying, you've executed blindly into a site where you have no information on where they're holding, you haven't forced any form of rotation. You're kind of just hoping that you've made that right call. I was wondering, yeah, does that, do you kind of, does this feel like kind of old school Counter-Strike at the moment in terms of the blind executes, the contact up ramp, is this like uh, behind on the times? Well, this is the thing. If you can get away with it in this best of one environment, it's fine. That's why when the, the better teams always want to see the best of threes because over the course of a, a longer series, uh, those type of plays aren't going to consistently work for you. As Seized has been able to crack open the B bomb site, so some space has just manifested. You've got Glowing taking that room. They're not dealing with it just yet. Rain, we'll deal with eye disbalance. That's the bomb down on Cat. Has the contribution of Frozen available? Don't worry about Frozen. We've got Brokey as Clax and Glowing. Both have been able to get themselves out onto the extremities, but FaZe have the bomb. And FaZe have the round. Just clacks, he's down, and five for FaZe now, two to the good. Okay, the mood seems all right, having a bit of a giggle. It didn't have head armor, so yeah. yeah. Nice, we're getting a nice little uh, insight yeah, into yeah. what could be coming forward into the next round of play. Carrigan up into an org. So bolstering his defenses on that B-bomb site. Is he doing the bumperang? It's just one of his favorites at the moment. They're going to clear the window smoke, I think Rob's was saying. So typical Molly, util. Oh, they're not going to clear the window smoke. Yeah. I guess I misunderstood the call. God. Or, or, or Brokey didn't... Uh, get the memo. Get the memo. Oh. Or maybe this is all part of his master plan. Yeah, throw the smoke in correctly to get a free kill. Yeah. Cool. Carrigan, that's trigger happy on his uh, ripcord smoke. He's already back to white. But peeking over the flames, this all could catch Seized off guard. Carrigan activating, and it does seem like Seize will recede. I just balance blind up mid. Aggressive orping on this T side. And FaZe seem quite comfortable to contain them to this mid area. You've got Rain holding just above that smoke on Con. Comfortable is a good word for it so far. Oh, that's a timing. Rain just swapping to his nade. He's going to get isolated here. The spam, the jump to evade the spray. Glowing now. Brought low as well. Damage. Good shooting from Rain there. He's got Locked rocks alongside. Smoke. Yeah, at, there's two of them just touching each other in the smoke as they try and cross through. That's a big frag. May overlook Rob's here. Glowing. He's Team got a good flash. idea. Yeah, this is awkward. Nine pandas round starting to take shape now. Excess money available for everybody bar Carrigan. They could have a look. Go fishing. See if a kill comes your way. The bomb, as it ticks on down, will be the timer. Oh, nice. and spot it. That's it. That is it. A very convincing one. That's the most convincing nine pounders round we've seen so far here on the T side. And they just draw it back to one round game. So a very important round. Again, I was just discussing the finances. If they can take this one off a of phase and put consecutive together, which they haven't been able to do since the pistol and the conversion against the eco, phase will be down to exactly that. So it, I was saying it's comfortable, but I, I suppose not. You get a good look at the round timeline here on the tippy top of your screen. Those rounds three and four came via timeout. So it was with saved weaponry. All right, Carrigan down to just an MP9. Brokey aggressive out mid. I don't think they want to give away this space for free. Brokey between a bit of a rock and a hard place right now. Nobody coming through the underpass, flashes over. Carrigan feeling the pressure again so early. 
And it's just one man. It's just seized, leering over. Oh, they've got out wrap space. Oh, rain. Cheeky. Just, yeah, that is a very aggressive angle. He is caught by Klax, perpetually in Palace. And yeah, flashes us nicely to get himself obscured in a way. Oh, Frozen pushing up. Aggressive middle, just as Glowing starts to maneuver away. I don't think they'll expect this. He just had a glance. Yeah, the timing favors Frozen. It's Klax's rotation back, which will be the most interesting point of all of this. Oh, and he's actually going to continue to lurk. So Carrigan has to do all of this with only an MP9 and no support because Frozen's his short player. He's in trouble. Yeah. Comes the push. Carrigan, he needs one here just to slow them down. And now confirmation of the commitment. That's the bomb. And that's a lot of damage. This no is quick, though. from Carrigan. Frozen, however, should have Idis Balance dead to rights. Does he have the discipline? Or will he take it instantly? Combined with Rob's nade is looking the good. Boost. The boost may be overlooked. Up there is Seize. Don't forget, Klax is coming from Kitchen on the flank if he can hit the first, but perhaps not anymore. Here comes a late flank. There's Luck. Oh, is being considered by Brokey. Takes a glance, loses his head. Defuse coming through. Can he stop it? The nade's not going to do it. And that is a sick for Vase Clan. Oh, fortunate with the flank of Frozen, weren't they? Right, because Carrigan, sure, he gets the dink. He goes down. That is eventually... Oh, save the AWP. Not bad there from Klax. Uh, that type of a round could really have fallen apart. If there was no aggression and, say, Frozen was isolated towards short, that's a much more winnable round. And one of the keys there that's important is the fact that Frozen's coming in on the flank. He calls the AWP watching over towards market, so his two players do not extend past the window. They don't get taken out for free. Right. He gets that kill. The nade kill comes through. They isolate the solo defender on the boost, who, you know, he could be looking to do a little bit better in that environment. And then Klax's lurk, it means nothing. But good understanding from Nine Pandas in the previous, right? They, they saw that there was mid control from phase. Okay. Uh, how many smokes have we just deployed? Three towards middle on the T side. That's a bit of a cluster duck. You've never seen that one before. And it's working well for an opening. Brokey caught out through the smoke. One of the three. In the meantime, though, it is... Wow, it's all Dillades. He should be a dead man. He's found a safe haven. What? He catches Rain as well. He's had a round. One hell of a round. A triple kill from Dillades and Carrigan. About to get caught. Yeah. Dead to disbalance. That is one hell of a way to recover the round. Recover the half, as it is just one away from tying things up. And they can do. The money at the high end right now is 2.1k on the phase players. Oof. So they are really staring at a rough final round. And uh, look, this is strugglesome, as the timeout is going to be called. You just saw the T signal coming on through from the admin. It's going to be the first. Here we go. This is the Dillard's POV. So first top left, predictable gap. Second, adjust onto right. The third is this wild, is crazy. isn't it? Here it comes. Whoa. How did he get away with that? I don't know, but uh, I, I think we all have to give him a big firm pat on the back as Dillardes comes alive. You can see that's going to feel good as you secure the opportunity to leave the first half of your journey to the major with a 6-6 scoreline against FaZe. Yeah, and it's interesting to see FaZe taking a tactical timeout with the type of buy that is available for them here. So Neo, likely the man calling that, and either maybe just to calm them down or say, hey, look, the half's not over yet. We've been able to win rounds with less before. Let's try and get this seven because you are pressured, FaZe. I said comfortable at one point in the game. I suppose not because going into the second half, Nine Pound is going to be more than happy with the haul of rounds they've been able to secure. Excuse me, Mr. Nygaard. What are you, what are you, what are you wielding there? It's, uh, it's a unique purchase. We have a shotgun in the mix. It's on his loadout for a reason. We'll see if he can get that Nova pumping. Yeah, because you've got to put something in the <laughs> mid-weapons. <laughs> and Rob's rocking the deeg. It would be a shame for Nine Pandas and their fans to let this one slip away after working so hard for the gun rounds they've converted. But it's phase after all. We know they can do a lot with a little. Three, contact walking. Up connector. Who's responsible for this? No one right now. Ready for this duel. Shadow! <laughs> and he's nailed the headshot. Okay, AK in play. Frozen. It's a bait for Frozen. Yeah, that would be perfect. Brokey from CT. He knows he's going to be cleared. That's a hard fight to take. To he's going to get taken down. And oh, Frozen squanders his opportunity. Rain as well. In trouble. Carrigan, however, catching one on the push through. 
Down goes Rain. Only Carrigan with the MP9. And it is a 6-6 six, six half. Beautiful. Yeah, and you know what happens over here at the PGL Major? No halftime break. So action is going to get back underway ASAP. That means FaZe don't have that two to three minutes to try and collect themselves. They just have to go, God damn, we are up against it right now. We need to show some class on our T side because uh, going through the paces, nine pandas, that's pretty confidence-inspiring, I would say. Yeah, admirable. I mean, like, FaZe didn't get to string anything more than three rounds together uh, at the high end. It was They didn't get to kind of take a dominant stance. Uh, winning the pistol certainly helped. Um, we'll see if they can find the, the two pistol conversions. I think that's going to be a bit of a perpetual conversation when these oh, pistol isn't ones. It? Yes, indeed. Uh, but I guess, suppose as far as the gun rounds go, you can look at Nine Pandas and say they definitely got uh, their money's worth. Now, we obviously have a secondary stream going on right now. Jackie and Vince uh, casting all of the Ver Pro versus Saw action. Love those boys. Now, uh, look, it's on Kick, it's on Facebook, it's on YouTube, it's on Twitch. So you could just Google uh, PGL. Well, where's the Periscope? Periscope I don't know what happened to Periscope. Yeah, me neither, man. Uh, maybe we could get our phones out. We could start streaming it ourselves from our POV. But we are back underway. Two sets of Berettas. One for Glowing, one for Clax. Util in the hands of Carrigan. Smoke and a flash. Bomb on his back as well. Currently towards top middle. Has the support of Rain as through the underpass two will crawl and the lurk out of the apartment's position will be Rops. This could be telling of an A split, but there's three players. This was like a very similar pistol as to what Spirit ran against FaZe in the final. Yeah, uh, right. Maybe they were inspired. <laughs> yeah, maybe. It could work for Spirit. There we go. Rops and Clags. Clags. He was the palace boy. Now we've been caught by Rops. Swapping sides. Is this going to be an exchange of pistols? Rob seems to think so. Making a pretty strong case for it as another bullet goosh onto Dilades. Finished off. Brokey finding it on the clock. A three versus two. Not impossible, but most definitely improbable. Sees the ankle glowing. Audible into window. Flash. Brokey safe. Anticipates the swing. It's the dual berettas for glowing. Time too far gone, one would assume. Good shot onto Brokey. Frozen's holding onto the round. The quick double glock to make it seven. Okay, well, uh, you mentioned it. Pistols being split in this conversation as FaZe will get their opportunity to extend their lead. Sees issuing some orders. Divai, I think that means go. That's probably one of the only ones that we've really been able to pick up over these years. Yeah. That's how uh, they are going to be taking an economical. Just one P250 in the mix. So, FaZe, they should be good for eight. This one's about keeping it as clean as possible. Carry through as many guns as you can into the next. You do not want to be starting your march to the major in Copenhagen, somewhere that I'm sure Carrigan would love to get to play in front of his crowd. And they will make mincemeat of this B defense. Two bodies hit the deck. Just three more to find right now and out of position. A bomb to be planted from Brokey. And exits. Maybe name of the game. Is the vent not broken? There you go. So that's uh, some form of information for FaZe in this one. But we will see the buy come out for Nine Pandas. I don't think... Um, oh, hmm. okay. That's a rifle. It could be. And a frustrating death for Brokey. It can be scooped back up. I'm sure Rain or Carrigan would love to get themselves an upgrade as put on high alert now. I think the way the bomb timer works, Alex, is we're getting to learn about the HUD. I, I don't think it's like an equal bar. I think it ticks faster in the beginning and then slows down towards the end. What do you think? I haven't been paying attention to the bar itself. I, I was admiring the glitchy bomb. Oh, yeah, where you see it like pulsating. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I, I'm completely off. I, I suppose the viewers as well. You know, we're, we're all kind of... Um, Acclimatizing. Acclimatizing to the new HUD. Or oh, PGL's HUD, I should say. Uh, but it is clean. It's clean. Is Rob's calling? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's all right. Well, that's not bad. It's yeah. good to do uh, window on top con. Let's do it. Let's do window on top con. Well, there's window. And there's cat. So... We'll see when the top con comes into play. Is it ladder boost for Dilides, who has had some sharp rounds. See if he can find some impact. And info play glowing very forward. Ooh. Takes it. Heads up jewel with Frozen. Needs to cancel his plan. So aware now that it is a default maneuver likely out of phase. Who, well, in saying so, don't have any presence over towards A right now. So, yeah, I'm working together. There'll be a fight for mid here with the short push. 
Yeah, going to set up a boost as well. This is going to be our first exchange. Check out Diladez's position over the smoke as well if they boost. A little bit of a gap. He might spot one. Rain. Safe, but they've snuck through the boost. Diladez unawares. Rops just finds an easy headshot to the side of the head. Jump scare for Diladez. And down goes Chloe. Carrigan even catching a perfect timing onto C. Clack six feet deep. And a to finish. C longer Has done to number two, which is rain. Is he going to be able to adjust to that? Oh, Rob's just disgusting dismantling of the A site. Now, he has lost his rifle, sure, but it's seized. He has one of his own. And, ooh, nearly found frozen on con. Could have made a round out of it instead. How good is the phase homework? Will they expect clacks as well? You could see they were worried about the palace push, but that's where C's poked out his head. Bomb to be planted, not acknowledged for now. No. Oh, oh. Yeah, you only get one shot of that, don't you? Not my favorite pistol, I'll tell you that much. All right, well, FaZe, just two rounds away from making sure overtime is secured. Three from picking up the map and the first victory here in their campaign. We're in the RMRs. We're in Group A. Eight teams will be able to make their way through from Group A to the Major. Then uh, three teams will go to the last chance qualifier. And the same to be said for Group B, which will be kicking off next Monday. We've got the Asian RMR as well as the Americas. So plenty of counter strike to come your way so we can get the 24 teams in total locked in for the PGL Copenhagen Major, the first CS2 Major. Come around quick, hasn't it? It has. And a Copenhagen, no less. We have lost clacks from the server for a moment, everybody. So we can take a, just a breather. I'll have a look and see what's going on with that secondary stream game. Well, no, no spoilers. You guys can go and check it out. This is for my own... Uh, so it's on Ancient. I can tell you that much. Can you tell? Oh, yeah, you know Sport. Virtus Pro no versus Saw. Yeah, okay. We're in the second half. I and mean, I, there I, are definitely some names, aren't there, Chad? Oh, there are when a I few. There's names. Group what, B is, I would say, more stacked. Most definitely. Uh, but also, <laughs> when you look at the teams in participating in this group, there's still a very clear, like, uh, line drawn between notable names and those vying to make 
something of this. Yeah, and, and this is kind of where the conversation gets structured. Obviously, it feels like a must for the big names, like a phase, a G2, I suppose, Virtus Pro's in that mix, Falcons, Navi. It feels like for them, this is a must. They must qualify for the major. Uh, because for the orgs, that's an expectation. But for these young and hungry individuals who we've seen on our screens over these years, time and time again, either having a crack or making it, right? Seized once upon a time of Navi fame. Uh, this is about getting back to the upper echelons of Counter-Strike. This is showing that they can compete. And for them, the newer names, the fresh faces, this is a chance at, well, glory, because that's what qualifying for a major is. Out middle, Molly towards the mid box. Rain will think better of swinging wide in case they want to fight. Over towards B, pressure to be applied. Seized to be tested. Nade, well placed. It'll be a one hell of a nade. Oh, oh, a bit deep. Narrow miss. I just balance onto Carrigan though. Gone for the clear. A lot of work to be done here. Bomb to be committed. I just balance deleted. As it's Rain prepared for the repeat now. Rob spotted out. Does get away. And it's another fight from <laughs> Rain. Just headshotting boys. Left and right. A triple kill from Rain in mid while his team's hitting B. Yeah. Like <laughs> he, all they were tasked with right there, Nine Pandas, was can you just clean up the lurk so we can focus on the site? And they couldn't even do that. Rain, 14 kills, impact felt. And that right there is the round in his pocket. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, Rain and Robs. Top of the scoreboard. Some impactful rounds as an 11th is on its way. I wonder what mouse Rain's using, because we obviously had during right. the final his, uh, his, his razor stopped working. So I'd be interested to see what he's got himself equipped with at the moment. As Frozen to take out Clax, and this one seems like it's going as it should. FaZe applying some dominance here in the second half. Yet to drop a round after a competitive first half of play. It's now five on the trot, six likely considering the circumstances of the bite. And this is beautiful from Rain. Uh, he could have swung out much earlier in towards middle when he went for that control, but this is just aim map one at a time. It can't be done better. Well, it can be done better if you're on the Nine Panda side. Maybe swing <laughs> as a unit. Yeah. But for Rain, perfect. No fun allowed. These guys are going to have to be working with just the sidearms here. Five sevens, Eagles. No, Kev. And straight into an A execute. So trying to remove as many of the issues as they can. Smokes and mollies. Smokes to obscure sight lines, mollies to clear out close angles, and flashes for good measure as they should just be able to waltz their way in towards the site. Frozen out the apartments, and more util laden to stall out the push as the digits to get punched. Carrigan looking for a fight up and over. The in-game leader feeling a bit frisky. This is par for the course. This is what you'd expect. And again, just reiterating, FaZe were the heavy favorites in this one. This is what they would be hoping to start their campaign with in the opening match. Oh, the bait. Rain. Does go down to Klax Teague as Klax has actually got two. And there's another. These boys have got themselves some AKs. Oh, and all the frags they needed. Uh, bar one. Bar one and the defuse. But you know what? You'll take that. <laughs> the stats will anyway. Yeah. At this moment, they're just begging for a CT round. Clax, <laughs> maybe overstepping the mark. Frozen will punish him. But the, the story goes one of two ways, right? It's either, wow, what an upset. Nine Pandas have done them. They're here to disrupt at the RMR phase. Nobody's safe. Or Ooh. it goes the direction of phase calm. They take care of business. This is what we all expected. And this is exactly how they would be hoping to start here in Bucharest. And it looks like we're going for option number two. Yeah. I do expect that option number one will be around the, the streets of Bucharest over the course of this RMR. There's going to be an upset or two, that's for sure. Yeah. Heartbreak, tears, joy, elation. You get all the full range of emotions as we are in oh. the final round. Tiladez should be a dead man. Should be, but Carrigan just about gets that one done clean. Now glowing. Whoop. Loses his head. Rain, he's just not stopping. With these headshots, Klax, Molotov down position. There's a three versus five phase. Looking to commit now to this site. The whole squad bar rain. <laughs> now with the bomb down, Disbalance trying to fight his way in. It sees just creeping into rain for another. Comfortable in his collection, and it puts Disbalance and Klax up against the odds. Already tagged He's up. He's going to shoot, Carrigan. isn't he? Gonna finish the job. Oh, one bullet shy. Brokey will do it. And there you have it. Business as usual for FaZe. Show it up to the RMR. Fresh haircuts. 
and same phase, picking up the W. Yeah, that's exactly what you'd hope to see with this team. You can see that there aren't two big smiles on the faces. You mentioned it, taking care of business. And that's what this is going to be about for the top dogs, making sure that the underdogs, the dark horses, those lying in the shadows, waiting for their opportunity to strike for the biggest of tournaments, are kept in the dark. We're going to throw this one over to Parla and his lovely panel. I think we uh, we got the game restored, so to speak. We got exactly what we expected in the second half. Face running all over the Nine Pandas and looking like by far the better team. Got to give credit to Nine Pandas for making it competitive in the first half, but yeah. at the end of the day, normality was restored. Can we touch upon that quickly? Maniac 6-6. Six, six. I mean, it was more than I expected out of Nine Pandas on that T side. It gave a glimmer of hope, but then that glimmer of hope was stamped out quite violently. No, definitely. And I think the second half is a statement from FaZe, the, how they were in control. I do want to say the first half was more competitive than I expected. You're thinking about a CT start on Mirage, and then the guys of Nine Pandas not afraid to take duels. There were a bunch of very skirmishy situations towards middle where players like Dilidis, for example, was ready to just fight it out and they were ready to take them out. We have some of the highlights here. It's mainly going to be the FaZe clan. I'm not going to lie to you guys, but I have to admit that the first half got me worried for a second. I was wondering, where are we going? Is it going to be a slow start from FaZe? Because I do think when Nine Pandas could sort of imprint the rhythm, they, they had a definite chance. But then the second half is a completely different story. Phase a step closer, of course, to securing their spot at the Copenhagen CS2 Major. We're going to finish out these highlights, then bring up the scoreboard. A good game for the man on screen just then, Rops. He had a stormer. We'll see him finishing out top of the table. Yeah, after that first half, it was very smooth for the FaZe clan. Why do you think it was, like, tight in the first half? Any specific reasons for FaZe taking a moment to warm up? No, I mean, I, I gotta give credit to, to Nine Pandas. I think that T set was good. Uh, it was filled with uh, a lot of different elements to it. There was a couple of fast rounds, a couple of explosions, uh, a couple of, of decent executes as well. And we saw some mid-round scenarios as well, where they were able to pressure FaZe clan and, and sort of catch them off guard, especially in the mid area where FaZe wanted to be aggressive. Mm. They wanted to be aggressive and Nine Pandas were on top of that. So credit where credit is due for, for Nine Pandas in the first half. However, I think we saw FaZe clan do a, the exact same thing in the second one. Rubs had a fantastic showing, but in general, the pace coming out from Kerrigan and the calling was, was just too much for them to win. Yeah, you could really see when once FaZe moved on to the t half, of course, winning the pace around is the best possible way. They don't get uh, forced, anything. They could put some money on. And then the first gun round they play is a very disciplined, strict round. They do that this slow mid-take where they have all the T's uh, crossed, all the I's dotted. They boost into window. They have this timing and then it falls apart for 9 And At this moment, you realize, oh, shit, like, wait. When the game comes to them, they will be a little bit outmatched. And I think Kerrigan calls very admirably in the sense of once he's won this sort of a mind boggle of a round, then he plays a bit more free and he allows Robs to walk out of ramp. He allows Rain to take dual middle because he knows nine pedas are a bit lost. And that's just it. It was it looked very smooth in the T side of phase. Talking about Rops, let's officially crown him our man of the match. Great performance from him. Yes. I mean, at this point, we're so used to seeing him give star performances and remaining cool with a K on the server. And it was important in the first half. It could have been worse off for Face Clan had not Rops been there. You know, uh, <laughs> these for... pictures, by sorry, just to <laughs> hold your thought. But with the, you know, the, the thing, shh, yeah. shh, the poses, they, they always um, give me joy. You like that one, you know? Yeah, <laughs> Rops is always telling people to be quiet. And I think he does that with his gameplay too, shutting people down. He did that in the first half and he was he was much needed no doubt about it without rubs in the first half we saw frozen go 0 and 5 before he got into the scoreboard so it was very important for him you see a lot of the highlights come in here as well you're down 0-2 for, for rubs he had a fantastic round t side obviously he was dominating but but for him to play well again for this game matcher it's it's the best of one maybe it's not that essential but in general if, if face want to make it clean in the end of the major yeah. rubs has to play well. yeah it's not that essential but i still like to to have an eye on how sharp players are from the very beginning and i think he you could very see in these highlights like the time to kill was really low for Robs. Like, very good cross placement ability to flick from one target to the other. We always know he's going to be finicky. We always know he's going to be, he's going to do having shenanigans, finding ways. That's the Robs type. But when he's as sharp as this, then you end up with a masterful performance.
Why don't we hone in on a specific round maniac? I think he wanted to look at round number 11. A lot of action happening on the middle of Mirage. Yes, and also to give credit to Nine Pandas as well, they were able to sustain all of the skirmishes I'm talking about. You can see here how FaZe have the direct intention to contest for middle. They break open the smokes, they have people coming in from shore, from catwalk here that's frozen. This was trying to jump in. by Dilides. Exactly, so that's a beautiful multi kill from Dilides. And also, it sort of point, pinpoints a little bit how complacent to an extent phase got into the first half with the, the peaks aren't exactly coming together the short guy is two seconds behind the connector you would want that to be together so that's a moment where maybe they uh, not they didn't give enough respect to nine vendors and they remember they reminded them hey guys if you're gonna fight us this way we can step up so i just wanted to put out this clip to uh give praise as well to the pandas i think it was a wake-up call for for face clan i think there's a beautiful clip in that regard because i agree with you maybe a little bit too lackluster in the synergy you know a little bit of, of the peaks out there weren't spot on and normally you get away with that if you're the better players if you're the face clans of the world and you're playing against a team like nine pandas you can get away with that nine out of ten times but the fact of the matter was that nine pandas in that very first half played some decent counter strike and i guess that's the takeaway for them because obviously second half not too much to be happy about absolutely guys thank you so much for your thoughts our first best of one out of the way here at the pgl cs2 eu rmr up next it's going to be our second best one it's going to be g2 versus itb our break is only a short two minutes so everybody at home do not go anywhere Level up your gaming space with metal posters from Displate. Swap them whenever you like. Hang your Displates in seconds. Get official art from your favorite games on a uniquely designed metal canvas and choose from thousands of posters. Join over 3 million collectors now. Your wall upgrade is here. Shop now at Displate.com. time for our fantasy draft but it's slightly different we're going to spin the wheel and it's going to land on the team and we will then choose which player from that team will fit in now for the first one it's kind of easy because you can just take maybe the best player for it but then we have to think of the roles and how it's going to work out Muterist though is up for the challenge again a smile on his face so let's spin the wheel and see which team we're going to get first and it's going to land on Oh, oh, Cloud9. Cloud okay. Nine. Well, this is quite easy because you don't have to choose an AWPer. There's no AWPer on this team. Yeah. <laughs> but which player would you like to take from Cloud9? Uh, I would choose or Electronic. Electronic? 
Yeah, I think it's the best one. Or okay. Vumbla. I don't know if I'm going to find a, a really good IGL. IGL. Oh, yeah, but okay. Uh, but but mm. electronic can be IGL too. So. Yeah, he can take two roles. He's done it in the past. Yeah, I like that. I, I'm going to choose electronic. Okay, electronic we're taking first then. He can be your star rifler and an yeah. IGL if you need, but we want him to stay on the rifle. Much better than that. Next one. Ooh. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. We've moved on to Nip, so you've got Electronic. Who would you like from Nip? Let me see. I really like Config and, and Res. You like Config and Res, okay. Both yeah. solid choices. And uh, Alex, it's uh, a, a good IGL too, but I have Electronic, so I will go with uh, Res. You're going to go with Res? Okay, yeah. so we've got ourselves Electronic and Res so far. Okay, Electronic and Res. That's a good starter. That's a good starter. Yeah. Oh, oh, is it gonna? Yeah, this yes. Dude, now this is easy, right? This is easy. Yeah. <laughs> Zayu. Okay, yeah, so Zayu, electronic, electronic, and Rez. And Rez. So we got our Orper in there. Yeah. Zayu though can do anything, so yeah, he could I can put the, you. <laughs> I can put electronic in and IGL. So, ooh, complexity. Bit of North American slash South African magic in there, depending yeah, on who I you want Yeah, I don't go. know if uh, inside the game that will fit. At least electronic head. <laughs> You'd be heavy, heavy. Yeah. So if if uh, I needed to make sense, I would choose uh, maybe a floppy. Oh, floppy. Okay, I like that. Yeah, but. At least for me, it's the best from the if team. If you want to take yeah. a lead, you can take a lead. We're making your yeah. fantasy team, right? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I, I go with floppy, this one. Okay, you're going to go floppy uh, this time? Yeah. We need one more. Now, depending on who you get, you might get a great IGL. <gasps> Ooh. Oof. This? This is interesting. I want to see who you're going to pick here. Well, IGL, I'm gonna stay with, maybe with Electronic. Okay, you're stay. Interesting. So who are you picking yeah. from here? Well, if I had to shoot device, it's, it's impossible, impossible because I have Zayu. <laughs> so well, I'm, well, let me, you say impossible. Yeah, but it's not impossible. You could make Zayu rifle. He said he could rifle, you know, he can do anything, this guy. Yeah, but. It will be much stronger in, in his role. So okay. I go with Javi. Javi, okay. Yeah. Nice. That will be a nice. A this really is the nice well rounded uh, team. Yeah. Electronic but back to IGL. It's sad, but I, I think he, he did a really good job. So yeah. I like it. That's what I will do. Interesting team picked out by Muteris there, but now it's time for us to turn our attention to the teams on our server for our second best of one. We've got G2 and ITB. Guys, general themes here. G2, number five in the world. Fifth to th sixth at IM Kato. Decent, but probably not what they wanted. ITB, on the other hand, not even at Kato and just haven't been doing much in general. They're only here because they made fifth to eighth at the Blast Paris Major. Huge underdogs, to put it simply. Yeah, and they brought back Thomas as well in order to facilitate them, Big them being here, right? So it, it is a team ITB right now that we haven't seen play at a high level ever since the Blast Paris Major, to be completely honest. A little bit lackluster performances, you know, been rusted changes going in and out. So it's, it's been a rough period for them. Whereas for G2, we discussed it. Number five in the world is not per se bad, but I think mm. the potential of G2, as we've seen before, is them winning titles, them winning trophies. And that's not where right. we're at right now. In relatable to this game, though, G2, massive favorites. Yeah, I think we were pretty much in the same structure as our first game. You have a very, very clear favorite. I think G2 on his own, quite hard to evaluate in Katowice. The last game versus FaZe leaves you wanting. Like it was it was a flat performance in the playoffs. Some of the stars didn't perform. Very tough series for Nico. Manasi was very moderate. It was, in fact, Nexi and Hunter who stepped up and had better numbers during that game. So if you just stuck in recency bias, you're thinking, oh man, G2, they had a steam, but they still have very decent five to six placing, as you mentioned, and they are direct favorites and they should make it to Copenhagen. A point I know you wanted to bring up was talking about Nico because Nico's still playing good CS, but is he still capable of playing great CS? His results in the last three right. months have been 
have been good, but they haven't been necessarily great on an individual sense. I mean, do need to step up here at the RMR? The problem that we have is that ever since CS2 came out, Nico has ceased to be uh, ceased to be exceptional. But he used to be in his own category. He used to be one of the players out there that would have his own very set of standards and would have his own very red carpet when we talk about Counter-Strike as being one of the most extraordinary individuals that we have out there. Is this the case where he will from now on just be a good player? I a hope very not, good and I players. don't think so, but it's no, such but a good point to, point to raise. That's, a, that's a problem, right? Yeah. Because it's happening time and time again. Uh, when you have players who had a rough transition to CS2, we were very quick to jump on them. For Nico, a few events have passed now, and we are still a far cry from what he can do. And I'm starting to wonder, should I just adjust my view on, on Nico and CS2? What's, what's the story? It's a good question. 1.12 rating so far, you know, the past six months is, is not good it's, numbers for it's Nico's It's not bad, but... No, no, I know, but, but he used to be a 1.35. He used to be the best rifler in the game. He used to be a guy that would always dictate the game, make the difference. And there's a direct consequence of Nico just being an okay player. And that's G2 not winning trophies. That's G2 not winning titles. That's G2 finishing fifth to sixth at Katowice. If Nico comes back to his old usual self, paired up with Manasi, then they're going to be just fine. But if Nico continues to be a 1.12 rating player, which is all right, Pala, by all means, they're not going to win trophies. If that's the recipe for G2, what needs to be the recipe for ITB? As we mentioned in our intro, this is a team that has some really good individual parts, but can they come together? Which part needs to shine the most? My, my first, you know, part was not playing Anubis against G2. I think that's a, a rough one <laughs> that's to go into. Start. I feel like G2 is a fantastic team on that map. So for ITB, again, we talked about some of the individuals, you know, it, it's been players who's been around. They've been shopping a little bit in and out. Thomas had a fantastic showing at the Major as an in-game leader. Maybe he has a trick up his sleeve, but it's very hard for me to see anyone really making the difference against G2. Maniac, could this be another miracle run for ITB? Could they run <laughs> back the Blast Paris Major of 2023? No. No, I don't think that's going to happen. There's got to be a chance, though, a yes. sliver. Of course there is a chance. The problem is I don't think that they are holding the cards right now. That's no, my not issue. against G2 at you, least. You would, you would think some individuals, you talk about, Thomas, you can talk about Ralin as well. Like He's he's a, a lone fox of all the face-it FPL games he's been playing for as long as I can. So with his experience, maybe he can throw shenanigans in there, but I don't think they hold the cards. As I say, it's going to be up to G2 and their level. Guys, who's winning this matchup, G2 or ITB? G2. Yeah, G2. All right, everybody, that's it from us on the desk. This one is ready to go. Sponge and Machine, over to you. Execute, Alex. Thank you very much. Have you heard the sound Fox makes? It's actually really weird. So don't they don't make you a, do it. No, they make it. I'm not, I wouldn't. And pushing in, Nico and Nexa. Forging a path into the A side, crucial. Should be good, should be good. And combined with Thomas, looking good for ITV to make this one work. Two versus one, Hooksy. They've run into a spot of bother here on the A site. Wouldn't have been a spot of bother if their smoke landed, would it? No, that would have helped. It certainly would have helped. And now he's got all the time in the world to work this one out. Look at the minimap, by the way. Just look how many bodies litter the battlefield of A. Now we chill. Yeah, that looked like one of my pugs. Uh, just to A execute out the gate. But uh, the A stack coming into play. So out of the breach. And yeah. Into the wild. There's a. Little hooksy, and this would fill the team with confidence if the in game leader could scoop them up a clutch on the pistol round in such circumstances. A smoke to guarantee the plan. He's trying to flush them out. So, not using it to corner off any choke points and no rotation. I'm sure they would have heard the smoke plume on the other side of the site. Yeah, but check out BMAS. He brought a smoke and a kit to the party. You little devil. That is the retake package. That's everything you need for a nice ITB pistol. I mean, I know the desk are doubting them. I think Chad might be doubting them, and I... I I'm think also doubting them. If they win the pistol, I have hope. I have hope the He's ITB... Just of course he is. Unless... Oh, oh yeah, that's going to be a diffused. Forgot where he planted. Hard to remember, hard to find. And there you have it. ITB taking the pistol, taking the round. G2 thrust down... But it's all right. Into the doldrums. Because the bomb was planted. And we know yeah. what that means on the T side. It it's means Galils. Galils are plenty. Mac 10s. Bemus. And I have to say, ITB, they have been in the workshop, they've been in the lab for the jersey. No one has ever done this color combination before. It's a new color combo. It is a new color combo. And it's not easy to find a color combo that hasn't been done before. So that might explain why it's, uh, it's so beautiful to Someone's my eyes. Someone's spamming something on their keyboard is Monacy. Having a word with an Admingo right now. What are they discussing? Looks like something TeamSpeak related, if I was to hazard a guess. Yeah. Bemas doesn't have the cool trophy by his name, but everyone else does. Mm. So it's, it is interesting seeing uh, Masuta and Bemis 
joining this trio. It is, isn't it? What are we spamming on the keyboard, lads? I can hear it. What are we? Is it, are you hitting your escape key over and over again? Console. Oh, Crucial not happy with something either. He's adjusting a headset as well, so using the time wisely. Taking a swig of water. Are you smart enough to know what the lights on the ear cups mean? I think it's... Oh, is, something. It, is it noise cancelling related? It might be noise cancelling. Well, it's like channel related. I don't know. I remember someone told me once and I was like, I'll never forget that. No, I've forgotten. Well, there's three of them available, only two of them. Maybe it's a power level? Yes, yeah. So Thomas, obviously, power level two. Yep. With a potential power level of three. And Nexa, of course, a reminder, he is uh, newest addition onto G2. Well, I do like G2's odds in this. Purchase yeah. looking pretty tidy. A couple of Mac tents to oh, compliment the Galils. The I love the call, Chad. We go on again. We just do it again. Heaven smoke from Hooksy. Masuta to receive them. Is he a throw out of smoke? He extinguished. might want to smoke it. Oh, he's second guessing it. He's being run down now. Tucked in, takes the fight, welcomes the duel. Monacy one for one. It's Thomas now with the MP9 to finish the job down to Monacy and down goes the ace site. Retake on, not a comfortable one. You're out behind the smokes. You could boost perhaps, but already less than favorable for ITB in converting this pistol round win. They are really going to give this one a look, but Clumsy on the tower. And uh, that is going to be the end of that. Save on the docket is crucial. Punched down to just three points of health. That's what my A anchoring feels like. Yeah, yeah, you can get run down quite easily. You saw it there. He used the incendiary early to stall out the rush, but they've got the uh, paper to the rock. They, they just, just kept go going. for the extinguish, go through. They know that there's a rally of flashes and util behind it. He was... Uh, look, the other option, obviously, was, as you were mentioning, dropping that smoke in main and then fighting behind it to not allow it to get out of control. But either it was sticky or he second-guessed it. But regardless, ITB, after winning the pistol, will be unsuccessful with the follow-through. And G2, that one is going to feel damn good. Monacy with two kills in towards the site. And I would assume the byproduct of that is that now you, you feel a bit more on edge when A feels pressure and scrutiny. If that, you, if that heaven smoke lands, if that bricks molly lands, suddenly you might be cheating players. There might be gaps in middle. There might be gaps at B. Yeah, precisely. But uh, right now with these three saved rifles, let's see what they complement it with. There's an MP9 in the mix and a 5.7. So it's still something deadly for ITB to work with. And they're operating with three towards middle early. So do they want to leer forward and look for a fight? We don't see the molly towards the doors. We just see Nico unloading the Galil spam through the smoke. Spam back. A nade through. Tickle damage done. So playing reactive with three players towards mid. I Meaning they could hedge their bets towards either side of the map. We do know CT side of Anubis requires you to be extremely active. Either once that information comes through your pipeline, making a reactive play or setting the tempo early. Again, we will see Masuta. The lone defender of A will have the support network of Thomas available. Mid control to be taken off the back of the double Molly's house and doors. And she are burning. Yeah. Thomas just has a smoke in his hand. So I assume that he's going to try and refresh the main. Has done so. Masuto, that's a perfect weapon if they were you to break it. They don't have to go through this, gentlemen. They don't have a HE to clear and there's no rush. Is mid control being taken? Nico, he's out and about. Hunter by his side. Both... The Kovac cousins pushing in from cams and they've been cut down. Now it's falling apart for G2. They need the multi from Hoaxy. He provides it. 2v2. Yeah, get that bomb down, Monacy. Rollin and Bemis on the retake. Smoke and kit available. Hoaxy would love an upgrade, wouldn't he? Mm, Monacy would love a reload. 12 bullets is enough. If you're precise, he's not. Doesn't find the head. And now only onto Hoaxy. Doesn't have that rifle as you've already... Disgust. This smoke's going to be a big problem. Yeah, and it's a really not the right range for this engagement. Oh, it's not far off. Look at the HP on Rylan. 27. And cut down by Bemis. A full defuse. And there you go. Okay, so we are going to be seeing these kind of force by wars building around those two safe rifles. Yeah, that feels pretty average for G2 considering the space they had towards middle, but more bodies than ITB needed to turn that into a real skirmish. So the split, it felt potent for G2, but into the breach, able to defend. You can see coming through the camera position, made mince mead, and then able to pivot as well. So really good work from the likes of Crucial. And then it is Hooksy behind the smoke wall, not used on the bomb, and they'll bounce back immediately. With the plant though, take a look at what's able to be invested by for G2 and AWP for Monacy. The first one we're going to be seeing in this map of Anubis. So no real issues with the economy whatsoever. As Hooksy stretches his legs, goes for a run, gets those boots wet. 
Molly, trying to flash anybody out of the dark position. Three towards B. CT Molly, not going to stop Monacy from holding the angle. He has the info. At dark is clear. Ooh, good Ooh, good wow, oh, good damage. Good Through the smoke. Yeah, Roland put low, put on notice. It's Hunter that did the damage. Yeah, it's just good understanding of what that means. Hey, they blocked. Okay, they're likely going to be looking for, for a fight down towards dark. Let's spam through and see if we can assist. But the map feeling quite small if you're into the bridge now. Beautiful crystal blue waters of Anubis. Now occupied by three boots. Oh, or three clearing. Players. They are clearing. This is what Nico's been waiting for. It's not a comfortable duel for Thomas. And down goes Masuta as well. Clawing back is crucial. He needs to get a double, but Nico denies. Good shots from him in mid. Still, Rallin finding one keeps the round alive. Rallin is very sketched out on low HP. Yeah, he's actually backing away all the way to beach around the world. Bemis, he needed that one to make a round out of this. Bomb now down. And the round going G2. So we're just trading blows right now. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that because they knew Rallin was towards heaven and then Bemis still went for the fight. If, if Rallin stayed and then he went down and then Bemis popped out and traded, then maybe that makes sense. Bemis definitely shouldn't have gone for it if Rallin wasn't going to be fighting. So that is disconnected from Into the Breach as we do exchange rounds again. I, I don't know if I hate the move from Into the Breach. They evacuated A completely to search out mid, but already started to rotate away for a B, right? So I understand what they were getting up to. And like I said, they have to stay quite active on the CT side. Didn't pan out for them. I think Thomas coming through, getting caught by Hunter. He may have had a chance against Nico tucked in tight. But yeah, as I mentioned, the map can feel quite small quite quickly. Yeah. And Hooksy trying to keep the hype up early. This is something that we discussed as... I don't know if that's necessary. We didn't see any of those antics from FaZe because this is the same conversation, whereas uh, G2 should be coming into this game and taking care of business. The first two matchups that we had over the A and the B streams were both 13 to 6 scorelines, so relatively pedestrian. It was competitive at times, but taking care of business. And for G2, obviously we know that uh, they can be the type of team that tips their head at the smallest of issues. So wanting to make sure that they can keep their minds clear the Hooksy hype. Yeah, I mean, especially for Nico, just finding all three on your mid-campaign, getting his first three frags of this best of one. This is where he should be farming, right? right. Uh, and the desk obviously highlighting his stats is coming into CS2. They have made no secret of their struggles, right? Hunter talking about it as well. Him and Nico uh, not living up to their traditional standards, right? Uh, it might just be this adjustment period. And obviously, we've just had this more recent patch, which could be aiding them in a big way. Monacy having no issues, of course. And Nexa to slot in. He's been good in the clutch. He's been anchoring down his positions. So it is just uh, teething issues, I imagine, for this G2 roster in the early stages of the roster changes. Starts with the smoke, Misuta. Look how many bodies are out towards water, though. It's quite telling them I want to flash through and fight, so this could be quick. Flash goes, Mac 10s charging in, and what are you supposed to do with just pistols to defend this site? Already you can see the rotations are on their way. Nade sailing through, Thomas with a furrowed brown, knows he's got a lot to do. Flashes are good, Thomas only the one. And they know crucial towards the heaven position, that nade lands square on the jaw of Nico, but with his bullets and his nade combined, he gets the job done. And it has to be the save call again. Bucking the trend, though. That's going to be two consecutive for the first time this game. Yeah, and a chance to even extend further than that. So G2 with some simple executes over towards A. Making it look easy. And you can see, as we flick through to Thomas's POV, he's looking through the windows, just seeing the sheer amount of utility coming through behind the Molly smokes, flashes. Kitchen sink included in that as uh, G2... Should keep four players alive. Two players for Into the Breach, Bemis and Rallon, both retaining silenced M4s. Full bag of util for the likes of Rallon, and Bemis is just one nade off. It could only be a flash or a decoy to complete the set. But this A bomb site being exploited, we've seen it on the pistol round, sort of on the follow through with the Galils, obviously a lot of play through A or mid. So that's something that now will need to be addressed. Okay, well, discussing how they want to set up this mid defense. So it is going to be an eco around the saved weapons. You need to facilitate the likes of Rallon and Bemis to find you a couple of kills. 
And later within this map, G2 can start turning towards this B bomb site. You expect it, as you mentioned earlier, to be softened, maybe having to go with a 2 1 2 or 2 2 1 type of setups. Orps to come out as well at some point for Crucial. As Hooksy, again, behind the AWP to take the space, the Molly in play, applying pressure, flushing out the util. Doesn't have to be the commit, just needs to be the fear put into the hearts and minds of Into the Breach that this is a possibility. Ooh. Rahlan, I mean, he's not shy to spam with the silenced M4, but still catches a bit of a face full of lead so th low. This is what was discussed, right? Thomas wanting to flash so Rallon could go for a peek in a fight, but now that he's been chipped on down to such low HP, below 50, I don't think we'll see Rallon taking that type of fight, just rerouting completely and hoping that it will be the B finish. Not in any hurry here, G2. Nico starts his uh, mid crawl, and yeah, it's wide open for the taking. It does look like they are setting up for B, however. Oh, it does. So into the stack. This is well called by Into the Breach, or well gambled either way. Might pay off. It certainly could. B mass. That second rifle. G2 are walking straight into this. Lots of utility. Trying to land a good HE. Could soften them up for these pistols. Bringing the bomb in is Hooksy. So many bodies need some cover. Good work from Crucial. Gets the USP. Gets value out of that. Ooh, good headshot. Team kill, in fact, from Bemis. That's a problem. And now trapped behind the smoke. They're getting sprayed on down. That bomb's already ticking. Nixer finds himself an AK with a few more Saving bullets. Again. And yeah, just backing away. Looks like they managed to recover those two rifles at least. Yeah, understandably so that they wanted to save it. I thought they would have been able to inflict a little bit more damage. Even though they were smoked off, we saw Thomas with a flash that was discussed earlier in the round set up round towards middle. If they had used that as the executor come in and all kind of push through and taken the risk, they may have been able to cause a little bit more chaos because G2, they were able to isolate those fights. The TK doesn't look good, but considering the low HP that Rallon was already put down to, not the end of the world. G2 up to four, two rounds to the good. And considering they walked into the stack, that one is going to feel pretty damn nice for G2. And they're able to fight themselves out of that box. Plenty of residual cash. Look at Monacy up to 8K. Same for Hooksy as he slightly chips in with a bit of U2, bringing him down to that 7K mark. So this is good, G2. And you can see the way that they're getting these rounds done is the bomb going down. That's something that Into the Breach have not been able to stop in a single round of play. So if you're on the T side and you're an in-game leader, that's going to make feel really good in terms of the cash injection and knowing that if it just comes down to post plants, you have the better players. Aggression. Yeah, they're flashing for it. Nexa blind behind the smoke. Molly's late. One has slipped the net. Could be a back turned here. Who's Hooksy does manage to slip into dark. Thomas, you know, nothing to report towards the canal position. Rahlan needs to reload. Already into the site is Nico. And he makes his presence known. They just did a bucket of damage. Yeah. They really are hoping they can find a way back in. Now, they don't have the bomb in yet. Nico does. They have plenty more smoke. So if they just take a breath into the breach, might oh. oh, yeah, walk on in exactly like that. Yeah, and it looks like Hooksy's already confirmed the presence of Thomas. Fast on dark. Nico peeks out, finding Bemis as well. Oh, he's comfortable, is bomb. Nico? Just <laughs> deathmatching him. Very convincing stuff from G2. Five alive as they find five. Yeah, that is too simple, isn't it? And that aggressive maneuver it has to be telegraphed because the CTs need to apply that U2 early. The T-stairs smoke, the molly up towards the rugs position, the flash, and they knew it was coming. The reaction, let's walk into a wide open B bomb site, take the space and punish them. Great work from G2. Reactive Counter-Strike to the CTs, trying to mix things up, knowing this A bomb site's been peppered. They've been they're fed up of being bullied. But now they just hit the other side, and that's what we said would happen, right? The yeah. weaknesses have to appear on the CT side of Anubis somewhere. But that just that knee-jerk reaction from G2. Stairs smoke for the first time this game. Telegraphed with their aggressions. Nico, full focus. Top performer for G2 right now, which is a good sign of life. ITB. Must feel like they've only really had rounds like this. It's MP9s, it's a little bit of that M4 action. Now, this is where we kick off the tournament and we are expecting the household names to take care of business. It's only when we get into these 2-2 two -two matches where we have a bit more level in the field. As, oh, Thomas will catch Hooksy. Nexa wants the trade and can't get it done. Thomas doubles up. Huge from Thomas. They could win this now. After how good it felt for G2, this one's going to sour yeah, the mood. No, I'm interested here. Look at this. Bombs, rugs. 
as two players are on the other side of the map, but can they force rotates here? If they get a kill, Misuta might get caught out. He's alone at the moment. They're not given anything. 40 seconds walking in. It's suspicious. Now down goes Crucial. Beamer's in the dark position. Dead to Hunter. Now he goes caught. Oh, he down. lost the bomb. Misuta's found him. 30 seconds. All those frags mean me nothing. If you can't retrieve that bomb now, Mizuta's just sitting on it. Hunter and Monacy, what are they supposed to do? Just got to run, or you have to run away. You got 10k on Monacy. Hunter's trying to hunt down Roland. Just trying to do some damage, I suppose. They can't win the round now. <laughs> oh man, that is a bleak turn of events. Yeah, what was going on there? I, I suppose it was, let's look in towards the site, see if we can get the kills. Nico can always rotate up through Canal, but it is risky knowing mid pushes were available, knowing that an individual like Masuda was always able to spring to action. So Thomas and Masuda, they get a bit of revenge. They've been... Isolated over towards this A site. Next up, a bit laboured, not able to get that trade. And you can see the difference that it makes as we do have a technical timeout called. But that one, that one is going to draw things just back to a two-round game. Now, we know there can't be a discussion during the technical timeouts. Everybody needs to keep the mouths sealed, zip those lips. And uh, again, we do have the secondary stream going on with Jackie and Vince right now. We've confirmation of presence towards all the smokes, but a temple smoke could be perfect as part of this. They've got this dark control. Honestly, can lob it out. They've even gone... Oh, oh, that was uh, slightly misthrown from Hooksy, I do believe. But that's okay. Off the rim, the bomb will still go down. Sight call clear. And six Securers into the bridge will be saving their goodies. Crucial. Likely wanting to retain that AWP. So it was a bit of a boo-boo in the previous, but straight back into winning ways. Four on the trot. Messed up and well, straight back into a round with all five staying alive. It looks like Hooksy is allowing a little bit of a hunt. Hooksy leading the charge with Nico just behind. They could take away even just one of these rifles. That would feel damn good. And yeah, they're going loud about this. Masuta's the first to spot out Hooksy. He loses his head, loses his gun. Could be more here. Thomas takes the fight just as Hooksy's got his knife out. Nico found themselves in a safe heaven. Okay, well... Six so far on the T side. You definitely don't want to tie things up and go into halftime at 6-6. Six, six. So seven or eight would be great if you're G2. And if you could go the whole hog and take nine, three more rounds in this half of play, that would be exactly what Taz, not the doctor, but the coach, ordered. It's going to be a tactical timeout, the variety of Into the Breach. They're going to be having a conversation right now of how they want to apply their trade forward with these saved rifles. They are able to buy around it. Lost bonus flowing and... It was only 2,400, Mark. Next round, 2,900. But it has allowed them to get out another M4 and an MP9. MP9 for Bemis. Diffuse kits are plenty. Everybody's got a smoke. There's a bunch of incendiaries in the mix. So enough to compete with. And they did more with less in the previous round that they won. into the breach. But they need consecutive. There is still a chance for them in this half. But they need to get that engine going. Honestly, back down T stairs. Crucial's AWP posted in mid. Always a risky place to look for a pick, knowing the type of util that the T's can lob out behind you. Baskets Molly. Mid and now to the fight. Next against the better of Masuda. Sinking feeling for Thomas. Isn't it so isolating if you're playing that position alone? The smoke behind him, the Molly in front. You either run away and give it up for free, or you go for the fight and you get absolutely owned. And, the, and the, we know that that flash can come any time. Like, it's just not in your interest to stick around. The suit has been punished this time. Right, now you could just put it in with an AX, couldn't you? You certainly could. Because it has to be a gamble, right? We've already seen them go for different info plays. No Molly on Hooksy to deal with Bemis. Crucial's going looking. Might have Hooksy here. Oh, it's a hard shot. Just the tip of the balaclava. Loses the AWP, and now surely the round to slot into place as well. There's pressure everywhere. This AU till currently getting dotted. Smoked off dark, smoked off ivy. You had to miss smoke, surely. Doing everything he can here, Rylan. 27 and still no spotting. They're walking into the stack again. Bemis has had his boots blown off by the orb, and Hunter will finish it off nicely through the smoke. They do need to plant, and they'll have plenty of time to do so. No need. Actually. Again, no need. Yeah. Had a couple of those rounds, haven't they?
Man, I mean, that's twice they've also walked into the gambled site and ended up leaving with the round seven now for G2 and their T side. Okay, well, again, what we expected. Similar storyline as the phase matchup. What we expected, sure. But did we expect Nico and Hunter to be at the top of the scoreboard? Well, that's, that's a, a good, good sign. sign, a very good sign. And again, these are the type of names that those two should be farming. It's from Hooksy's POV. Nice little shot for him. Hunter, precise as well through the smoke. Had no issues dealing with the lowered Bemis. And it's bleak. It's a half investment. Some pistols. Uh, a heavy mid lean. House smoked off. Doors mollied back. The, the pressure applied has forced out a rotation. Round gambling. And so has Bemis. So full rotation called into the breach here, obviously by virtue of their placement back in Paris with the core crucial Thomas and Rallin. Thomas was actually set free for a while there and brought back, I think, to secure exactly this. So for a team like Into the Breach, qualifying for the major means an awful lot. But they've got a tough task ahead of them. There's a stack here again, Alex. Yeah, let's see if it's the same result. The suit up. First victim in flattens the defense. One quick spray of the AK and three heads popped. As easy as that. Yeah, couldn't have come cleaner, could they? We're still in transition. Yeah, was it a flash that kind of led to them all congealing into one? Yeah, Monacy's flash assist in that feed, hoping that they were able to close down the distance, but the util too good from G2 yet again. We'll call it eight. They're running away with this one now. I think the biggest problem, right? Three, three is workable. Nine to three scoreline going into the T half. But if it was equal opponents, that's where the conversation would be. But this is not the case. Into the breach, you're going to need a hope. A bit of a miracle come the second side of play. You've got seven kills on Thomas, six for Crucial, four for Bemis. Yeah, I mean, ITB and miracles, it certainly happened before. But this one and against G2. Doesn't seem like it's uh, within touching distance or in the realms of reality. Yeah, it is uh, also one of those conversations with Group A seeming a li little bit more clear cut oh, in terms of the big names. Horrible way to go. Yeah. Or they were just hoping to get the round done nice and quick, which uh, G2 definitely obliged. Oh, here we go. Final round, first half. Remember, no halftime break, so don't go anywhere. This one might be a quick conclusion. For the rip. Oh, and into Bemis. Monacy will take him down. Can't get the double up at Nexican. Crucial. What have you got for us? And it's a bullet between the eyes. Monacy's all good for it. And it's Masuta actually proactive, pushing forward. Cut down by Nico. Puts it onto Thomas. Nico and Hooksy towards the site. Anytime, any moment, Hooksy can catch him out with a jiggle. There he is. Spots him out. And Nico puts him down nine on the D side. They'll be happy with that. Everyone on G2 grinning ear to ear. Yeah, I think for G2 and G2 fans especially, and probably the management, uh, some of these games you are just like, can we just make them easy, boys? We don't need the stress levels to be through the roof. The blood pressure doesn't need to be boiling. Let's just take these easy wins, put them in our pocket, and march ever forward. When you're on the first level of Mario, you don't want to be giving up any lives. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. And ITB are just the Goombas. Are they the they're not are they the turtle shell ones? Are they the, like the little mushroom men? The little mushroom men. I don't know if they're mushrooms, but you know, kind of triangle faces. Triangle faces. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, they're getting Goomba stomped right now. Yeah, they are. No fun here. Full ITB. Winning two of their three CT rounds in the first three rounds of the game. Well, that's going to be another A execute. Bit of an affinity for that on this very map. And everybody around rugs. They're going to call the sound cue, cut the noise, hit the shift key. Next with a smoke to block, has the support of Nico just behind. Then in float is Monacy, who's just darted back through Temple towards B. Now, slid the gap from Nexa. Oh, this is a nice way to play it. And smoke. Now you've got a choice to make. Do you want to run through? 
They kind of have to. They just committed all of their util, but they've oh, called it they off. Cancel. Util down the, the gurgler, as a wise man would once say. It drew the rotation, but not the aggression. So if they're hoping that maybe, just maybe, they'd be met with a canals push, that's not the case. Mid to be cleared. Hooksy charging forward, understanding they need some info. Monacy, too much to watch. Calling steps. Monacy still not quite buying it. Neither a G2. I say that Hunter has rotated. And it's a Nico and Nexa setup to be tested. Nexa should say tuck now. Oh, not with Nico getting double dinged like that. Does still get one. Nexa and his P2K. He's hit some crazy shots with this so Stay far. Tucked. He's doing an, a, an awful lot of work. Hooks, he's managed to rotate through for a double of his own, and now it's up to Rahlan. An unfavorable one would love to get that bomb scoop it up, sow some seeds of doubt, but Hunter, Hooksy and Monacy from three different elevations. You're not getting through here. Just one bullet, boys. That's all you need. There it is. Straight between the eyes. And you have to really give a lot of credit to Nexa there. A lot of players after the two would have just stepped out and kept on fighting for more. But the fact that he stays alive allows Hooksy to come on in and sweep two under the rug. So when you are playing those anchor type positions, staying alive can be just as important as the kills. So great job for Nexa. You have to give him a big Graham Pitt double thumbs up. Happy with that one. As uh, sailing to victory. The water's pristine, as you mentioned, on the map, so they might want to take out and, you know, well, actually, no, they have another game today. So the waters might get a little bit rockier. They might, the forecast might change, the winds. As two a, games today. Yeah, two best of ones. Okay. So you set yourself up pretty, right? If you're able to win those two, then you go into a best of three, and that's going to be for qualification to the major, elimination or opening stage. Well, that's up for debate. Damn. It's a bit later down the journey. I'm just looking at the uh, the matches, you know, the upcoming matches. And Counter-Strike fans are eating good this next fortnight. I mean, there's just so the much Counter-Strike. next five weeks, yeah. right? So, well, I, I think it's six weeks, actually. I have maybe done the maths a little bit wrong there. But you get you, you get the, the, the top of the crop, you get the European, then you go into the Asian, then you go into the Americas, and then the major is already here. Bang, CS2 on your screens in the Royal Arena, Arena sorry, PGO Copenhagen. Yeah. Coming your way. Tickets available Thursday, Friday? Yeah, skip school. And if you need an excuse, you could say, say that Alex and Chad wrote you a sick note. Yeah. Dear to whom it may concern. That's a good start. Such and such is unable to attend said event because Counter-Strike will be in the Royal Arena in the CS2 iteration and it is for the first the and only first, time. first, and, and you, do, you only get one. One first. One first. No take backsies. Nico does want to get backsies out of middle after firing off those shots. So this is a nice little timing window. Three of them slinking silently. Ooh, Hooksy late to the party. Yeah, could be caught out. Hello. Oh God, he does get a bit of a jump scare. Thomas, good for one. Now it's a bit of an MP9 spray for another. Double out of Thomas Tech 9. And Nexus should have Beamus dead to rights. Makes good use of the FAMAS. Solid lockdown. And I have to actually admire the fact that Hooksy even gets one there. He was definitely caught off guard. Yeah, he was running with a knife in his hand for what felt like way too long. So Hooksy getting away with daylight robbery there. And uh, that would have been the hope of Into the Breach in this map essentially gone now. Mm. They can either force by again or they can take an eco and then try and fight from a 12 to 3 scoreline where nine consecutive rounds would be required just to go to overtime. So it will be the eco, not of the full variety. We can see some limping in of P250s and Tech 9s. But good news for G2. It's what you want to see. A playoff appearance over there in Katowice. It got blown out of the water against FaZe, but so did Maus. And good then... news, everyone. Futurama. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. Thomas has been hard done by that. Fully flashed, want to see. Still gets the frag. I wonder if that's that glaive flash I was seeing people talk about. For that dark peak. From middle? Yeah. From yeah. Yeah, I, I like to use that in my pugs. It's a strong one. Yeah. Set up my P250s to pick on the pistol. I like that little use of the HE there from Hunter. Blows away the left-hand side of the smoke. You can pick it and use the right-hand side of the smoke as cover. Oh, next is going to get to eat good again. 11 kills. How many more can he get? Oh, on the reload already. It's Nico's turn. They might take him in tandem. Nico and Nexa combining to close down the round. 12 secure. G2 looking good. Clean and easy. Just for my own uh, knowledge, uh, that cake angle they're holding, they're holding they're, they hold that because they know they haven't got rifles, right? It's probably not an ideal spot. And it's also a double stack. Yeah, right. right. Two different elevations. Yeah, exactly. Is gonna be, yeah, okay. That makes sense. 12-3. Man, ITB just... Uh, 
dissolving before our very eyes in their opener. It's going to be quite deflating, but at least you've got your rifles out now. You know, you want to kind of start finding your footing, get accustomed to the setup. This is where ITV can start getting that uh, Thomas the Frag engine running. We have uh, Eternal Fire versus NIP coming up next on the mainstream. Ooh. And once this concludes, you can listen to our lovely desk, have a bit of a chit chat, but also you can flick over to the secondary stream with uh, Vincent Jackie bringing the action of Koi versus Navi on Ancient. Love me some Vince Metis Hill. See that by Nico there? I think it's very important if you're a mid defender. When that hut molly, uh, sorry, doors molly comes through, at that point you should probably try and use it on the CT side because you slow their scaling. So, you know, a lot of people oh, oh. use it early. Flash is set up. Beautiful work. They are counter striking. Yeah, again. Doors molly again. They react with a molly of their own. I like it. I like the layering of U2 from G2. And do you think that's instinctual or is that procedural? Is that just It something? should probably be procedural because if you understand what they're aiming for when they go for a doors molly, they're right. then trying to take the space. So then you deny it. So if theirs goes off first, you'll be able to take the door space back while your molly's still burning. Makes sense. Good catch from Hooksy. That was Thomas trying to peek out towards main. This is like a rainy day, just a pitter patter into defeat. Yeah, it is. I'll get him out of here. G2, G2 got their Wellington boots on, wading through the rain. Flashing is crucial, but no one's peeking off of it, so. Come on, boys. Come on in. You got 17 seconds. And they've got just two players left. Here comes Pesuta, giving it a good go. And it looks like G2 have done enough to close this one. 13 to 3 fashion, Masuta just running knife around. Him. He's not going to be knife, but 13 to 3, just 16 rounds required for G2 to start off their campaign for the PGL Copenhagen Major. And starting off with a win. Yeah, Taz will be very happy about that one. A quick game is a good game, as we like to say around here. Taking care of business, smiles on the dials. An easy word because the tougher games are to come once you get yourself into those two two sorry those two zero matchups. Uh, assuming G2 are able to get themselves there, uh, that's where the tougher opponents. But we have tougher opponents ready to break this one down on the desk. Not entirely sure if we are tougher opponents, Chad. But nonetheless, thank you for that wonderful segue. I also love the knife him. Not quite yet. Let's leave that for <laughs> later in the competition. Nonetheless, G2 13 over three of ITB. Great showing by them. But very smooth counter-strike. And Nico answering our questions. He had a fantastic map. Yeah, that was good to see. You uh, You and I uh, called him out a little bit, saying that he's not on par with what he used to be, which is a factual statement. Uh, good to see him come back to life in, in this game. Again, it doesn't really change much. It's the best of one against a lower-tier opponent. But if he can farm some confidence early on into this qualifier, that's a good thing for Nico. For G2, obviously, getting it smooth sailing through, never really a game, never really close. A little bit uninspired by ITB. I, I expected more. I hope they would be able to show us something. And honestly, they weren't. Yeah, listen, this was a, probably a very hard game to play for ITB. Uh, outside from the obvious, which is obviously Nico and Hunter playing exactly how we wanted them to, I just think the calling from G2 was very on point. Like, this is exactly how you're supposed to first stress out the, your little brother, a couple of very quick executes, there's that force by battle at the very beginning, and then once you've already established, once you have traumatized them a couple times with fast plays, you slow down the pace, you let them come to you because that's what stressed teams will do, and then you just basically wait for them, you catch them in the trap, and then you close the rounds with a whole lot of diligence. So this was right on the money for G2, that's exactly how you're supposed to not get surprised by an underdog. Job done, just a day in the office. Are you a sibling maniac? Because you, it sounds like you were speaking from real experience there. You bring, a... you bring up my old traumas with my brother. <laughs> but I have an older brother, but he's 19 <laughs> years older than me, so he never really messed around with me. He I'm taught kidding, me football anyways. and music, though. But I do think that was uh, that's a great way of describing it. It did seem like a big brother performance. G2 just, uh, in all facets, just looking better than ITB. Uh, were there any shining moments for ITB? Any or, or moments where they, they perhaps could have capitalized but didn't? Yeah, the first three rounds. Like, yeah. uh, unironically, I'm not trying to make a joke out of it or meme. I think the first three rounds is where ITB sort of stress G2 a little bit. There's that force by battle. The, the stacks from ITB are relatively correct. But the issue is it's G2 that get ahead. 
it's G2 that finally converts and has that full eco to play against. And once it's established, it's sort of over. So for ITB, you would have needed to really convert and win this financial sort of warfare at the beginning. It was the only chance they had in the beginning of the game. They even had two of them, right? They won the force buy situation twice. They just couldn't convert. They couldn't follow up. And from that point, and once, once we got into the game where all the players from G2 had, you know, uh, and could afford guns, I guess, then as Matthew said, it was very easy for them. It felt like it was autopiloting. I'm, I'm curious to how much Hooksy was calling out away from just doing defaults every round where it's just the fundamentals of G2 so much better than ITB. Then, of course, the individuals as well. Honda, I think, uh, deserves a, a bit of as well, they did fantastically well. 140 AR player that's been struggling in CS2 as well. So yes. everything was just working for G2. Scoreboard up on screen now. We'll take that away because I think you've already seen it. Let's take a look at round number 10. This is sort of showing where some of the weaknesses for ITB were. Masuta starts off the round. Maniac, and then what happens from there? Yeah, it's a, an attempt at aggression from ITB. You can see here Nexa just punishing Masuta, and then the kills are kind of going to come up. Well, I might just meme the round. I mean, I wanted to show you more than one kill. You know, yeah, we'll a, see if we can teaser. get up the full round. That is shortly. a teaser. But it, it, all in essence, it's basically about ITB trying to be aggressive, as Mizuta tried here. And then once the five v four is established for G two, they just wait. They wait calmly. Hooksy is is sort of camping up in the river. Crucial comes in with the AWP. That's another kill. And then you you just let the dominoes fall because G two know they have the advantage. So ITB try to be aggressive, punished. Over. That's exactly why I didn't like the Anubis coming in too for, for ITB. We know the qualities of G2. Uh, they're a fantastic Anubis team. They know exactly what to do. We spoke about it coming into the pre-show as well. CT side, you feel like fish in a barrel. The second you try to go out and make a move, there'll be a G2 player mm. to punish you somewhere on the map. And as you said, it felt like that's what stressed teams do. That's what you're bound to do. That's what you're supposed to do. But if you don't have the fundamentals, if you don't have the individual skill in order to win those duels, you're going to look very, very silly quickly, which is exactly what happened for ITB. Guys, you're both former professional players that played at the heights of of CS for teams like ITB here at the EU RMR that are the big underdogs. Do they need to take more risks? Do they need to really push the pace if they're going up against stalwarts like G2? I think the issue is about the timing of when you aggress, right? Because if you play against G2 and with the experience that's within the roster, Hooksy knows what a team is likely to react on first intention when you give them a beatdown. Like we, we all have a feel for that, like, oh, they're probably going to try to be aggressive, they're struggling for solutions, guys, just be ready for it. When you're ITB, the challenge becomes you have to accurately predict the timing of your opponent. Once you can establish that, you can have mid-round aggression, you can be a little bit finicky, but if you just aggress early round, they will be ready for you. We saw, we had an example here, it's Mizuta dying to Nexa. We saw Hunter being double aggressed on the B main, but he's waiting on the right side. You have to be able to be patient and sort of stomach the early round, which is usually the issue. The map didn't allow it. Anubis doesn't allow it. I, I think, at least for my money right now, it's one of the maps that requires the most synergy, the most team play on the CT side if you want to stand any chance of doing anything against a well-structured T side team. So if you're going into Anubis against T2, you're, you're bound to lose from the get-go. That was the feeling I had when I saw the video, and that's the feeling I'm left with now. Let's bring up our man of the match on Anubis, Nico, the standout player. Yeah, we've got some questions about Nico. It's a funny discussion, right? Because he's one of the greatest players of all time, and he's still been playing good. But can he get back to greatness? This is a decent start, of course, just the best of one against lesser opposition, but a good start nonetheless. It, it's a decent start for Nico, and we're obviously going to follow his story very closely at the RMR and hopefully in Copenhagen as well for the major. I think for Nico, it's about adjusting slightly to what CS2 allows you to do without losing your identity. Nico has always been known as a player that has perfect crosser placement, very methodical, very clean in the movements. Look at how Donk is playing right now. I know that the contrast is very strong. It's about just going for duels, being out there, being aggressive. I would like Nico to sort of introduce that to his playstyle a little bit more, the way he's doing it in some of these clips here, going to the fight. I know he's usually waiting for targets and then finds them. CS2 will need you to be a bit more in movement, and, and this is what I would like to see from you. It's hard to change these habits, though, it's right? It's years and years and years. doing them for so long. It's impossible, almost. You know, it requires a lot of you know, tenacity in order to go in and, and change your play style. However, there's been an update to the game that has, you know, most likely helped him out a little bit. The Pegas advantage is supposed to be a little less now, which is a very good thing for Nico. So maybe this is the start of, uh, of Nico coming back to his best. Less Pegas advantage left out there, you know, Wing and, and a little bit more, you know, play with your brain, play with your cross well, placement, play with your position. I wish that was the case, but he did get a beating against FaZe, and that was on the new update. Yes, so. but he only, <laughs> had, really he only had one day to play on that update. I Give know. it a couple of weeks, get him used to it, and I think we'll see more. I'm on the Nico train. I, I want him to be great. I think Counter-Strike is better when Nico is great. It's going to happen. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your thoughts. Everybody, that was G2 versus ITB. Up next, we've got Eternal Fire versus NIP. We're going to have a short break, about two minutes. And to tide you through that, why don't we have a cheeky G2 listen in. Just go, just go. We just trade here. Yeah. I'm ready. You guys. I'm needing platform, okay? 
Yeah. Follow the smoke. Go, go, go. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I'll just go, just go. I have, I have flash next to pillar. I'm flashing, guys. Two more, two more, flashing, flashing for you. Left side both, left side both. Right, right. Three, three, man. What the fuck? All right. Mid player, mid player, mid player. Yeah, I just planned. Level up your gaming space with metal posters from Displate. Swap them whenever you like. Hang your Displates in seconds. Get official art from your favorite games on a uniquely designed metal canvas and choose from thousands of posters. Join over 3 million collectors now. Your wall upgrade is here. Shop now at Displate.com. Players are changing, countries are changing, the game has changed. Times it to perfection and simple to go! It's Olaf who's been on top of the box though. He's got three and he's looking oh, for a fourth. That is incredible. And Greg, he's not away! The best tournament, the best bookmaker are the same. Into the breach here at the RMR, trying to find the success of Paris once again. And a man who led them there before and is back to the team is Thomas. And in terms of being back there, you've been back a month and a half. You've not been there throughout the rest of the changes that have gone on. But what did you come back into? What did Into the Breach look like when you came to the team again? Um, so the team were coming off like their success with Body. Um, I think they had some hiccups with some players standing in. Yeah. And they wanted to, you know, get the stability back. So they called me up again, <laughs> I guess. Now, you obviously do benefit from the fact you get invited here, right? You don't have to go through the closed qualifiers, open qualifiers, nothing else like that. How important was that in order for you to be ready, to be less stressed and not have any problems? Um, to be honest, you know, it's just a spot that we earned last time. Um, you know, me, Carol and Joey, we're here to fight for it. Um, obviously, it's an advantage and a disadvantage because if we had to play like the open to close, you know, that would be a lot of experience built. True. But, you know, instead we're playing like other online cups to like build that experience. But we also got a lot more opportunity to practice and prepare for this event. Um, but it's nice. <laughs> I'd like to do it again. <laughs> of course you would. <laughs> and for you, right, that last major was so, so important for you, right? It's obviously the stickers in the game, going to the playoff stage. For someone who's been playing Counter-Strike for as long as you, you have, mainly in UK teams, trying to break out. How important is it to do it again this time? Is this something you've set yourself as like a personal goal to be able to say, okay, I'm going there again. It wasn't a fluke. It, it wasn't where people can just say, I did it once and I'm just a, a lucky child. Um. I think out of everyone's roots in the last major, like with the tier two teams, I think our route was like one of the only routes which no one could say like was a fluke. We played all the top teams, like pretty much all the way throughout and we managed to go through. I think personally, I want to, you know, achieve maybe like making the stage again, but obviously it's extremely hard uh, from our situation. But making the major will just prove to everyone that it wasn't a fluke. And like, I believe we can do it. I know. You feel like you're ready to go up against these top tier teams? You feel like that? Are you you're in a good enough spot to be able to fight like you did before? I don't believe there's much like 
difference from the tier two teams to the tier one teams at the moment. Okay. The game's new, a lot of momentum based CS is being played, and that's what we brought to Paris. Yeah. Momentum based, you know, throwing right hooks straight into people's faces when, you know, they're trying to breathe. Yeah. Um, I, I believe that most tier two teams, they're going to catch some tier one teams off guard, I think. But it happened last time. Yeah. The game's coming so much closer with the tier one scene and the tier two scene. I think anything can happen. Well, good luck for your opening games and hopefully we'll see you on the next stage, mate. Cheers. Great to hear from Thomas there. With a bit of cheeky fighting talk, unfortunately for him, the ITB, they just fell to G2 13 to 3. And before that, we saw FaZe take out Nine Pants 13 to 6. So, so far, two favorites taking out underdogs. Up next, our third best of one. I do think it could be our most competitive matchup next. Yet, it's a tunnel fire versus NIP. Before we start breaking it down, let's welcome Big Blair to the desk. Pimp is taking a rest. How are you doing, brother? Great to have you here. I'm doing great. Uh, you know, it's a day of love, as some people like to say. Oh, yeah, of and course. Usually, usually I'm not a believer in that. I'm usually alone, all by my lonesome. But today, I have Counter-Strike. I have the Yaramaras. I'm feeling the love, man. I thought he was going to say today he's surrounded by his friends, but no, we're no mention of uh, us. No, no one gave me that just, memo. Nope. No, just Counter-Strike, right? Just Counter-Strike. Whatever, bro. Yeah, no, but at the end of the day, we are all here for the counter strike. Uh, big shout out to, to Valentine's Day. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> shout out to intro. Valentine's Day. Is that a thing? Is shout that out a person? Valentine's Day, right? Shout out to the love and the, and the Valentine's. Yeah, but it's, we need to jump on that one. Yeah, it's great. Love is great. Yeah, yeah. love is great. Love each other. I didn't other. know we were going to do like philosophical segments and all, like <laughs> rethinking uh, monogamy and all. Let's do it, you know? Cause, Shout cause, out yo, to Valentine's Because we need to talk about love, because we're going to be talking about NIP in a bit, and that's the complete opposite for me personally. Yeah. Let me actually follow my own advice. Let's stick to the counter strike, right? what we are all here for. Yeah, everybody, it's time for our third best of one, Eternal Fire versus NIP. Guys, do you agree? Is this going to be our most competitive matchup so far? These are two teams you know, that are, that are decent, but yeah. they've not really reached the levels that they potentially could. Are we going to see these two clash and it's going to be tight? I don't think it's going to be tight. I think Eternal Fire is just going to run away with this. Ooh, okay. okay. I'm going okay. to throw a counter right there. On paper, I agree with you, right? Eternal Fire, the kind of tier two team, NIP, look at that name. But let's look at the results. Eternal Fire, they were playing, I, I think, phenomenally punching even above their own weight in, in Katowice, even for the RMR qualifier. And for NIP, if I had to, like, you know, just, just kind of like, uh, describe the word lack of expectations into an object, <laughs> it would be this particular lineup. I mean, listen, for Valentine's uh, topic, the passion is long lost for NIP, <laughs> whereas Eternal Fire is that, that new neighbor that just comes in, you it's know, and you go and you find an, excuse, find an excuse to knock on the door, you just need some salt, <laughs> some sugar, you know, just have a conversation. That Eternal Fire is it, to be discovered, to be uh, sort of courted a little bit, you know, that's that brand new excitement that we have within Wicadi as well. This is all on theme, Paula. We're all looking in the same direction. They're exciting. They're exotic. NIP, they're just... We've got all the Valentines <laughs> going on right now. All, all, all the Valentines references. We've got NIP on screen, starting with their coach. Uh, Maniac, you want to To be that? fair, I mean, Blaze, right on the money, right? EF have given us many reasons to be excited about yeah. We hadn't really seen them too, too much prior to Karavice, but holy hell, like, the way they start the event, immediate, you know, backhand to beat Bad Boom 13 to 1. Yes. They start good, the best of threes. It was just a matter of stamina where they were lacking a little bit, mm -hmm. but good for them, we were in best of one. There's no stamina element, not uh, here uh, at least. And even the teams that lost to at the very end there, like teams like Na'Vi, who are, you know, actually playing a pretty solid level overall, and then, of course, they lost to FaZe as well. So it's not like they're faltering to lesser teams, so to speak. So it depends punching well above their weight and for me i'm starting to believe in the turks i'm personally always excited to watch eternal fire i mean there's many reasons to be excited about this team but the standout reason for me is their standout player you know xanterez has been a fantastic player for so long and he's ended up on you know this all turkish line that's sort of built around him i'm always excited to see these guys play because it means we might see a star Xanterez performance. Does he need to come out swinging I, I, I today? Feel, I feel the reason we're seeing this team really seem to look good right now, we're going to kind of coalesce together, is that that eternally rotating, revolving door of players coming in, walks it coming in, walks it going on, major <laughs> IGLing, may just, you know, getting kicked, etc., etc. It's been stopped. I think ever since it was May last year, if I'm not mistaken, this team came together and it just stabilized. And that is a result of what we see here. We're not necessarily needing Xanterez to drop a 1.3 rating 
every game for them to get a win. I mean, listen, why don't we talk about Wikania? Like, yeah, he's yeah. diamond in the rough. Holy hell, that, holy hell, that find. He Where the hell something. did they find him out there in the long lost territories of FPL, just wrecking <laughs> everybody's faces, like at the very top of the ranking right now, who used to be before Katowice. Holy hell, what a find. And a player that we witnessed, we discovered during Pro League, yes. wondering, okay, this guy seems good. Can he actually do it on LAN? How about the jitters? How about the nerves? And he was always just playing his own Counter-Strike, being super aggressive. I get excited watching Wikidia play. I really do. And then when Zentaris doesn't become a one-trick pony anymore, they have much more to play off of, and this is what I really like about it. And one more, and one more piece, which is slotted in so well for this team, is a Woxic. He's not as inconsistent as variable as he was earlier. He seems to have found a level of consistency, despite the fact that he's the primary opera, and we know how the operas are struggling a little bit right now in CS2. But this core, like you pointed out there, Matthew, the youngster Wikadia, Zantaris, mm. not much we, we can really add on about this guy at Woxic. The core is really strong, but the way they're playing together as a team, as a unit, it's exciting, Paula. If we're talking about cores, why don't we turn our attention to NIP? I guess at this point the, the core is is res. What is, what is the core? That's what a is good question. But, but, but this is this is what this is what I was trying to establish with you guys, right? Of course it's res, right? That's the center centerpiece. And then after that it would have been S attack and, and config. So I would say those three See, are the but sort the problem, of you're core? not wrong. You're not wrong at all. The problem is you haven't even mentioned the new leader, right? You bring in Alex from Movistar Riders, and the issue is we don't really know whether he is going to be given the chance to actually build something together with this roster. The, the feeling that we have is just, uh, it's a question of time until this project just blows wide open and they yep. try and rebuild. That's, that's the feeling I'm I getting, the vibe I'm getting. I would prefer that over this, you know, just band-aids being slapped. No, I know. At this point, it's the, or the, the entire team feels like, some, like a mummy. You just like you slap with bandages and band-aids to try and make it somehow work through yet another event. I know, <laughs> and listen, you're not wrong. It's just, I'm, I'm a little bit miffed for, for Alex, right? I feel like he's never gonna be really in a chance. Yes. What he was doing with Movistar at the back time, the I thought was pretty decent. Two years ago, uh, roughly two years ago, Alex, when he was like, it, it, with Movistar Rise in, in their prime, he, he was smashing the it. Cologne was a great result for them. Yes. At the time, St. Pius as well, they defy all the odds. So I was thinking, um, I hope this guy's going to get some time. But the problem is, it's dysfunctional at its very core. So also, now we're just, we, we, we're repeatedly having segments where we say, well, be careful, config can have a good day. It's like, come on. I, yes, that's true. But at some point, the reason we're running out of arguments is because no other arguments has been presented. So it's not that I don't want to tell you anything else. It just always so rolls to the same topic. I'm curious as well, just culturally, how Alex could fit in. Is everyone going to be respecting his leadership? Is everyone going to be able to follow suit? They better be. They have to, right? Like I, I think I feel like Alex has achieved more in the past couple of years, even when he was in the moment we lineup. Even though, yeah, sure, you know, a couple of big event uh, playoff runs apart from that, but still more than what some of the players on his NIP lineup have done in the past three or four years, unfortunately. Yeah, and, and the issue as well is that when you're an NIP player, I'm not gonna try and take away responsibility from them. I'm not. But there is a realistic element of maybe they're just out of energy. Like this whole, whatever lineup are we playing with? Oh, we got to start all over again. All oh, these guys being brought in. Wait, are you the sniper? No, I'm the sniper. <laughs> well, you're the leader. No, I'm the leader. It's like, you're come right on, man. Now. I would lose my shit if I was playing there. It would be really complicated to maintain, you know, high work ethics. Because you just feel like you're depleted of energy time after time after time. And so if we struggle to believe in what they're doing, what do we think is their inner belief of where they're going? I don't yeah. really know where it's at. I heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen, everybody at home. Titan Maniac, LDLC Maniac coming through. <laughs> I, should, I, should I go back to NIP? Is that what you're saying? Or, no, I'm, we, I'm we, cool we here. Like, I'm cool. We could go back on to NIP. Join this. I'm enjoying this conversation. Did you have a stint on NIP? No, I never played oh, okay. NIP. No, no, no. no, no. It was a joke. Okay. <laughs> I was like, how do I not remember that? Um, Sorry, Blair, please jump no, in. No, nothing. Just, uh, just want to highlight as well. I, I, we're not trying to criticize the players in particular. Like, Stack, for example, I think he's been doing you know, whatever he can in his lineup. Baby. Great it's, wording. I didn't know where you are going to go with that. Great yeah. wording. He's been trying to do his best, his very best, with very shit roles. He's got a good personality. He's got a great personality. As well, he could probably do much better than some other team. Alex, like you said, look, if you're Alex, you get a call up to join NIP, of course you're going to say yes. Of course you're going to be like, oh, they're going to build a great project around me and he's proven himself and I feel like he's been set up to fail. But that being said, that being said, it is a best of one. It is Overpass. It's a map which I'm a, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised it didn't fire out Yeah, guys, that quick, quick thoughts on it ending up on Overpass. Anything specific standing out to you? Does it favor either the team? Nip should, I think both teams are pretty comfortable on this, but I'm just going to stick with what I said earlier. I think Eternal Fire should still have this one in the back pretty comfy. It's one of the few maps where I, I, have, I don't really have a mental image of Eternal Fire right there, so I'm struggling just a little bit to know why they allowed it in the best of one. I think there were probably some other maps that they would have felt a bit more comfortable you on, but, but they, yeah, exactly. But I was removed from them, right? That was yeah. their uh, choice to remove Nuke out there. So I'm hoping uh, Maja, who we have on, on camera right now, knows what he's doing. Uh, Pala, you might hold that information. I don't have it. Uh, knife round or side, I'm not exactly sure. At but the I, moment, we, we have like um, 
estimated couple more minutes of time before we get this. We have a little bit of time, but yes. it's about, you know, the T side of overpass when you start and you might arguably be a little bit cold is one of the most constrictive and restrictive in terms of space. The CT side. I, saw, I saw a little uh, bit on Well, you, I mean, I have contact lenses, so maybe your eyesight is much maybe better I, than I, mine. Maybe I just screwed up. I don't you, know. You're just lying to the people out there. Maybe I, I, yeah. I do believe where you start makes a whole lot of impact. And I know on CS2 is a bit more open, but I still think Overpass is one of the most city side map we have actually in the pool, from, from the eye test, definitely. Calyx getting hydrated, hydrated, what's Hydro it homies. Hydro homies. But both, both, both players, both teams, yeah, looking locked in. Now we're just waiting to get this one kicked off. Head trick there, NIP. Look, if, if we're gonna stay on Overpass uh, metric for a little bit, this was one of the map where the structural issues of NIP were the most apparent. When they had Roland in the team, of course, you could see how they were changing from event to event, who is playing where. Okay, who's our B anchor now? Who's our aggressive A rifle? Oh, we're gonna try with this constellation? Wait a minute, next event, trying something different. This guy here, not comfortable. This sort of, it was the epitome of the issue that they had. And I'm not exactly sure whether it's been completely fixed right now. A player like Esetag, of course, offers more structural solutions because he's willing to play whatever it is, but then you also need to frack people. That's kind of incidental in Counter-Strike. It will have an impact. It's been a bit complicated for him. So like, it was complicated for quite a while on Overpass. The, the, the wording right there, look, it can, you can even dumb it down further, right? Like the fragging. Fragging. I think that's what I said. Yep, fragging when it comes to NIP, it's always like, are they going to get this win? Is it going to be close? Well, it depends if these three guys have a good day. It's not one guy, it's not two guys. There's no consistent fragging output coming out from any one of the players. Config, Res, Hetrick, right? We, we don't see them delivering the numbers, at least some a, a basic baseline of consistency at all in the very short stint that Alex has had with his team. So I, I still don't know where I'm going to go with this team. I, I have an, uh, a question for, for both of you. There's an expression in fighting, right, that styles make fights. Do we need, and in that sense, that stylistically opponents match up differently and having a strong style is a positive suit? Mm. In that sense, if we apply that to NIP, do these guys need to work on making a distinct style and a, a, a very strong sort of way that they play together as a team? Would that be a huge benefit to them? Yeah, it absolutely would be because I don't feel aptly equipped to tell you what their style is. If you told me, hey, Maniac, what's an IP style? I'd be like, uh, well, actually, you know, they do this thing and then Comfy, he tries to. That's a fact because they've been, it's been so long for them ever since they had time to truly work on an identity. Mm -hmm. Again, revolving door of roster change and then having a new leader and then having different players, different roles. It's really real complicated, which unfortunately limits how deep they can go in whatever they try and put together. You want to try to play the slow style? Cool, that's a good idea. But the thing is, you need to have airtight protocols to finish rounds. When you play with 20, 25 seconds left, you can't allow to just be like, okay, I guess we're going to throw three flashes. No, it needs to be absolutely clean how you close round. How do you get to that? Through training, through practice, through these repetitions, which they seemingly haven't had time to have because of all the changes. So I agree with you. I would like them to have a style, but it also means that there is a long-term perspective, a long-term future for what it is, and it feels like it's not the case. So what do you do? You basically an IKEA, a do-it-yourself play style. You try and put the things together. It's it almost like a fit, screw that's take left. Ball off Everything is finished, different. and then there's like three screws on the ground. You're just like, well, I guess I guess <laughs> this thing is gonna stay together. But here's a the problem. They, they're getting Alex as a cook, right? All right, cook something, right? But they haven't really allowed. I don't know if they've allowed him the opportunity to really cook. Have they allowed him to, you know, put the ingredients he wants to, you know? Simmer things the way he wants to simmer, whatnot. I don't think we've seen so much so far, at least in Blast, to kind of understand if that's happened. But Alex coming in was me thinking, is this a, it's a surprising move coming in altogether. Maybe this might redefine their identity, so to speak, but haven't seen anything yet. Just to keep you all updated at home, we're just waiting on the server to be ready whilst we continue to wait for that. Why don't we take a look at both teams' map performances? You can see all the maps, maybe you want to focus in on overpass. Yeah, I mean, this is interesting, right? Because we, we were talking about this when we were doing rehearsals y yesterday. Um, I would take the three wins and one loss of NIP over the one win, zero losses of Eternal Fire on Makes Overpass. Sense. Um, but technically, in terms of percentages, EF are the more winning team. Which is a surprise. I can see Nuke, uh, the Nuke stats for Eternal Fire over there, right? Five wins and one loss. And that's a map that they themselves banned right. out in this, in this thing, which is very puzzling. Now, it could be. Maybe they know something about what Nip's been up to in scrims and whatnot, which they we're know not. They know what Alex's been cooking. Privy to what? I was going with your the cook what? thing. What? Cook cook. He was building on your know comparison. What Alex been cooking. Cooking. Oh yeah. He was he, building on your metaphor. I was building maybe. on your metaphor. Sorry, Blair. Paul. I couldn't understand what you're trying to say there, buddy. I apologize. <laughs> but no. But maybe that. But, but if it's fire, 
I don't know. Just, All right, just get me out here. Back. All right, but here's the thing, right? I would rather you stick with something which is a known quantity, which is your nuke, rather than being like, guys, I don't want to. I don't feel very comfortable going up against NIP's unknown nuke. And why don't you just go to overpass with NIP? Have definitely been more comfortable on. So that's a big question mark here from uh, the side of Eternal Fire. Absolutely. Yep, we still will continue to wait. I'll give you an estimate on server line very See, soon. Once you, uh, Matthew, you, once you in get that, that information from the uh, overall authority, of course, as people know, we decide when the game starts. Yes, That's very I, well known. Actually, it's myself. I have a button oh, you have a button under, under my desk. desk. And sometimes I just prefer to leave people ah, writhing in agony if Matt doesn't bit. start. Should like Zantaris is chilling right now. No, one of the topics good. that I wanted to put under the microscope as well is how Eternal Fire, sure, have a couple of players that are experienced, but still making it to the major remains a life-changing occurrence for them. And I think in Karavica, in some of these key moments, we saw a little bit of frustration coming out at the times, which it shouldn't really. And kind of being down, a little bit passive. A major had very strong words after the exit interview where he said, listen, I'm not happy about what my team did today. I'm not happy about how we played today. This wasn't the team that I wanted to put forth. I know we can do much better than that. So if this is any indication that in that moment, as an exit interview, he tells us that, then I'm thinking, aren't we in like the highest, most pressurized environment in Counter-Strike, yeah. RMR, on the way to the Major? This is this is where we have to see if this is a recurring theme for Eternal Fire, where pressure gets to them, or if they just had a bad day, they were tired, they were playing late. It's pretty early right now. I think it's about 3 p.m. Uh, in S-E-E-T -E -E we are, or something like that. Pretty early for me. Not C-E-T anyway. It's a bit later than that. E-E-T. E-E-T, that's e what we are. We're not talking about the movie, E-T. We're talking about the time zone, E-E-T. I, I, yeah, I I'm, not, I'm not just stuffing. I wish I could be mad at you, but I thought about it too, so I'm going to allow it, I guess. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing with Total Fire, right? Most of these events have attended in the past few months. They've come in. It's kind of like the big underdogs, right? They've had these deep runs, Fair. and then finally they fell at the final hurdle. Here's the thing with confidence. Here's the thing with confidence. Right now, they are confident. They're like, listen, we can take out some of the big names out there. And now, coming into this particular group, we should kind of be favorites to make it out because they have taken those scalps. I wonder, would that come and bite them in the butt? It get, they just, the pressure is on them, it's all from themselves. Well, you, you say they have the confidence. I, I think they might just be on sort of a tipping scale, right? They're at the edge. They're looking down, they're looking down whatever the canyon that's below them. They have to cross the Rubicon because they were on the brink of doing something exceptional in Katowice and they tested many teams. Look, they were looking down the barrel of 2-0 against FaZe. That's an actual fact but it didn't matter. And in Counter-Strike, the what if and what could have happened doesn't really bring you anywhere. No one so, do they actually think that they can do it? Or are they still in state where when push comes to shove, they're going to get a little frustrated? That's that's what we're here to find out about Eternal Fire, about their journey to this confidence that you're talking about. I, I will say this, though. I'm going to be very disappointed if that flame just starts puttering at this very opening game against a team where we've been discussing at length, who seem to have no identity, who we don't know to what to expect from them, and who have basically just been just barely alive, you know, almost like comatose at that bed, and we're like, do we just put it out of its misery at this point? Oh, it's a bit rough. I, w I wouldn't do that. I think they should I keep on playing counter so. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What's going on with this? Yeah, it's course, Valentine's we're not, Day, bro. We're not taking that mess for literally. Uh, I wanted to go back to uh, a, a point just quickly that you mentioned about Eternal Fire, referencing experience, because, I mean, four of their players are, are very heavily experienced. It's kind of only Wakadia that's the, the less experienced one. If you're looking at Woxic Major, Xanthros Cats, these are players that have been playing for years and some at the, the, the very top. I know, I agree with you, but I do think for most of these players, if you'd ask them, they would probably tell you, I haven't achieved as much as I wanted to. Mm, as exactly. much as I would have liked to, or as much as I think I could. A man like Zentaris as well. Think about the online era when he wasn't big and he was literally shitting on anybody. We, we were still left wanting a little bit when we went back to land. Same for Major. He's been working through some of the, the shadowy realms of French Counter-Strike for a long time. And then finally he goes back to Turkey and then that's where he plays Counter-Strike too. So I, I don't think that they themselves would be too satisfied with where they're at. And there is still a very long road ahead of what they can achieve. And when this new diamond in the rough with Kadia coming in, they almost feel like, oh my god, like the this might be piece, it. Like the this, final piece. Maybe this is the guy we've been waiting for. This project all makes sense together. They've all learned a little bit as well. Maybe Woxic a little bit more mature, <clears throat> more mature rather. Oh, that was a French frog in my throat. It's back now. A maybe Swiss that's the moment. Pat, huh? A Swiss frog. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, Swiss frog. But it's, yeah, I don't know how we would say. We'd Guys, say I've got some good rule. news, by the way. Let me jump in there. We've got about a minute and a half until this match is ready. Confirmed. Source, trust me, bro. Blair, <laughs> any final thoughts? Uh, no, like, I just want to add on to what, uh, what Matthew mentioned there for Zantaris. Like, for how long have we been talking about this guy, right? Like, yeah. the, just the sheer prowess he possesses in the server, how he can change a game completely by his lonesome. And yet, he's not really left any big trophies. He's not made those runs, so to speak. So, I feel like... If you're ever to see him pull this off in his career, still obviously got a few more years remaining, obviously, but I feel like this is 
that lineup because they've been together for a while. They've been showing a lot of promise as well. And I like the fact that they've actually stuck to this lineup. It's been seven, eight months. And, and you can see the results right there. Consistency in your, in your lineup, consistency in your practice and just working together. That is the key to success. And that's where they're finding it, Paolo. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your thoughts. As always, this one is ready to go. It's going to play out on Opass. We've got a tunnel fire versus NIP. Chaddy B and Machini TV over to the Poetry from Parla G. Thank you very much, man. We're getting ourselves into it then, shall we? Overpass. That's the one. God B's least favorite. Yeah, once upon a time. Household names. Not the favorite this time round. Eternal Fire. Seeing if they can pick up where they left off in Katowice. Over towards B, they head and past the pipe as the spot from. Calyx will not collect them any information. It's going to be Madra from the Heavens to take some type of contact, and in they come. Heaven smoked off. Yeah, very deep Heaven smoke as well. You're not pushing the limits of that one. Wicardia. Oh. oh, the desk has discussed this kid. He's very exciting. Rez has actually taken him down with a very nice wall bang of his own. Despite all that damage, there are still five alive. Keep your eyes on Madge's flash. That's their way back into this site. Difficult retake ahead of them. Yeah, Kalex first man in. Smoke now fading. That flash from Madge. He holds on to it. And oh, Hedrick just looks away, averts his gaze. And now a chance for Kalex to find the frag. Eternal fire set up now for success. S attack noted. Hitting a good shot puts it all onto Config. They do need to get on that defuse now. As Antares the one giving it a go. Has Forced off, it. he has to sit it, and covered by Woxic, Eternal Fire, take the pistol. Yeah, that's that kill over towards Monster that comes in that makes it doable, right? That obviously damage done by Wakadia short with the Julies was pretty damn good. And as you can see there with the reaction, it was down to the wire with the Diffuse. So the round that should have probably been NIPs, especially with the forward position of Configs there, has fallen apart at the final hurdle. So that one is going to sting. There was a whole conversation about the desk, the identity of this team, the players on the roster. None of that matters right here, right now at the RMRs. The only thing that does is qualifying. And it was that shot right there that opened the door. It was Woxic at range, the P2K, ripping heads and shredding NIP on the way back in. So great stuff from the Turkish oh. sniper. And we know there'll be a big Turkish contingent standing by watching this. Aggressive smoke and molly combo over towards the party position as we do see the buy back from the Ninyas. They've got themselves out a bunch of Galils, a couple of Mac 10s with Util. So we will just really be focusing not on the shortcomings, but on what NIP can bring to the table here today. Flash forward that'll facilitate space to be taken. Alex, the in game leader, looking to make some room and some moves. As Zantares, he's going to be a menace in the bathroom. Steps out, damage done, res spotted. Smoke and exchange. I think Rez a bit disappointed there. We'll have to give up his Galil. Alex will profit as back over towards B they head. Kalex and Wakadi are the two to break. Let's see how they fare. Major is starting to call the playground quiet. Zantaras will be able to rotate over in time for sure. He needs to be on his merry way. There he goes. Now they walk upon the fade. As attack short side. Alex trying to be the spearhead of this assault. Kalex playing graffiti. Util looking for Wakadia, just with that MP9, can't tame the spray. Alex with a good opening, it's double actually out of Alex. Kalex responds in kind, they are into the site. Quick flank of Madja. Could be something to say about this one. The leader of Eternal Fire looking to convert this. After winning the pistol, these Galils can be difficult to put away. Low HP of res to be converted upon. Oh, I won't expect this, Alex. Yeah, not now. He's already given it a look. Kalex onto config, res down to Madja, and it's head trick in a one versus three. Only the first, it's Woxic that secures it for Eternal Fire's conversion. Another tight round there. The fact that you get Wakadia and Centara as the heaviest hitters of Eternal Fire getting bowled over immediately as that site is to waltz on Instu. That is a bit of a problem. Do we see another four spike? Right? You could go Galils again. Alex could get an AK, the same for Hedrick. So there's a real conversation about that. And NIP got a lot done with less in the previous, knowing that they've limited the CTs. They will have to drop M4s. Might even be a scout or... Well, no, actually, they won't be because he's rocking that org. Woxic will be able to retain that. And they can make it work with silenced M4s. And it will be a force buy again. So knowing that this one is on like Donkey Kong in the early stages, NIP want to stay threatening. Got to respect it. A couple of close rounds could have gone either way thus far. 
Yeah, and you heard Mani Maniac talking about it on the desk as well, about T-side overpass can be, especially when you're coming in cold, new setup, it can be one of those ones where you do just get kind of uh, suffocated. But in IP, they're trying to keep the pressure onto the CTs, as you've highlighted. Yeah, and absolutely no expectation of this team. I would say that the expectation is on Eternal Fire to be able to pick this one up as the favorites. have said they're not the household name. They're yeah. not. NIP still are. But uh, the desk discussed it in length about the woes of this unit. So we just need to focus on the counter strike that they can bring in the server today. Flash over and just a warning sign. That is good information that somebody resides up close and personal. And keeping the jigsaw puzzle moving, our Eternal Fire immediately... After giving up the info off the spam, they changed the setup. You'd like to see it. Yeah, it's all, it's all moving pieces right now. Man, just still in heaven. Getting some Wakanda at the back of the site. Contacting out this time. Maja. Hard by track. Still nails the headshot onto Config. That's a beautiful contribution. S attack has taken down Wakanda. You having a st slow start. Kalix is not. Finds his fifth frag. He's doing well, Calix. Yeah, just in defense of this B bomb site. Very nice. However, a trick onto Zantares. Overzealous. Ouch. And Madger loses his head to a one tap out of Alex. That org of Woxic has done a lot there. 6 and 0 is Woxic. Yeah, you bop one, another one appears. Damn, dude. He's, I mean, that's t the pistol as well. He just shows up from heaven late and. Solves all of their woes. Well, really, it is these two. Wakadia and Zantaris yet to frag, as Rez now noted. This is a difficult fight. Can't get it done. Kalix stands, delivers yet again. It is Kalix and Woxic show right now. Beautiful work from the two of them. Con co sorry, conversions fell in three rounds, and that has been probably, I don't want to say the, the easiest, but the best because the bomb didn't go down. That is actually going to get them out of a bit of hot water. NIP with a tactical timeout. DJ to get on the mic. It will just be likely a partial upgrade. And uh, I think Wakadia and Zantara's, they're thinking, hey, what do we have to do to get some kills? Well, maybe stop peeking, boys, because uh, the other two are mopping up the mess right now. Yeah, it's working out wonderfully. I mean, yeah, Eternal Fire coming into this one. That's most definitely hot favorites, and it's a hot start, considering how threatening NIP may have been in these rounds, just every single time towards this piece site successful. This one should, and I say should because anything's possible, be mm. the closest affair we've had on the mainstream so far. FaZe, a blowout against Nine Pandas. The first half was somewhat competitive, but the second was a walk in the park. And then G2 on Anubis. If you miss that, they made light work into the bridge, who probably wish they had stayed at the hotel today for their opening game. But there's more best of ones coming up. Everybody will play two best of ones as they're establishing matches to determine will they be in the 1-1 one, one pool, will they be in the 0-2, or the 2-0. Win three and you're through to the major. Still somewhat threatening with some pocket rockets and pistols. Tech nines are plenty, Alex. Yeah, and Rez again. Faked out the extinguished playground implies Moxic and Zantaras need to be ready, but it is five of them all about to commit into Wicardia and Calix again. Oh, ow! That will leave a mark onto Hedrick. You'd love to get the young Orpa his favorite weapon, wouldn't, wouldn't you? Ya? Yeah. So maybe into the next round, as we can see, just operating with a Glock and Util. And playing statues right now are NIP, waiting for the music to start, and that'll be the sweet, sweet tones of Alex with the go signal. Big rotation back from A, so they've now playing site centric. They were heavy towards long now. They're still worried about that fight, but they're at a quicker rotation point, and that fight has to be coming soon. 50 seconds, here it goes. Naja. Set up for success, however, S attack getting with Cardia is a good start. Bomb will go down. That's a dream. That's a big one from Hedrick. This would be a really nasty round to lose for Eternal Fire. And with Kalex low as well, it really comes down to Woxic and Zantares. What have you got for us? Zantares onto the first. Quickly cut down by Rez. It seems NIP have finally found the gap they needed. Rez runs down Kalex, and it seems they've done enough. What have you got, Woxic? Time. Yeah, not enough. And NIP will find... Just through sheer will, determination, and a bit of stubbornness getting into this B-bomb site. And this is the round where they were the least equipped. They might take everything away as Woxic because he noisily tries to scamper over towards Long. That sound cue will be heard. So Hedrick aware of where he's gotten off to and might even be able to hunt him down because Rez has cut him off at the pass. Hedrick, there he is on your screen. Can't connect the dots. And Woxic will get to retain the org, which is very important because the damage that was done round after round by... NIP led by Alex, the Spaniard in the middle of your screen right here, has been able to break through and in important fashion. And just when we were talking about this being what should be the most competitive matchup, 
a very competitive round, and it is that opener with Cardia. Going to feel hard done by. He's meant to have two bodyguards standing over towards Graffiti and CT to cover him off. Rez, I like this as well. Aware of Kallax's position, doesn't want to let him play and pushes forward for that frag. It will force Eternal Fire into a purchase of their own. Woxic with the only gun to give any excitement. And not using it actively, just overseeing Madge's slight aggression. NIP, you must convert this one. Really hope you get your footing in this first half of play. Miss a tag. Trying to just keep hold of this short side show. His presence and he welcomes the engagement. Doesn't want to look like he's too passive, like he's alone. Well, they've slipped past Centaurus yeah. in the upper bathroom, so there is a huge gap right now in towards the A site. Config's going to get contact long. Is there not going to be a potential kind of internal timer? Well, they have to worry about that. Now, here's what six patients rewarded. Finds it and actually here's two guns. the jump on them. So, yeah, this is... That's an insane, insane amount of space. The orb should have been her too. Head trick. Oh, nails the quick scope. Had to hit that one. So Zintaras has been cut down. They've already got that bomb in. Oh, look at the space from Rez. Oh, they planted like this. Yeah, this is great. Planted bank side. Should be there around every day of the week. You'd think so. This attack should have Woxic here. As he turns around, you see how quick he is. Woxic. Does get his cross set to S to die, Alex. And they have a smoke and a kit for this. Yeah, nine and zero is Woxic with these. Save rifle. They can I pull this off? They are on the way in with the loss of head trick. It gets uncomfortable, but time, time is of the essence. Need another, and it's a multi kill spray down. Woxic to fall his first death. NIP string together two. I think just having all of that room. Rez pushing forward again. So two rounds in a row with Rez taking some heads up space. Massive work from him, as they will be able to force Eternal Fire now down to an eco. So NIP have broken through. And regardless of those woes that was discussed at length by the desk, it doesn't matter. You know, you're going to get the victory right here, right now. You could have a good run of the RMRs. You could lock yourself in for the major. All of that is just noise as far as this roster is concerned. Finding rounds without a config contribution as well. Good signs. All the roster has a tag. Res discussed by the desk. Yeah, and even with that lurk of S-Attack not paying off, that's kind of crazy they could still stick the landing on that one. Heavy forces in towards Connect, the other two towards Long, so we're going to get contact. That's be a good flash. Doesn't matter, Rez is quick to the draw. I think he spots out in Centaurus' position. A messy spray there from Config. He'll feel a bit hard done by there because the rifle's now fallen into enemy hands. Centaurus is being stubborn, finally plucked out of the rock position. It felt like he saw his head there on that first swing, didn't it, Alex? But I suppose not. X-ray can be misleading. Harassment from Madger. Two players quite low as Kallax is already on the chase. Oh, oh, oh Kallax. He still has the timing. Remember, yeah, Alex is low. This could go wrong. If he chooses his target wisely, they now are aware, but it's enough of a distraction. Magic combines, oh. and ooh, Rez has got Wicardia. three HP. Somehow he's still alive, and look at Wicardia, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. If they overlook this position, Rez is low HP. Rez is open to him. Truck, however, could peek him out. Oh, Rez has got two with three HP. The fact that he's still alive is a bit of a mind boggler. He's put a, puts a smile on his face. Yeah, understandably. Quad kill. That one got close, didn't it? There's... Moments of opportunity, moments before disaster, and the fact that, again, they take the side control and plant safe side on dice. Gives them another as we will be turning into a gun round and a very important one for Eternal Fire. No tactical timeout taken to discuss their options. The only player with head armor moving into this round is going to be that of Wakadia, who... Alex is yet to frag. Zantaras with only one kill as well. It's really been the Woxic show and Kalex, the two of them finding impact as head trick. Searching swiftly for a fight with the AWP. Yeah, admirable attempt, but Molotov back. I should say incendiary for the pedants. As, hang on, Ricardia is trying some aggression of his own. Pushing through the smoke as attack caught off. Still adjust. Trying quite hard to get into the game, Alex, but zero and seven. This young gun, a name that we've been talking a lot of, needs to get the engine whirring. He's a big factor for Madja and Co. to be able to convert those matches over there in Katowice. He cannot be starting. Zero kills, 288 damage. I yeah. mean, just, yeah. One of those games. Yeah, we all have him. as a boost to be erected right now. Tantara is getting the top spot. 
Jumps up, sector clear, and the deep dive as it forces out a rotation. But Smoke and Mirrors is, guess what? They're not heading A. They are coming back towards this B bomb site where that opening incision was gifted over. Oh, Akadia's aggression. Kalix floating with the idea of a smoke block, but if they just contact in, this site's theirs. Throws out the channel smoke, and a great find again. Magia does seem to be well trained for the heaven angle. Alex, got to try and find him here. Now planting should be an easy one for Kalix if he spams. Doesn't seem to be able to disrupt, Good. and yeah, now down goes Alex. Three alive for the ninjas. Eternal fire, they have the man up. Trying to change that was S attack. Oh, is in the feed. It's Woxic again. His 10th. His eternal fire should have this bomb site retaken. Hedrick. Config, the only ones that can voice concerns. And disrupting is no Hedrick. Kid. A second from the AWP. Slipping through their fingers. No one on the bomb. Someone has to do it. Woxic to provide the covering fire. And Bates shot hit. Woxic's got it. And the round. His eternal fire's just about. Look how close this defuse comes down. Yeah, another nail biter right there. But you have to just look at Woxic and Kalix again. It's the two of them, right? Uh, I, I think when I'm looking at the impact, it's coming out of, well, and I suppose Madra as well, the in-game leader, the vet, able to contribute as well with that opening pick to draw things 4-4. But it felt like they should have been able to deal with that NIP, right? They had the number advantage. They know that there was a player heaven. A player must have been in towards the site who threw out that smoke. Thought they had more than enough information to be able to put that one together, but wasn't the case. Hedrick given it his best, and he can really be a difference maker for this team, Hedrick. You can tell that with a lot of players, as uh, Mathieu was talking with Config, it is uh, a conversation point at this point, which I think is moot. We need to see it. We got to stop talking about it. And uh, that right there is still a position that NIP would like to be in, right? They have the money for a buy. The bomb went down again. A round that they could have won. Config and Wakadia, two absolute individuals who like to get into a bit of a tiff, a bit of a biff. Both zero and seven right now. NIP, if they can get one or two more rounds, and that seems pretty damn good on the T side of Overpass. So the fact that three up at the moment is not too shabby. Agrenda's aggressive A main control. Res will extinguish, applying that pressure. Keeps Woxic and Centaurus on high alert. Wakadia down to just an MP9. All back out for Hedrick. And of course, the prevailing Woxic in the previous. But this one looks like it might simmer for a while. So we can let the round slowly manifest in front of our eyes. Standard protocol utility to be limped through. As NIP need to be cautious as they work on the map control. Oh, this would be an A play. Centaurus active on the angle. They will clear him. Oh, he's timed it well. Alex spots him out. But someone half health will force a reposition. Madja's reaction is to prepare a flash for the peak of Woxic. Clearing through. Perfect. That's team play right there. Eternal fire. Find the opening kill. Will there be a response? Wow. Centaurus brave to cross back. Leap of faith past the scope of Hedrick. And Woxic taking oh, this more is a fights. Strong angle, yeah. Woxic, he's, he needs a teammate to hold his toilets, but. And Zantara slipping into that now. This is a powerful angle for the Shadow. Zantara is ready for more. Alex, wow, good adjustment from the Spaniard. Doesn't move. Four on four, dropped off the dice. Missed shot. S attack does not make that mistake. Instead, the advantage quickly disrupted. Madger again. Important contributions throughout this game so far. Blanks on the way. One back. Kalix and Madger doing everything they can. It's up to Config and he's only got 15 seconds. He needs to find Madger, but he's covered nicely. Long range MP9. Good tabs. Time nine. And Config is going for a full audacious plant. Madger's giving him the space, the room, the smoke will fade, but maybe Config's got a clutch in him. Madger's holding. And he's got him beautifully held by Madger there. Team play, Wakadi doing a whole lot of the work. Config feels a bit hard done by. Damn, uh, Wakadi, yeah, sure on the flank. He did a lot of damage, still can't get himself a kill. Config, oh God, it yeah. would have been one way to make his presence known in the survey, right? Oh. Yeah, range of the MP9. What's his damage at now? Not the weapon for the job. What's his damage at now? It's, yeah, 405. So in contrast, He's you got know... uh, six assists. Oof. Yeah. Damn. Well, assists are easier to come by in CS2. 
That's true. Is it like 20 damage now? It feels like 25 or something yeah. like that. 27, something along those lines. So for him to have that next to his name, sure. But uh, again, not the easiest of rounds. It feels like retake after retake. When you look at the type of rounds that have been picked up so far for Eternal Fire at the round timeline, the first two were with Diffuse. All right? That was the pistol round coming down to the wire. And then the last two have been through the Diffuse as well. So four out of the five rounds have been retake scenarios. That is extra cash for Alex to work with. Again, the amount of rounds that you need on the T side, they're pretty close to that marker. Maybe even happy with three at this current juncture of the game. But Wakadia, does he need to get activated for uh, Eternal Fire to stay in their winning ways? That is going to be the biggest question. We do look to get back into play. I'm very impressed by Madger as well. Just constantly, you know, he's in the feed. He's featured there, whether it's a flash, or it's a frag, it's a double. And this time it was three. A lovely clutch to close. He's putting in his uh, his shift for Eternal Fire in their opening And game. I like how active they're staying on the CT side when different pieces of the round are changing, whether it's, you know, information on what they gave away or what they've learned from their opponent. They keep moving. I'm curious to know if that is Magic calling all of that, if he's micromanaging every little detail as a maid. Doesn't do too much damage. They will blow this one away. So the clear and the push. Space to be taken quite swiftly from this pack towards A. The 3-1-1 one, one setup on the T side. Take this A room. Same flow state for Zantares. Actually goes wide on this one. He strikes a double kill from Zantares. Huge. And that's actually doubled his kill total. Yeah, that's a bit more active. That's a bit more like it. Not letting the game come to him, taking that fight ahead of the play. So, well done. And has it stalled our NIP? We still have a minute and 10 seconds remaining on the clock. The reroute. As they do have the defense split in a 2-2. It's going to be the likes of Magic and Woxic dealing with A right now. And... Kalix with the yet to frag Wakadia on towards B. Smoke, double flash, and a molly. They're already floating. Madge is on his way. Don't worry. Walking up towards this three man stacked site. Will this be where Wakadia gets off of that goose egg? They passed. Yeah, slipping past Kalix's distant angle. They will smoke, so their defense is up. And in the smoke. Oh, Wakadia, he hears and they run past him. Oh, Double kill. Wakadia down. It's only Magic now. Woxic will rotate. I don't know how that's gone so horribly wrong. Throwing the bomb. Can't get a strong arm on him. There we go. Planting safe from the orb. S attack. Knows where Magic is. Information flows. Tags him up. And it's all up to Woxic here. He misses his chance. Keeps S attack pinned though. Worried about this fight. A good shot from S attack. He's had two high impact frags here. Can Moxie come up clutch, come up Trump? Doesn't look good. Doesn't look easy. Trying to bait, trying to switch. There's no reason for Conflict to give him this duel. They know it's the Orpa. And just having to reside himself to a save here, back it away. Conflict lives to fight another day. And can we please Oof. recap how that fell, fell apart? There was yeah. three of them there, Chad. Well, the thing is, I was curious as to why we saw that smoke come out from Wakadia. Did they spot something to trigger it, or was it just on a timing? Because the way it looked was, it was someone saw some info. But then if they saw info, why were they surprised that two players ran through a smoke? Very confusing to see it take shape in that fashion. And that was after Zantares gets two opening kills to start the round over towards the A side of the map. Oh, so yeah. NIP do it again. Here's the opener. Bang, bang. See you later, alligator. Alex with a great little trade. Over. The flash comes through. They're through the smoke. Kalex spamming away completely blind. Wakadia, again, just caught out looking silly. <laughs> yeah, he had his nade in his hand. Oh, frustrating. Very frustrating. Eternal fire. We're going to have to count on Woxic to get them back onto the chances of a sick bit. rush. I like the call. An uppercut here from Alex. The Spaniard with some pace. Yeah, just sending MAC-10 straight up the guts. Wakadia, what have you got for us? A Mac 10's coming, running and gunning for you. Already occupying the water, taking this site by brute force. That's exactly the kind of call you want to see from Alex. This is very hollow from Wakadia, right? This is one of the things you're at an RMR. This is to qualify for the major. This is where the pressure is at its absolute highest. An opening game, a best of one. There's all this hype around you. People have been loving what you've been doing out there in the pug realms. People have been loving what you brought to the team in recent times. And at the moment, you're one of these B anchor elements alongside of Kalix who has been delivering. He's been doing his job. Same to be said for Woxic. Magic's contributions are there as well. And oh no, Woxic, they aren't coming your way, my friend. Can you hold on to the sniper rifle? Because you're going to need it to fight for the final few rounds now. His position given up as a hunt on multiple fronts. Mm. The Mac 10s, they are hungry. Yeah, and they don't have anything to fear. 
Antares will hold on to his MP9 after the test of config. There is another, though. Alex is running, spots him, chasing him down. Looks like he's gotten away with it, but most importantly, the AWP. Now, you're in some big issues if you are Eternal Fire. They went for the Force Buy. They're going to have to go for a save right now, but that means they're likely going to concede a sixth round. And this is another one of those problems where the Lost Bone is sure. If they take a full spotless... They, wow, I don't know. If you're Woxic, you could drop an M4 at the moment. If they take the save in the next round when he gets the Lost Bonus, he could buy another AWP. But otherwise, if they lose the sight again, Wox is going to have to try and save. Oh, 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 oh. oh no. B-Rush again? Or oh, no, that's just to apply some pressure. So the util over the wall doesn't quite connect the dots. McCarty is, oh, he's having one of those games. Just that nothing's going right. At least it was onto Galax. It wasn't onto the AWP or the... MP9. Who uh, who knifed him? Was it Wicardia? It was Wicardia. <gasps> yeah, just one of those games, man. <sighs> and this is where you would hope that somebody could pull you out of the pit? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes it comes from them bigging you up when you when you do post a frag, but at, at this point, you know, it's... <laughs> but even just to talking to, like, hey, you're, you, this is something that you have to keep in mind. He's so, 18, dude. 18. I, I, I know, but it's the thing in Counter-Strike, sure, frags are the main contribution, but you're part of a well old machine, a team that plays team Counter-Strike. Yeah. So as long as you're still doing your part, even if it's setting up other players, even if it's staying alive so you can be traded to buy time for that rotation, it all can play into the game. They have the, the full sight. I mean, Alex is <laughs> deep, as is that smoke. Yeah, well, Woxic, you better start running right now, because if you are Alex, you would like you to at least start setting a net. All right, boys, let's restrict the amount of positions that Woxic can get away to. If we can remove the AWP from him right now, maybe, just maybe, right? They're not to know the finances exactly. He might not be able to purchase another AWP into the next round of play. But currently, NIP are just happy to sit. Six rounds on the T side. I said three or four would be pretty good. Six is great. Six is fantastic from NIP. Time for that bloody analyst desk to step out of the echo chamber, I think, Alex. Yeah. No, for real. I mean, <laughs> the <laughs> Eternal Fireboys did have a lovely start. It was a dreamy start. They lost to the Tech Nines on B. Yeah, and it just has spiraled ever since. Here we go. Rez will find a one, two, and three onto Magic. Now, that was one of them. Zantara's losing his, but Woxic maintains the most expensive. Yeah, and Zantara's wants an upgrade into a rifle yeah. anyway. That MP9 not going to be uh, looking too stylish on his wrist as we head into round number 12. Damn, six is great. Seven is absurd. Yeah, this is very good scenes. And again, I think the conversation, I, I was just joking, is very valid about NIP. They've yeah. been treading water or drowning slowly uh, for the last couple of years. But uh, again, you're in the RMRs right now. These are best of ones. None of that matters if they can play some decent CS. And so far, so good. Obviously, it helps when one of the star players on the other side of the server is yet to get a frag. Yeah, well, you'll take what you can get. Monksig looking to get active with Zantarez, and it's actually Rez with one. A missed shot from the orb, so they know where the setup lay. Config, how ready is he? Not ready for Madja. Call crouching round con. Rez having a good game, 14 kills, sure a couple of eco bashes in there. Yes, attack could have a real opportunity, but there's two of them. There's two of them, there's no way. Wakadi gets his first, there it is. Gets the trade, Need three to make on good three. good though, because there's more bodies coming his way, Alex. They're just gonna usher themselves in towards this B bomb site. Walking in, 18 HP, so Rez will be trying to be the space taker. Picks up another smoke, that's useful. Wakadi are active. Takes down Rez, getting away from the engagement, keeps them that advantage, holding strong. Ooh, Nade does chip away, 26, but with 50 seconds left, they're not in a hurry. Entrick hoping Wakadi gives him something, and he will. Kick takes him down through the boards. Madger, though, and Woxic. These two have been solid for Eternal Fire. This final round of their defense. Can they hit the shots? Baited out. Good awareness from Alex. Into the site now. I just make it a play. Moving in on it. Hedrick trying to provide some cover. The Molly. Oh, it actually obscured the view. They have no idea about this, but the smoke back turn. Good find. Madger's making a play indeed. And just holding this. Just holding it. The flash is there. And this is the round. Eternal Fire. They can count on Madger and Woxic. 13 frags each as they pull Eternal Fire into an even scoreline. Yeah, that's going to be disappointing if you're Hedrick. You don't even get a chance to try and play out the clutch. They just sit the defuse right in front of you. And Wakadia with the kills manifests around. So we tie things up. We go into what is not a halftime break. Action is about to start immediately. So if Wakadia was hoping for two to three minutes to try and pull himself together, that's not the case. 
We're going to get things straight back in action. And this one is tight, as tight as you can get. Now you can actually have inseparable at the half. Yeah, it's been a while since we said that. Shout out to Rush one time. But this is going to be quite deflating, I think, if you're Magic. You had the pistol, you had the conversions, you, you were winning some good rounds. Sure, they were tight rounds, but then to lose to Tech Nines, these little details amplified right now as Alex, the in-game leader on the other side, would be more than content. He's got a lot of rounds to work with. Now they can start to put together this defense. Rez the opener on Zantaras' aggression. The Asatag even grabs one on a Kalix, but it's Wakadia with the double. Finally, something for the young gun to boast about. And we are into play. There's going to be a Diffuse Kit and a HE. The rest with Kevlar. Smoker 2 flashes for the attack. As I would expect them just to go for a fan out spread. Oh, Config has been having a tough time. So tested early. All blown off. Nobody home. Config sticking around. Kalex spotted out. That's enough, he says. He's backing himself, backing his aim here, Config. Will be about to be tested. Just as he looks away, they start to crawl. Oh, clean from Config. Takes down Woxic as well. Big frag. Man advantage. And he's sticking around. The rotations have come through. Head trick spots out. Oh, oh damn, Config. Puts one into the head of Calix. And there could be more around the corner. Look at the flank coming. They're cooking. Res and S attack from behind. And oh, oh, Madge has gotten away with murder there. He's somehow still alive. Hedrick onto Zantara is great. Hedrick lives and holds on to long. This is really uncomfortable for Wigardia. Pick a battle, boys. Together. Can't take both of them. Yeah, it's just a battle on every front. You've got S and Res on one side. Hedrick has a crossfire for the cross back or bank. Good angle for it. Spotted out. Good shot from Wicardia. Can they make this 2v4 a reality? Take both pistols in a best of one. This would be dreamy. This could be good. It's only Rez and Alex. What have you got, Wicardia? The bomb ticking in your favor, but it's being diffused, and he can't do anything about it. What's going on? It's going NIP's way. A sour end to a threatening 4K out of Wicardia. Would have been a fantastic, and he even got the fifth there, just as we... Uh finished off the round so Alex will be felled but the fact that it was Alex the one coming through late with the kit if it was a 10 second defuse I don't think you see it go down that way at right. all they can't just sit the defuse so brazenly in his face at least he had the confidence right there to be able to go for all those kills and a couple of tidy shots so it's not too late for Wakadia to get activated in this game and the plant with everybody being obliterated on the CT side NIP are the ones having to make all those investments Galil's Tech Nines, Mac 10s, they didn't actually go all in. Like, look at Woxic, he has residual cash, the same as Kalix. They only have one AK. But these were the type of rounds where Eternal Fire cut their teeth in Katowice. It's a tag, he's been completely caught off. Love. Oh, good flash, not so great on the spray. The Mac 10 betrays. But Magic. four players from NIP were heavy over towards A. It's it safe. might just be a save immediately. I know that sounds crazy. But you're meant to retake this site. You have no room. You have no information. You don't know what you've lost other than Esatag's life. His light's out. And that's what I was saying. Eternal Fire, they were so good at those type of rounds, the second buy rounds. They were pulling it off against everybody. Remember they had that series against FaZe, that best of three. They could have even won that in two. That's right. And even when they don't necessarily get the bomb down, they'll give it a good go. This one, of course, works out wonderfully for them. It helps when the other team stacks the other side. But either way, you'll take it. Damn. That is another Eternal Fire special. Served up hot and fresh. At least you're saving three M4s. I mean, it's certainly not the end of days, but a nice re recovery and resuscitation for Eternal Fire. In the absence of a, both pistols, you'll take a second round. Yes, indeed. And another kill for Wakadia. So the tally keeps coming. He's got more than Zantara's. Yeah. I don't know the kills on the pistols. He could catch up to, to Calix as yeah. well. Yeah, why not? So it's good to see that he wasn't down and out. Well, just one of those games where things weren't working for him. And Zantara's been keeping mm. the tilt in check today. Oh, yeah. We saw it didn't take... There was a couple of games where it was like two or three rounds in. He was shouting at his monitor. Thought he was at home. Yeah. Well, he's definitely not at home here at the RMR. First day of play. Best of ones. And this most definitely is. As you, delivering in the capacity you promised, Chad. You said it might be the most competitive one we see. Oh. Late Molly short. Yeah, ahead of that. well ahead of that. Saw it coming miles away. Well, oh, the jump MB9. Maybe it was all part of their plan. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, jump, I dare you. <laughs> Give it a go. 
Only one jump from Config. Not happy to make that sound cue twice. Looking to be B or not to be again as the rotation from NIP. <gasps> oh, Flash. Perfect magic. Oh, oh nearly takes Shred the City. long range double dink onto head trick. Oh, and there's the beautiful finish. Save. Yep, get out of there. That's beautiful. And that single flash is S Attack's bane right now. He's going to have to try something else. Yeah, that's twice he's been exploited in similar fashion. Config, seeing if he can find the M4 in the heavens. Where did it go? Oh, he's not even going to hang around to take a look. And Bocardia, he's not going to give him a moment. Look at him on the hunt. Whew. Saves himself there, Config. Punishes the hunt. There is the M4. Yeah, just lost in the source of the smoke. So difficult to find, especially with the HE, the finishing blow onto head trick. Yeah, Magia, that's like round winning there on the MP9. Oh, lost bonus going into the next four NIP. Only at that 1900 mark. Config has 2600. So they could drop a Famous, I suppose, if they really wanted to try and buy. Or they could just take an eco as a team, use the two saved rifles and that MP9, give it a crack. At that point, we're up to nine rounds for Eternal Fire. And again, the Speed Demon Magic gets the better of S-Tag this time round. And that's a bit of top spin from Wakadia there on that one. Good comms, good reactions, and yeah, good pace. Just abusing this B-bomb site. Where do they take their adventures this time round? Monster Smoke deployed later to spawn for the CTs. Two towards long. That's Centaurus's task. Will there be a flash for this fight? Similar approach for short control, but very different approach from Eternal Fire. Here comes Centaurus. He's having a look now. It's just uh, going to be dry. Yeah, he does so dry. Spots out one towards the rock. Could it, like, would there be a player rock on his own? That's Probably the question not. he's asking. Now it's a race. Config, do you get ahead of that? Rez is swinging through. That's a clean headshot from Macardia. He's Takes alive. Down the threat. Yeah, he's definitely alive, and he's kicking into the site. Config finds him back, punishes the aggression. That's the bomb on Woxic. Still stands his ground. Could go down now to the spray. Alex has done well. Not comfortable. Not comfortable whatsoever. All. Five of the remaining players congregate towards this site. Magic gets that bomb across. Hard shot to hit. Alex unable to find Calix clean. And now it's attack. Four, Four bullets. bullets left in that one. Not enough. Bomb down and round imminent. Yeah, it was a moment where they could get a bit sketchy as you were highlighting Woxic on his own, right? The other two throwing utility. So it seemed a bit futile for Woxic to be fighting on his own front, but they managed to make it through in time. There was moments before disaster, but that is going to be nine secure. The guns are going to come out for NIP into the next. I have to ask the questions about the AWP availability for head trick. Did have a clutch attempt a little bit earlier on in the piece. And as you can see, as the money flashes up on screen, there's 1950 to his name right now. With the loss bonus of 2400, I don't think so. As S attack might lose the whole hog back to his favorite or least favorite position, depending on how you want to frame it, as he will take down Calix. So. Kill before the death knock. Yeah, if they wanted to get him an AWP, Config could drop one. I, I was like, what has he got here? 53.50. So, yeah, it, it actually could be possible. It's going to be a tactical timeout to be taken. Is that their final timeout? Yes, indeed. Mm, okay. TJL. Actually, it's not going to be possible. They're just a little bit of money short, aren't they? Because Config won't be able to get Kevlar. Have I done the maths right? 47.50? 5350, uh, take 4750. Yeah, you need 650. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Just making sure. Well, NIP, you've had more than enough rounds that you need in the first half. You had the pistol round on the CT side. You yeah. lost to the force by, and now you're in the dirt. Can you pull yourself out again? I mean, you really have got the silver platter first half. Like, it's there now. It's like, you, you when you come into the, the CT half of overpass with six and the pistol, you're sitting there going, lads, come yeah. on, here we you go. You won six T-side rounds without the pistol, yeah. and then you, you won the, the CT pistol. pistol. Oh, God. I think most people would be dreaming of a start like that. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is what happens when Wakadia wakes up. Very even kill spread now. All the individuals are firing. Some solid connections onto Wakadia through the smoke. Press just chips a little bit of a... Peppering. 
No, he's seasoned, but nothing lethal as... We'll go through the traditional proceedings right now. I think if you just take a look at the mini-map in your top left, that tells you how far away we are from action. There's long regress available. But standard map control, bathroom smoke, divider molly, taking this in quadrants. Yeah, one of the largest maps in the pool. Going through their flow state here, just clearing your corners. Con is theirs, smoke still up, so... Rez has no answers as to what's awaiting him. It's very quiet though, isn't it? Yeah, Alex and Esetag are going to have a lot to deal with. I'd be overwhelmed. It's I don't know if I love these and positions. Go. Oh, look at them both. Turn the flash, drop off. Ricardia blind as well. No one dead. Defensive smoke, defensive incendiary. Madja making a problem. And he's in Zara's that builds upon it. Only one of them here. Config's a dead man. Esetag's doing a lot here. Head trick, maybe him. And Esetang can make a round out of this, but with Wox again, that bomb down, time is of the utmost importance. Nice adjustment, good work, good round from Esetang, and it does set up a chance for Hedrick. Madger's got him nice in that deep angle, though, so 10, and uh, yeah, it's it's surely alarm bells now. It's gone from a peppering to some salt for yeah, NIP. That's the spanking at this moment. Money on the other side of the server. As this magic catches the push, right? We were on screen with Rez as they were taking back the bathroom's control. The execute thought he had the jump on him. S attack did a good job with the survival and the multiple frags that were coming his way. The trading work was there. Hedrick, it seems desperate, just leaping to his demise. And Zantares lets out a roar. The Turks, three rounds away from picking up the first map. And well, it is the only a best of one. So you'll take that every day of the week. It's the opening stages here at the PGL Copenhagen RMRs in Bucharest. And it's the major, the first CS2 major. Just around the corner now, this year has really kicked off with a bang. And a team who has made a statement of intent early has been Eternal Fire. Yeah, and uh, down goes Config. But this will be a step closer to stickers. That's the thing, right? And I think when you are going up against an embattled NIP, a matchup which on paper... If people are only looking at the names, go, oh, yeah, and I appreciate you have this. If you haven't been keeping up with Counter-Strike in recent history, these guys, uh, they're not it, I mm. think, would be the uh, way to define it. And Eternal Fire have shown good individuals, Wakadia and Zantares. I, I think that, you know, that's not to take anything away from the rest of the team, but that's the engine of the squad. And good Team CS. We've been liking the approach that we've been seeing. They look well-oiled, well-drilled. They have lots of ideas. Yeah, and they've got strong individuals as well. You know, this is one of the most threatening five Counter-Strike and Turkish Counter-Strike has ever presented. Yeah, that's the thing, right? And it's come through the second coming. It's uh, taken a while for one of the new gen to be able to break through. We've had the time with, you know, Immors in, Immors out, Immors orping, Immors not, right? There's Paz. Paz. Right? We <laughs> could definitely go through a laundry list of Turkish players who've had the opportunity, but this is the recipe they have found the most success with. And I think it's a good time to do so with Counter-Strike in flux. We will be heading into 2025 where those partner leagues get binned, which is great news. I think there's been certain teams who have uh, been able to retain their spot in the top, NIP being one of them, by virtue of who you know, yeah. not what you know. Yeah, oh, poetic and succinct, sir. Just like business life, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, for sure. And this major circuit, you know, there are always names that you don't see. Outside of it, for Precisely. example, your, your Guild Eagles, we'll be seeing those guys back. Yeah, the new flip side. The new flip side. The new flip yeah, side. No, for real. Uh, yeah, the, the Bad News Eagles you know, are now part of an organization, so at least they've got that going for them. But they always tend to show up when the major, when the big ones roll around. Yeah, and I mean, it is. It's, uh, it, it typically nets them genuinely life-changing money. Oh, you see what it means to them every time. They're an emotional team. I love to see them getting to take the victory because they, they let it out. They're a team of passion. We're in the heart on the sleeve as NIP. This is going to be your final crack with the guns. Head trick, AWP count. Well, he's got one now. Oh, damn. Counter wall bang, bangs and some damage. Toxic thrust to 69. Alex, the one to do so. A lot of that on Valentine's Day. If you're lucky. Going to head over to the wide open long area run boost as well, just to ensure safety. Sector clear. The quadrant, as he put it. One quadrant taken. Hattrick and Rez, they're actually quite split up here. 
hetrix has got a lot of responsibility. He's paranoid about the potential long gap. Like, this is uncomfortable already for the young Orpa. Great find, though, and now he can fall away. He's quick on it. He just hasn't had many chances with it. They yeah. haven't had the finances. It's true. And we know, like, we talk about CT side overpasses. It's a bit of an Orpa playground. Surely Rez closes the door on this round. This has to be NIP's eighth with this type of space. Oh, he's so far forward already. There's still 40 seconds, and he's already behind him. There's no way back down now. Not at all. That connector push. Oh, we might get caught. Calyx is considering it. Oh, the timing. Beautiful from Rez. He gets Calyx and Woxic straight down to the Shadow Realm. It's head trick and Rez solo holding. Well, duo holding the A side of the map. Down goes Hedrick though, and with Alex holding on, it is going to be an NIP 8th. Yeah, very important to scavenge back that AWP. Need to get it in the youngster's hands again. He can continue to find that impact if a comeback story is on the cards. It ain't over till it's over. These are the type of games where you definitely won't be giving up at any moment. This was the opener. It looks damn quick even on the replay. The timing, miserable. But Rez with a heads up push, and he's been the one surging forward in a couple of moments here to take away some space. So the two combined do secure the eighth. It's only two rounds on their CT side thus far. Second tactical timeout to be called by Eternal Fire. They do have enough money for a buy now. And, well, maybe even a debate of one into the next. Let's see how the saved guns or bomb plants go. Yeah, Eternal Fire taking a timeout, probably having just a conversation as to the opportunity in front of them. I think as well, maybe now that you've seen that gap be word through, do we want to just go for something a little bit more default heavy to make sure we clear it out because Connector wasn't clear? They didn't expect that to be the case and it bit them in the ass. So now they can make good on that immediately. There's no need for them to uh, go for an all-in play without clearing all their corridors and corners. They, we've seen how good they were on the map control in previous rounds, so just go back to the basics, boys. Oh, he's pushing. Rez. Rez is ahead of I this. see a barrel. I think yeah. he has an idea. Very good idea, Woxic. Oh dear, Rez! Shy of the mark onto Woxic. He was flashed. flashed. Yeah. The alley-oop was there. There was the alley, just no oop. Oh, that's uh, such a horrible death to concede, especially considering you're the one making the play. Yeah, yeah and you were the hero of the last round and with that type of aggression. Yeah, it was, seemed like it was just set up for success, set up for a bit of an equalizer here. Well, they have taken space elsewhere, NIP, out towards Sua. So the B-bomb site being active. Config's rotated over. They can still do this. Hedrick's AWP trained. Yeah, he's backing himself on a real slither gap. Two oh, past. Two slinking into his scope. Gets the first, but unable to bolt in time. It's Galix taking down Hedrick. Config flashed in. Has to stand his ground here. Hard to find the multi. Madja. Ooh, punished by the headshot. Good shooting. Needs to reload. Zantara's might have him with the nade. Softened him up. Alex overlooked. Seems like NIP, despite the shortcomings oh. of Rez. Unless Woxic's got it in him. Three on his screen. This would have to be insanity from Woxic. He does find the first. Going for the transfer. They double peak. NIP get their ninth. And Rez probably a sigh of relief. Well, damn. Yeah, the fact that he gives up that opening pick on a flash to Woxic. So that right there is a big round to win if you are the ninjas. Massive. But you haven't siphoned the bank account out just yet. There'll still be a couple of threats available to Eternal Fire. This was the fight that really kept us on the edge of our seats. You can see Woxic. Oh, doesn't seem as flashed as he looked, does it? Either way, this is great from Config. The poise as well. Stop the spam, take a moment, have a breath, and the nades just shy of doing lethal damage onto multiple bodies at that truck position. And he was getting Molotov out, you know, like that's... He, he's been forced into those fights. The fact that he stays, I think, composed, yeah, good word for it. Very impressive. Final timeout. Yeah, and the reason for that is the extra cash on a couple of members for Eternal Fire right now. Before the buy, I think Calyx has about 7k to his name. Uh, so they don't have to go the whole hog if they don't want, but they could drop enough across to get, I think, 4 AKs out on the board. So it might be enough to lull them into a buy, and it will be. So I can see the buy coming together right now. It will be 4 AK-47s, 1 Galil. Util will only be light on on one player. So it should be... Enough to constitute a full gun round, quote unquote. But we are damn close now. NIP haven't given up just yet. Two rounds the difference. They win this. Eternal Fire again without a plant. And they are strapped for cash. The ninjas working into things now. Hedrick with an aggressive old maneuver towards the B side of the map. He's given it up though. Kalix across. A peek over his Molotov. 
interested. So this is really hinging on what, just res solo? Yeah, but I, I think this is the A bomb site, or at least the calls from Alex saying you've done enough towards A. You've been mm. able to ward them away now. Let's reposition this AWP. Let's see if they try and walk into a pick towards B. But now full map control. So up through connector, fountain as well. Long is the only question mark over towards A, as well as the bathrooms. But that is on the next port of call. And they found a bit of a gap, haven't they? Oh, yeah, it's good. It's very promising. Searching B while this is going down RNIP. So blind. Rez should be a dead man. How has he not gone down immediately? It's Woxic onto him. Lots of pressure. Config in so much trouble. They're coming for him. Running, swinging, Wicardia down. Oh no, it's nearly a triple. They're so low, but still, Config's not done enough. It has to be Alex. There's a tank working on a flank, still covered off by Madja. Kalix retreating long, going around the world as that bomb is ticking. Alex, low HP from a nade. He's the one with the smoke. They have got a kit. Hesse tag ready for Madja, but loses his life. And the 12th round looms. Alex and Hedrick not even giving this one a look in. Yeah, have to go for the save. Uh, the loss bonus, a cruel mistress. And that one, by a hair. Like uh, a whisker in between it for a few of those kills. You can just see how low multiple members on the Eternal Fire side are. Zantares and Madja, the walking wounded. It's backing off, getting out of dodge and retaining these two guns. It will be Alex and Hedrick. And they're all out of position. Couldn't get the information on the other side of the map quick enough to allow them to be ready and raring to go. And that seemed to come quite quickly. Rez overrun. This is just a story of overpass T-sides from what, what was seen to be one hell of a high bar to set at six from the Ninjas. Now, Eternal Vile could be closing this one out with a seven to three T-side of their own. Both teams with lots of success getting into the sites as well. Yeah. Which is quite different from what we saw from some of our previous matchups. Is this it? NIP, are you done? Are you held at nine? Will Eternal Fire be picking up their first map at the RMRs? What we expected. Eternal Fire did come into this one as the favorites. Yeah, Trick has his AWP trained. Silence. The lot at stake. Wanting to start your campaign for those Damn. major qualification. A solid utility. He's actually blowing the smoke. He wants info and they will peek into it. Wicardia. And Good there's an Rez. Solid flashbang and it's beautifully controlled from Rez on the last bullet of the spray. And now he can get away. Magic hears this. Bomb disconnected from the pack. It's Magic Calyx towards short water. Step has been made, may, maybe not audible. Woxic picks up the bomb, it looks like it'll be a B finish. 45 seconds as they look to regroup. The util that's available, smoke, molly, couple of flashes. Get a heaven smoke in, maybe a barrels molly, couple of flashes and go. Sendieri available. Yes, yeah, attack throws it monster. So there is a window. If they can break through, who? Moves first. It's Madja going in. Flash is there. Covered by config. It seems we will see another round of play. Yeah, Woxie might just be on the save here. Backing off. I'm going to give everything away for free. And that's another res impactful round. Oh, spam through. Damage done. Get the hell out of here, Woxic. You've been just sent a parting message. 18 kills for res so far. The rest of his team have activated around him. Config even up to double digits now after a bit of a slow start. Him and Wakati were both agents at one point. But back and forth we go. The finances again, the biggest conversation point. Yes, okay. Okay, uh, Hedrick, looks like he will go aggressive. It makes sense. Getting to have a look at where he is. He has a good spawn. You can see he's over towards the front of the truck. This was the flash from Config in the feed. It was beautiful work. Team Counter-Strike coming into play as they were harassing Hedrick's position over towards the upper bathrooms. And Eternal Fire have bought. They've gone all in. Oh, next round, Alex, it's only 1,900 loss for them. It has to be here. They need a plan. They need yeah. to save some guns. They need to do something if they lose this. Yikes, overtime. It's possible. Full focus on the task at hand. Just going in for a B finish, aren't they? Yeah, just a, a direct approach. Four players here for NIP. They seem very ready. Sendieri down. Lick of the flame. Spread catches Magic. Oh, wide swing. Team kill. Nice attack. At least down. He's got a lot of info, but no frag. 
But a four on four. Body's still occupying this B-bomb site. Walking through the smoke! Alex is dead! It's Antares up short. Rez has to be the hero once more. Here's Calix on the site. Barrels needs to be spotted out as well. Bacardi seems to have an idea. Unloading still gets the frag on the M4. Seven bullets. Calix goes wide. Rez can't finish. Trix found one on the orb. It's an uncomfortable retake. Two on two. This is all hinging on the potential for the retake. Smoke and a kit. Smoke and a kit. Centaurus is low. And the smoke's on shore. They can boost over. That's the play. Low HP. Centaurus has to be the base of this. It has to be Woxic, surely. They use the low HP of, of Centaurus, actually. Oh, config. Oh! oh! Missed the shot, Centaurus! One of them needs to defuse. One of them needs to defuse. Config's on it. Looking to force it. Oh. Double spray. Oh no, he has to reload. We go again. We need another round. It's Config and Hedrick coming up Trump eventually. My God, that was intense. Wow, Zantares, that's the type of round where his rage is going to come out to play. You feel he should have had that kill dead to rights right there. The game should have been done and dusted. But they got the bomb down and they keep it very, very costly. Walks it through the smoke. I guess he thinks he's taken down the planter. Oh, sorry, the diffuser doesn't go to the Glock. And the diffuse right in front of his face. But the fact that he was able to scavenge the AWP off the dirt, Alex, uh, that's something that he wouldn't have had otherwise. Sure. Can it be the difference maker or are we going to overtime? Let's find out. Brez is fancying his chances in con. Woxic, aggressive, trying to peek up in the jump spot. He doesn't expect someone to be taking this aggressive line. Covered in part by Zintares. Config even holding this angle for the progression. So yeah, this con play... Seems like a bit of a stalemate. Yeah, and the right decision to have been made. So uh, Smoke now acting as a door. Rez will know that there's nobody behind this. And he's caused big issues. Just go back a handful of rounds ago where he pushed through, connected, came up behind them. They haven't cleared out Con. If they think that they have information, if they think they have the space to move, Eternal Fire, that is bad form. And Rez is activating again. We've seen how this one's played out. Mm. How long does it take them to get their pieces in an organized fashion for the finish? Got 50 seconds. Config's actually rotated off, so it shows that the NIP are flying blind here. Eternal Fire could get away with it. It's worked against them. The push, the info, it's bad info. Oh, and Rez is flanking Fountain. It's only these two here. This has to be one hell of a crossfire. Alex and S attack just, just save NIP. Back turn! Back turn doesn't matter, so is Antares. Damage onto Wicardi, he's dinked, but he's so blind. S attack down. And now, just three frags away from Eternal Fire. Starting with the win. Moxic trained, takes down head trick. NIP, a six round T half, not enough. Their defense crumbles. And with a furrowed brow, Config and Rez try and retake the site. I'm coming up short. But Moxic trained on this. As soon as he steps a toe out of line, he's a dead man walking one back from Config. Needs to be quick now, Woxic's done it. An eternal fire, securing overbar, securing the best of one. A win to start off their major campaign and relief apparent for eternal fire. Well, had to work hard for that Good one, grief. didn't they? Yeah, that was down to the wire, a closest of games. The saved AWP for Woxic. It plays into the final round. Some very tight rounds, and Wakadia with a smile on the face after how he started this map. I bet he's very happy that the boys picked up the victory. We got Parla and the panel standing by. NIP put up a tough fight, but that eternal fire could not be extinguished. They come out on top 13 to 11. Blair and Maniac, we thought that this could be, or at least some of us theorized, that it could be the most competitive matchup so far here at the PGL EU armor and I think it was. It was. Uh, I just want to touch upon the final round we just witnessed right there. I do feel a little bit bad for NIP. Right, Rez has been making so many plays on the CT side. He gets the perfect timing, knows there's no one towards cons, and then the information can go very quickly from being, you know, info which wins you the round, and these are the crumbling. They think it's an A hit, the 2B defenders, they don't push into short. They're in a kind of a middle bit, kind of like in limbo, so to speak, and then Eternal Fire to close it out. So a bit of heartbreak from NIP there. They put up more of a fight than, in all honesty, I expected. Yeah, and they had a beautiful first half. I think their relief on, on Major's face when this game is over tells you all you need to know about this game. It was uh, mentally very draining, I'm sure, for Eternal Fire. Uh, hard until the very round. And when we know how this best of one sort of format works in, it could make a whole lot of difference for both these teams right there.
highlights up on screen now. Yeah, this was a, a very back and forth game, of course, in the first half, 6-6 six, six apiece. NIP did good work there, and they were really trying to make it work in that second half, but it, they just sort of missed out. And it, I think that's such a great point that you raised, Blair, where in that final round, Rez is making a huge play. You know, it's all going in his direction. He thinks he's getting great information. He kind of is. But then, if he doesn't go deep enough, then it suddenly becomes misinformation. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, look, I feel like, uh, I think Chad mentioned this in the cast as well, right? This is a map usually in best of ones. Two teams kind of shake hands. It's the middle of the pack map pool, so to speak. And it felt like that, because uh, we, we did kind of, you know, mention the fact that Overpass, currently the way it's playing out right now, it's very CT-sided. But if you look at the way the rounds played out, you know, six rounds being won by NIP on their T side, seven rounds by Eternal Fire. And even the rounds that Eternal Fire won, the six rounds they picked up on their CT side, five of them came in by Defuse, right? They were really strongly holding onto the bomb sites. So it was, I don't think it was the best we saw from Eternal Fire, absolutely not. But in the end, they got the job done. And Rikita, shout out to him. I mean, we were watching him going 0 and 10 in that first half, but he had a a brilliant resurgence at the end. Yeah, what an adventure has been for Wikadia in this very game. Um, extremely unsuccessful, a little bit of unlucky. In that first half, he was abused time and time again by NIP. These B hits again and again in different ways, from Monster Pub to then the short wall. And then sometimes he was sent first to try and grab that information, a little bit of impatience maybe on the side of Eternal Fire. And then Wikadia just disappears through the game. He's got 0 and 6, he misses a frag from behind on that banana position, 0 and 7, 0 to 10, 0 to 10, he knives Calyx in the back with a right click knife from spawn. Like this is the most telling sign you can see. But then I'll give it to him. I'll give it to him, the, the resilience to come back into the game. He doesn't end up with a great scoreline, of course not, but after this horrible, horrendous first half, 4Ks in the pistol round that's following, and then suddenly he's out there again trying to be as aggressive. The, the one thing I don't understand is that whenever we see Wikadia being good in Counter-Strike is when he's going for the duel, he, when he's being aggressive, right? Yeah. Why just take him B-side on overpass? It's like the most passive position there is in the universe. It's it's very rare for him, or very hard for him to get activated. He was completely, he was shot on the CD side. I'm so sorry to put it this way. It was very rough to watch. But then on T-side, when he gets to run a little bit, you can see him be alive again. I, I find it very strange as well, because you have Calyx playing the B-bomb side alongside you, right? Calyx, you compare Calyx and Wikadia, they play together on the B-bomb side. Calyx can just be the monster player, just keep him in a static position, let Wikadia move around, peek towards short. And this is something he's done in the past as well. So for Major, I have a question look firstly major individually i think he did a fantastic he job good. overall he did pretty good but from the calling sense when it comes down to how you want to use your pieces ah, question yeah, marks, but man. it's like it's hard to solve because on one hand you're gonna give Woxik the a side that makes sense and tara is gonna be allowed to go wherever and then the decision you have to make as major is do i give myself the rotation role on the ct side am i the one that's gonna flip flop between b and a according to my reads which obviously that's what he elects to do right here and he's got a good performance or do you give it to another player but then strategically speaking you're also then sort of delaying decisions and you're making sort of the assumption that Wikadia in that position would make the right call. So I understand what, ma what Major is keeping these positions and we have to say individually, as the numbers point out, he, he did pretty well. Yeah, he absolutely. definitely did show up Major, our standout player. Just to flip this on its head for a second, one of the marks of Xanthere's career across all of the different lineups he's been a part of is that very usually the team strat revolves around him popping off. Across the lifespan of Eternal Fire, I think that's changed somewhat. We still want to see huge performances mm. from Xanthere's, but the fact in, in, in a map like this, just getting nine frags, that it's enough. His teammates can step up around him. We've not always seen that with the teammates that Xanthere's has had, but across Eternal Fire's lifespan, I think we're seeing it more. And it's a good thing that they do not have to rely on a huge Xanthere's performance. Yeah, like, I, I see what you're trying to do here. I understand the idea. And in a sense, it's a good thing for Eternal Fire. They can win without him. He will remain in win condition wherever. Okay, I think this is this fair. is an outlier more than anything else. Uh, we actually have a, a round that we can show you guys at home as well. Round 9, it's the story of Zentaris having a good start. And then Eternal, Eternal Fire sort of fumbling the back just a little bit. You see here, 5-3 to three scoreline, double kill from Zentaris from the toilet position forward. And here it's Wikadia that misplays the situation. He's hiding behind the small key, tries to pick up a nade to get a little bit fancy counter-strike, then you get punished. That's usually what happens when players are having a very rough start, is that they're overcomplicated situations. Instead of just welcoming a timing instinctively, playing behind the smoke, punishing the cross that's gonna happen, Wikadia tries to get his nade out, punished, then crossed off the smoke and he dies. This was here, Eternal Fire letting NIP come back into the game with a lot of B emphasis. And we were praising the fact that Xantaris is like, I'm taking matters into my own hands because they were struggling a little bit on the CT side. And we know how Xantaris likes to peak. He gets a 2K. It's a 3v4 right now. We're going to advantage for the side Eternal Fire. 
20, 30 seconds remaining. Like you pointed out, all they had to do was just keep your guns out. You know the hits coming mm -hmm. in. Why are you overcomplicating matters? Why are you trying to be a ninja in the smoke? You don't have a man disadvantage. And yeah, the mental game, it, it can be something which could completely ruin your day. Thankfully, though, Wikaria did wake up later on. Yeah, going from a tough round like round nine for a tunnel file, let's look at some of their positive rounds. I mean, they closed out the entire match by pushing Monster, and that was a trend that they were doing from around from around round 15. Yes. Yeah, I mean, even before that, that was really the solution for a tunnel fire, if you will. That monster pop with the right timing at the right flash, we'll see here. Uh, this was after the force buy from Eternal Fire, which was successful. And what did they do? This repetita, same round after that 120 timing, puff flash onto Esetai, who's being caught off guard. And then the, the round, the fra frags rather, just roll like dominoes. And unfortunately for Esetai, he got caught off guard a couple of times yes. with this perfect flash. It happened twice at the very beginning of the half. And then the last one, as you mentioned, is a sneaky walkout where, again, surprises on the other side of the tunnel. I think this is a trend we actually saw from both the teams on their CT sides, where it felt like, you know, when sure they have some information to its A, to its Hall, to its Long, they're like, all right, guys, it's going to be probably be B hit. You have the information or lack of information thereof. Mm. You expect them, you, them to play, especially with 45 seconds remaining on the clock, but it's a little bit more safer, where it can be traded. But you can see, even for Eternal Fire as well, you know, Mukadia, for example, just getting caught out of position or being an un uncomfortable, untradeable positions where one flash and one smoke from the T's is going to completely ruin your setup. So I just feel like the CD side suck parlor of both the teams. <laughs> a bit. A bit. Simply put, Blair. Um, guys, any final thoughts before we go to a short break? I think we, I mean, at least for me personally, Eternal Fire getting the win was expected, but maybe not in this close of fashion. I thought it'd be much more, uh, be, be, you know, more effective, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But I just don't know what I can extract from this game, right? It looked a little iffy for both the sides. I right? think NIP are going to be very frustrated. Oh, they Especially will. Especially when they for see sure, how that final sure. round no, 100%. Super frustrated. And, and if we're looking for positives, I didn't think EF had a backbone to sustain that. I thought some of the rounds that they've lost and the way the first half went, I thought this was it. I thought Eternal Fire would just roll over and let NIP completely come back. So good for them to stay in game in spite of some very frustrating situations. And also we didn't need Zantaros to drop like 30 kills to drag them kicking kick, kicking and screaming to the to get the win, which is a good sign. Absolutely. Well. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your thoughts. All right, everybody, that'll be it from us for now on the desk. A short two-minute break. After that, we will be back with 3D Max versus Falcons. A big one. Do not go anywhere. Level up your gaming space with metal posters from Displate. Swap them whenever you like. Hang your Displates in seconds. Get official art from your favorite games on a uniquely designed metal canvas and choose from thousands of posters. Join over 3 million collectors now. Your wall upgrade is here. Shop now at Displate.com. Players are changing. Countries are changing. The game has changed. Times it to perfection and simple. It's, 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 it's all off. Who's been on top of the box? He's got three and he's looking oh. for a fourth. That is incredible. And Ray, he's back away. The best tournament, the best bookmaker. Falcons coming into the RMR did very well when it came to Katowice, but this man wants to lead them to trophies and further and beyond. And Snappy, I just want to get your thoughts overall on what you made of how well you progressed during the Katowice event. I mean, it was a good uh, tournament for us, um, but it shouldn't be a sleeping pillow. Still a team in uh, the early process and we shouldn't get ahead of ourselves. It's important that we stay humble. Um, it can easily go wrong at the RMR. A lot of 
great team have seen that in the past. So yeah. it's about staying humble and focus on the task ahead, and that is to qualify and not uh, not get arrogant just because because we had one good result here in the early stage. Do you have an extra bit of confidence though in the team after what you did? No, I think it's important that we just keep uh, keep our our emotions and our expectations down still mm -hmm. um, we need to just we I, I don't think we should think that we are just a world beater because we got to a semi of Kato. Yeah. Um we also had a lot of tough matches getting there so oh, it's yes. important we keep our head down now in terms of the players you have right now we know what we're going to get Boris was a positive surprise but I think also you guys made it clear on camera as well there were some massive mistakes in games which could have helped you as well where is he at right now and, and how is he feeling within the team and how is he feeling in your expectations like where do you put him i think he progressed a lot during the tournament especially coming from the first game into the next uh, he stepped up in a lot of areas where we uh, me and uh, sonic made it really clear that this needs to improve and uh, he did it and he did his work uh, on, a, on a very high level and uh, i think he, he played a great tournament and was one of the big contributing uh, factors to us getting far and do you feel like he is extra motivated with you guys around? Do you feel like the way that you and Zonic are pushing him is, is working for him? Yeah, I think so. I think he's just a young guy that needs a lot of guidance. And I think uh, we are able to give that. And therefore, he's in a great situation. And it's also good for us because he has the talent. And in terms of the talent we have on this team, it did feel, yes, you say you don't want to overlook at what Katowice was and how well you guys did. But it does feel like this amount of officials has really helped you out here. Is there still concerns on your map pool though, especially when you're coming to the, the best of ones, coming into this, that you're not fully ready? No, I don't think you can be fully ready when you had a month together. Uh, you need more, um, but we got a lot of data, a lot of stuff that we lost, which is easy to fix. And uh, that is great because that's what we came to Katowice for. Yeah. Um, we got more <laughs> than we hoped for because we got a lot of data. We got a lot of uh, maps where we, where we where we had issues and we could just fix them. There was a lot of easy Brilliant. fixes, uh, so it was it was a really good tournament in terms of uh, developing. And in that development, you've touched on like you want to fix things. You guys are very much focused on making the major is the goal here. You've not had much time from Katowice because you didn't get eliminated early, so you've not had much more practice days. How ready do you feel you are to achieve the goal of getting to the major? I mean, I don't think we could have done anything different. That's the that's the key thing. We have worked hard. We have done our job. And uh, when we look back, I think it's going to be hard to look back and say, yeah, we could have played more we could, because we have done everything we could. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of the day, you want to have that feeling when you go into a tournament. So with the time we had, we spent it as good as we could. And uh, that's about it. Now, your opening game was against 3D Max. What are you feeling about that? What are your thoughts just going into the first game? Uh, we have a good feeling about the game, but it's a best of one, so uh, nobody should ever be underestimated <laughs> in a best of one in uh, MR12 in this game, because two pistols, uh, one weapon round, and it's ace zero. Very scary when it plays as MR12. Well, good luck throughout all of it, mate, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody, to the PGL CS2 EU RMR. Up next, we've got 3D Max versus Falcons. Blair and Maniac, I want to jump right in addressing some of the things that Snappy spoke about. So they had a good performance at Caddo. We all know that, but they're not planning to rest on their laurels here, and I don't think they are taking 3D Max lightly. Uh, they shouldn't be, right? And I really like, I always love Snappy's interviews. The guy, just he just keeps it very, very real. He said it himself, like it's been a month. Uh, we can't expect too much out of this team. But that being said, they had a lot of their issues exposed in Katowice and they were able to fix it as well. They took that event as an event where I feel like he probably thought, and the team as a whole thought, maybe went a little bit further than we really expected at that event. Take nothing away. Also love the fact he addressed Boros. He was a bit, pro I would say, a bit problematic for the team initially, but they were able to you know chat with him and hopefully fix those issues because it did look like you know, he was being a little a little rough in Cato for me. I mean, listen, he's the least experienced player out there. Uh, I don't think that's uh, that's a secret in itself. And of course, his development within the team is going to dictate whether or not we see him long term in here. So he's got a lot going on uh, on his team. And I think it's up to him and the staff as well to make the most out of all of these experiences. That's what that's in what way Katowice was so positive for them as Snappy touches on. A bunch of games, a whole lot of data to go through. How did you feel in this game? Comebacks, three mappers, very long series. Uh, you get to learn a lot about yourself and you just have to be very careful to not feel entitled 
two good results. Entitled two deep runs, as he says, it's RMR. Just completely reset it. Doesn't matter the semi-final, doesn't matter the deep run in Katowice. You still have to do the best with what you have, which is obviously not a finished playbook. And you would have to be an absolute fool, Paula. And Snappy is no fool whatsoever. When you know it's going to be a lot of best-to-ones, you know this is probably one of the most important tournaments for a lot, if not every team playing over here. And we've seen this happen in the past. We've seen, like, surely a team of this caliber, of this pedigree, should be losing to an unknown team coming out of nowhere. And it's happened again and again and again. And I know for a fact for a team like, for a player like Snappy, for someone like Zonic, they would come and taking this very, very seriously. It is fair to say that Boros is the least experienced on Falcons, but it's tough, you know, to be the most experienced or the most or the middling experienced player when you've got Magisk, when you've got Snappy, Madden, and Sun Pass, and of course Zonic as coach. That being said, let's turn our attention to 3D Max. Huge underdogs here, guys. Um, of, of course, that's a storyline across the RMRs, underdogs, overdogs. But it, it is the case here. We're going to be saying it a lot, but it's the case a lot of the time. What can 3D Max do here to topple the Falcons and shoot them out of the sky? I mean, listen, I don't really think they should focus on their opponents too, too much. I think as a team, they've been very hungry for a long time. You have to imagine their lore. They've been without an organization the for the longest time. Yep. They were literally called Looking for Org. Like, unironically, that was the their name. One of the five L4Os in the world. Exactly. They were, they were very unironically looking for an org. Then they could have rebound, rebound with 3D Max, which is a, a name that has been attached to the French scene here and there for quite a while. And some of these players are... You would, you would be remiss to think that, oh, oh, wow, these are actually rookies coming up in the scene of Counter-Strike. That's not the case. It's not the case. No. You've got Haji, you've got Lucky. And all of these players that you've just mentioned have had, at some point, the opportunity to play at the top level of Counter-Strike. Yes. Haji, for a while, was in Envy. Envy us for the people who were familiar with the top CS at the time. Lucky was in G2 as well. Yeah. So these guys actually had, at some point, a chance, and they missed it. And it didn't work out for them. And now it's kind of the story of proving to themselves that, hey, wait a minute, maybe together we can make it work. The only guy that hasn't gotten his shot at the very top, for some some reason that I cannot quite decipher is Maka. For some reason, Maka missed the train many, many times, and he said, you know what? F this. Well, I'm going to do it with my buddies. We're going to do it ourselves. And this is where his story might change. Maka's story, it just it blows my mind. Like you said, like, like you touched upon, right? It's not just about a bunch of tier two players, whatnot. They have played at the highest level. Uh, a majority of these guys, unfortunately, didn't quite work out for him. Maka's the star. He's the IGL. He's like, I'll just do everything. You guys just get on the train with me. And he's been doing a great job. I just took a look at the map being picked right there. It's Nuke coming in. And I, I do Ooh. I do have a few question marks because I know we haven't seen too much from Falcons on Nuke, but they have taken some big oh, no, names, no. some big names in the past one month. Vitality comes to yeah, mind. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, I've seen enough to know that they're capable already. I think it's one of the maps for whom Snappy has the most intuition. Yes. His calling style is very, very specific, but he's also got very good players on it too. Some Pius outside, Boros playing ramp, some of the calls that Snappy can make, the lobby crunches time after time. I, I'm kind of worried for 3D Max. Uh, I've got to be real with you. Allowing Nuke to be the map in the best of one. Ouch. Maniac, take a look over your left shoulder, mate. we got oh, some hey guests guys. in the building. Hey, they're on my left. How's it going? How's it going, Sponge and Machine? Oh, wait a second. I can't hear them. They look we pretty well. We maybe the you. stream hears you and we don't. I but if the you. stream oh, hears okay, you, there we go. There we go. We're live. You We're doing it live. Great. Sponge and Machine, let me repeat myself. How are you boys doing? I don't know, my hair looks like I've been in a fight with a Falcon. I don't know what's going on here, but uh, <laughs> look, you guys probably don't know this, but Lucky is a member of the Maltese Falcons. Uh, I don't know if he knows that. Oh, I so, see he did is that. he? Uh, oh, I, he did that. I don't know, Matthew's worried about 3D Max, uh, but there hasn't been an upset yet today on the mainstream. Oh, they're gone. Good, goodbye, guys. See ya. Bye. See ya, guys. Bye. We'll, Love ya. We'll, we'll, cast, we'll cast the game. Yeah, Bye. some Counter Strike to be casted. Let's have a go. As, uh, yeah, I mean, pff, nuke on a best of one. It's the first time we've seen this. Let's see how it starts. Ooh, Maka off to a flyer. He's taking down the bomb car. He's taking down Whoa. the whole team if you're not careful. His mouth was moving. Bomb spotted down. down. The vent. Ooh, Hadji nailed him. So, yeah, bomb's down. Some Pius has got a lot to do. A bomb plant goes a long way, as we know, so safe plant. Jocko won't be able to stop that one, but Snappy could do some damage. Exercise has caught him, and now it's up to Sun Pius. You got any more for us, Sun Pius? He has not as exercise. Runs him down. You can see that they are already hyping each other up, exchanging those fist bumps and getting off to that CT pistol. A dream. I really liked watching 3D Max uh, when they were early on in the CS2 days. I liked some of the ideas they had, I liked some of the players and what they were delivering. And uh, I'm interested to see what this mix of players can bring in an event like this. They're definitely one of the, the names for me that are on the cusp of qualification. Maybe they get a spot and an opportunity in the LCQ. When was the last time 3D Max was in a major? Because we know uh, we have the stickers, right? I beat them when they were finished back in the day. Yeah, right. Oh my god, with Disturbed and that lot? Yeah. Huh. It's been a long time. Once upon a time, as you mentioned in the previous, we do get the bomb down, so the Galils come out, and Snappy likes pace. 
the door blown off, but it's a ramp rush. Hello, Jocko. And he's comfortable. That was easy. That was too easy. Nate, oh my god, do it. Oh, it's a bit of a sticky one. It could have been great. Some passes across. Lucky. Oh, oh the bait. bait and the switch. Taste air. Yeah, they are just taking bites, taking chunks. And the Falcons are lining up for them. Hadji collects. And this is way too comfortable. What's Boros supposed to do in this scenario at 1v5? No thanks. Yeah, this is worst case scenario with a second round investment from the T side after the plant. No follow up bomb plant, no damage done in the frag department. Spotless scenes as Galil's, oh, even an AK found for Maka. That is beautiful. We we're able to get Jocko into a Galil. Everybody rocking rifles. And upsets on the mainstream haven't had many, have we? I wouldn't say we've had any at all. I know that we had Enterprise take down Amcal over there on the secondary stream, but on the main focus, as far as we're concerned, haven't seen one just yet. This would be the time for one of those to raise its ugly or beautiful heads, depending on uh, well, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, right? Yeah, well, I think Falcons would definitely consider it an ugly turn of events, considering that this team was built for, for more than just qualification to a major. They were built to lift and hoist the grandest trophies. So yeah, a bleak start. It doesn't really get much worse, as Chad has highlighted. And unable to set the turn with some shock and awe. That's Ouch. also relatively disappointing. Because some pious cops a nade on the noggin. Magiskin Zonic, components of the previous major champions. Mmm. Vitality. Oh. Hello, Boros. He joins the party with a stunning deagle across the forehead of Lucky. We know he can shoot. For sure. There is no absence of shooting from Boros. And Jocko. Wow. Clean on the tap. Collects with the Galil. Just, eight, just taking Angels comfortably. Ah, oh, 3D Max. Boros's Deagle will manage to do two. But there's that lovely three round conversion for 3D Max. Yeah, no dramas. I think we'll see Maka probably grab an AWP right now as well. So if he wants to donate the AK to one of his teammates, might get that all dropped across to him. Yeah, we're starting to see that buy coming together now. And part of me is rooting. I'm not supposed to have a, a, a bias here as a commentator, but just the fact that we have a full five-man French roster in the in the world of all international Are rosters. Are you saying death to international Counter-Strike teams, Alex? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying, Chad. Holy moly, red beans and ravioli. And, well, and, I'm right there with you. And we have the embodiment of international rosters here with Falcons. Two Danes. We've got Madden from Montenegro, a Spaniard, and of course, Boris of Jordan. Madden has made mincemeat of the situation. However, with a good flash like that from Hadji, Exercise manages to take Lobby back from them. Hadji, this is tough. It's really uncomfortable. That's quick on the draw. Hadji's in need to win it. Secret flank's his biggest issue. And Pius could go down here. Oh, forces him off the plant. Ten bullets, make it nine, make it seven. Seven. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah. Brother man. He'll go for the reload. Exercise, you clearing that? Oh, God. Oh, 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 he is. Oh, unbelievable scenes. <laughs> They're falling apart. Only St. Pius can save them. What have you got? One is great. Not at all he'll get. Exercise is... He's coming with a real point to prove. Dude is on seven and zero. They exchange fist bumps. Très bien, monsieur. What a start, though. It's insane. That right there, I thought Hadji was dead meat the entire time. He's been a bit of a journeyman of the French scene as Hadji. This was how Madden opens up the round. Ramp progression, orb and rifle dead. The rotation down, I said it's a tough task to get a free one on towards that ramp player. And then he was just sketchy towards lower, peppering bullets through the smoke. And that, of course, that's going to get you fired up. That's a massive round to win. That was a 3v5. Unbelievable. I mean, just so proactive. They didn't surrender, they didn't give up. That fight into lobby, instantaneous reaction to the ramp progress. Oh boy, what's Lucky up to here? There's a world of smokes in front of him. There's nothing to report. And if he slinks away safely, no harm, no foul, because Hadji's dropped down lower. If he can tuck in towards the stairwell and get some info, he has this incendiary. Just looking for the top of the heads here. Oh, he does just spot the very tip of Madden's head. Leaves the doors open so that angle can be held. 
As down goes Madden. Just like that, it's actually Hadji doing an awful lot here. Has support now as well. Yeah, and look at this two-man hold for the lobby lurk. It's just crossfire. They're just absolutely shredding them. Falcon, you have to take flight in this one. About no. to be a 5-0 start. Wings clipped. Oh, it's still moving, Hadji. Got ants in his pants. Can't he got the memo. <laughs> okay. All right, well... Absolutely destroying the Falcons thus far. Bomb not going down. Magus yet to get a kill. Snappy was his first just there, but it's all in vain. Two for Boros was on the Deagle. Madden made impact with a double kill on the first rifle round. And Zonic, well, he's going to try and make his as the coach in the coaching chair. The big man on campus. The man with all those major trophies next to his name. We'll be taking a tactical timeout to discuss what's gone wrong. And everything has gone wrong. Nothing has ever been close to going right so far for the Falcons. The team everybody loves to hate. Zero five magisk. Two irrelevant deagle shots for Boros. Some pious with an attempt on the low site. Madden, we saw a double entry towards the ramp side, which was, of course, that three versus five you were discussing. And then Snappy, just this Amigo. One frag. You can see there the ADR as well. Distribution. Hadji having one hell of a start to this game alongside Exercise and Jocko. Everyone's pulling their weight. Exercise be precise. Here comes Lucky. He's not scared, and he should have been, because Boros opens up the round, but there's still potential for a fight. Look at them. Jocko is already taking lobby. Just not scared at all. Full confidence. Yeah, they might lose grasp of this one, however. So across towards secret, multiple bodies. How's their Ooh, rotation Snappy's game? noted they will have heard the sound cube of him dropping off of main. This is the, feels like a gap, doesn't it? Yeah, but exercise is actually kind of keeping tabs on it. Could be a window of opportunity here. Exercise has a look. And confirms he could be towards the heaven position. If they Hatchy come back up secret. <gasps> Boros just looked away. Snappy Lucky. still saves him. Caught now by exercise. Heaven clear, they say. Four versus three. Going to catch Madden, isn't he? Huge miss. That is a catastrophe for Maka. And now Madden's got himself a nice AWP to fly his trade. Catch Heavy that. made. And Bomb going down. Looks like Falcons may have done enough here. Yeah, tough retake. One that I don't think 3D Max will want to mince with. Timeout taken by Zonic, and they immediately profit with a round next to their name. So good job from Falcons. And that was a all in play from the defensive 3D Max. Lucky going aggressive behind T Red. Flash forward for the fight. Can't get anything done. They try and stall it out, but they really lose track of the round. Snappy with a really fortunate timing as well as he pivoted. He did catch Hadji looking for that information. That was their way in. And from there, chasing their tail, 3D Max will concede the first. Sitting pretty with the finance department, though. 4.1 on Jocko. Exercise with 5.8. There will be buys available across the board. A drop for Hadji, likely. Terrorists win. The Falcons will need to make it two consecutive if they want to start making a dent in this bank balance. Yeah, and maybe a dent in uh, Maka's mental. Going to have to keep a uh, lid on that after what was a bit of a sitter slip past. Maka does enjoy an important game miss, though. Hard to enjoy this one when you watch it back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just body shot it down and missed the shot. That will hurt. Just don't bring those AKs through. Or back out. You know, you got everything you need. Well, this time they aren't using Yard. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What is he doing? Jocko is just charging. There wasn't even in Smoke Wall's nope. Yard. Just going. Just char I mean... They've got three players lower. Just pace. Lads, there's, lads, there's no one here. Is this a misread or is this like yeah. some sort of preemptive gamble? Well, they lost their round player and they had nobody to rotate through hell, right? So they, yeah, they think, okay, okay they've... This is going to be strange because they're going to come up. They're not going to know if anybody slipped past. So there's so many questions. They have to always be alert that anything is possible right now. But Falcons are actually on the reroute. The AWP in the vent, you'd never love to see it. <laughs> this is so unique. That's one way to put it. Um, Madden on the fade. He should have Hadji in his sights here. And it's Hadji that prevails. 
Four versus three. Now they're coming in from main side. Anka's back is turned. They've cleared lobby now. They must now know. Now he considers it. And Maka nails it. 3D Max have got the Falcon's number. Hadjis would need a number of frags if he wanted to win this clutch 1v3. Well, Hadjis still has to be around. Maka no, wait, has the shot. Down. Nice shot from Hadjis. Cool. He's piecing it together. Watch out for this boy. He's looking dangerous. What a hell of a clutch ahead of us. Oh, oh Magis. Oh. Disgusting on the quad kill. Clutches up for the boys. Falcons, that'll get the juices flowing. That's quite harrowing for 3D Max. The entire round they were chasing ghosts. They get the opening kill on that fade and squeaky door. Multiple bodies appear over towards lobby. This is how it started. They lost track after that opening exchange went down. A good shot from Maka, sure, but Magis just gives it to him. Oh, man. This is a, such good awareness onto Lucky as well. Spoonfuls of pain. That's why they picked up Magis. He's a close-up. I had a smile on Snappy's face. The countryman alongside of the coach and the major champ. Oh, that one is going to leave a bit more than mental residue, isn't it? Yeah, those, and I think about the round before. Mm -hmm. Just back to back. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got Shudder. Yeah. Wow. Well, Magisk's first contribution, actually, uh, is one hell of one. A big one. Money yeah. not broken just yet, but give them another uppercut. And 3D Max will be staring down the barrel of, uh, well, only a two-round game in their favor. It'll be won quite quickly. Hmm. Interesting juxtaposition between an AWP and a Mac 10 in the same buy. Where's he going with that one, Snappy? Just keeps him a bit more mobile. You know, he doesn't need to keep his feet on the ground. It's like a oh yard control. Audible. Lucky. Ooh, he's going to have to do an awful lot because with the loss of Hadji, Mac has managed to find Magisk. Wow, look at this positioning from Maka. Opting to go on the warehouse roof, which leads to a nice double. Lucky has to have yeah, him. Yeah, he should surely. have him now. Snappy completely caught unawares. And there's, I mean, there's a lot of diversity in these CT approaches. Aggression seems to be oh, a similar vein as overstepping the mark a little bit too far. Lucky goes looking, the bomb down in a very open position towards Yard. Madden's been able to slink his way through the vent. Okay, so how do they how do they work this one out? Theorycraft with me, Chad. Still so much time on the clock here, so I guess Madden will just try and take as much space as he can as some pies will batten down the hatches. Right. Uh, with the bomb in an open position, this is one of the things on the CT side. Do we want to hold the bomb, right? And they are, right? They're definitely playing for it, which makes their positions a whole lot easier for Falcons to be able to work out. Currently, no one tending to the potential for this Madden walk down. Which is curious because he did just nade open the door towards lower. Maybe the HE master that sound cue. Exercise has just Ooh. been told. Yeah, Jocko's just uh, addressing it. Uh oh, SpaghettiOs turned his back. Madden finds him. And now some pirates will start to make moves as well. Just clawing themselves back into this round with 27 seconds, though. If Madden goes down, it's really uncomfortable. Oh, Maka Jeez. just gets away with the third. Does and so Pius, yeah, he's not going to go for it. Throws out the orb. 14 seconds. Maybe you can give it a run into the top site. Maybe you can. 10. Has to be now. But he's fortunately on the right site. Exercise should have him here. Five seconds. Has to hold it. And that is another 3D mags round. This whole game has been so topsy-turvy. But the fact that comes down to a one-on-one. -on -one, well, they'll be happy with it. They've got six now on the CT side, and they are punching up. But yeah, just some... Look, the starts are aggressive. Here it is again. Maka up and over, taking some audacious fights, finding a truckload of impact. Lucky able to contribute as well. Labored from Maka, and then the same on a static target, planting the bomb, but they will get it done. Their buy is uh, pretty hammered right now. Two MP9s, three M4s. Oh, but here they come. Just a lobby crunch on a gun round, and it's gonna be a two versus two. Chad, this is, the, this is how I want to call. This is the kind of Counter-Strike I want to be. Run at them. Yeah, everyone, but we're gonna win. Okay. You see, they're winning. Well, well, let's see how this one plays out. Oh no. Oh yes, actually, Snappy's in trouble. Got to get out of there. The bomb's down again. Just running at them. Look at this. This is the RMR lads, and they've just done a lobby crunch against full AKs. Yeah, this is no respect, Counter Strike. What? Uh oh. Hang on. This looks like Boros has got something to work with now. Behind the smoke, he can clear out Jocko. Isolate the dual clean headshot. Turns his back. Not a oh! Oh, that's 
running from Boros. Yeah, you want to fight this guy. That's what he does best. Throwing two haymakers right Ooh. there and sprays the body. Peek me, he says. Oh. Beautiful shots. Yo, he got caught out, turned his back. Look at this again. This is really crispy. The first, beautiful. The second, this is just bad beauty from Boros. Well, he knows they're going to swing because that's all they're doing is fighting. And now they're really feeling that, the, the tough end of it. Oh, man, I thought they'd done it. I thought their disrespectful lobby crunch had set them up for a seventh CT round. Now Falcons may have humbled them. Oh, sorry. Boros may have humbled them. Yeah, and, and in this timeout, you, I also think you go, all right, good job, Boros. And then you just sit there and you go, these guys, what are they doing? Yeah, are right? they trying to clown on us, really, with the pedigree of player that we have in the server? Let's biff, let's stand, let's give them some of the beans. Like, this is not the kind of Counter-Strike Falcons have played for the whole of last two, two weeks, you know? Like, no one's been running at them like this. Well, this is the type of Counter-Strike you can get away with in a best of one. Mm-hmm. Now you've got six rounds to your name, and oh, they're going to force. Okay, well. Here we go. Yeah, let's see. Do they continue the fight? Understandably so. Lost bonus into the next only 1,900, so they have to go for the force bite. But Falcons, I mean, yeah, they know what's up now. They know. Exactly. They know what you're doing. But I guess, can you stop it? Well, you just did. Can you stop it again? Starting two down ramp. What? So this is quite the interesting read of the situation. Now it's a top split. Yeah, it's a top split. Look at this from Snappy. One hell of a call. Down goes right Maka, and just like that, the drive-by opens up the site. It can come up secret though. Magisk is going to be tested by this from Lucky. Pre-aims it and is traded. Jocko one exercises. Deagle is good for Boros. And now Jocko's thrown into a one versus two. They know where he's coming from. Yeah. Smoked off. This is an uncomfortable round for the Frenchman. He walks out, oh. deletes Madden. Pre-aimed beautifully, but is he really thinking about Snappy in the hut side? He is. Oh, can't tame it. Close, but no cigar for the Jocko 1v2. Big round from Snappy there. Yeah, man. Wow, what a call as well. And it's stunted 3D Max. Now they will have to stomach a bit of an eco. Next round to buy through to see if they can have seven going into half time. It's like a technical oh, timeout okay. has been called. And you can see it's only the last patch. So four out of the last five for the Falcons. Started with a Magus clutch. One hell of a clutch. Well, you yeah, know, when you're getting away with that, if you're Magus, that's and, uh, what we want to see. Boros another. Yeah. Just got those individuals firing up. Got to put away the Falcons. It's uh, about consistency throughout the map. Oh, no, it didn't start with the Magus clutch. It started with the Tech-9 hut. Maka or miss. Maka or miss into a Magis clutch. Into a Magis clutch. Into a Boros clutch. Yes. Oh, yo, yo. Or as they would say, ooh la la. Pas bien. There's Snappy. He's an in game leader. One of many we have at the RMRs. One of many Danish in game leaders we have at the RMRs. FaZe, Carrigan, G2 Hooksy, Falcons, Snappy. Quick looking at the scores on the doors. Exercise with 13 to 3. I can see a lot of that saving. We will have to wait for uh, both the main and the secondary streams to conclude their games. On the secondary stream right now, we have Fnatic versus Betboom. Ooh, was that just died or? Uh, it's about at the same point as ours. No spoilers, but it is on Anubis. Okay. So everybody can go check that one out. Uh, the streams are available on Kick, YouTube, Facebook, over here on Twitch. So uh, plenty of places to watch. But uh, once all of the matches have come to their conclusion, then the draw for the second round set of matches will be done. And I believe we will be doing the losers matches first. So there'll be four zero one matches and there'll be four one zero matches. Two Frenchmen there on Fnatic as well. Body and Afro. So it is the eco from 3D Max. Looks like the technical issues have been sorted. Now in the life of an in-game leader, Snappy wielding a Mac 10 again. A few Zeus's in the mix. And a successful one onto Snappy. How many more of those are we going to get? Can't be that many more. Now he goes lucky. Toros, good for it. Gets Maka as well on the retreat. Audacious maneuver from Maka, but flames at the feet. Yeah, forced into it. And there could be another one here. Not to be. Good awareness there, Madden. Clears it out. Tetris on his flight pass. Some Pius has been holding this religiously. 
Another cursory glance as the Zowie's positioned for a zoo. So this is actually a pretty good corner for her, I wonder. They're being cheeky. Aren't they? Right? This type of playstyle would get under your skin. Showing disrespect, taking a lot of fights. Yeah. Now bringing out the Zeus. But this is becoming quite a uh, competitive T side from Falcons in terms of how this started and how it's going to finish. Uh, yeah, four. The last five rounds, and here comes number five of the last six. Yeah, so it, look, you're more than happy with this if you're Falcons and Co. And the fact you've been able to keep it together, you're actually going to be invigorated to dismantle them more with the way that they've played, right? I would be furious. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, there you go. Snappy yelling out a bit of banter as well. I'd be talking as much trash right. as I possibly could. You kind of feel like you're being disrespected by people who should be respecting you. Yeah, precisely, yeah. right? Uh, but I, I think it also says a lot about what 3D Max are trying to get away with. If your way of playing the game is just gimmick-filled... How do you fare in a best of three? Yeah, it doesn't really fill me with much confidence for their campaign here. Well, here we go, final round, first half, rifles out, yard control again. They cook in. And it's gonna be three. Shot down on the outside area. Lucky with the double. Getting run out by some pious. And ooh, dinks him. Doesn't finish the job. And with Magis taken down, how do you know about Maka though? Hyper aggression. Yeah, are they expecting another? Surely not. And now the perfect bait with the main player throwing out the util. You expect. They're going to overlook this position. He does get the first. And now some pious. That dink from Lucky is converted. And they'll take seven. Uh, the French, they've uh, they've certainly managed to give themselves something to work with. Yeah, so they had that spree of five and then just dotted in another two over the tail end of the half. And yeah, that's a pretty good half, all things considered, with the type of counter shot they were piping through, able to get themselves up to a two-round lead. No halftime break, so we will get the action underway ASAP. Falcons grab that pistol and they can get things cooking quite quickly. But... Uh, Coach is on the mic right now. So, 3D Max sticker update for you. Okay. We had 3D Max at Katowice 2014. DreamHack 2014. Katowice 2015 was the last time we had a 3D Max sticker in the game. Damn. Yeah. That was some time ago. And it's a long way away from, of course, a 2024 sticker. Mm-hmm. That was, yeah. That's my uh, sticker trivia for you. Owner Pixel will be thoroughly enjoying that. Alex, I'm glad Shut that you brought up. that to the table today. To him one time. My guy. All right, well, Maka with a smoke and a HE. Squeaky door going to be blown off. Julie's in the hands of the Pious. There's a flash for Lucky. Where is he going to wield that bad boy? Maka on the lurk. Ramp flash, Boros tested. He's out of there. Good call. Support's on the way. Nice coverage from some pious should have. Falcon set up for success here, but this low sight covered by these CTs. Oh, some pious has got the perfect weapon for the job. Tames at least two and a half. Hadji still stubborn. Two versus two. What have you Seven got? He needs to live here. He's doing that. He's only got eight bullets left in his whole pistol right now. So Madden's going to have to do a lot of the heavy lifting, which he has. Hadji full focus already brought low. 20 HP. That bomb is ticking. Calls the bluff, can spot out Snappy, knows where they both are. Where's the kit? No such thing. Living, hitting, oh, shots from what? Haji! That's ridiculous! What was that? That is beautiful scenes right there from Haji, and he is fired up about that oh, one! Oh, bro! Oh, he unplugged his bloody headset! Yeah, he just stands up, he's got to be feeling himself after that one. That is insane! I think we'll get a technical timeout while we yeah. rejig the uh, headset, everybody. <laughs> What's going on today? Man, what was Hachi? the second shot? Dude, no idea. Didn't even look like it was on him. We might get it again in the replay. Sampias catching Maka being cheeky. Lucky flatlines Boros. The rotation down. Sampias keeps unloading. L Lucky's looking the wrong way completely. And then Hadji. Woof. What Jeez. is that? Okay, on low <laughs> HP as well. <laughs> Damn. All right, Hadji. Well, that's going to be both pistols. And is that the key to success? We always discuss. Now they've had the clutches go against them. That's for sure. The Magis clutch, the Boros clutch. Well, now Hadji trying to level the playing field with one of his own. 
Oh, just the adrenaline he's trying to tame out of his system now. Well, that's massive work. He set them up in a pretty tidy position as now we will see the freeze time starting to tick back down. So the mics opened up once more and the conversations about how they need to lead forward is it does look like we are seeing a force by come through. There is a silence down four in the mix. That's going to be in the hands of Magisk. I believe that will have had to have been dropped by some pious. So they do have an M4 to work with. You need to be careful how you traverse this next round, 3D Max. Yeah, they've gone for the two smoke wall. Snappy. Already are down secrets. This could be a bit of a surprise for exercise. Completely. Oh, Snappy sprays down two from the secret stairs and he gets the hell out of Dodge. Mission accomplished in his book. It's full investment from the Falcons to try and right the ship that was that incre incredible Hadji Glockwork. While that nobody was ready for that at all, they were too concerned with a player up and over the smoke towards the heavens. Now, oh. oh. Okay, Maka, strong arm on him. Finishes off. Snappy with a nade. Lucky. Oh, dead to Magisk. He's happy to take these jewels. He welcomes them. I think he's just backing his own aim. He knows how foolish he made them look in that clutch. Well, they're trapped now, aren't they? Yeah. 45 seconds, so there's time to work, but you have to finish towards this B bomb side. it feels like. And Madden is the player you're going to have to get past, tucked in towards the vent. Pocket rocket of a 5-7. Mac, are you waiting for a boost, mate? You're going to be waiting some time, your teammate. A distance away, and this... You're overcooking the pooch right now, boys. You've only got 25 seconds on the clock. Are you just going to say, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Snappy did it all. Wow. Yeah, that's just... I mean, he put himself in a position to win the round as they go outside. Have a look, Boros. I wouldn't blame you. I wouldn't blame you at all. See if you can get an upgrade. Spoil the party. Ruin the day. It doesn't matter. They are still just going to be retaining these guns, even though he goes down and does confirm the round. See oh. if they can get any upgrades. Oh, they really want to ruin the day, don't they? Another life offered up. That's terrifying moments there for Haji and Mac. You'd have had zero dollars on Haji if he'd have gone down there. Sampias was able to find a Galil there in the final moments. There's two dead bodies sitting at the top of secret. So Falcons draw it back to just a two-round game, and the odds... Still favoring the Falcons, surprisingly. Gonna have a lot of work to do. Yeah, it feels a little bit like that mad pistol clutch is redundant now. They're late out of spawn. Just take a look at the radar. You can still see bodies. and They're not late to throw smokes. They're late to organize their buy. And, uh... Oh, Boros might be taking a leaf out of Jocko's Flash. Book. Yep, flash and go. So blind. Free frag. Boros gets it. Gets away. Taste of their own medicine there. Yeah, beautiful work. But nice. more coordinated. A flash this time. It's a wombo combo. It's oh. Boros with more damage. Oh, lucky. Lucky to have gotten away with that. How did you get here, exercise? <laughs> He's gone for a wand up. And is this where you want to be? I'm not so sure. Some bias is staying active. Resmoke squeak. Okay, he's just... Walking out, Crouch walking out. Madden may not be expecting this. Some Pius now spots out the yard player. That's a bit of a distraction. That's even more of a confirmation. Madden behind the vent. Snappy covers. Solid falcon hold here. Look at that. Five alive. Oh, Magisk, he's getting the troops motivated. He knows that this is a... Uh, you want to you wanna come into this RMR as a, as a favorite. You want to convert that best of one. And you uh, ideally, you want to be here as, as short as possible. You just want to be here. Mission accomplished. See you later. See you at the major. Especially for the established names, right? You want to win three games as quickly as you can yeah. and make it as easy as possible because this event comes with an added layer of stress. The fact that it is to get you a spot in the major where the bigger names feel like they deserve to be going up against these minnows in this pond that, uh, well, they want to start growing a little bit, right? This is the thing. You have these hungry names. You have all these youngsters. You have these people who are condemned to the realms of tier 2, tier 3 online Counter-Strike competing, you know, 100, 200, 300 maps online just battling in the depths of the unknown Counter-Strike 80 ping wide swing. It all is just a mystery out there. They want what you have and for these established names, I don't want to give them an inch. We've seen in the past there's always upsets at these type of events. So far, doesn't appear to be the case other than Enterprise taking it down Amcal.
and go check out that Fnatic versus Bet Boom game. Fnatic still with Crims, part of the roster. How long has Crims been on Fnatic? Other than his godsend little stint, oh, I about that, it's yeah. pretty much been non-stop, hasn't it? Well, desperately out towards the site. Cadgis and Madden will make a meal, and some pious takes down Maka. 8-8, eight, eight, we're all tied up. This one, I, d I, I think the biggest problem for me is just watching 3D Max, it only looks like cheese, right? Like if mm. this was StarCraft, you know, yeah. I don't know anything about StarCraft. Yeah, they're going for like a 6-rack cheese. They're doing pylons or something. 4-rack yeah. cheese. Yeah. yeah, they're doing... They're Early uh, z z Zealot invade. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah exactly. That, kind of that feels like that's what they're doing yeah. in this game. Yeah, I'm with Even you. with the type of moves Mac is going, I'll just try and lurk through a smoke and hope I catch a timing. It's like, is that, is that what we're doing? He's proxy gating him. Yeah, exactly. So let's see something that we can replicate, shall we, 3D Max? Ooh, good nade. They're just pushing. Vent down drop. the vent, down the vent. Magis confirms it. Boros, knife out on the way. They still have secret as well. They can pincer in, reclose this bomb site. Boros just stands. Off angle for the cross. It'll be good. This looks very promising. Just as they leave the door, the safe haven. And now Lucky Dead cut down by Boros. Huge contributions on the defense and reaction to the call. Yeah, well managed. Maka and Jocko spotted out. They know there's two of them here. Madden and Magis should have this every day of the week. What's Hadji supposed to do? They're actually just coming down the vents into Hadji's territory. So that's a bit, a bit of a freebie from Madden. And Maka onto Magis. Hang on. Hang on. Some pious. Threatening, takes down Haji, still need to get on the defuse, they should be defusing. Yeah, it's over. And there you have it. You know what? They got off? <laughs> you could have stuck it. Off it. Yeah, exercise yeah, if you had him. He's... What the... Is, what the... Is, what the, the, the hell? Uh, Mr. Boros. That is very stressful right there. Brother man, you made that ten, <laughs> ten, ten <laughs> times more stressful than it needed to be. They could have just stuck the defuse. It was not planned for him. No, not at all. Not and at all. Surprise had full decon control. Yeah. yeah, he's taken fight. They had a player at the double door side. You've heard the defuse. <laughs> you're, you're like, is it a, are you doing a 10 second? Maybe he thought right? he defused. Yeah, you know, sometimes we leave the house, we think we left the oven on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Imagine. No, I don't want to. I don't want to. No, but I don't yeah. want to either. Okay. Whew. Whew. Everything's cool. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Exercise couldn't believe it either. He's like, what? I have another chance. Oh, oh I come. here I come. Uh, they're coming, Ram. Yeah, here they come. Let's see how you got what you got for us, Boros. A headshot to his face. Nice work from Haji. And whoa! Whoa! Son Pius is just tapping him away. That was almost entirely his handiwork there. That was a stunning set of three frags there. I shouldn't. Real nice sharp shooting from Son Pius. Haji, however, is making a round out of this. 2v2. Bomb should be able to go down. Madden disconnected from his in-game leader. Down goes Snappy. It's Haji. Two Good very impactful it. rounds here from Haji this yeah, half. Man. He's definitely stepping up. Can he close? Can they close? Oh, they didn't plan. No. And they're oh, they're overcomplicating it. Oh, they're going straight towards Madden. This is going to be a disaster. They're not ready. Oh, no. 3D Max's hopes and dreams thrown away. Magis can't believe it. Falcons can't believe it. But yeah, you're right. Overthinking. Overthinking. This was a beautiful triple, Let wasn't it? Let me see that. Oh, oh, oh. It's just perfect. Blink and you miss it. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Wow. See you later, nerds. Great shooting from some pious. Dude, oh, this is, uh, this is heartbreaking as well. If you put, your sh put yourself in the 3D Max shoes, you feel like you're a bit of a, a pillock, as we would say in English. You've made a bit of an, an oopsie there. Yep. Well, second tactical timeout to be called from the 3D Maxes. And then last man standing, you look at the scoreboard, you're thinking ramp, secret, or vent. <laughs> Let's go up the vent. Let's go up the vent, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, it could have worked. It could have. But it, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't. 10 8, though. I mean, we've had one hell of a game. This has been really. This, is, this has been the highlight of my day. Even yeah. if it has been bar balmy, it's yeah. crazy, but it's, uh, it's a whole lot of fun. Well, it's had some intensity to it, hasn't it? Yeah. And not just in the stakes, but in the gameplay. Yeah, everyone's been... just mad right now. Well, we like always. That's some pious 3K. Come yeah, on. Yeah, that was a beaut. 
Magis Club. I mean, geez, this has been one map of Counter Strike, one hell of a map. It definitely has had more action than the first two. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, no, for sure. Okay, here's some util. Look at them. They're, they're standing still. They're holding lobby. Ch Chad, this might be a default round. Oh. Well, we'll see about that. Well, no one's gone yard. Just holding it passive, lucky. Just tending to that. Replenishing the smoke in the hands of Magisk. Smoke's now deployed towards outside. All a bit of a ruse. All come down to the timing, because here they come. Magisk tucked Tetris. Needs cover. They push. They don't clear. The smoke. Dropped by Magisk is perfect for the frag. Madden combines. Boros puts his name in the feed. Maka and Exercise trying to ride the ship with one. Bomb Drops down the, the bed. bed. That's not bad. Maybe Maka can do something with this. The plant's good with the loss bonus. You can at least give them something to work with into the next. But this 19th round slipping away. Just experience prevailing here. The first day of play of the European RMR. Number one. They're actually all channeling towards Decon. He's got an angle for this. Same time. Flash reposition. A reload would be nice. Ooh, Mac is dead. Magisk will close. And another, I have to be uh, admiring the way and the composure Magisk held that top side there. Yeah, you saw how wide that forced them on the side. Right. They had to go all the way out towards CT Ven. They were unable to contribute towards the side. That's going to feel very good with the top defense. Like the fact that he spammed all his bullets, then obviously they're trying to punish this reload. And he drops the smoke in, like instinctually, gets the reload in time, and gets this frag. This is just really cool. It's a buffer in two ways, right? If they want to run through that smoke, at that point, the flash is probably worn off. Now they're coming out of the darkness into him. Whoa, and a good shot to finish. Yeah, that's a beaut. Just two more rounds now. Snappy with the golf clap. Happy about proceeding so far. The threat of the French, no more. Mentioned the plant. Well, that has helped out the purchasers. They've gone for the extinguish on the deep CT. Molly and Guo oh, parving quite quickly. Exercise dinked and dead. Snappy wide in warehouse. We'll take down the gallivanting exercise. Quite the gallivant. How many smokes are on the map right now? Look at that mini map. I see one for the CTs. And one for Hadji. Staying active with a number advantage. So Snappy and some pious investigating towards lobby. Kind of punishing the expectation they've built for 3D Max's approach. Well, they're still faffing around with nades in spawn. Yeah. And now he's yeah, he's half worrying about the potential for lobby. Smoked lockers. Magisk is gonna dip down, Madden, spotting out. Are you just going to go wide on this? Yeah, he welcomes the duel, encourages the duel, and is punished for it. Maka will take one. Oh, where that came from. Boros. Perfect. Jocko. Trading. Three on three. Maneuvering up towards heaven's side. Snappy's still calling lobby clear, so... With Ma they're all very spread apart. All three of the CTs. What's the timer look like on Magic's push-up secret? Oh, if Snappy gets this headshot, he's going to become very uncomfortable. Hachi's holding secret. Hachi nails the headshot. And now what? Bomb should get planted, but will it be safe side? Seems so. And Jocko not holding the walk up, so Lucky's going to get a real rude shock here. Nice find from Snappy. I know where one is. He knows where Hachi was, and some pies can cover. Oh, this looks really uncomfortable for the French. Super uncomfortable. Nade, Jocko, what have you got for us? Sampaya should have him. Nails the shot. Defuse comes through. 12 in the bag for the Falcons. Yeah, at that point, if I'm snappy, I'm just yelling, what are you doing? What are you doing? This is a great recovery. You can see that, I mean, Falcons have worked it out. They've, they've sussed you out. Your, your, your cheese, it's going off. It's blue cheese right now. It's tasty cheese. They're happy with this. <laughs> yeah, they put it in it. their sandwich. Merci beaucoup. Well, this is going to be the third Paul Le Blue tactical timeout called from 3D Max. Again, the bomb goes down. Again, a buy will be available. But a game that has had definitely Whew. some big hits. Oh, bro, don't forget how this started as well, the pistol. Yeah. Uh, Hachi 1v2. Yeah, and, then and they, they haven't just... won around since. Nope. Yeah. It's because I, I believe the headset, guys. I had to replug it in, lost my mojo. Yeah, kind of slowed things down, slowed allowed things down. Falcons to recalibrate. Yeah. That attack timeout, you see. Man. Well, have they got anything left to show for it? I think Falcons have just, you know, completely right righted the ship. I'm glad that this match has happened, though, because I think it shows people exactly what is possible in a best of one if you want to throw standard Counter-Strike out the window right. and just be 
a little bit kooky with it, get aggressive, it was, get in your face. What was it? Was it 5-0? It was yes. a 7-5 half. Right. Well, yeah, but I mean, even at the, at the start, it was they were just kind of trouncing them. Yeah, and then they let a couple slip. Maka with a missed orb shot onto Madden and Hunt with a tech nine. A magic clutch that they'll be regretting. They oh. had their moments. Oh, and it seems Snappy's here to cut their moments to a close. Boosting the orb up and cut down. Three D Max is opening a fair seems to be over. <laughs> Snappy, the bait. And some pious. He is the one with the long rod. Connects with the AWP. Lucky and Haji have done something. And Magisk is the one to really twist the knife, make it clear. This is done. What can Lucky do? Coming in Madden's from round. He's already holding him. And there is Falcons. Ooh. Ooh, not quite closing, but job done. Sapphires has surely got this one. He misses his shot as well. 50 seconds with 16 HP. Bottom of the scoreboard is lucky. Can he live up to the namesake in any capacity? Sapphires just hanging out. And just his crawling ramp. And lucky working around this smoke. He's got 30 seconds with the bomb in front of him. Tobias is coming, looking, warning shot fired. Did he even realize? He didn't. 19. The silence bullet did get fired off and Magisk is repositioned. Tobias has got him dead to rise. Where, where did he go? He's staying right there. 49, bro. <laughs> 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 13 to 8 there, lads. It's Falcons that take it. They get the first win in the pursuit of three for that major slot. And I think it's a good way for them to understand exactly what they might be up against here at the RMR. It's an interesting approach from 3D Max. Zonic lets out a nice, but this is going to be an, well, I don't want to say easy. It's going to be an easy finish on easy street, not uh, dropping anything after the pistol were the Falcons. But we got the panel ready to break this one down before we have a breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> what a storming CT side by the Falcons. You know, 3D Max had their moments in there. I, I, am I missing something, in fact? Because during that first half, it seemed like 3D Max were super hyped. They, they were quite aggressive and emotional, shooting bodies. Is there some beef that I'm unaware of here, or are they just hyped to be here and they're putting everything into the match? I, I don't know what 3D Max were trying, in all honesty, in the first half, Matthew. I mean, you have a 5-0 lead, but just some of the ways that they... They played the rounds. Aggression is great. You know, just you're going up against a team like Falcon, and Zonic, and Snappy on the, at the helm. You're going to be the underdogs. You're going to want to throw a bit of a curveball here and there. But this was just nonstop curveballs. It was just going everywhere. It was spiraling out of control. And Matthew, considering, you know, they are French, is this something like a revitalization of the old French style of counter -talk? I don't know. I mean, listen, if you're a French fan and, and you watch this game, you might want to just pour acid in your eyes. There was starting <laughs> to watch Jesus. Quite honestly, because honestly, they, they came out with the right attitude, which is let's be aggressive, let's be in Falcons' faces, we have skill, we can shoot, and we're going to take all the fights to you. They did that. Step one, absolutely achieved. Beginning of the game, you feel like, holy hell, 3 Max came here to play. But what you get to discover in the late round situations, and specifically the clutches, is that they have no map awareness. They lose completely track of what are the timings possible, what are the positions at risk, how should we play these rounds. We're going to show you guys a little bit later a couple of clutches being played as well. They lost three, three uh, power play that they had, 3v1, 2v1, 2v1. This was Falcons teaching them the ropes of Counter-Strike late game, letting the experience shine, letting the game sense shine. And honestly, even though the scoreline is a bit tight, I don't think there was a game. I think Falcons were in control massively. And even the rounds were winning initially, right? It came down to when they were winning, winning it in the very first few seconds of the round, which is like taking the fight to the side of Falcons. I'll give you an example. Uh, the second half, uh, they win the pistol round with Hadji getting their 1v2 clutch, if memory serves me right, with the clock on the lower bomb side. You have the rifles coming in, and then Snappy's playing in secret. No one's watching. See Secret. All the rifles are looking towards Yard. There's no utility being used. They just get taken down by Snappy, who was actually having a bit of a quiet game. Just some basic fundamental protocols, which you would expect any team playing at the RMRs here to kind of have it locked in. And unfortunately, 3D Max didn't have that. Good first half, though. Some great individual performance coming out. Maka was looking good as well. Had you exercise here and there. But overall, as a team, they... I don't know if that was a game plan. Was that the game plan? They're just going to throw balls to the wall counter-strike? Because it didn't work out. Just to look once again at what Falcons were doing right, 
Sponge and Machine mentioned at one point near the end that Falcons looked like they had figured 3D Max out. How long did it take Falcons to sort of download what was happening and then figure out the formula to just roll through the rest of the match on that second half? I think it's not down to preparation. I think it's halfway through the game. They probably realize these guys don't know how to play late round situations. Like literally in clutch situations, we just have to have good comms. We have to be clear on what's at risk and what's at not. And then you let the experience kind of run its course. And this was so apparent that Falcons had a much better plan plan on where, what are the positions that we need to keep key towards the very beginning. How do we have to go about these positions? You see bomb plant or post plant situations being thrown away. Snappy sneaks out of van, goes onto bomb site. And I mean, in terms of protocols, it doesn't really matter if Falcons have been playing together for a short amount of time. The Not only the decision making, but the quality of communications between the players is already much higher than 3D Max, yep. even though they've been months together. And that's where you sort of get a feel for the difference of experience and level between the players. I'm sure the team speak of Falcons was much cleaner. And they all speak French in 3D Max, and that didn't matter. <laughs> Blair, thoughts? Do you agree? Do you not 100% agree. And uh, you go back to the second half when it was Falcon just running away with that game on the CT side, right? They're like, all right, you got to get the bomb done, plant the bomb. Let's see how we play the post plants. The post plants are messy. Some of the ugliest post plants I've seen so far here today. They're not, you know, they're, they're not really peeking together. Where they're peeking together is another part of the map which have completely lost control. And Falcons are like, we're going to slowly go for this retake and you're just going to come to us. Listen, you're gonna come uh, to us. My heart is ready. Just just cue the clips. Just yeah, let's, the let's, uh, bring, let's bring up some uh, rounds that you wanted to take a that look is, at. Starting, I think, with Magic 1v3. Look at this. 5-1 scoreline, right? They're, it's going to go down to a 1v3 with an incredible lobby crunch coming out of 3D Max. And here it's Majisk alone and he's going to have the luxury oh. of finding a single-handedly 1v1s, v1s up heaven. Oh. Lucky goes to fight when Maka is hiding, misses an AWP shot here, gets completely rocked. You're thinking, all right, 5-1, to one, it's not too bad. The problem is, this was foreshadowing of everything that was going to happen in this game for 3D Max. 1v3, first round. You go later then, another aggression. Very well thought out for Falcons. They lose a 1v2 to Boros. You go later down the road, they have another 1v2 to Madden. I'm not making this up. Like, I'm not making it up, but I'm telling you the late rounds weren't to hell. I love, this is right there. I love that final round, the, the final 1v2, the loss to Madden, where Madden's coming down vents. And, like, you have the lower bomb side. Now, you've lost complete track of where Madden is in a 2v1 situation. You have the lower bomb side. You have two players who have relatively pretty high HP. What do you usually do in a situation? You just clear out the usual angles, get the bomb down. They walk into the one spot of the map, Paula, the one spot of the map where they have to just narrow down and give two easy kills for uh, for the side of Madden. So mistakes being made. This man, though, Standout player up on screen now. Magisk absolutely killed it. We just saw him with the 1v3 as well, ending on a Glock. Always nice to see a Glock Why kill on a, on a non-eco. And even on this position on the CT side, I think he handled things pretty, pretty well. Uh, we, we harp on a couple of clutches, but the truth is when 3D Max tried to put pressure on the inside push, mm -hmm. they had a couple of spits coming in with nice utilities. Magisk knew exactly what to do. He had good protocols, good reactions, on the fly, smoke his feet, stay by the HUD, gets that double kill. It was a great performance. You see more than 180 yards, that uh, tells you a lot. I think just watching Magisk on the upper bomb side, right? You just watch five different rounds, five different gun rounds, and if you're an upper bomb side player, you're going to pick up, take away five different new things from each and every round. So just a standard play overall, and also the fact that he was a catalyst for that kind of comeback the Falcons went on. That 1v3 really woke them up. If one of the solutions for Falcons was to just relax in, in those late rounds, uh, what could 3D Max have done differently in the late rounds? Why were they crumbling in the late rounds? Was it a pressure thing? Was it just making the wrong decisions? I wish I could tell you. I think we would have to talk to them yeah. to, to get the sense of how they were feeling in these late rounds. It's either a case of their game sense is just not as good as it should be, and that's it. Or they got into their own heads as they were losing some of these clutches, and then they became looking for the perfect solution instead of the good one. Mm. And it's always a risk in Counter-Strike. When you're being put in a favorable position, if you overthink how you're supposed to close a round instead of just have, applying like very basic principles, let's have a crossfire, let's speak together at the same time. If instead of doing that, you're kind of looking for that perfect little sneaky angle, this is usually where you lose it. And this is how favorites claw back into games because teams that are about to beat them overcompensate and get things way too complicated. I feel like they came in just raring to go, you know, a very hectic style of Counter-Strike, which I feel like that infected them, if that makes sense, right? They were trying to just take the fights to Falcons, getting really hyped up after they got those initial rounds being won, winning a few duels here and there. And it, the adrenaline just got too much for them. You know, when it came down to it's this... It's harder to slow down when you do that. Harder to slow down, switching gears. They weren't able to switch gears. They were just stuck on a fifth gear pilot. Sometimes that leads to accidents. 13 to 8 for Falcons over 3D Max. Everybody at home, why don't we catch you all up on what's transpired across A stream and B stream so far here on day one of the PGL EURMR. Mm -hmm.
Ooh, you can see the results up on the screen. If you remember, if you've been joining us from the start, Phase Clan overcame nine pandas. I think these are pretty. Uh, I mean, the Eternal Fire NIP game. We've had no upset. No upset. No, no upset so far. It was a close game, the Eternal Fire NIP game. But apart from that, it's been very one-dimensional showing so far from if, the from the favorites. If it had gone the other way in, in favor of NIP, I still wouldn't have called it like a big upset. Yeah, it was, like it that. was definitely the closest game that we struggled to call out who would be who would be favorites or not. Uh, and of course, I'm guessing we're going to have a little bit of a look at the B stream results as well. we'll yeah, we will. Just on. again, everybody at home. Then from there, we went G2 Esports. One's are over ITB. That was a smooth one for them. And then the other two matches at the end. Now we turn our attention to the secondary screen, which is not the one that we've been keeping up with. But of course, we know the scores. VP over Saw, Navi over Movistar Koi. Enterprise actually yeah. coming at that. Yep. Kind of did little upset cool. there because Amkar have been building some momentum. People were expecting to see more from them at this point. But yeah. Enterprise came out on top, and Fnatic beating out Boom. I feel like this is more of an upset. I, the, the Amcal Enterprise one, I think we're all a little bit overhyped about this Amcal victory over Astralis, which which is very meaningful. I'm not going to take away from that, but we don't really know much about them. But BB getting absolutely rocked by Fnatic, that's not something I had on my bingo card. What's been happening with Boom? Because I remember seeing them like in, in IM Sydney. I know it's been a few months right there. They surprised a lot of people. You know, fast Counter Counter-Strike, they're looking pretty good. Ever since then, you know, whatever little hype they might have built up, back down under is really tapered off. And at one point, expect them to kind of, you know, maybe plateau out a little bit. Maybe, maybe they can still be competitive against some of their CIS counterparts, Napanese ex-teammates, for example. And they've just been disappointing again and again and again. And I agree with you, this must be the upset so far of round one. I, I, I saw and spoke to Nafni at the HLTV Awards just about a month ago, and he's got a lot of um, hope with this project. He, he, he sees that there's a lot of potential to build on here. Probably not, I mean, definitely not the result that he would have liked going up against Fnatic. And a Fnatic roster that hasn't really shown us too much so far either. No, absolutely not. And I'm a little worried on behalf of Bedboom. I think we've, we've reached this point in time now where they should be sort of ready. The roster has been together for a little bit. Uh, I was very high on the Zorti hype train, personally. Um, I don't really know if I'm ready to jump out of that train quite yet. Maybe it's a good thing for me. I didn't see these games. Right? We didn't really catch uh, the Group B or the B stream, rather, what was happening in here. But Bedboom falling quite flat in Katowice as well. This We're pretty convincing one against... loss as well. But... Yeah, it's, the, my, the issue that I have with BB is that it seems like some games, they will absolutely disappear. Like They will disappear. They can make it competitive. There was a, a map versus Cloud9, a bunch of overtimes. But there's also maps where just things fall completely flat. And, and that's a tell, I think, from, from the psychology behind the team. And that's a bit worrisome. I think that's, a, that's always been a history for this particular team, right? Nafni and the psychology of his teams. Obviously, he moved on to this team, looking to kind of make an impact, showing that, hey, I can really call. And there were times where he, he was proving himself. He was showing that, yes, I can get those wins. But if you just look at the body language of the team, I, mean, I don't speak the language, but if you look at someone like Chiron, for example, he's a very temperamental young lad. He's quite agitated. He's a very agitated young lad. And then you have Nafni, who already has a handleless team and someone like that. We don't know the small little ins and outs of what's happening on the team, but definitely the mentality. I think it's a big factor in some of the struggles and tribulations they've had so far. Blair and Maniac, thank you for your thoughts. As always, everybody at home, we are now halfway through our day here on day one of the PGL CS2 EU RMR. We will go away now for a 10 to 15 minute break. When we're back, we'll start with our lower matchups in this Swiss format. So our teams that have gone zero to one. The action so far has been fantastic. We're going to see if later there are some more surprises to come. Navi will be coming straight from Katowice in to the RMRs. I've got Alexi be the IGL with me here. Alexi, I know when we spoke with Katowice, you were feeling pretty damn sad, right? It was not what you wanted. You felt like you should have won that game. How are you feeling now after some time to look over it and go through things with the team? Obviously better. I think uh, every time straight after from a loss, I don't think you can ever feel good or you can't really... You can't imagine what actually happened. Yeah. You might be th having a couple questions and usually they're going to get resolved on, the, on a team talk or just you watching the board or whatever it is. So yeah, I'm definitely feeling better now. Now you told me not just after that game, but also before the game that was against Eternal Fire, even though you did win it, we're still missing some utility. We're still missing some basics in here. Has this been a focus point for you, especially when you're coming into best of ones where these little mistakes could cost you a game? It has, yes. We definitely spoke about it, uh, not only once now and I think it's safe to say that we mean business now, like we need to nail these things. And especially now, I mean, it did matter in Katowice as well, but now we, we know, we've spoken about it too many times. 
and there's no room for error in, in terms of if we make those mistakes now we're gonna obviously take it way more serious and we're just gonna up the standard even more as if it wasn't high high enough for us but it's just like <laughs> it feels frustrating to lose when you feel like you don't really lose to the opponents playing well or anything like that you're just kind of like losing because your first step of the game or your standards are low or yep. you're making basic mistakes that are might be costing you the rounds like you can't really analyze it deep enough because you didn't get to the point you, you need to be exactly yeah but for you guys and how your start of the year look look at how you went through the close qualifier first place a blast groups first place Kalovitz is still a deep run almost of playoffs are you satisfied with where you've started the year and do you feel like you're now in good enough form for the RMR which is obviously hugely important I think uh it felt like we were in, a, were in a really good form before going to Katowice. Okay. But now, you know, like we kind of took a step back because we felt like we can make a really deep run. We could challenge every team with the form we had before going to Katowice and just um, the amount of work we did. But now I feel like we worked super, super hard for the past a bit over a month now. and. We took a bit of steam off, like losing two best of threes in, in Katowice. And now we feel like we spoke about the mistakes, but we obviously, the last game we played, we lost, you know, like that, that's the reality. So we need to bounce back into this tournament, just starting with the best of one, trying to do the best we can, just to start the tournament strong. And I think we can pick up the momentum from there. Finally, just what comes with the Na'Vi logo, the roster, you know, what the expectations are. There's pressure when you're at a major like this. Do you feel that'll play a part in this? Yeah, I mean, I feel like not from Navi though. I feel like from everyone who's playing on the team now, like everyone. Of we are proud to announce new additions to the XL series. Both are using fast TN panels and newly upgraded DIAC2 technology. Fast TN panel with its faster native response time can reveal enemy outlines quicker during flashbang attacks. For IPS panel, more overdrive is required to enhance response speed, leading to dynamic image blurring due to the panel's inability to handle the load. These new monitors integrate new dynamic accuracy technology, DIAC2. The upgraded dual backlight design not only provides FPS players with clearer visuals at dynamic aiming and spray control, but are also more friendly to your eyes. Moreover, built in the monitor panel, DIAC2 functions independently and doesn't require any sync with PCs, ensuring no impact on game performance. XL setting to share now has auto game mode feature. Besides download, save, share your settings, it will auto apply different color settings based on your usage scenarios. Outlook of the latest monitors are refreshed. It has incorporated industrial gray bearings into the height adjustment mechanism, allowing easier and smoother adjustment to the exact desired height. The new monitor series continue to evolve, refining details to ensure players can perform their best consistently in games. This is a brief introduction of the new XL monitor. Feel free to DM us if you have any questions. Level up your gaming space with metal posters from Displate. Swap them whenever you like. Hang your disc plates in seconds. Get official art from your favorite games on a uniquely designed metal canvas and choose from thousands of posters. Join over 3 million collectors now. Your wall upgrade is here. Shop now at Displate.com.
Players are changing. Countries are changing. The game has changed. Finds it to perfection and simple. It's all off. Who's been on top of the box? Though. He's got three. He's looking oh, for a fourth. That is incredible. And Rain, he's that away. The best tournament. The best bookmaker. FaZe Clan are always one of the favourites at every tournament they come to, and it's no different here. But I want to just touch with you straight away, carry on. How are you feeling now? Because obviously when I last spoke to you at Katowice, it was rough and it's only been a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously when you think about it, I think I got caught up in the moment, right? I think I have, it like Katowice is one of the tournaments where I kind of feel like a home crowd yeah. uh, after so many years. So when they started chanting my name after the finals, obviously some emotions there. I mean, we didn't really have a big chance. I don't think we threw away the, the final game. Um, it was not our day and they were destined to win, right? So I feel all right, um, but it is strange to go playing one of the biggest tournaments uh, in the calendar in a final to go play a qualifier to the most important tournament two days after. So yeah, reset button didn't really go fully down yet, um, but uh, I think the good thing about it, we are in warm uh, yeah. after playing so many days straight. This major, it's the Copenhagen major, and obviously for you as a Dane, this is hugely important. All majors are important, but is there a special feeling for you in particular? Is this one where you want more than others, maybe? I don't think so. I, I think okay. um, I've played so many times uh, in Copenhagen, in Royal Arena, won tournaments in Denmark. I think if I would never won a big tournament in, in Denmark, I yeah. think this one would mean a lot more. But I also think if you ask the question, once we get to playoff, if we get there, um, the answer is probably different. I just feel like Copenhagen is so far away right now okay. that the Amar is kind of blocking the division and the everything you have pictured around you, right? It is. Yeah. Very dangerous to say, yeah, that means a lot, and we don't even go to go there. Um, so I think I learned my career to have my eyes on the tournament, but don't make it uh, make it or break it tournament because that hurts the the, the way you want to see the calendar. Yeah, and in terms of the calendar, though, ever since CS2 started, you guys now sit the number one team in the world, but you have been consistently dominant throughout all of it. Are you satisfied with where you're at right now overall as a team, and like the progress you've made with Frozen, and just how things are going? For sure. I mean, when you look at uh, how we played and since this to come out, every single grand final we've been in. And I think that's something that we've been really good at, consistently good. Um, we just need to find the final ingredient to, to kind of close it out. Um, I look at finals separately from each other. I think Spirit, they are just destined to win. Um, and I think it's very hard to kind of replicate that. We have to wait and see how they do. Um, and in my opinion, playing, winning, I think, three out of six events, if you count online, um, I think that shows consistent high level. Um, being number one, even though we lost that way, I think we are the team to beat in, in some way, uh, even though there is spirit now that's really hot team. Um, but I think it's, I'm very proud of how consistently good we can be in CS2 and how many best of threes we have won uh, out of how many we lost. So, um, yeah, definitely. Uh, when CS2 came out, I didn't imagine this, um, but obviously um, you want to win the big tournaments, right? So ranked one, number one and not winning, that's not always fun, but I'll take it. Definitely take that. For you though, your opening game is against Nine Pandas. What do you make of this team? I think uh, Nine Pandas started uh, catching my, um, what's called, my attention uh, last few months. I think they did really good in a, in a local, not local tournaments, but a smaller Tier 2 event where mm -hmm. they kind of beat some big names I can't remember. And obviously qualifying for Amar through open or close qualifier. That's always impressive in my eyes. We yeah. saw how many teams that dropped out, right? Um, so, I mean, there's, it's a, him at 12 best of one. So everybody is on even ground. It's even if we are the favorite to win, just by having a best of one, him at 12, first game of the tournament at Amama, um, the odds are always favoring uh, underdogs and that's a nothing to lose, right? So I think they, they have shown great a great um, team play and I'm just looking forward to play a um, little scared, but that's also a good feeling. Uh, that means you're not totally calm with qualifying, but you have to make sure that you are mentally sharp. Completely agree with that. Well, good luck for the opening game. Good luck throughout the whole tournament, mate. Thank you. It's the opening day and the opening games at the PGL RMR here for Europe. I'm going to check in with Fnatic in their practice room. 
as long as they let me in. That is a key thing to this. And just see how people are feeling. They've got a couple of players here who could be making their first ever major appearance. Keita's getting the door. Hello, mate. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. For you guys, uh, you're right for me to come in just to have a little walk yeah, around? Have Thank you. It's like MTV Cribs with the boot camp edition in the practice rooms. Okay, you're watching the game that's going on right now. Yeah, it's not too bad. I think Nine Pandas could uh, pull off an upset. Yeah, I think it's always fun to watch like the like super teams that should do well and then like the, the underdogs because there's always like mega upsets at RMR. So just kind of chilling watching all the games, yeah. Oh yes, anything can happen like that. Hello, Mattis, how are you? Uh, hello, Thrun. Pretty good watching the FaZe Clan game and uh, let's see how it goes. I want to ask you, how are you feeling today? Because this is your first RMR, right? And it could be your first time making the Major. Uh, that's right, that'll be freaking insane to be honest. Also for me individually, also for the team. So yeah, I'm really looking into it and hopefully it will go well. I'm pretty excited for today, for tomorrow. We'll see how it goes again. Can I ask you what the hell this bounce pad is? Uh, Jesus, <laughs> don't ask me that. That's really like introverted question, but don't ask me for that. I don't have an answer for that. I probably have it for Furious already. And yeah, it's pretty slow. That's why I used it so many years before. So that's why. So you're just comfortable with it? This doesn't bother you at all? This just works? Nah, that's just a part of the plan. <laughs> a part of the plan? Okay, I've never seen anything like that. That's a pretty wild one. We've seen Crims is just chilling out here. How are you doing? I'm fine, yeah. yeah. I'm doing very good. You're always so nice now. You've learned this to ask me as well and make me feel better. How are you feeling coming to RMR? So this is your rodeo again and again and again, right? 150 more <laughs> or something. Ah, but it feels good, man. Uh, new game, new possibilities. Uh, yeah, It's just fun to play, man. And that's it, right? For you, coming into a new game, coming to CS2, does it give you a new bit of energy? Uh, yeah. yeah, obviously, like, it's so fun, man. I feel like a kid again. Oh, Afro, okay. You're, you're not watching the game. You're watching the game from the side. No, you're just warming up. So how does warm-up look for you on a day like this? Uh, usually doing G GDM warm-up like this. <laughs> then I'm fully ready if I can hit shots like this, yeah. So if you hit it for shots like this, you'll be ready for this actual game time yeah. and dominate. Yeah. Okay, okay, I like that. Body, my man, how are you? Good and you? I'm doing very good, thank you. Okay, you're watching the other game coming in. VP, this is kind of what you expect from VP? Yeah, this is exactly what I expect from VP, mostly on Ancient. They are very structured, way too structured though. So you're trying to get some extra information, right? Trying to learn some more, got a notepad out as well? Yeah. I'm Learning a lot from Jame, actually, <laughs> every way. No, don't say that, body. We don't want to hear any more of that. We don't want to see more of that gameplay. Keita, for you and the, the guys, what is the thing you like to have the team do or, or how do things work just before we go into a game day like this? I think the armor is quite different in the fact that for the first game, you get like a lot of time to prepare more yeah, than yeah. normal. So we've had like a week to sort of sit and think on it and what the map. So we've sort of spent a lot of time preparing for the game, being more prepared than we normally are. But then I think the weird part is like, after normally after this game you've got like an idea of the bracket how it's going to go you sort of picture in your route how it's going to go whereas i think here you're more like let's take it game by game we literally have pretty much no clue who we're going to play next game yeah. so we're just fully focused on this game and then we could play next game directly after we could have a big break we could have more time to prepare it's really like all up in the air so we're sort of just focused on this game and then take it as it comes i think no, there's no right or wrong way with this that's for sure well thank you very much for letting me in guys good luck throughout your first games and good luck taking on bedroom it is time for another CS2 fantasy draft as we spin the magic wheel, but the wheel will be spun this time by BMAS coming in from Into the Breach. How are you doing? Yo, I'm doing good. Uh, nice to be here. I'm looking forward for the RMR. And yes. I'm looking forward for this game. Yeah, this game is going to be testing how you build your ultimate team. So let's spin it to start off with and see which player your first player will come from. And it will be... Oh, oh. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so that's not a bad starting. Good start. I'll take that. Hmm. How do you, how do you want to build as your foundation? Do you want to go for the IGL first? A star? Maybe a support? Maybe the AWP? I think I will start with the AWP device. Ah, I think okay. he's a very consistent AWP. Yep. He has so much experience on his uh, shoulders. Like, I think it's a, a nice choice. Let's go with that. Device. Nice. So the vice is the start of this great team. And then we see it will come on next to... Mm -hmm. oh. Then. oh, you're getting oh. lucky. This is great. Oh. Okay, this is hard. Okay, so we have You can offer. basically, any of these players is fantastic for you. I want any, oh, I want everyone. <laughs> can I just take face clan? <laughs> I'll go with the IGL, Kerrigan. Uh, yeah, you're probably not gonna get much better than that. That makes yeah, sense. It's, uh, 
it's gonna be hard. Do you think he's the greatest in-game leader of all time? Yeah, for sure, he's like at the top. All right, let's spin it again. Let's see what's gonna happen. Let's go. Ching, 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 ching. Sick. Ooh, oh, oh, you just... Him wait, you're, huh? you're, you're winning. Three winning. big name teams straight away. <laughs> but do you know what's crazy here? Is you already have an AWPA. But technically, Zaiwu could be Yeah, that's multi. what I'm thinking. I'm yeah? going with Zaiwu. <laughs> <laughs> you just take him anyway, right? I'm going with Zaiwu. Zaiwu can rifle as well. So Zaiwu finally gets to rifle on the team because he's with Device and yeah. he's going to be the happiest could, player ever. Could be the second op as well, sometimes. Yeah, true. Well, let's go with that. <laughs> Zaiwu, Device, Kerrigan. So far, this is the most deadly team that has been assembled in Fantasy Draft. <laughs> Who else are we getting? What team are we going for next? No way. Oh, no way. Am I lucky? Or? This, this is really good. <laughs> well, for now, it's an obvious choice for me. I will take JL. I think he has like... A, really? Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, like he, he will make the team uh, environment way better. Yes. He will hype everyone up every round. He's also a good rifler. Mm -hmm. he, can, uh, he can be an aggressive lurker. Yeah, I think he's a, a good fit for the team. I like that. Most people I thought would choose Bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I like that you went for JL. You're really thinking about the dynamic yeah, of this Yeah, also the team. language, I think. Yes, JL true. And yeah, communication might be better. And of course, he's my uh, country mate. So. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. The flag bias does come into it. We've got Zaibu, Device, Kerrigan, JL. And who will be your the last fifth. team to choose from? Oh, that's good. Okay, Quasty. that's, that's better good. than NRG. Very so we'll take this. Obvious choice for me is Elish. Okay. He, he likes to play like aggressive. Mm -hmm. He's a very experienced guy, very insane rifle. For me, he's like, he's been at the top since forever. Ever since I was a kid, I was watching yeah. him. And he's still very good. So yeah, let's go with Elish. Elish in there to finish the roster. So let me ask you, if this roster with no practice time or anything to give, we just put them in the server and they must play through the RMRs, do they make it to the major? They for sure do. They for sure yeah, do. He's that sure. confident in it. I'm confident. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That is the fantasy team with BMAS. Think. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to guess the CS team using emojis. David G from Mobistar Koi is with me here, and this is going to test your knowledge of emojis. Do you use them much in texting and? I use. I do use them, but just not in CS. So not in CS. That's fine. We'll this see how it goes. The goal here is to look at what emojis are given to you and choose which team that might represent. The first one's nice and easy, so let's start with that. Okay, right, I did it. Yeah, yeah. there we go, That's okay. Easy, yeah. If you got that one wrong, we'd be in for a very bad, bad show, but yeah. this is fine now. So on to the next one. I actually don't know this one. It's just like a winner's medal, and then it's a goat. Say what? <laughs> well, simple, but it's not. Navi, I don't know. Yes, Navi, yeah, okay, exactly. Navi. So it's a team, but that's the, it's to see what icons would represent oh, okay, it. Okay, okay. I like how we say goat though, and you say Zaiwu. <laughs> Not simple? Not for you? I mean, for CSGO, probably ah, okay, simple. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> on to the next one. Now, this is very hard. So we got the night sky, yeah? And then we got stars. Stars and the sky. Which team would that represent? Yeah, he, he, he knows it. You can say, photo friend. Uh, I think it's Australia's. Yeah, it's Australia. Because of the star, yeah. Yeah, I, come I, on! I, I forgot about the star, yeah. He had some team help, but we'll allow that. He can have a point for that one. Next. You <laughs> 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 just laugh at this one. I don't... I don't even, I don't know anyone. Like, uh, I just knew the first one and then... No, no, you got okay, think. This is a bear, a white bear. Yeah. Very famous team, even from the old days of Counter-Strike. They won a major in 2014. They won a major in Rio. Who won Rio? Oh, it's name. VP. VP, yeah. there we go, see? Next. Guild Eagles? Boom, we're bad news, Eagles, but, yeah, but you, yes, Eagles. you are correct. Now, this one's hard. <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> That's a croissant and then Japan. <laughs> How does that relate? <laughs> so I think a croissant because it it was a f old French team. Yeah, they used to have French players on the team. They don't anymore. 
This G2, team. it's G2. Boom, there we go, see? And then the Samurai as well. And look, Samurai, yes, yeah, yeah. see? There we go. Now you, you're getting it, this is yeah, good, yeah. this is good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a superhero, no? Yes, so think of what you just said, a superhero, and then a knife, stabbed. Oh. It's heroic. <laughs> Everyone gets this. Only yeah, this, this, this one is easy, actually. Yeah. Okay, next time we do this, I want to just put a picture of only a knife and see if anyone gets this yeah, right. That's every, the... Everyone would guess it, I think. <laughs> next one. What is this? <laughs> uh... So think of a kind of angry face. Yeah, the sun. Lovely sun in the country. And football. So? Maybe? Well, no, no, I think of a America's team, but they're not American. And their owner of the team does football. I have no idea, actually. They're the only ones competing, like, at this... Um... Yeah, but I don't know the... Okay, they got, they got absolutely destroyed in Katowice again, again. By a Mongolian team. Oh, it's Puri. Yeah! <laughs> See? <laughs> that, that sudden realization, yeah. Yeah, the, the second you told me they got destroyed by me. <laughs> <laughs> so you understand the Counter-Strike, yeah, but yeah. not the emojis. <laughs> exactly. But that's why you're a Counter-Strike player, and that's yeah. why I just mess around with emojis all day. Thank you very much, man. <laughs> Thank you.
Welcome back, everybody, to the PGL CS2 EU RMR. We are halfway through day one now, and it's time to move into the second half and enjoy more top-tier Counter-Strike action. My name is Parla. I'm still your desk host. I'm still joined on the desk by some of the finest analysts in the game, Blair and Maniac. Boys, a little bit of rest and recuperation now, 20 minutes off? Yeah, had a cup of coffee, you know, got a little bit of fresh air as well, and hopefully some of these teams are going to be seeing right now, they've managed to get a little bit of reset as well. Probably. Yeah, that's a very short reset. That's yeah. very unique in Counter-Strike. Kind of you just get literally like an hour to three hours max to play your next game, so we'll see if the teams are able to continue on their journey, or there's no reset possible. Gentlemen, let's take a look at what's going to be transpiring over the A and B stream over the rest of today. You can see our main stream schedule on screen now. So we'll kick things off with Saw versus Nine Pandas. Then we'll move into Bet Boom versus ITB, FaZe Clan versus Falcons, G2 Esports versus Eternal Fire. Let's point out as well that these first two matches are teams in our Swiss format that are 0 to 1. And then when we get into FaZe Clan, Falcons, G2 Esports, Eternal Fire, those teams are 1 0. Yeah, those first four teams, like Saw, Nine Pandas, Bet Boom, and ITB, it's such an uncomfortable position to be. And you're 0 1 down. This was just, this still a chance, but you lose this one as well. You really don't want to lose this. You're going to be in a rough spot. Hey. Now you need to win three best of threes Listen, in a row. Call the pressure's on. Call me heartless, but I don't care. I'm talking about the last two games. Look at the kind of match that we kind. have. you got to be kind. Look at the match that we have. you got to set it up. It's, we have time to be romantic. FaZe versus Falcons. That's a big one. G2 versus EF. Mm -hmm. Both these games pack a punch in the 1-0 combination. Oh my god, this is these are rough games to call as well. The FaZe the face Falcons game especially, I think it is the matchup for me among these four. But again, G2 and Eternal Fire, you can never count Eternal Fire is what we've seen from them very recently as well. So 100% agree. I think the, the end of the day is at least going to be bangers. Yeah, like we've just addressed, those first two matches, you don't want to go 0-2 to two because then you're one step away from being out of the RMR. So a lot of pressure on those teams' shoulders. And those second two matchups, two really strong potential showings of Counter-Strike. Looking forward to watching how both play out. Moving on, secondary stream, NIP versus Mkarl is also starting very shortly. 3D Max versus Movistar, Koi will follow shortly after. Yep, both of those Two matches are teams that are 0 to 1. And then from 8 p.m., we've got Virtus Pro versus Fnatic and Na'Vi versus Enterprise. Those two sets of matches, all teams 1 to 0. I was uh, watching outside 3D Max. We're having a bit of a team talk, team conversation, of course. Um, the vibes weren't exactly the best. I think everybody <laughs> had the same idea that, oh my god, we really misplayed some of these situations against Falcon. So the coach was trying to kind of rally the troops up, trying to keep the morale going. You know, that you can still uh, very much impact and direct your story within the RMR today, as we pointed out. If you go down to Movistar Koi now and you're 0-2, uh, from, from a mental perspective, I don't think 3D Max got the backbone to come back from that. It would be too long a journey. At, at least they have the, the awareness, right? So that's one tiny, very sliver of a silver lining they have to work in. For me, the first match, right, the NIP game against Amcal, I know I've been you know, kind of crapping on NIP all this while, but I'm looking at that matchup and I'm like, if there was ever a time for you guys to show you have something, something to work with, that has to be the game. You can't just go 0-2 and two in the very day one of the RMR. That's where we're setting the bar for NIP, beating Amical. At least there's a bar. Setting the bar. At least there's a bar. Cool. Mania. I'm okay with that. You're okay with that? Whenever cool. there is a bar, I'm generally okay with it. I know you mentioned 3D Max and your expectations for them, Matthew, but uh, Blair and Maniac, are you expecting to see anything else out of these 0-1 to one teams? You expect to see more energy, more attempts at making plays, anything different. They need to switch things up if they are not to fall 0-2. to two. The thing is, when it comes to like the the second round of matchups, right, like you pointed out, there's not much time not just to rest and recuperate, but also the very last time to really prep for the teams you're going to be facing That's off right. against. That's going to be a thing. And on top of that, it's a best of one. So you're not necessarily going to be getting your usual map pick, for example. It's not a best of three, right? So I feel personally, uh, a lot of these teams who are in zero one bracket, they're going to be just looking very quickly back at what went wrong in the opening match up, fix some of the small things, the easy things which can be mm. fixed, and play your game. I know it sounds like a cliche here, you can but, say but you need to play your game. We're allowed once a day. Once a day once we a can day? say That's play your game. You, you, you punch your ticket, you're good on that one. I'm done. 
Guys, let's focus in on our first matchup of the second half of the day. Saw versus Nine Pandas. Let me set the scene for everybody at home. So, Saw fell to VP on Ancient 13 to 6. And FaZe beat out Nine Pandas 13 to 6 on Mirage. Both teams in this matchup had a tough time. All good? No, no, I was just going to say Saw versus VP. There is a lot of history in there. Let's just go back a yep. little bit. That okay, sure. Two, if you want to years ago, deeper two, recap. Two, two go game. Ahead. Antwerp RMR, overtime on Inferno. So well, about to qualify for the major. Deep they get side. Ninja Diffuse by Jame at the, or not even Ninja Diffuse, but a Diffuse that goes about to kill. 0 0.0001 second at the very end. And the story of So at the RMR has always been one of heartbreaks. You're talking about finishing dead last for the last two RMR, and then there was this all no situation in Antwerp. So we don't really get to see much of them. In fact, they just peek here and there. You see their head above the water for some of these RMRs. A, a pro league apparition, where you, you don't really do too much of an impact. You kind of go back flowing again. Some members here have been there forever, basically. Likes of Mutiris, Roman, more than four years within the jersey. But we, we, we are hoping to see a little bit more of an impact coming out of them. It, they're just journeymen when these events usually pop around the that corner. That particular event where they had the heartbreak against James oh. in 1v1. Oh. They were also the oldest team in the entire event, if memory serves me right. They're the average age of like late 20s or something. Here at least have some new blood coming in. New blood, I say, of course, these are names which have been known for quite a while. But again, I'm looking at these two teams, Saw and Nine Pandas, and one thing that strikes me out looking at the stats and the numbers is that they've been on the grind on the online scene. They've just been on the grind. I'm looking at Nine Pandas, for example, over 180 maps in the past six months. Looking God at damn. Saw, over 120 maps being played. So they've been playing a lot. But then I look at the results. Results aren't great. It's been a lot of losses, you know, more than wins, so to speak. But at least they've been putting in the work. And now is when you need to see the work, you know, really bear some fruit, Paolo. Let me have some key to, keys to victory for both teams. Again, as we've already addressed, you don't want to lose this one. There's a lot of pressure here. So what can these teams do to relieve the pressure off their shoulders and perform to their best? Blair, starting with you. No, I feel it's going to come down to a couple of individuals who I think kind of fell completely flat in the opening matchups. That being said, you went up against VP, you go up against Face, it's never mm. going to be easy to pop off. I look at Dillides for the side of Nine Pandas, and I, and I look at Uge Jerks, I hope I pronounced the name right, for the side of Saw. The one thing I like about these two players are not only are they the highest rated players, the highest impact players on their respective teams, but on the T side especially, they take the most number of duels. They have the highest amount of success as well. They're getting these numbers while being aggressive on the T side, and from what we saw, whatever I was able to gauge with a little I saw in the first two games, they got nothing really going in the T side. They just got shut down. Yeah, I think VP is probably one of the hardest team to surprise in that sense. We usually paint him as the gatekeeper. And then when it comes to nine pandas, their T side versus phase was surprisingly competitive. I think we saw them ready to take on fights and skirmishes left and right. But when they moved on to their CT side, I would say they probably allowed phase too much space, maybe a little bit too much respect as well. You can think about the name value of the players going up against you. I don't think there is going to be a factor here. I think if you're nine pandas, you might actually consider yourself favorite going up in, in this matchup. I don't think you would extend the respect to Saw that you did to Face Clan. So maybe bring a little bit more of that pep in your CT side, trying to be a little bit more aggressive, be out there, be daring more than what you did in your first matchup, because I think they were not very comfortable to be passive in these late round situations. The reads were a little bit complicated. So I would like them to be a little bit more proactive on their city side compared to what I've seen in the first game. And also got to point out as well, like the first half, sure, it was competitive, but you know, uh, just based on what we saw, FaZe were also looking, apart from Rops, FaZe seemed to start up a little bit slow when it comes to individuals, players like Frozen, for example, like Brokey and Rain as well. But once they woke up, it was a bit of a, of a, of a problem for the side of uh, Nine Pandas. Here's the thing though, I agree with you, at least based on what it's, uh, the, the results and et cetera, et cetera, looking at the players and what not, Nine Pandas would be the favorites. But I'm looking at the last time these two teams played, which was at the close qualifiers for this very event. Saw smacked them. Oh. 13 1 Ew. and 13 9 on two maps in the best of three, which is a big Dang. shocker for me. So even though, if I, if I didn't have this particular stat with me, this particular matchup for me, I'd be like, yeah, they should be going the way of Nine Pandas. But then I look at the past results and it seems like Saw might just have their number. Listen, I cannot invalidate this result. That's a very good point you're bringing up. I do have the feeling that once you go below a certain point within these rankings, mm -hmm. results get so confusing. Yes. The this, results get skewed a oh lot. Oh my God. And people will beat everybody else and then get beaten by whoever beat them before. And <laughs> I just lose track of, okay, who's supposed to be super? Like, transactivity does not work mm -hmm. at all in Counter-Strike. But here in this very case, it does feel like that's a pretty much uh, spanking that just happened in the best of three. My God. That's brutal. And uh, fortunately, though, it is going to be Anubis coming out to play. That's a map we didn't get to see in that particular matchup. Also, you know, if you look at the earlier matchups, it was Mirage, which was played by, by Nine Pandas. And 
the Ancient, I believe, was a map where VP took down uh, Saw as well. So we haven't seen Anubis coming out from these teams so far. But I agree with you. I mean, I'm looking at the the caliber, the, rather the the difference in the levels of teams we saw in the first round, where it's mm. easier for us to make a, a decision or an expectation is being set. Here is much more murkier. And even though, yeah, sure, Saw took them down 13-1, 13-9 just a couple of weeks ago, it would completely flip you because out of pressure is on, Paula. It's a best of one. And if you lose, you're in a rough spot. You're in a very rough spot. And Okay, never mind. Game is ready, everybody. I was going to make That's another point. Me. That's Let's great. Let's give it that, guys. Official predictions quickly. Ooh, uh, nine pandas. Nine pandas? The pandas as well. All, all right, panda, everybody all at home, my analysts are going with the pandas. Hopefully for you Saw fans, Saw can have a soaring performance. With that being said, everybody, it's time to get our new casting pair involved. Two legends of the game, Anders and Henry, over to you. Thank you so much, Parla. And yes, indeed, Saw taking on nine pandas. Welcome to the second half of day one of the RMR here. This is the lower bracket game, I suppose. Anders in the Swiss system, zero and one. The analysts have said their words and they think nine pandas are the favorites here. I think it's still a bit of a question mark. Uh, Nubis, no stranger to either of these two teams. They play it a lot and we're kicking things off at the A bomb side. Nine pandas on the T side here up against Mr. Aras Dosse with the dual elite Sanders. Yeah, the perfect weapon, but he can't get the first bullets off. Unfortunately, he's going to go down. Clax will take down Story, and that will open up the A bomb site. Yeah, both these teams, they need a win right now. Best of one games, absolutely everything on the line. Muturis trying to see if he can make his way around the bomb site, but they're everywhere. Oh, he's in a battle for his life. That is a great burst fire. Delete is coming up with a couple of stunning shots in this one. I think he entered the triple. What a round for him. Very nice play there. Pretty basic from Nine Pandas. A execution. Didn't waste any time to get the A main control. And once they took down Aras Dosse, it seemed like a foregone conclusion. The red carpet was rolled out on the A bomb site. C4 goes down and no retake was possible whatsoever. It all started here. So Edits managing to open things up. Clax joining in as well. And then this frag by frag. U Jokes put up somewhat of defense, but uh, unfortunately, not much to say about the pistol round for Saw. They will have to take the full eco here in round number two. USPs pretty much across the board. They've got a single flashbang invested, and as we know what that means, uh, some sort of stack this time at the B bomb site, looking to flash in, ideally get a couple of kills if possible. Yeah, minimal investment, always worth it. It makes the casters happy whenever you buy that flashbang. This is a real old school game, isn't it? You got Henry G and Anders casting, you got seized on the server. <laughs> seized? Everything you want to see. I can't believe it. 2015 all over again. He's still around. It's unbelievable. I mean, to be to be fair, Roman and, and Muteris have been True. around for a really long time too. So, yeah. it's got some some real old school people hanging around still with the game. Well, there it is. That was the easy one. Nine pandas have no real troubles dealing with the mid swing there here in the second round. But this is where things get a little bit more problematic. I would say the M4s almost certainly going to be deployed now. We've got a Famous in the hands of Aras Dosse, M4s otherwise. And in terms of kits, they actually haven't got one, my friend Anders. So uh, we'll see if they can fend off these Galils. Bit of a bonus situation for Pandas if they can win it. But for now, it looks like we've maybe got a bit of a technical timeout. Good to get out of the way early, I would say. That's what we always hope for. Um, yeah, I like to keep an open mind about this game too. I feel like it's very hard to predict who's going to be coming out on top. I think the desk was making a reasonable point when it comes to some of these slightly lower tier matches. Very, very oh, hard yeah. to figure out what's going on down here. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know for sure either. And MR12 best of one, that's pretty, it's pretty rough. Yeah, well, this one's just a slight mic issue. So uh, hopefully we won't be... Messing around for too long here, a chance for us to catch our breath and uh, just have a look at what's gone down today as well. We've got four games, including this one, to come. They're all best of ones uh, for now that we've got the 0-1 game, uh, the loser's game, I suppose you want to call it that, after Saw dropped down to VP 13-6 and Nine Pandas lost a phase, also 13-6, looking to recalibrate, retool as they look for a 1-1 one, one scoreline here in the RMR. If you're not familiar, 0-3 means you're eliminated. And if you get three wins under your belt, it means you're through to the major itself. But uh, for now, round three, as mentioned, Saw will have the rifles at the very least. We'll see what kind of stance they want to take here. CT aggression certainly is an option. Maybe not this early on. We'll see Musiris. Well, it's off towards the middle at the very start. And in terms of the initial layout from Nine Pandas, quite a default setup in terms of the methodology. No set piece from the start like we saw in the pistol. Molotov towards double doors. I'm going to go for some basic mid control if possible. Well, like you mentioned already, the lack of a diffuse kit here means it's pretty important for Saw to keep the T's out of any bomb sites. Like, don't let him plant the bomb. It's going to be such a hard retake no matter what. So we'll see. They're setting up. The smokes are going to be everywhere. We'll see. Down in front, U Jerks here. 
If he runs back, he's going to get smoked off as well. And we'll see if they get the bomb planted. I feel like the T... Oh, that's a nice Molotov. It's going to say they have to slow them down before the bomb gets planted. We know that already, but they're being put under a lot of pressure here. Put into the corner by the Molotov now. You can see U-Jerks trying to play a bit of a double position, but there's another Molotov. Lands oh on God. top. <laughs> oh, absolutely called out. Nine pandas. What a way to clear that corner. They wanted to go for the old trick where you have two players in exactly. the corner. You check one, you forget to check the other, but the Molotov, it checks everything. The bait and switch there. And that round is win by virtue of utility, I would say, Anders. Didn't really have to take many heads-up jewels and many aim battles, to be honest with you. Just flushing those CTs out, taking vision away, and that last Molotov towards the platform. A, a thing of beauty there, as uh, you can see. Only one player going down in the form of eye disbalance. Two will survive on the source side, but it's Aris Dossier and Mutira saving a Famas and an M4, respectively. So, yeah, very convincing there from Nine Pandas. We said this was a bit of a, a bonus round, Anders. They're going to upgrade those Galils to M4s. A couple of AKs in the mix as well as four players survive. That is as clean cut as you like there. Nice little default. Bleed out that utility. B execution coming through with three players towards the dark room. Fantastic usage of the Molotovs, especially. Four players survive, and nine pandas up three and zero. What a way to kick things off. And they had three people at the start of the bomb site, so they had plenty of people there. They just they just couldn't hold on to it. The double Molotov. Slightly separated in time. Well, the first Molotov kind of isolated them on the platform. Yep. They couldn't rotate. And the second lands on top of them as well. So you're just surrounded <laughs> by the flames as uh, they're consumed by it. Unable to even get vision as well. You can see the incandescence of the flames themselves actually making it very difficult to see in towards B main. And down they went, says Saw now in a world of trouble. This timeout will be tactical, my friends, as uh, the lost bonus is accumulating on the CT side. Not necessarily enough. They've got themselves on average $3,000 per player on the CT side. We all know that is not enough, Anders. That's going to be like half by territory. We're talking uh, some upgraded pistols. They did save the M4 and the Famas, but I wouldn't recommend going all in here. Uh, just try and maybe get a little bit of extra utility, some five sevens perhaps, as we see if they can make a dent here. In round number four, three zero for nine pounders. But bear in mind, as we always say, Anders, this is the most T-sided map we have in the yes. pool, hands down. There's, there's no debate to be had. Maybe early stages of Ancient could be in that conversation, but not anymore since the patches. Yeah, it's worth keeping in mind. I do like what uh, Nine Pandas are bringing to the to the table right now. It's very straightforward. There's not a lot of sort of faking and running back and forth. Like they're just straightforwardly heading a bomb site. Maybe they slow down a little bit, but once they go, they're really all in on it. So hard to stop if you don't have the equipment for it on the CT side. Roman, okay. getting a kill somehow. Yeah, first real fumble here from Nine Pandas. There was an absolute sitting duck of a kill there with the AWP. Uh, this battlers couldn't quite find it, and all of a sudden. 5-7 swings out, Roman manages to give them an advantage, but can they hold on to it though? We have got players encroaching towards the dark room right now, and that 5-7 and Deagle combo could be quite potent. Needs to be on a high alert here, and it will be u to get the second. They've got a 5 versus 3 here, but here comes Klax, managing to work his way up towards Canals. Muter is well aware. Three versus four. Still plenty of time left. He's just scoped up. He's in a good position. Could have had the kill probably. Klax on the other side. Don't know how he's able to get that one, but he is back into a three versus three. And again, the weapons Ooh. are going to be favoring that T side. Not missing the shot this time. I no. disbalance with two <laughs> big kills to bring them back into the round. Arasdase, the last one left. And they can guess that he might be coming from this direction. One versus three. I don't even know what you could really do. Maybe a kill. Upgrade to the M4. I think he gets this one. There we go. M4 and peace out. Yeah, that's pretty much the top end. There's very few options here. Two players survive for nine pandas. They increase the scoreline once again. Taking that grand total up to four rounds. Playing source zero. Uh, bear in mind that that was uh, an eco. Technically, they saved that Famas and M4. Uh, some very light investment around it. And you know the chickens can swim now? I'm seeing that. Uh, don't know how to feel about it. Um, Never yeah. seen a chicken in water in real life. I don't know. Do they float? Do they like water? Well, that one, he's gone. There's some potential content for us here, Henry. We could buy some chickens and find out. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm just go to the chicken shop and just pick some up, yeah? I'm sure it's possible. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we've been hearing a lot about the Source 2 engine and what it could do for the future. So well, yeah. like, there's, there's got to be some real potential here. <laughs> yeah, the chicken technology has never been more exciting than what we're seeing in 2024. But uh, his Klax recovering the five on three, bear in mind. It was an uncomfortable round, but Idis Balance, as you mentioned, starts landing some impressive shots there. Aras Dosse manages to save the M4, and with maximum loss bonus now established, they do at least have a pretty decent buy, and he's start posting some rounds yet. Like, sure, 4-0 is uh, an uncomfortable scoreline, but still very early days here. And uh, 
plenty of opportunities to bounce back. We've got the orb this time in the hands of Young Story. Yeah, he's definitely had some really cool highlight story. I wouldn't overlook him if you're new to watching the uh, Soul play, then, you know, something to look forward to there. Currently, they've had a bit of a rough start, but definitely someone I think that could maybe bring them out of this slump here. All right, Clax. I like those lineups. What have you got for us? Grades in towards middle. Oh, no one there to receive it, but towards A main we go. What if that smoke to dissipate? They've got three members of Nine Pandas this side of the map, setting up the one man execution potentially here. First objective, Anders get control of A main. Flush out any close range CTs, and that Molotov will do just that. They have to fall back. They've got to respect it. CTs will take the fight once again. It's an equal exchange for now as we go into a four and four. 45 seconds remaining. Reaction coming through as well. We're going to see the CTs try and reclaim territory elsewhere, but there should be a trade available. It's going to be a nice man advantage here. The time is of the essence, as mentioned, is Roman alone on that B bomb site. If they end up here, he's got a lot to do and only an HE to try and fend them off with. You can see Mutiras in two mines here. Where do they finish up? A lack of information to say the very least. There's still execution potential for nine pandas. They still have the majority of their smokes. A couple of Molotovs, flashes available, dark control. He did just say it's Roman. He didn't need at least two kills there, Anders, just yeah. to start the conversation. This is possible. Oh, he's already revealed himself. Not going to happen. Seized will take him right down, and the rest of them giving up that M M AWP. I don't think it's even worth it. Yeah, throw in the grenade if you want to, but unless you somehow got a double kill with it, you shouldn't even be thinking about the round. So they're already going to be walking away. Five and a in favor of Nine Pandas. And this was a slightly more complicated round from Nine Pandas, right? Trying to set up some grenade action in the middle, trying to pressure the A-bomb side, deciding to fall away from that once they kind of got Molotov out of position, and then falling back into the B-bomb side at the end of it. But they just, it worked out anyway. Good catch from... Glowing, I think it was, who was catching them, sort of pushing out of the B-bomb site. It's one of the ways you can actually do something on the CT side of this particular map. It can be very stressful just waiting around inside of the bomb site. So they were trying to push her out from the CT point of view, try and get some information about what's happening. I suppose they got the information, but it cost them way too much. And, oh, oh, no! Not the AWP, <laughs> Henry, right at the end. That's so painful. Yeah. Twisting the knife at the very end of the round. It's 5-0. Money in absolute shambles as well. They saved them four, but it's more partial by territory. And this A main control has been so successful for the Pandas. Managing to trade out, understanding the reaction protocols of the CTs as well. Once they've got that A main control, taking those kills down, no problem. They're seized. The old veteran keeping up as well. Currently at three and one. Looks like everyone's chiming in on the nine Pandas side. The second tactical pause has been called by the Portuguese squad of Saw. Uh, yes, maximum loss bonus, but that only gets you so far on the CT side. Once again, they can justify some 5-7s, some Desert Eagles potentially, but uh, needs to start showing us those strong buys. Just to note, Story's got $7,100. So yeah, I was going to say, you might see some sort of investment here. I don't think it's an all-in maneuver, but Story's going to get the hero AWP. A saved M4, some MP9s, a couple of pistols in the mix as well. Now, if Story's going to show us that he can hang at this level. He needs to turn up right here, right now. He's 0 and 5 currently. So is Saw in general. Yeah. Oh my god. Nice grenade thrown from inside of the A bomb site. It's going to land on a couple of people right there. But apart from that, they are missing some utility on the Saw side of things. Yeah, they didn't go all in. But uh, certainly a serviceable round. They can make this one work. But it's going to be difficult to say the very least. And back towards A we go. It's been such a. Successful little gambit here from Nine Pandas. Strong smoke from the CT side, but might not be respected. You obviously can pop those open with the HE, flash through it, and there might even be some pathing available just to walk around the smoke itself. Smokes towards heaven, and indeed the camera room. Molotov towards bricks, you'd imagine. Here come the flashes, and the final commitment in towards the A side. Good Molotov thrown down from Uterus, but it doesn't really matter. They've already run through. The leader's back at it again. He's been having some really great openings. Plants, plants way out to the side. Yeah, it's a very good position, and they've already called it. They don't. They can't really go into the round. No defuse kit or anything else to really retake with. So. Yeah, you can't justify losing this orb as well. Like we said, it's the hero AWP. If that goes down for nothing in vain on a retake that doesn't look possible, that would be an absolute disaster. So they'll, they'll hold on to it. It is going to be 6-0, though. 
Difficult to get excited about this game thus far. Um, Saw not really putting up much of a fight. Uh, I still say, though, Anders, that we've seen these huge leads be des destroyed time and time again. Yes. Um, I'm sure there'll be some sort of rebuttal here. Eventually, uh, on the CT side, you want to be getting at least three, four rounds, if possible. So I'm not worried just yet. Still plenty of Counter-Strike left to be played. Their money's pretty decent. But Nine Pandas, absolutely flying starts here. They've got themselves almost five digits on everyone as uh, they set up their T campaign. Looking very good so far. Something to be excited about. I do like this, again, the straightforward nature of Nine Pandas here. Sometimes you see teams that try and sort of overcomplicate things way too much. They're not like, really even like splitting bomb sides. They're no. not even going through mid control. They're, they're doing the mid protocols, like double nade, even some triple nade sometimes, models off the doors, push the CTs back, but then they're going into a five man execution through A main. They're not going for those splits. You're right. It's a nice basic approach, but. The execution seem overwhelming. There's been no response. There's been no clutch scenarios where you think there's a chance the Saw might win the round. So why overcomplicate things? Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you have the team and you have the, the protocols to do really advanced stuff, then maybe that's fun and interesting. But, but if you don't, then some of the basics here are just going to work way better anyway. So same. I like it. There's that same mid utility. The CTs are certain the mid is clear. We're going to go for another set piece in towards this B bomb site. Molotov's flash is being deployed. It's going to be an entry coming in from this dark room right now. Roman to defend. And you can see his vision has been obscured to say the very least. U Jerk's taking matters into his own hands. It's a face full of lead instead. Another opening kill with nine pandas and an open bomb site, Anders. How do you retake this? What's the plan now? Well, they have the defuse kits this time, so maybe it's possible. But what a crossfire that's been set up from nine pandas. Before the bomb is even down, they try and flash their way through, but. Roman's dead already. They've got to go for it, I guess. Yeah, they want they want a round. They're not getting it. <laughs> yeah, well, Delitas he can't win it anymore. Absolutely taking care of business. Another triple kill for him. He's 11-3 at the moment. Arrows Dossier and Story just going to have can, to walk away. You can see how desperate they are. Like yeah. I don't I don't actually hate it. It was a five on three, but you're so desperate for a round at this point. We've got to give it a go. We can't just keep saving over and over again. Missed shot from Story. Is he yet to frag? Yes, indeed. 0-5, and I dare say he's going down. Courtesy of Seized. Nice little hunt here. He probably gets the last kill as well. He'll buy some time, knowing they can pincer it together. Maybe takes the challenge too early, but still absolutely nails the shot. I reckon Ujerx might have been suffering from a bit of PTSD in that corner. I think he was expecting for a Molotov to land on him, just like right. he did earlier. Yeah. Like, it was the same <laughs> protocol that we're going to, same smokes coming down, so he's probably just thinking, because he jumped out, he just jumped into the fight. I think he's, he's trying to stay one step ahead. You see right here, like, he's just running straight into it, but... What a hard game this has turned into. Nine pandas absolutely yeah, demolishing was, sore at the moment. I was super stoked. I was ready to bring some hype today. Some uh, That's still epic early. atmosphere, you know, but uh, so far, not so good on our shift at least. 7 0. It's the T side of Anubis. Bear that in mind. Bang it home once again. It's a very T sided map, but uh, yeah, I don't think that's been the factor so far. This has been way too clean for Nine Pandas. Looking incredibly comfortable as we all take the third tactical timeout for Saw in the first half. It's a best of one, fair play, but that means they're going to struggle for tactical insight from the coach going forward. 10 seconds remaining on this freeze time, 7-0. As we mentioned, maximum loss bonus. They do have the AWP, but there will be MP9s for mass in the mix as they fully invest in round number eight. Come on, Saw. Let's get going now. Need a bit of magic here from Story. Needs to find at least that first frag. The leaders has two more kills than the entire Saw team combined yeah, at the no, moment. I, I saw that and I was like, that's, <laughs> that can't be true. But yeah. It is, unfortunately. Let's see if Story could get something done. I was hyping up earlier. Oh, he does, man, Mr. Come on. Flick. It's not what you want to see. A smoke down on top and already the bomb site is pretty much one. lost here. They've got a couple of people in dark towards the middle, but a quick bomb plant here could absolutely mess this up for the CT side. Now we're they're getting, getting shot at the back. This is horrible, Henry. They're What's happening? Manhandled. They really are. Like if Story can't hit those, I'm sorry, quite basic shots, but for an orphan standard, like they're gonna have a lot of trouble here. They're completely smoked out of the bomb site. You've got to go for it again, Anders. You can need a round. Someone has to step up. I, I don't hate it. Like someone has to find a miracle. Like sure, it's almost certain you're gonna go down there, but need to pull the rabbit out of the hat if possible. Roman, <laughs> just absolutely wrecked. Yeah, we all saw that one. Again, just getting the beta control on the default, wait for the CT aggression, execute into the bomb site. They've got absolutely no idea what's going on. If they hit that first all shot, they alleviate a lot of pressure. They've got the advantage, it slows them down. It takes some of the pacing out of the execution itself, but I'm sorry, 
Story's missing the, the easy shots now. Like, he has to hit that one, and they're going to stand yeah. a chance. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. Like, that's definitely true. And he knows it as well. Like, yep, that, 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 that's an opportunity there. That's the shot you're supposed to hit. You're in the position. You've seen him before the smoke blooms, and you've missed it by a good couple of feet as well. Anyway, we've got ourselves pistols pretty much across the board. This is an eco, Anders. They don't even have the Kevlar to go with it. Things are going from bad to worse here. The sword. Only a few more rounds left. Like I said, a, a few rounds ago, I was like, okay, when it's 6-0, we can, we're still fine. We, we can work this one out. This is going to be 9-0. So maybe that point is no longer stands, but uh, maybe they can make this one a little bit more interesting. We haven't had a single clutch scenario. A moment where you think, okay, no. this guy might be able to do the round. There's been nothing in that sense. They've just had to save or try and save at the very least, and they seem to lose absolutely everything on roots with that endeavor as well. Smoke down towards the temple side of middle. CTs clutching at straws, to say the very least. And once again, Anders, three players towards dark. Set up that utility from B main. Molotovs, flashbangs go in. And there seems to be no response from that dark room. They just can't lock it down whatsoever. They don't know how to shut them out. But three players are making mincemeat of this side of the map. Hicking the flashes once again. It's you jerks getting a face full of them. Need some beautiful Deagle headshots here. There's a chance. Opportunities to get the frags. Will be Roman striking from the platform. You just goes down. Story gets his first frag of the game. It's nowhere near enough to win the round as of yet. And will continue to be the set story as he goes down as well. Another convincing round. That's maybe the closest round we had though, Anders. And that's saying something. <laughs> like, <laughs> for the round with five sevens, they get two kills. That's up there with some of the most competitive rounds we've had. Oh dear. I mean, apart from the execute itself, right, where they get all the smokes down that they kind of wanted, they set up the flashbangs to go through the smokes if needed, and then but the, uh, something that I like about Nine Pandas at the moment is they're very comfortable just standing right at the tip of the bomb site. Like they're fight, they're taking those, them their time to get those fights, even if there's only twenty seconds of the round. They're not really too stressed at the moment, and Saw don't have the utility to to make it uncomfortable either. So they're really making great use of some of the smaller moments in these rounds. They're not just running onto the side to try and get the bomb planted immediately. They're slowing it down, saying, okay, if, if you want to fight, we'll fight, and we're going to win those fights. So, pretty impressive stuff at the moment. 9-0 for 9 Pandas. Story finally on the board. Muter is as well, but my God, it is late. <laughs> when that's the, the best news they've got. I know. Your player has one kill after <laughs> nine rounds of play. Yeah, we are scraping the barrel, to say the very least here. The positive signs of life here from the Portuguese squad. Another buy available. Story, you gotta wake up with this orb. Nine Panda is, is having fun out there right now. Back in the default. A main control obtained. Molotov to flush out the fountain. There will be a player there. Aristose just... They just don't have the setups, the protocols to deal with that. That Molotov, you need the smoke on top of it. Need your teammate to back you up. They're caught with their pants down once again. Where are the comms, boys? Why does your teammate have no idea they're walking through B main? He just got a frag. He, he just killed someone at Temple. He just walked right in there. <laughs> that completely demolished the defense. They're just like, they've got no idea what's going on here. This is, they're getting wrecked in every facet of Counter Strike. The best thing they can hope for now is saving once again the AWP and the M4. But there's not even any real resistance on these bomb sites. Everywhere Nine Pandas choose to go, they're surviving the rounds with four players alive. They they've got sixteen thousand dollars, essentially on three players now. Anders, they're going to have sixteen k on three different players. I have not seen that in CS2. No, that's it's a rare sight. Unbelievable what we're witnessing at the moment here. It's going to be a ten and zero lead. I don't Look know what, the, I mean, at this point, I would say maybe you do want to be real desperate about it and really try and do sort of more of the, like, do, you know, push middle with a couple of people. <laughs> yeah, you know, throw like, caution to the wind at this point. The starter's getting some frags. Don't let them run their defaults. Like, sabotage their ideology at the starter. Make sure you're getting in there and uh, taking them down. Just like in the Saw movies, Henry, you've got to sacrifice somebody to, <laughs> to save the rest, you know, that's what I took away I mean, from that. How many Saw movies are there now? Like, I think we're up to like, yeah, something like, I, I actually went on like a spree and watched like six of them in a row or something. It's very, it's very interesting. I'm sure they probably picked up. Up. Like, there's a reason they keep making them. Normally, I hate it when they just keep uh, rehashing the same IP over and over again. But it's just so I absurd. Not, at I don't this mind point. those films. They're yeah. all right. You might as well keep. They're it a bit going. silly. They're fun. Why not? Keep it going. But yeah, 
Nobody's managed to chop off an arm or a leg yet for the for the sake of the team yet. Unfortunately for the CTs because they are they're in deep trouble at the moment. I don't even know I don't know how we can make it more clear. We can't really. I think the score says it all at this stage. Like sword just haven't turned up in any sense of the word. Uh, again, it's another eco Anders. We're talking deagles. Five sevens. A uh, cheeky MP9 for Mutiris here, and that is about it. I have no idea how they make this one work, but these are the sort of rounds when you're this desperate, someone finds a bit of magic here. A couple of Deagle headshots. If we can get 10-2, <laughs> I'm not saying they can really do anything with it. Even 10-2 would be uh, a remarkable comeback, but it would be better than 12-0, I'll tell you that much. Anyway, mid-control obtained. Looks like the A split this time. As you mentioned, we haven't seen many of these. There's always five players towards the main entrance, and Oof. seems to be a very similar result now. T side. Here comes that double kill. Okay, we're cooking. This is the sort of round that can be stolen away, but Idis Balance continues to be strong here. And now down to Roman. He hasn't been able to scavenge any of those fallen weapons just yet. There's an AWP available to him, though. Wheel zip. Not known to be an orper, but this is his opportunity, and yeah, maybe for good reason. Doesn't quite connect that shot, had the elbow, had the vision, pulls up the 5-7. Chances dwindling away now, he's got so much to do. 45 HP, one bullet left on an orp, even if he finds the kill Anders, he'll have a reload ahead of him. Another kill to find, and the defuse, of course, without the kit. Making his way through, but yeah, even if he gets this frag, and like I said, not known to be an orper, doesn't look that smooth with it. And it will be 11-0, one round to go. What can you say about this one? <laughs> that, again, probably was one of the more winnable rounds. <laughs> That's the problem, right? <laughs> the problem. It took like a couple of great Deagle headshots and a 5-7 to kind of get them into an area where maybe you can win a round, maybe things go really well. At least it's kind of a clutch scenario, whereas a lot of the other rounds, even when they've had the rifles, they've never even been close. This is devastating. What a devastating way to get started here. Again, you've already lost the first match of your RMR run. Now you're down here playing at nine pandas and... You're not even getting a foot on the ground at the moment. You're just instantly getting <laughs> rocked every time. There we go. A couple of there good shots is. and a spray down. Triple kill from Aristotle. This round should be locked in. <laughs> you, you bloody hope so. Final round of the first half. Aristotle makes himself known. Triple spray down with the M4A4. Might as well go for it. Nine pandas. Divide its balance and seized remaining. Got to win this one. Yeah. I mean, they look disciplined at the moment. They've pretty much drawn everyone over to the side of the map. Got some minute to wait around in. Idis Balance is going to get downed as well. Story getting a chance to get something done with the AWP on C's well, one versus five. At least the analysts are going to be happy. They predicted nine pandas. But they did. Seems they, they might have been onto something here. It is going to be sore, though. All jokes aside, a pretty decent final round for them. It won't be the full goose egg this time, but as good as 11 to 1. No halftime breaks here, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting straight back into the action. They're seized. The legend of the game. Yeah, what a way to have a first half. You're just cruising right through. You don't need, you're, you're forcing all the tech tower, the, the tactical timeouts out of the other team. Sure. They're super stressed coming into this one. I mean, the pistol round, obviously. It's going to be everything to soar if they want any chance of building some sort of ridiculous comeback. I mean, that's the upside, I suppose, right? They could be making a historic comeback. So, so Anders, we had a couple of weeks off. We did. What do you think was more exciting? Don Quing winning Katowice or Taylor Swift winning the Super Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> what was the more exciting outcome for you? I mean, the, the, obviously, d you know, the whole Donk situation closed to my heart. I was confused about how much politics was involved in the Taylor. I had no idea what was going on. I was genuinely confused. I felt out of touch. Uh, my Twitter wasn't like the entire day. It was just photos of that woman. I'm just like, I don't know what's going on in the I internet did, like, right yeah. now. What, 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 what we're doing or what's happening. I but feel like congratulations I congratulations on the Super Bowl. I suppose I so. need to be more what invested, like for sure. Like I'm missing something. So yeah, it was all donk <laughs> for me all the way. Okay. I was enjoying that a lot more. But I'll I'll catch up with the Taylor Swift. So you're you're a donker, not a Swifty. Apparently, her and Celine Dion had some sort of drama that I need. I, oh um, really? Well, wow. yeah, that's an exclusive scoop. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, more well, on that later. I'll keep trying. I'll, I'll inform you about it later on. Oh, no. <laughs> this is not how you want to get started. So absolutely demolished. Outside of the A-bomb site, it's just Roman left. One versus five here, and they're all coming for him. 
Oh, I feel bad for them. That, that's just like the pistol round. Everyone's like, you know what, boys? At least we got one. We're yes. in this pistol. We're bringing this right back. Round by round. You know the, you know the deal. <laughs> We've all seen the VODs. Um, that no. speech rings so hollow <laughs> after that happened. You're like, <laughs> oh, just like, no. Okay, we didn't even get a single kill. We didn't get the bomb down. And we're literally out map. And indeed, match point. Uh, after the pistol round. It doesn't get much worse than this. Uh, the fact that you didn't get the bomb plant, if you're not aware, uh, means you don't get any extra cash, uh, meaning you're down to pistols in the follow-up round here. It should be a done deal. It would be a disaster to lose this round, even if they gave up five or six <laughs> rounds in a row, they'd still be in the driving seat. So, should end now. It never does, though. No Nine. one's really that good at closing games in CS2. Nine Panthers coach is dancing in the background. I saw him, That's like, need. bust out the moves. This is outrageous. I've, I can't remember seeing such a one-sided game for a long time here in CS2. Well, we did have Team Spirit 13-0'd Apex of the opening game of Kato. That's, that's True. the most recent example, but that's a different factor, right? That, that's Donk. That's Donk. <laughs> he does right. change the outcome. Oh, court swapping a little bit out. The leaders coming up with a couple of great kills in this game so far. There's a, there's a chance. And 17-7, it looks like. Three versus three. Yeah, they are going to get the bomb plant at the very least, but deep nade. Oh, it doesn't kill anybody. Let's see how this retake is going to work out for them. They've got the smokes down. This is not looking too bad. Saw might be able to keep their head above water just yet. But uh, that decision is made. The retake begins. The bomb is ticking at some pace. I assume there's a kill available. Yes, it's been retrieved. And we've got one player left. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the map. It was, a, it was a quick one. We've only been going for about 15 minutes or so, but it's going to be 13 to 1. Nine Pandas absolutely demolished Saw here in the lower bracket game, essentially. That means the Portuguese score goes down to 0 2, meaning that every game from now on will be a best of three Anders. It's going to be a long uphill battle to make their way to the actual major, but well done to Nine Pandas. What an epic performance that was. Great team effort across the board, nice and simple, nothing too complicated. The individuals looked fantastic and blew them out of the proverbial water. And with that said, I think it's time to throw it over to our favorite Desco's P-Man Small and the rest of the boys. Thank you, Henry G, a.k.a. my little bro. It seems that on this February the 14th, we've witnessed a Valentine's Day massacre. What a dominant performance there by the Nine Pandas. Snacking. I love that. On I love that it's a great expression, right? Yeah, um, uh, <laughs> you, you've ruined my panda thing that I was <laughs> sorry, about to let sorry, re sorry. rewind. Nine Pandas there, snacking on saw like sugarcane, leaving the sweet taste of victory in their mouth. Yeah, so good by them. I mean, it's almost hard to break down. We saw a casters there at the end descend into Taylor Swift, the uh, Super Bowl rigging <laughs> yeah, meme. What, what are we going to do? That seemed more interesting. You don't, you don't know about this? No, I do know. I just like to see them. I like to hear Enders talk about Taylor Swift <laughs> and, and, you know, and PsyOps and all and of that Celine stuff. Dion issues and all that. I don't know what PsyOps Nine Panas did to Saw here today in, on this map. They they were completely absent. Absolutely absent. And this is a map, by the way, that Saw usually like to play. In fact, the last time they played Nine Panas on this map just a couple of months prior, they demolished them very convincingly. But again, Saw seems to always start on the T side. They get the ball rolling here on the CT side. Mm. Matthew, they were non-existent. Yeah, it's a recurring theme of Nubis, right? How to handle sites on the CT side specifically to be de defensive passive and honestly Saw couldn't really hack it. You could see on the side of nine, nine Pandas, they had executes down to a T, very well organized, good utility usage, and some players were just popping off in these entry departments. Like Delia Diz, for example, going out there, being sort of thrown first in the entrances, finding kills left, right, and center. I like that we just add a couple of frags from Saw in here as well, just for, you know, good measure. But when Nine Pandas started picking up pace, you can see Saw trying to be a little bit more aggressive. But unfortunately for them, the one round Saw tries to take river water control, yeah. then what do their opponents do? Immediately execute. So you basically play catch, uh, and then you lose track of the bomb side, of course. Very, very hard to retake. This was a beating, an absolute beating. Absolute beating. And I'm just looking at this guy. I, I did point out a couple of players I wanted to step up for both the respective teams. You jokes for the side of Saw and Dilides, right? And Dilides was, he was unstoppable. I think it was at one point in time with a score that's 10 and 0 for nine pandas. He had 15 kills. I Saw mean, had 15 combined in total. He was just destroyed. Almost them. 150 yeah, ADR. Yeah, Dilides say. had such a huge impact. In that match. Uh, yeah, that's very rough. Crazy stuff, but also it, it's just the fashion in which they were winning these rounds, right? Matthew, like you look, go to the B bombs, like, sure, there was that one round where you know they push mid and mm. obviously on nine panas got a timing, but there were times where it was saw they had the two or three people towards the B bomb side and there was just a lack of awareness, this lack of comps, lack yes. of synergy. 
And Dillidus is just walking in, getting three kills, not taking a single shred of damage when his CTs have rifles. This shouldn't be happening. Uh, definitely. I think the, the crossfires and the, and the protocols for the CTs need to be reviewed. Like That's the kind of games... <clears throat> sorry, you watch the demos again and you understand some of the mistakes you've made. Um, because it was way too easy for Nine Pandas to kind of inject themselves into the defense, find a kill on an unsuspecting CT that's not even looking at wherever the hell the action is coming from. So you must admit, you must have an idea that there is a, a problem. Here, that was an example right there. You talk about Dilidus and, and his ability to open sites from cave, first kill, then the smokes are being deployed, rightly so. And then you see this retake from Saw, which is, why do you even attempt that retake at that point, right? You're 5v4, the site's been lost, maybe just recuperate. It's, it's panic, panic yeah. setting in. You're 0-5 you're down, you're 0-6 down. You're like, hey, you guys, we need to win at least one round. And then it just, it was already out of control and it spiraled completely out there. By the time it was 10 and 0 when, you know, and <laughs> Hank was talking about Taylor Swift, we knew that one's done. Don't know how Taylor Swift made his way to an IMR. I mean, but here we go. Well, no, with, with that being said, let's get to the back to the main topic at hand. So, Taylor Swift, no, I'm kidding. All right, guys. <laughs> I was ready. <laughs> what, I was what, ready, man. What could, if anything, Saw have done better? Uh, well, a lot of things. It's very tough to say where they get steamrolled so hard, but if there was anything that you saw that stood out. Okay, one, one thing which really stood out to me in particular was, look, the CT side of Anubis is very, very hard. Absolutely very, very hard. And I feel like from the get-go, they started going for these pushes towards mid, for example, and being a little bit adventurous, a little bit late when they're trailing an 0 and 6 down, and desperation was starting to seep in. Maybe they started a little bit on the on the front foot, so to speak. More positive Counter-Strike, maybe? No, really trying positive, to impress like, the map? No, fight a little on bit fire with fire. You have a pretty good T side. We know that if you're able to net maybe at least four rounds on your CT side, there is a chance. But once it just got steamrolled in its first four or five rounds, it felt like they were kind of mentally checked out. Yeah. And you can see, there was one round where you e jokes was playing towards Doc and Roma just completely sold him under the river. They sold him. For someone with that experience for how long he's been playing the game, that should never be happening. Uh, listen, hindsight is always 2020. I'm sure if Saul began this game knowing that it's going to be execute heavy from the side of nine pandas. Maybe they keep the utility for these executes specifically. Because if you go up against a team that is going to execute plans on you like that, you would argue that the only thing you have to do is hit the mollies at the right time, is block with smokes at the right time. But the reality is, as a player, you, you don't know that. You're sort of trying to figure it out as the round progresses. Okay, is it going to be a fast play? Is it going to be a slow play? You see some of the timers here are pretty different from one another. There's a hit at one minute, there's one at 120. So I think good on nine pandas to keep their opponents guessing because had they figured that out, I think they could have adapted when they use their utility. And when you see a team like Nine Pandas being able to go through the motion of their executes, it's, it seems too easy because the game is very comfortable. You're allowed to do whatever it is you set out to do. Your plans are working, your entries are working, and then your opponent is kind of not really giving up. It's not the right term, but you can feel that they're losing track of the game. And it looks very silly at some point. That's the example we were yep. talking about. That's the absolute uh, Amazon Prime sell that was happening <laughs> right there. All right. But that, that was definitely rough uh, for Saw. And I feel like for for the side of uh, of Saw as well, because we were just capitulating on the CT side rounds, and we all know utility, you know, the money is really much more hard on the CT side. It felt like even if, you know, they were using the utility early on to prevent an early execute coming from Nine Pandas, Nine Pandas were very comfortable just holding, things, holding it back, going for the second wave of utility. And then from that point on, Saw have nothing to do apart from just trying to hold on to the site just with the guns. And okay, by the way, shout out to Idis Balance as well. He was a shining star for the, the team in the losing effort earlier in the day against FaZe. And on this T side, he got, you know, over, like obviously Dilidus was a star, so to speak, but I feel like Idis Balance with that off on a T side, he was finding picks left, right, and center. Blair and Man Maniac, thank you so much for your thoughts as always. So everybody at home saw are now 0-2-2. If they lose one more time, they are out of the PGL CS2 EU RMR. On the other side, Pandas are now 1-2-1. One, one. They're going to be feeling very good, and I hope that boosts their confidence somewhat. For now, we are going to head to a short break, and then afterwards, we've got Bet Boom versus ITB. It's just going to be a couple of minutes, so please do not go anywhere. Level up your gaming space with metal posters from Displate. Swap them whenever you like. Hang your Displates in seconds. Get official art from your favorite games on a uniquely designed metal canvas. 
and choose from thousands of posters. Join over 3 million collectors now. Your wall upgrade is here. Shop now at Displate.com. Players are changing. Countries are changing. The game has changed. Finds it to perfection and simple. To go! No! It's Olaf who's on top of the box. Though. He's got three and he's looking oh. for a fourth. That is incredible. And Greg, he's not away. The best tournament, the best bookmaker at the same. Welcome back, everybody, to the PGL CS2 EU RMR. What a performance by Nine Pandas. We're going to have to see now if BetBoom and or ITB can follow suit. But before we get into that, let's quickly welcome Pimp back to the studio. Maniac done for the day. So he's joining Blair and myself. How are you doing, mate? Good? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. That's it. I got That's nothing it. else right. to add, yeah, man. No, nothing else. Else. And with that being said, let's call <laughs> Bet Boom and ITV. I'm glad you're good. Kept short and sweet. All right, don't forget at home, everybody, these are two teams that are also 0-2-1 in a similar position to Saw and Nine Pandas that preceded them. Yeah, uh, but of course, we saw the performance from Nine Pandas. We said, if you lose this particular matchup, this 0-1 matchup, now you're going to be in the most uncomfortable position where you, now you need to win three best of threes back to back to back to have a chance to qualify to the majors. And for Bet Boom and Into the Breach, I'm just looking at the results, looking at how they perform earlier as well. It's just, let's be real. These are two teams no one really has going out of, you know, going out of the RMR, qualifying to the major in all sure. reality. But there is always that one chance. And this is one step in the right direction for one of these teams. You win this best of one, then all of a sudden you can breathe a little bit. You're in a 1-1 situation. You lose it. 
Oh. I feel like it's a wake-up call for, for Bad Boom as well. For ITB, I think coming into this tournament, we didn't really expect them to do much anyway. So they're kind of getting a freebie, at least in my book right now, for them to go 0-2. Okay. Sort of expected. Bad Boom, though, it's been disappointing to follow their development. When they first came together, you thought that was going to be a great Sydney, team. Sydney, they were good. Sydney, right? They had uh, a decent showing. You thought that team has potential with Nathany as an in-game leader. There's some cool players in there. But going up against ITB, I'm not even sure they're going to win that game. And that in itself is a crazy statement when you consider the player material they're up against. And it's so interesting because uh, we're watching that uh, the, an interview I think Thomas was giving as well. He was like, let's be real here, guys. We're, we're here. We qualified for this event. Not because we qualified, but because of the core roster mm. that we had with the run they had in Paris. He was very aware of that. And he's like, at the same time, I know we're the kind of the underdogs, but especially in the best ones in RMR and Swiss system, anything can happen. We might still have a chance. At least they're very self-aware, sure. right? For Bedboom, I completely 100% agree with you. I'm looking at the last results. They're on a five or six... A lost streak, and I'm not, I'm not talking about you know top tier one caliber opposition either. They're losing the teams where they should be beating. Mm -hmm. We're speaking about how Nafni, he was on his revenge anime arc, he came in, he even made Mount Snake <laughs> apologize and all of that, and then it, it just <laughs> completely plateaued, it just completely petered out. And I'm looking at some of the names they have placed, like Zorte, I'm looking at plays like Chiron is proven, he is a proven quantity when you play for the very short period in VP. You expect more, you demand more from this team. We're not getting it. We're is it fair it. to say, guys, this is a tough one to predict. You know, both these teams, there's a level of unknown quantity, and sure. I'm not really sure who's got the edge going into this best of one. I feel like it's going to be whoever's firing off the best at the time that's bouncing back from their initial loss best. I, I agree with you. I think the player material, we're seeing the players coming up on your screen here as well. Chiron, uh, for once, you know, is a fantastic individual. We haven't seen the best of him ever since he left Virtus Pro yeah. coming into Bedroom. Nafani is, is a great in-game leader as well. Sorta, one of the hottest prospects when it came to the AWP for some time as well. Yeah. He was rumored to ED when they were still around. He was rumored to other European teams where he could maybe take the next step. So I think when you look at the player material of, of Bedroom going up against the, the rather lackluster player material in ITB, you'd edge towards Bedroom. They've just been so disappointing that it's very hard for me to stand here right now saying that I got confidence in a guy like Karen or in Bitboom to win this game, especially considering it's a best of one. On, on paper, we're not taking the intangibles into account. I completely agree with you. It has to be bed boom, right? Talking about mm -hmm. the players and everything. It's the intangibles, which I feel is a problem with this team. Where I was discussing this with Matthew as well a couple of desks, desks prior, where it's like, Nafani, you know how emotional can get. Sure. The pressure is really on. You know Chiron, he's a pretty fiery young lad as well. And when it comes down to the emotions being kept in check, I think that has been a problem for bed boom, looking at the body language and whatnot. And now, 0-1. Just imagine this, right? Sure, you might be the slight favorites. Even the, even the odds are showing that Bedboom are the favorites here in this particular matchup. But the pressure is on. You're 0-1. You've been struggling for quite a while. We know that they can be very temperamental as well. And you're going up against ITP who, who mm. kind of like, yeah, we're just happy to be here. Sure. If, if I may give you a storyline that probably fits for both teams. We only have about a minute left, Pim. We got a minute, yeah. 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 It's, it's, the, it's the battle of the leftovers, you know. It's, it's European leftovers sure. going up against the CS leftovers. It's, it's the players that weren't deemed great enough to be on better teams, especially when you look towards ITB. You look at Misuda, you look at Vimas, you look at these players who's been around on bigger teams before. Face, Mouse, you name it. Same could be said for the Bedroom players. It's the players that weren't deemed good enough to be for the Virtus Pros or be for the better teams out there. So this is battle of the leftovers and someone has to win. And Quick uh, thoughts that we've ended up on Mirage. I mean, the last two time these two teams played each other, we didn't see this map and Bet Boom came out on top. This is maybe even the playing field a bit in favor it, it of ITB. Like, it feels like it's going to be a bit of a drunk fight in an a alleyway. Drunk call. fight in it's an alleyway. Gonna, it's going to okay. be messy. It's going to be messy. I haven't seen anything from these two teams to inspire much confidence in me, in all honesty. On paper, like I said, Bet Boom should be the better team looking at the, the, the caliber individuals and the heights they've, they've gone towards. But as we pointed out, right, when the pressure's really on, I feel like they struggle more than someone like ITB who are just like, YOLO, screw this, we're here to have fun and at least, you know, pull off a couple of upsets. I'd be severely disappointed if Betboom is not winning this one, considering it's Mirage. Okay, uh, in that case, both of you going with Betboom? Have to go with Betboom, though. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your thoughts. All right, this one is ready to go live. We're just talking about drunken fighting in alleyways. Henry, over to you. And Anders, of course, as well. Oh, uh, <laughs> see what he did there, Anders. <laughs> Such a, <laughs> such a funny guy. Anyway, here comes Bed Boom versus Into the Breach. Another yes. loser's game here. Both of these teams getting absolutely walloped in their opening games. It was Bed Boom to the Fnatic, 13 to 6. Into the Breach lost the G2, 13 to 3. We find ourselves here in the 0 1 game. Best of one, of course, on Mirage. Seaside style for the favorites. Bed Boom, Zorte, the Orpa. P250 in hand and great map control. Gets himself right next to Connector here as the A split is initiated. 
be so close to being able to help out. Chiron's going to be getting a long range shot there. Vimasa on the other side, but they're opening this one up. It's Siren with a double kill to really clear out the A bomb side. It took a while there for Sorty to hit the shot on Crucial, but at the end of the day, he'll get the job done. It's just Masuta left at a one versus four. Grenades raining down on top of him. They know exactly where he's coming from, and he's going to get run Hello. down. I don't even think that was what? necessary for Nafani to do, but he did it anyway, so what a round. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that's a comprehensive victory there for Bet Boom. Uh, didn't have to work too hard for it. Four players at the A Ram Zorte towards that connector position. No initial territory taken there by Into the Breach whatsoever. Very passive setup and got punished for it. Couldn't keep up with the Glocks. It came in a close range and found absolutely everyone en route. The setup is dismantled and Into the Breach will be taking a full eco. Into the Breach, of course, looking to rekindle some of the magic anders at the Paris Major. At the start of 2023. There's a lot of magic there. Uh, I'm not sure if they will, but I uh, would love to see them cause some damage at this RMR at the very least here. Not a great stop. 0-1. In the overall scheme of things, and indeed in the second game of play here on Mirage. Full eco for now. USP swinging out towards middle. Getting a couple of frags. Doesn't even look possible right now. Afani. Clearing out those close range positions. They've got connect control, smoke down, they can sense presence on the other side. That's pretty fortunate for Bim Asper, they'll take it all day long. That's a USP as well, I can't believe it. Did they run into a grenade earlier in the round of a top mid? So some of them are a little bit softened up, but the bomb is going to get planted over at the B bomb site. So doubtful it will have any real long term consequences here. Looks like ICB is still hoping to get some weapons recovered in the middle here. Could actually get the kill on Nafferty too. That would be making it at least a little bit more expensive. But again, without a kit, obviously, winning the round is kind of out of the question here. And they're actually getting collapsed on pretty hard. So still two kills. I mean, it's not too bad. They had USPs. I don't really mind it too much. Bad boom, though. They'll uh, take some of these early rounds for themselves. And they had some Mat 10s in there. So, you know, losing those, maybe not the end of the world either. Not the end of the world. 2-0. Here come the rifles for Into the Breach. Looking to bounce back here early, if possible. Going to be a compromised buy. Won't have absolutely everything they need, but enough to get the round over the line. No crucial AWP. M4's pretty much across the board here. And no kits as well, just to note that basic utility lacking those incendiaries. Grenades exchanged towards middle. It's Rallon, the veteran of the squad. Trying to fend them off here and missed Molotov towards the window. Actually, denies entrance here for Siren somewhat, but uh, should be recoverable. It's Thomas. Nice opening kill there. Good spray down towards Chiron. Yeah, they're going to go straight for it. They're not slowing it down. Might have lost a player, but they're not going to care. Thomas going down, shot at the back, and Masuta, he was smoked up for a while. He couldn't really get himself into the no round. Way. Rallin, there's a good couple of kills. That brought things back on an even keel, at least for the minute here. And actually, Rallin, he sees it coming. He had the right read, but then he's still going to be able to take him down. So Bimas in a one versus one. Still plenty of time for the bomb plan. They're going to have to go back and pick it up here. Yeah, what's the call? The mind games begin at this stage. One versus one. About a minute on the clock when the bomb's recovered. What is this oyster? Bimas though holding strong. Stays in towards the kitchen. Does allow a plan, but at least get information. He'll be close by. He's made the correct call here. There is no further utility in terms of incendiaries or smokes for Danitz. He has got a couple of flashbangs available to him. Bear in mind there's no kit as well, so this comes down to fragging ability. Bimas starting to doubt his position. Peeling off a little bit here. He coordinates and does actually get the intel. Okay, huge advantage here. Massive advantage for Bimas. Yeah, knowing it's half the battle, isn't it? He's got the right read. He's hearing the footsteps left and right. There's a lot of movement on that T side that I'm not liking at the moment, but we'll see if Bimas can keep his cool. He has the right read at the moment. He pretty much knows where he is. Just checking that corner. Going to be walking up close. No the way! Hey, the headshot comes out. Oh, he should have been winning that one. God. Oh, that's painful. He had everything he needed there. The information as to where he was, you could see he eradicated all other positions. There was one spot behind the van he could be. Comes in with the pre fiber but Danitz actually beats him to the punch there. That's a huge round. It started with an advantage in favor of Into the Breach, but clearly dismantling that B bomb site. Rana looks like he saved him there. Nice little spray down, but Danitz managing to come out clutch here in the one versus one. I don't know how he wins it. It's pretty remarkable as we go three and zero now. Into the Breach down to just pistols. They have got a Rallon MP9 at the very least. They've gone for another A stack here, Anders. So 
in terms of utility, they have got a few smokes to treat this like a gun round somewhat, to try and lock them out, isolate some of the choke points. Smokes down towards CT spawn. Steps and jungle. This could be a full A execution. At least they're going into the stack. A chance here for into the breach. It'd be hard to hold them back with just smokes, but we'll see if they're going to be able to put out some good grenades. Speaking of nades, one lands down the ladder and just instantly blows them up. Chiron comes powering through. Double down. kill for him pretty much clears open the entirety of the A bomb site. So he had such a confusing uh, entry into tier one Counter Strike Chiron. He was on VP for the RMR and he got, he yeah. got like shipped out halfway through. It was wild. Never seen anything like it, but glad to see him back here. Another RMR trying to do something. Well, so far so good, at least in the second matchup. They've gone four and zero. Into the breach, really yet to get going. Got themselves six, seven frags so far. Starting to spiral here on the CT side, but they will have the AWP available to them into the next round. They're going to get $3,400 in terms of loss bonus going forward. Uh, so they've got that, I suppose, going in their favor, but uh, even if they wanted to bring out the AWP, it would mean like no helmet potentially. Uh, it's maybe tactical timeout territory, I would say, Anders. That's where we're at right now. Into the Breach need to bring yeah. in some tactical assistance and just slow things down because it's starting to get a little bit out of hand. It is, and it, again, you know, we're still going to be saying it for a while, but it, it just it it comes much sooner than you were expecting in MR12. That point in time when you sort of lost control of the of the map a little bit, that can happen so fast. So they've gone with the crucial AWP. We'll see whether it works out for them. He's got that Kevlar, as mentioned, but uh, no helmets. Mac 10 out in field. Chiron working towards top middle. Good flashes. Some damage inflicted. And this time, fighting for mid-control or into the breach. Could have an even up here. Just, he's got a Mac 10 as well, but he's yep. also happy to use the Deagle if anyone's going to jump. Pretty bold move, I've got to say, but um, we'll see if he's going to be rewarded for it. Speaking of MAC-10s, there's at least three people without any helmets here, so... This is the B-Split, Anders, for sure. Uh, we've got three players towards the apartments, two towards Shaw, that's Siren and Chiron. The deadly duo, Misuta alone on the B-Bomb site, completely isolated. Rallin's towards the window now, he does jump through to join him. They've got a lot coming their way any second now. They've got to deal with Nafani. Bear in mind, a few players of our helmets as well. Nafani jumping over and somehow gets the kill through the smoke. Misuta's dropped, Rallin needs another double kill here, just to keep the round alive. Four and four with the bombs being planted. And once again, I don't think there's a kid in play. CTs are so far removed from the scenario, I think they have to call the save now. Yeah. Pull the ripcord. You can kind of already tell. They're not really running to get here. Slowly grouping up they're, towards they're the kitchen. considering yeah. it. Oh, that smoke though raining down. I don't know. The lack of a kit definitely making it very, very awkward at the moment. And Masuta watch without a helmet. So as soon as that Mac 10 finds him in the smoke, even if it's... Not really a great fight. You still just one pop bullet through the head and it's going to be all over with. Siren, I like this. If you can stop even one or two people from getting out. A lot of damage at range, but Thomas, a little bit awkward there. He should have been dead. A grenade won't quite kill him either, but um, yeah, the round's still going to be going to bed boom here. I don't know. Now we're convincing one, Anders. This time the B split, only one frag required. We said is going to have his work cut out for him in that B bomb site. Another full execution lands at their front door. They only find a single kill in response. That was Rallin rotating in. He was then isolated in towards the kitchen, smoked off. They were considering the retake, kind of similar to what we saw in the previous matchup. The Portuguese team like going for these questionable retakes on A and B bomb site of Anubis, just because the scoreline spiraling. You've got to see if there's any opportunities, any mistakes presented towards you. But for now, no dice. 5-0 down, and the first tactical timeout has been deployed here. Nafani calling a perfect game on the T side here of Mirage. This is our 0-1 game in the Swiss system. Going down 0-2 is super rough, because at that point, it's best of threes. There or now, if you lose a game, uh, you're done for in the RMR, and you have to have the perfect streak. It can be done, but uh, not a place you want to be so early on in the tournament. Day one, of course. Definitely not. Every year, it's so heartbreaking when you have to you have to face down that uh, that long road. Already sent one team down there. We'll see if ITB is going to be the next one. It's not quite said and done yet. Well, early days on this map, but um, you know, T signed for bedroom here. Five and zero. Oh, it's pretty great. But they finally got the crucial AWP. The Flying Dutchman might be able to do something with this. 
It's a weird setup, though. There's CTs in spawn right now. Three. Okay, I was about to say, what's going on? It looks like we've got a technical issue. I was about to say, what, what the <laughs> bloody hell are we doing? We've got three players sat in spawn. Uh, yeah, technical issue here. Uh, I don't think any damage was inflicted. No, so we're good. We're going to get a restart of the round, and it's all fine. So uh, do not adjust your set. Everything is okay. Everything's under control. We will reset this round and start it again. It's kind of a bit of a conundrum at the moment for, for ITB, I feel like, because that last round was possible because on the CT side, there wasn't really anyone holding middle, so that B-split that you were talking about just yeah. works really well. They seem to have way too much freedom towards middle. Interbreach they do. have experimented once, I think, with a bit of control there, but they are not finding the kills. They've been dissuaded time and time again, and you're right, the fact they've got so much short control and then three players towards the apartments as well, and Interbreach don't even seem to have any information that's going down. They had one player actually in the B-bomb side when the commitment came through. Bear in mind, that killed me to nothing. We are restarting. Suta dropped from the server. And we should be back in the way momentarily. We're just going to have to match medic this whole situation. And they really have a lot of money to work with on the T side, don't they? I didn't notice that, but you're right. Nathan, he, he's been finding the majority of his kills at the MAC-10 and yeah. not really having to upgrade either. He's uh, got himself a 6-1 scoreline. Entered the round around $10,000. And we are off to the races. Day one of the RMR. No crazy upsets yet, Anders. So oh, it's coming. You reckon? There's no RMR without that happening. I don't believe True. it. I just the, want to check uh, in with the upper stream as well. Did NIP eventually lose? They're still going. No way. They were 10-2 down. And it's currently 12-11 against them on the B stream. That's unbelievable. I can't believe Yeah, NIP looked like they were done for. We, when we started this game, they were 10-2 down. And yeah, a lot of Counter-Strike going on this week, ladies and gentlemen. The action continues now. Zorte rattles off a shot towards the connector. Doesn't quite connect. And this time being a little bit more assertive. In towards what? middle. And speaking of assertion, what the bloody hell is that from Nafani? This runs into B by himself, aware of the tendencies of Masuto, who's getting bullied to say the very least on that side of the map. Nafani tucking himself in. He's caused rotations already. See Thomas. On high alert, they've got no information as to what's going on. Rallying in the towards call. the underpass. We're going in towards A, so everyone's been pulled over. And BMAS knows it as well. Drops himself a defensive smoke to try and gain some access to the bomb side of the Molotov. will take care of that idea. Crucial. AWP has mentioned, but needs to start hitting some absolute bangers here to stand a chance. Nafani still being such a nuisance on the B side of the map, but they're starting to understand the situation as they rotate back in towards A. Look at that, Nafani, that sorte smoke that he ran. Sorte threw that smoke from T-Spawn, just to try and set it up. Now, it's not quite going to work out how they want it here. And Chiron's been found on the other side. Good shot from Sorte, but still, this is a really cool round of the bedroom. We'll see if it's going to work out for them at the end. Thomas, thinking about walking through the smoke, he's going to be just taking a peek past and should be getting a free kill here on Sorte. But immediately, the return is in. Siren will take him down. Crucial and Rallin to two versus two here. And... Somehow it's so painful when you're on the CT side and the game slows down like that. You have yeah. so much time to try and, you know, second guess yourself. You don't quite know what's happening. And with that kill, the round is going to be done. It's going to be 7-0 and in favor of Bedroom. They're absolutely running <laughs> through this first half right here. All right, then. As I always say, Anders, these are the sort of rounds that can turn a game on its head. You throw caution to the wind. You're getting aggressive. But Nafani, he's coming. You can see it on the screen that he knows that something's afoot here. Something's not quite right. That flashbang wasn't for nothing. Oh, Nafani, you're done for. You're dead. Yeah. Nice shot in return, but they were banking a little bit too hard on the return. I think they were listening for the footsteps and heard one of them jumping down, so they thought they were just chasing that one guy, but it was a bit of a setup. I like it. Four versus four, though. And a minute on the clock, the bomb dropped outside of the hallway into the B-bomb site, so we'll see. A little bit lonesome over here with the Deagle. Rallin picked off towards the B side of the map. It's going to be down to the Deagle here. Easy by any means. Chiron early to spot them out and he'll call it in. Just keep planting the bomb. I've got this covered. Swinging in for the headshot. Actually, Siren able to pick that one up. It's four kills for him in this one. And another round. Eight on the board as Bentwoom just power on through. What can you say about this one? I don't know. Not much, really. But uh, would love to see Into the Breach wake up here. This is not the team we know and love. They haven't got going just yet. Still time to work with. I wouldn't say this is done at this point by any stretch of the imagination, but a perfect start here for Beth Boom. Eight and zero need to win the rest of these rounds. Uh, there's no question about it. Eight, four, 
recoverable. 9-3 possible. Anything less than that, you, th you think on the, the CT side of Mirage Anders, yeah, it's, it's not looking good. We all know that. But uh, let's see if this underpass setup has anything for him. Nafani doesn't seem to have any idea. He didn't. What and it didn't even hell? matter anyway. He got the headshot. Nonetheless, oh. there's another one for Siren. God. He is on point right now in the middle. AWP just rolling in. Sword here taking a couple of kills. Oh Crucial God. on oh. his own. Crucial. They are getting ripped apart right here. Yep. Um, that was wild from Siren. Screaming across the map with that AK-47. Absolutely destroys him with the opening picks. Zorte as well, rock solid with the AWP. That's his most impressive sequence so far. That he broke a sweat. Comfortable. There's the kill, but he's going to be surrounded. There's no way they let him get out of this one. He <laughs> has actually done very well there, but it's all in vain, and it's because, yeah, you'd say, oh, at least it keeps the money modest. They'd like we said, they've got like 16K now on two care. players. Uh, so the fact they've removed that AWP, even with maximum loss bonus, if you're not aware, that's $3,400 per player on the CT side. That's all they're going to have now. Um, so you're in partial buy territory once again. Uh, this is exactly what we saw in the Saw game. Uh, pretty much the same thing. CT side collapsing. Um, your finances in the bin. There's been no chances really of a clutch. The closest round they've had with the five sevens, a couple of picks there. That's pretty much it. But um, technical pause. No chatting allowed. You just got to stew on the current situation in front of you right now. There's Thomas back in the into the bridge jersey, looking to. He was out for a bit. Yes. Took a break right after the major in spite of the, you know, the really impressive runs. But I guess going to CS2, you know, just taking a bit of a timeout. It's an interesting call. And they lost Cypher in the meantime. Um, Cypher and Vol, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, which, you know, many, many would argue probably a really big hit. Cypher, I think, still one of the big prospects coming out of the, uh, of the biggest for a long time in the UK scene. Yeah, huge fan of Cypher. Doesn't seem to have found his footing in CS2 just yet. TSM project didn't work out. Bleed seems to be a little bit all over the place. Hopefully he works it out and uh, we see him return. But not going to be at the RMR, unfortunately. Well, technical timeout here for a uh, couple of issues to get ironed out. I'm seeing some fist bumps come. It's usually a good sign that something is, is happening. Nine and zero. It's very one side at the moment. Siren, yeah, that's one hell of a shot. They try to rotate through the middle. Sort is just there to pick them up as they try and get through. Bedroom, well, loving life for the moment. I'm not loving life right now, Anders. I want to see some action. I want to see some good games. See if this partial investment will do anything for him. Nafani, he's got the Midas touch right now. Every scenario looks like he's out of position, out of luck, but he seems to stick the landing and always gets one frag. Fortunately for Masuta, means he that's his first kill, just, just to know that was Masuta's entry. Yes into this this matchup, this best of one. That, that's not great news. It's a round they're probably not going to win. Molotov down towards Dark. We've got Crucial in towards Sandwich. We can be checked for sure. They've spotted him. Yeah, Crucial, you're done for. <laughs> what a way to get, you know, tested as well. You think you're safe. You think you're just hiding in the Here corner. Yeah, Masuta. Can be a pretty hard fragger at times when he gets up and running, but obviously this has been a very slow start for him. But you can see he's got the mechanics behind him. He's feeling a little bit more safe now. Problem is, Anders, they've got... What, 21 health between them? Yeah, um, that, is so a, that is an issue. Masuta and Bimas would do very well to make this round work. It all starts here. If a pre-fire comes through, you never know. But uh, unfortunately, not the case. Smoke down. They'll probably bring it down to one versus one. Siren is... Oh, he's faded away. The, what a great play. Oh, not a great spray, I'm afraid. <laughs> that was the chance. Maybe Bimas wins that round. If he gets that kill, it's, it's the bomb going down in a really awkward spot. He still he might as well go for it, I suppose. Why not? Yeah, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't try and, and do something here. Bit of a, almost an overthinking for Bed Boom in this one thing. They could have probably just played a little bit more safely, but um, they decided to go for the B-bomb side instead. Could it be very hard for anyone to know where Siren is at the moment. So uh, now he's uh, spotted out. Still, old work is ahead of him here. Bimas, he wants another peek, but he's not getting at the moment. Yeah, They're no just waiting him out. No one's going to peek. They know he hasn't got a kill. He's low HP as well. The smoke makes things a little bit more interesting. But, uh, oh, peaking just before it blooms. Perfect from Cyrus. Speaking of perfect, the run continues here as the scoreline oh increases God. ever more. It's getting uh, beyond the point of no return here. Like, it feels like Into the Reach won't be able to pick up these last two rounds. 
and Bebu might have locked in the win at this stage. You never know. Let's have a look at the B stream while we're here, though. NIP have actually got a 15 to 13 lead. And there's one more round. They might actually pull this one off. The 10 to resuscitation here at the RMR. That, is that sounds like a good game. Crazy. I was not expecting that. Not even a little bit. You see the scoreline of the first time, you think that's it. It's absolutely game over. They were on track for the same game we were. We got a 13 1. We opened up their score. I'm yeah. about Jason and Dinko. Um, was like, we're a whole game ahead of them now. If we close this one up early, they're still going to be going over there uh, between Amcal and NIP. That's in the B stream. So go check that out. If this one's not quite wetting your whistle, but 10 uh, 0. Not the most appetizing scoreline, I'll give you that. But if they can get two... <laughs> okay, shut up, Henry, Henry, just shut up, shut up. No, I like it, Henry. Like, you I, know, I, keep, I don't have it. I don't keep have trying it. to sell it, you know? If they get two, um, win the pistol, you never know. Just like NIP did, you know? They were down 10 to 2. They brought it right back. But You're probably like, probably the, not on the, the, the CT side, I'd say. I don't know. What are those people who call you on the phone trying to sell you a subscription that you don't really want, but they're still trying? You can, you can just hear, yeah. like, like <laughs> just not interested. Like, please stop telling me about, like... <laughs> The special offer. I know, so please, I just can't. Limited time deal. But uh, speaking of limited time into the breach, they don't have much breathing room at all here on the CT side of Mirage. Two rounds to go. I posted a single round in their favor. And look how much control Chiron's got. He just walks in with no utility in towards Connector. It's normally a, a point on the map you have to fight for. You have to put yeah. down smokes and Molotovs. You have to burn it out. They've just the... got full mid control. Confirmed. Connect is clear. It should be what? Misuta alone and B again? Uh, this time it's crucial with the AWP, but uh, Thomas, yeah, precarious spot to say the least. Nafani continues to dominate this side of the map. Crucial. He's going to have multiple enemies going to different angles. All right, that, that might be it now. If he doesn't hit, he doesn't get that kill. Yeah, the round's done, and maybe the the map itself. Unfortunately, crucial not connecting. If he gets that one, he can reposition it towards short. Maybe gets the double kill, but it was a uh, had to land. He's Must had some shot. absolutely disgusting kills, Siren. He's 16-2 yeah. and two right now. All right, well, that's 11-0. And not even... I mean, I think you, you highlighted some of the important points here, right? Like, no mid-control, not even any attempt. It's very tentative. Um, they've, they've explored the options with a bit of aggression, but it has seemed quite lackluster. They didn't actually obtain control. They didn't get the initial duels, fell back, and then got executed on. And now just letting them have full reign of middle, like not even having to deploy any utility. And it's like you're walking into connector and no one's looking at you. No one's even challenging or slowing <laughs> no. you down. Chiron's just like, well, connector's literally clear. I'm going to smoke it off and go B. And that's what they did with the window smoke down as well. Thomas, you could see how overworked he was. He was trying to look towards window for the boost. The new connector was open. Players could walk around the jungle. He was trying to cover everything. Um, but they'd actually made it up short. Unbeknownst to him. And yeah. That was the penultimate round. One more to go. Haven't had to get excited as of yet on this A-stream campaign of ours, Anders. We really are. They might be going to with... double overtime on the B-stream. 15-14 over there. They're still on their first game. So uh, that one really is delivering. Coming into the breach. Let's get one round here. That's first... a full A execution as well. Oof. I mean, no one's there. Oh my god, no one's there. <laughs> not even on the bomb. No side. one's there. So they, this time they've gone for the mid control. I was gonna say they finally do it. They're like, all right, mid control. We don't want to get embarrassed once again. We're setting up so that they can't have it. And now the smokes are raining down on the A bomb site and into the breach, scrambling to try and get back in control of this round. Just anything. Get something through the smoke if you can. The bomb. Not quite getting planted yet. They're taking a little bit of time here. Bed boom. Oh, what a run through. Nafani, so relentless. Yeah, just as they're pulling out the grenades, he's trying to find that timing just to make things super awkward. And it might get even more awkward for Into the Breach here. 12-0 Walloping is on the cards right now. A four versus three. Massive grenade lands in the pocket of Crucial. And the retake begins. They have got kits. That's no problem. But disadvantage in terms of the firepower. They have got a smoke. Kind of just has to be a smoke on the bomb and defuse situation now. Yeah. Two players remain and not for long. 12-0 goose egg for Into the Breach. And it is going to be pretty much a locked in game now. As Chiron and Co. just need to win the pistol and it's it's GG. It's a done deal. Unfortunately, last couple of games haven't delivered. No upsets yet, Anders. Um, this is probably upsetting for Into the Breach, I would say. Amcal have just found double overtime on the A stream. 15-15. And you know, this is... I think me casting the scoreboard of the other game is actually <laughs> more better. interesting. It's actually better. Than what we've got here right now. 
We have a reputation to maintain, Henry. Usually we're the ones doing the overtime. I know. So now Jason's getting a taste of it, finally. Yeah. Putting in some work. It's about time. It's about time. But um, yeah, this is this is outrageous. I could really I mean, someone should go back and do a little highlight clip of some of the shots that Siren have come up with in this game. I think he got one at the beginning of this last round here as well. Just blind, still getting the clean headshot. It's so disgusting. Yeah, this one, look at it. Oh, oh my god. God, he was strafing back behind the box and he still landed that headshot. My Ooh. God. Yeah, this is this has been one hell of a game. We'll see if Bet Boom can get the clean cut. 13-0 here. If they win the pistol, it's home safe. It's the good call though from Into the Breach. Nice A execution. Map in the pool right now where both sides can be incredibly dangerous and not put up even a fight, not put up more than one round that was indeed the pistol. Honestly, it's just embarrassing and it's a little bit disappointing for my team. It, it, it does feel rough. It's a best map, man. It's a best map. It's a highest win percentage also, you know, but they played it as much if not more than a lot of the other maps as well. And I don't want to take anything away from, from Naphne and his boys and Siren, of course, but just the performance here. Four rounds went across two maps. First one, I agree, against G2, but actually they won more rounds against G2 than they did here against Bed Boom. I just feel like I had the inkling that this particular lineup, they're here together, obviously, because they have the spot at the RMR, and they're going to try and make it to the Major. But from what I'm seeing right here, this lineup's not going to be even a thing come two or three days' time. As expected, Siren was our standout player. You can see his highlights up on screen now. I love that play on A. Just where the, those kills link together, and you, it's almost like it was meant to be. With all of this being said, everybody, of course, now ITB move 0-2-2. to two. They're on their last legs. On the other hand, Betboom 1-1. to one. I think especially with Naphne leading them and sort of being the centerpiece of this team, that's going to build a lot of good confidence. They, they know they're not on their last legs. Going on from here, I expect them to build a bit going further into the RMR. Guys, I, what are your thoughts? I really feel like this particular win, even though it's very easy, it's really a much needed injection of confidence that Bed Boom have been sorely lacking. You look at even the results they've had, the losses they've had, some of them have been pretty close affairs as well, right? So for them to kind of remind themselves that we can be very, very convincing, even though it was an ITB who never really showed up, I think it's a good sign because now it's 1-1, you know, win a couple more games and you're through. It's a confidence builder, if, if anything, from Nathaniel and the boys. I, I guess it does depend on who they face in that 1-1 one, one layer. You know, there's still some very dangerous team in that category, and at least they can fall down there. But for now, for Bedroom to, to finally win a game after having lost six in a row, it should build some confidence. And you saw Nathaniel as well. He was very animated, very happy, very energetic in that game as well. So it must feel nice for them finally a, to get a W. A rare smile from Nathaniel. Yeah. He was laughing, Paula. He was. It was good to see. But I mentioned before I saw him at the HLTV Awards, I interviewed him, and he was smiling and laughing there. I think he just can end up being a very serious man when it comes to playing the Counter-Strike. Anyway, with that being said, ITB closing thoughts, guys. They're on their last legs. They're 0-2 to two right now. They have to win their next matchup. What do they need to do uh, other than a I, complete reset? I, I, look, I, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. I don't want to be too super cynical, but we've seen almost every team play here on the Group A stages. Some have been some pretty lopsided losses. We saw some pretty one-sided games even in a previous game, sure. for example. But I feel so far, ITB have been the worst looking. Mm -hmm. Looking at the numbers, the way they're working together as well, just seems so discombobulated. I I think they're going to need a miracle. Now it's going to be best of threes. And even if you win one best of three, it's only going to get worse and worse and harder and harder. So I just don't expect much from them here. A good night of sleep and hopefully some better counters right tomorrow, Paolo. A miracle, Paolo. Absolutely. <laughs> a miracle. Absolutely. Guys, thank you for your thoughts. All right, everybody, we are going to once again go to a short break. After it, however, it's a big match. Our biggest matchup so far, Ooh, FaZe wait. versus Falcons. Two very high-ranking teams. You don't want to miss it. Do not go anywhere. Level up your gaming space with metal posters from Displate. Swap them whenever you like. Hang your Displates in seconds. Get official art from your favorite games on a uniquely designed metal canvas and choose from thousands of posters. Join over 3 million collectors now. Your wall upgrade is here. Shop now at Displate.com.
Players are changing. Countries are changing. The game has changed. Finds it to perfection and simple. It's all off. Who's going on top of the box? Though. He's got three. And he's looking oh. for a fourth. That is incredible. And Ray, he's that away. The best tournament. The best bookmaker. the best of one, what's going to happen? This yeah, is... playoff contenders, right, from Katowice, both yes. of them. One being in the grand final, another one doing a, a good job, I'd say, as well. And Falcon is making it so far in the tournament into the semifinals. For Face Clan, I think they're coming in as the favorites, no doubt about that. They are a better team. They have the better individuals. I think Falcons, without taking anything away from them, the way they did it in Katowice was a little bit hot and cold. They look great at times, but they also look cold at times. And I don't think they have the consistency just yet for me to back them in a game against Face Clan. However, we have seen when they play the A game, they can contest against the best. I 100% agree. With you, also we saw the uh, the interview from Snappy as well, where he mentioned how he initially when he came into in, into Cato, there were a lot few problems which you're able to figure out as the tournament progressed. You know, we had Boros, who was a bit of a question mark initially, a couple of the games he had, but he was able to wake up as well as a team to look good. What I like from Falcons was today, 3D Max were doing some. The pretty wild shit at them, just throwing everything, including including the kitchen sink, and they were able to somehow, you know, dodge and weave their way around and kind of come back and win still very convincingly. That's well, good stuff. You I say pretty wild shit, you know, to be completely honest. You're going against <laughs> Broki, you're going against Frozen, you're going against Face listen, Man. Listen, that is listen, exactly listen, what's listen, gonna happen. No, again. it's <laughs> not. No, it's not. What Phase do? That there is a method behind the map. Okay, what we saw okay. in 3D Max had Maniac molding, and he barely has any any emotional investment in this team. But even he was like, "What the hell are you guys right, doing?" He's he started tweeting out in, in French. That's yeah. how bad. It was. Guys, let me let me pull this back for a second. I think one of the biggest standout qualities that FaZe have shown over the, the lifespan of their current roster is that they're so good at remaining calm under pressure and just yeah. acting as a well-oiled machine under the guidance of Carrigan. And I do think it's enough in a best of one, even against the life likes of tough competition that Falcons are. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure if the players you see on your screen right here are, are, are well gelled enough or, or good enough to apply that pressure. Because I agree with you, you go into a grand final, you go into a, a tight matchup, you know, into a best of three when it has to get done on the third map, you know face will show up. You always feel like even though they're down, maybe 10 to three, 10 to four, they'll find a way to make the game close. We saw the same for Falcons in the first game, they were behind, 3D Max were in the lead, and then they fought their way back. I just don't think the players on your screen right here, the Falcons as a unit, as a team, is ready to apply that amount of pressure on towards face just yet. Nonetheless, the player that was just on our screen at the forefront, Magisk, one of the most winningest players ever, one of the best to come out of Denmark, he is a, a factor where if he finds that X factor, I think he could be a star on the server against face. 
He's already a star on a server. Like, I think he's one of the most reliable players. Specifically with this, with oh, this best one. Yeah, absolutely. I think he, in, if this upset, uh, quote-unquote, sure. is going to be had, taking place, it has to be someone like Majuski really relying on, someone like Senpai as a big game mm. player, so to speak. right? Because Boros, I still feel when it comes down to the big games, the must-win games, the pressure is on him. I feel like uh, he gets a little too uh, tunnel-visioned. He gets a little too myopic. He's not able to absorb all the information which you need to at a high level of Counter-Strike. And I feel like that's where he struggles a little bit. So yeah, I agree with you, Majisk. But here's the thing with FaZe, though. They've got four players we can rely on Absolute at any beast. given time. And this is a pissed off team. This is a team who, you saw Karagun's reaction after they got destroyed by Spirit just a few days ago. They weren't happy with that. Even though they knew they got completely wrecked, he was like, this is unacceptable. Sure. Today against Nine Pandas, they had a bit of a slow start. Mr. Cool himself, he was the one kind of leading the charge initially. But after that second half, they just took the fight to Nine Pandas, completely smashed them. This is a phase looking to make it three. No, no mistakes, no little tremors. They want to make it clean. They want to make it convincing. And I agree with you. I don't think Falcons have what it takes to stop them here on this one map. I think coming second at Kato's maybe lit a bit of a fire under phase. Only time will tell. Guys, can I ask you specifically, Sun Pius versus Brokey, what are your thoughts there, Pimp? Oh, two Ooh. very different players. Brokey is a wild card, has always been a wild card. He's a, a little bit uh, hard to quantify almost, you know. He has big moments and, and he will explode on the server in a clutch scenario at some point. Usually likes to play Nuke as well, which is the map that we're heading into, the map that Falcons did play against 3 Max, if I'm not mistaken as yes, well. They so did. that's good for them in that regard. Sun Pius is a little bit more of an all around AWP player. He has the ability to be aggressive. He has the ability to be defensive as well, for that matter. He's a little bit more well-rounded. I, I think Brokey, for me, is one of the most unique AWP players we have in the game right now, whereas for Sun Payas, he's more reliable. I, I, could, I could just put it this way. Like, I think Sun Payas is overall the better opper, okay. but I feel like Brokey's overall overall the more... Uh, I wouldn't say better player, necessarily, but he can do more things as a jack-of-all-trades and more explosive. Brokey is one of the reasons Face thrive on a stage. He's yes. one of the reasons that Face thrives when the pressure's on, because this man doesn't feel pressure. He doesn't care about the pressure. He plays the same way of Counter-Strike, whether it's online, LAN, or on a stage. It's, it's FU Counter-Strike. New coming out, here's the thing, right? Both these teams really enjoy their nukes, mm -hmm. right? Like, we know how good FaZe can be on it as well. And the thing with Falcons is, and this is something which has been a bit of a part of the narrative, as we saw the Ents roster move on to Falcons, it's a map that Snappy's always, always enjoyed calling on as well. Okay. And even earlier today, despite this, you know, the T side initially being a bit of a struggle against the side of 3D Max, when they switch over to the second half, they completely shut it down. Let me set it up for you quickly right here, Pilot. The reason why FaZe is going to win this game is that they are better on a map like new. They have the better players in the better positions. On ramp, Rops is playing for Face Clan, arguably the best in that position. Boros is playing there for Falcons, not in something that he necessarily likes. On Yard, it's Rain from Face, one of the best Yard players out there, and it's Snappy from Falcons. So you think of the defensive strength yep. that these teams are bolstering. Falcons just don't have the same firepower. If you're if you're Rain, you're like, oh god, okay, there's no donk out there. We're good here exactly. outside Yard. He, he, we can play a little game. Where's Rops going to take the Zeus here in the CT pistol? <laughs> oh, are you expecting that to come out? It's going to come out. He's going to rush hot with a Zeus. Game. He's, done, he's done hot. He's done ramp now. He's guys, got... guys, guys. Sorry, got to cut you off because the game is ready. Thank right. you for your thoughts. As always, everybody, FaZe versus Falcons. This is a big one. I'm just going to say I wish it was a best of three, but it's just a best of one. With that being said, let's head over to, head over to two of the best casters in the world, Anders and Henry. Lol. Wow, that is high praise indeed. And this should be one hell of a best of one. You're not wrong there. And, Let's go. Uh, Parler, I should say. Yeah, apparently I'm a great commentator. I don't even know his name. Uh, yeah, we're going to get into Falcons versus FaZe. <laughs> as we see, seven pistols and is deployed on the CT side. Doesn't seem fair to me. Uh, but we'll see if the Falcons can get past this initial defense towards outside. Rain, one of the best players in the world in this certain position. Props, same story for him, a ramp. He'll spot three players here. First frag will come in favor of Rain. Can't get the second though, as Magis will give him the man advantage. Okay, you're bringing it back a little bit here. Pistol round, so important right now. Brokey hiding down here with the duel. He's not quite getting the connection that he was looking for. So, will be an opening for a bomb plant down below. Frozen had a chance again. A couple of players may be missing their opportunities here on the side of phase. We'll leave Rops low on health and alone on the map. Snappy is just running. It might just be able to jump right around the corner here. All right. Missed shot, but the second one will get the job done. It's all theatrics okay. at this point in time. The round is definitely lost. A stream hasn't really delivered so far. This game should be a banger, Anders. But speaking of games that are delivered, Amcal versus NIP on the B stream has just entered round number 40. They've oh, gone hey. 20 to 20. <laughs> 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 That's one hell of a best of one over there. They've got going on. As I think they're into, what, quadruple overtime over there? 41 rounds of play that are just about to start. Um, but either way, on this stream, FaZe versus Falcons, it's the latter. They pick up quite a convincing pistol there. The Julies don't do too much whatsoever. 
spiraling out of control. Down towards that lower bomb side, Falcons with a convincing finish. And it was Rain that got that initial frag, but it was snappy to find the quick trade and Magis making light work of these Heaven players. Yeah, so apart from that position, nobody else really on the face side was ever in a position to ret return any kills, right? They were always just going down one by one by one. So a little bit disappointing perhaps that FaZe weren't able to set up more positions to retaliate some of the frags, but it's a pistol round, so it could be very hard to dictate the fights if you're on the CT side. All right then, Falcons. Liking the look of this, Carrigan licking his lips. A chance to join the brigade, but unfortunately detected by Snappy. Smacked in the lips. Absolutely. And they're not even going to commit down towards lower. That's actually an idyllic start, right? You've suggested that everyone's going to go down. You're going to force some rotations, which has already come to fruition. We've got Frozen and Rain down at the lower bomb site. They're going to go straight back towards upper, though. This is very calm and controlled so far from Falcons. They can just go back into the upper side, smoke main. One or towards heaven. Drops Gooden. And I think the other two players are towards ramp. So, yeah, up, upper is wide open. There's Rops. Do you want my broker the scout? This is a bit of a masterstroke from Snappy. Great call. Yes, There's it is. Smoke. Yeah, using... Uh, if, even if Carrigan dies, at least he gets a little bit of information and they use that against him, which is, um, which is clever. Well, I'm going to be planted, obviously, and... I think if you're phased, you just try and save what you can. There's no, there's no point throwing away the couple of MP9s and the scout that you've got here, so... No, certainly not. But uh, the hunt is initiated. Snappy dissuaded from his probe, is he though? Oh my god, jumping in to the scope of Brokey. They know there's two players in towards the ramp now. And he actually gets away with it. I don't know how Snappy's alive. He's happy with his efforts here. Rounds going in their favor. Don't need to hunt this one, but it does mean FaZe get a second bite of the cherry going forward. They get to save their goodies from the second round force by. That's MP9s, 5.7s, scouts, and uh, will still be dangerous going forward as well. So not a foregone conclusion. This is 3-0, but great start from Falcons. It's a snappy classic. That's the map they open up the tournament with as well. You know, I feel like it'd be nice, you, Henry, if you and I could get some work done today. I feel like we've just kind of been here watching, like, one team... I've been more interested in the scoreboard of the B stream so <laughs> far, to be honest with you. Like, the A stream has been underwhelming. We've had, what, two 15-minute games? I've never tried anything like it. I've no, usually, happen. I'm surprised. You and I should be casting that quadruple overtime on the B stream right now. That's what logic suggests, but uh, no, here we are. As mentioned, we have got the saved weapons for FaZe. This is our winner's game. That 2-0 scoreline, very comfortable place to be. After the first day of play, means you get some time to relax. Maybe not on this particular round, though. Boros gets his head removed early. Beautiful shot there from Broke. He just spotted him above the smoke there. They'll still continue with their campaign down towards the lower bomb site. Speaking of which, we've got Rain lying in wait. Looking to at least slow them down at the very least here. Normally get a Molotov these steps. See if that comes through, but willing just to take the dry peak. Rain now higher up. The protocol just to fall back. There's the later Molotov. They spot one player down towards the vents. Bear in mind they got the opening frag courtesy of Brokey. Would take a lot though to bring this round in their favor. Good Molotov to slow down the rotations for the upper bomb site. We only have one down towards lower. And that's the aforementioned Rain. He is battered and bruised as well. Robs will join him from the ramp room. Did it even finish in towards the lower bomb site? That's yet to be seen. It could go in the vents, but. Looks like they'll continue with the commitment down towards that B-bomb site. 45 seconds remaining. Rops has no idea how many players are down here right now. They're just trying to take a bit of aggro. Dislodge the defense. They've actually got a pretty solid read on the situation here. That's going to be a double kill. Lovely maneuver here from FaZe. Wow, yeah, really unsettling if you're on the T side. Madden trying to fight at all different fronts, but that's not going to work out. He was way preoccupied looking the other way. Megisk, one versus three with 15 seconds on the clock. And they're just waiting him out, and that's really all they have to do. So that double push towards the windows, absolutely beautiful work coming out of phase. It's a 5-7 and an MP9, and it's plenty enough to be able to pick up the round. They will even steal two Galils and an AK-47. So huge comeback into this one for phase early on. And that's a result of them saving the rifles from the previous round.
You know, like you said, yeah, getting right. a second bite of the cherry is absolutely perfect. Yeah, uh, that's why you save. Like, it might not be the most compelling one. You've got scouts on 5.7s and MP9s, but a team like FaZe can be incredibly deadly. Uh, it all starts with this opening pick from Broki. Boros exposes his scout for a second. And then this lovely maneuver down towards lower, the double swing towards the windows. An absolute nuisance to deal with, and FaZe are on the board. CT campaign will have a direct injection of cash here. That was technically an eco in the previous round, and Rain, oh my God. beautiful way to kick things off round number four. He's not done just yet either. Significant damage towards St. Pius, up towards Silo. That might be enough. Disrupts the offense, smokes it down. Snappy trying to thread the needle in towards Garage, potentially. They buy so much space for FaZe at the start of this round. They don't have to take nearly as many risks now that they've got that opening kill. And some highs being dropped low, certainly also helping out quite a bit here. Again, they try and see if they can get, this time, just one player down below. It's Snappy leading from the front. See if he can create an opening for his team. Interesting position for an in-game leader to be in. If you can find one of those openings here, you can immediately make a snap decision. There's the molly. Yeah. Could have done with that in the previous round. The Falcons currently in a deficit, but not for long. Madden will pull a frag back. Oh, a yeah. couple. Oh my goodness, this is getting a little bit out of hand here. Chaotic round. CT though maintaining the advantage. Some pies thrown into the clutch. Two HP to speak up, 40 seconds to his name. Bomb on his back. But no real map control, and he's not in a dangerous position at all. Uh, is this his save? I think so. I think he's so low on health. Where do you go with this one? You've got 30 seconds and you can't walk. He's just running down lower. Even that is going to be... So, it's so hard. They know that Robs was down there earlier because he was the one that was Molotov down of position, but I think he did get spotted. But 15 seconds? Yeah, he's just running straight for it here. Did not want to try and save the AK. He's going to... Oh, all right. He's going to be dead <laughs> one way or another. I guess he was going to try and suggest he was going lower, then run at the vent and plant in the last second towards upper. Um, I think he was done for either way. And yeah. it will be phase. After losing a kill or two in the mid-stages of the round, managing to pull it back together. Pretty convincing finish. Nothing some pirates could do there. That's all courtesy of Rain, though. Like I said, one of the absolute best to ever do it on the outside position. Using that M4 to great effect. Beautiful opening frag. Took some pious under 30 HP as well. And they will tie the scoreline up a 2-2 here. AK-47s within the CT ranks. And Falcons uh, or Ents. Known for an upper rush or two, Anders. You and I have commentated plenty of them. This time, though, it's an absolute massacre. No success found whatsoever. Yeah, that was brutal, but I also love the fact that they were so quick for the lobby crunch coming in from the from the ramp there. That could be a, a sign of trouble for the Falcon side of things. If FaZe are going to be that quick to stab them in the back, it means hitting that A-bomb side becomes a lot more risky, or at least it means you have to spend some more time clearing out the ramp room or the trophy room behind you because you can't just necessarily go straight for it. Good job on Broki. Bit of an X-factor always. And yeah, they shut it down. Not a bomb plant, and even if there had been one, they wouldn't have really been able to buy a lot in this one, so... FaZe back on top and getting a chance to flex just a little bit on Falcons at the moment. Just a little. Just a little. I mean, it's early days. Don't want to get too carried away. Yeah, absolutely true. Uh, Rain, though, looking to build that confidence up. Deny access towards the outside area, and he's doing a fantastic job so far. Significant damage inflicted towards Madden and Boros. Bear in mind, they don't really have anything to work with here whatsoever. No Kevlar. This is pretty much the full eco. Uh, maybe a chance of a Deagle kill here. It actually takes something quite majestic, considering they have no Kevlar. But there it is. Snappy. Finds him at least one. A lot of Deagles jiggling back and forth in the yard, but only the one connection happening so far. Frozen, the next victim. And he's going to give up the AK for them to pick up. Boris. Don't really want to be giving him any kind of rifle to work with. He is such a menace once he's up and running. Two versus three, though. About 45 seconds on the clock, so we'll see if they can find a way to actually get onto a bomb site, get the bomb planted. That would be the ultimate goal here. Boros just getting the timing against Broki, but Rops, that kill down below should secure the round. 35 seconds here. We'll see if Boros... What have you made of Boros so far? I know historically you're a bit of a fan, but in this Falcons jersey, I don't know. Hasn't really set the world ablaze as of yet, has it? 
No, I mean, I think mechanically you're see you're still seeing some of the moments. Yeah. We had one in the last game that we started at the RMR with. It was really, really sickening, but um, we had a couple of highlights there. But I think I agree, like, uh, you know, in terms of really getting to the tier one, it's, it's you, been a bit of a rough journey. The reputation he had before joining Falcons, you'd expect him to be sort of like donk level sort of enigma, right? Like, yeah, that's, that's what, what you people were hoping for, I think. Sure, and we just, I'm not saying he's a bad player. He's great mechanically, like you said, he's serviceable. But whether I see him in the Falcons journey, jersey in six months' time, I would say probably not. If you had to ask me, that's all. Yeah, I mean, it, it's. I definitely agree that it, the hype from the European RMR during the Paris major, that's kind of yeah. that's where, where he really, you know, people really kind of got him on the radar. Everyone was really excited for it. And after that, yeah, it's true. And I think the problem is sometimes being an explosive player in tier two is just very, very different. Like, you don't just have to be a mechanically strong player in tier one, but you also have to be hard to read and like you can't just keep Boris pushing a lot and pushing into a lot of fights eventually at the tier one level people start to find out all right then we'll get into round number seven brokey awp in the garage right now as we see falcons once more trying their luck same all of smokes gives you the option to sneak into the garage if required frozen though one step ahead of the curve he's already rotated down towards lower not for long up he goes Back and towards the A side. Rain, once more defensive with the AK-47. They've got significant firepower down there. Three players with the bomb just to notice what's in the back of Snappy right now. Oh, the incendiary makes things very frustrating for them. They're locked out. If a smoke comes down as well, that might dissuade them from even going down towards lower. Great smoke from Rain. Perfectly handled. I actually would have loved to have seen how Rain would have won that fight because he was so far back, he might have been able to spot the boost really easily, even without the Molotov. So that could have been interesting, but... He didn't get a chance to even take a peek at it. 50 seconds on the clock. They've really spent a lot of time on this part of the map. It's Magus to open up the round. He'll take down Frozen, even if he does drop fairly low himself. It puts some pressure on the defense once again. And look at this. They're actually putting the bomb back out. I thought they might have gone below after getting the kill, but yeah, they still will. 30 seconds. They're kind of walking back and forth. This is a free kill, though, and it's a lot of trouble for Rain. The only one that could save this round for phase at the moment. 23 seconds. It's a good start, but he needs a bit more. They're coming for him quickly, and the spray <laughs> is not quite there. He needed to stop them at yeah. the door. If ever there was a player that could make that sequence work, Rain might be one of the names in that conversation. If he gets a double kill there, you never know, but there it is. Falcons break the streak of phase, find himself a third round. And just to note as well, I know everyone's Wanted to know the answer as to whether NIP versus Amcal has finished. It has in quadruple overtime. Amcal take the win. Oh, after all that After all of that, like the recovery from a 10-2 oh, no. deficit for NIP, they lose in quad overtime and they go 0-2. That is unfortunate. You hate to see it, Anders. That's got to be one of the most heartbreaking experiences. You, you have such an insane comeback after such a... A huge deficit on the opening, and then you still can't close it out. Brokey is hoping to save the AWP, but Oros, he will give his life to get rid of it. That's a pretty expensive round for uh, for Falcons to to eventually win there, but I guess it's worth it. You you, you put out that AWP, you don't want it in the hands of Brokey anyway. But um, did cost them quite a bit. Phase, see if they built enough money over the course of the last couple of rounds here to continue to have an effort in this one. But this is the kind of game we were hoping for. This was supposed to be an interesting match. And so far, I feel like it's it's turning out that way. So I'm excited for that much. Yeah, I think we all are. This is looking much more like it. No blowouts here. And just to note, the money is pretty good for FaZe. Not perfect. There will be a few concessions. They have the Brokey AWP, but a few players about all the utility, notably Robs and Carrigan, operating with just a smoke each. But uh, tactical timeout chance to discuss their options this one is still wide open when this game here both of these teams one and zero like i said getting to two zero day one of the tournament beautiful place to be so we'd expect the likes of phase clan as well both of these teams of course over in katowice it was falcons that lost uh, spirit in the semis and phase clan got walloped in the the grand final three zero by the same team no one can stop spirit at that event it seems rain though he'll find boros early on nice hg just lobs it over the top Beautiful backspin on it. Takes Boris down early. Not quite the player to get rid of at the start of the round. Some Pires. Very vocal in between rounds. He had a lot to say, you could tell. 
Looks like they want to try and go, go explosive. They're in the hut. Three people. All they need is one good kill to enter with, and they can definitely get the bomb planted. Frozen. Good stoppage at the beginning, and Kerrigan showing up just in time. Out of the vent, a bit of a crossfire setup. And Sunkhaias, it's a lot of damage, but it is too late now. The rest of the team needed to make more of an entry coming out. He's going to get found by the USP at the end of it. That was great work. Frozen just in the right corner at the right time. Not really much to report there, I'm afraid, Anders. Falcons trying to run somewhat of a default round with the Boros Lurk towards outside. He gets naded. You got four players in towards lobby. I mean, in some sense, that tactically, that round actually made a lot of sense for Falcons, right? They got out onto the floor of the A-bomb side, throwing yeah. no grenades whatsoever. All they needed was the kill. I think if they got that on Frozen, they got rid of Carrigan pretty easily. They probably would have been able to open it up, but they just, they needed the kill. That was all that was missing in that round, I think. Well, no one survives the previous, and it looks like they've got no choice but to force. They are going to call a tactical timeout. I've got Go TV access here, access, or should I say Source TV? What is it now? Source 2 TV? Source 2 TV. It's getting more complicated. <laughs> doesn't have the same ring to it, but yeah, we're on Source 2 TV here. Um, so yeah, they've gone for the Force by Tech Nines with three players, Boris with a Mac 10 and Magisk. Am I pronouncing that correctly? I saw there's a bit of controversy at the, in Katowice. People couldn't work out Magisk or Magisk. There was some confusion there. That is confusion. a really tough one for a caster. I, I, I won't lie. Magix or... But yeah. Magisk. Yeah, that's the way... I can't say it. Magisk. Yeah, it's fine. Listen, we'll accept it either way. Well then, let's see where they can make anything of this full investment here. Round number nine, we say they like the upper rushes. Well, at least any success so blind upon entry. And like lambs to the slaughter, it's Falcons. I have their wings clipped. Like that? I do like that, Henry. Yeah. Trying oh. to see if they can fly into the A bomb side, but absolutely denied. And the single casualty on the CT side. Phase. They're starting to get a bit of control in this game. I like it. Six to three in their favor. And those A rushes, I mean, again, they're so contingent on the opening kills. Once it goes the other way, everybody else on the T side, they just get slowed down. They get funneled in through the hut. And it's not working out well for them at the moment, is it? This is in spite of the fact that I think Carrigan, I think that was his first kill maybe in this one round here. Um, otherwise, he was 0-6. Uh, yeah, so he got one kill in that previous round. And that's about it. But they're still playing very well. Frozen at 11-3. I feel like FaZe are enjoying this match quite a bit more now. Some pies with the AK in this one. That's about what they have. Some upgraded pistols. But Falcons have had a much harder time putting together rounds on the board at the moment. We'll see if Rain... Yeah. With Rob's out here, a bit of a crossfire setup for them. Bit of a crossfire. Quite a potent one, if you don't mind me saying. And once again, towards outside we go. Trying to negate the smokes, make their way down towards secret, if possible. God, that's a scary moment. All four players of the smoke dissipates. They're stood in the open. Trousers are around their ankles, but they've managed to avert that danger, at least for now. Frozen. We up against, I think, four players down secret. They have got some Kevlar, so it won't be an absolute meltdown of a spray. As we see, Rain still patrolling towards Main. Good opening frag. That's the one you want to get. Finds the rifle of some pious. Bit of self preservation displayed here. Oh. Adam does manage to steal one away. It's getting awkward for Frozen. He actually gives them a fighting chance here. That kill has to connect. If Snappy can make this one work, who knows where this round goes. Oh, that's Those the kill. Very quick kills oh, for Frozen. Oh, oh, oh. He just, he, he got one, he pulled that USP, got an instant headshot. It must have been on the third one. Those were so snappy for him. I can't believe it. But he played it perfectly. This is everything you want. So often on that, on that position, on the stairs, people will take a fight and they will stick around for another one. And then they get shut down and it's all for nothing. It's back into a four on four. I love that from Frozen. Get the kill, run away. Just instantly reset that fight. Yeah. Well, at least delay them as long as possible. Yep. They can't recover the rifle in a safe position. And uh, yeah, he does very well to get three kills in total. Only three rounds available so far for Falcons. An ultimate round of this first half. But winner's game here. Both teams one and zero. May just take matters into his own hands. Sneaking out in that T-Vent. Smoke to make things a little bit more complicated for now. But that's perfect. Frozen was trying to get a bit of vision there to see if that position was clear. But it's a lot more than he bargained for. Huge kill at the start of it. Take down Frozen. He's been a menace for them so far, but unfortunately, they'll lose the captain. Snappy goes down right afterwards. Rops just counting the seconds. You can see he's communicating a little bit, but uh, Boris out there, a little bit too far away at the moment. 
gonna be a bomb plant inside, which is a bit strange. Nobody even okay. on the bomb side to catch them out. That's... Madden with a chance here. Rob's gonna get one in return though. That's a miracle scenario there for Madden. The fact he's not dead. Yeah, he's I can't be believe it. Thanking his lucky stars, but uh, still not out of the woods just yet. They need this round. This Seaside starting to plummet. Flashbang starting to be deployed, and so are the bullets. It was made just to open things up. He finds a penultimate kill, and that's a done deal. Brokey, no chance to win the round, but still, He's some fancy kit. footwork here. You never know, I suppose, but no. Decides to give up the ghost and will fall back at this stage. There we have it. Falcons, it's a labored round, but they get the job done. I have to say, if Rain gets that kill from main entrance, it looked like a, a gimme in terms of the frag. Could have been a very different outcome there. Some pirates will drop the squad. Madden will live to tell the tale, but uh, there we have it. Fourth round found for Falcons. Final opportunity here as Magis tries to rally the troops. Keep their morale high. A four and four, but the bomb gets planted with absolutely nobody keeping an eye on the A bomb site. That's a rare thing to happen at a high level, but yeah, you're probably right. A lot would have changed if Madden would have gone down like you probably should have there coming in from Maine. That would have been the, the difference here, this particular fight against Rain. If Rain wins that one, might be a very, very different after plan, all things considered. But um, here we are, seven to four, leading into round number 12. It's the last of the half, and everyone is fairly well equipped. It's Madden to start us off. He's taken down Brokey. Good beginning here. Falcons looking to see if they could get another round. I see it's seven to five. We've got yeah. a very open game. I kind of want them to do it. Let's see what they can do. Yeah, we don't want any blowouts anymore, especially in this A stream. But uh, for now, a five versus four. They're trying to find their fifth round, our Falcons. They've got the advantage for now. Plenty of time on the clock. One minute 20 remaining. Rops considered the one of the world's best players in our brand position. No real reaction from the CTs thus far. Three players in towards upper. No presence in lower whatsoever. The aforementioned ramp will be under scrutiny now. Can Rops find multiple kills here? He's hiding in the back boxes. Doesn't want to give anything away here. And he certainly doesn't. He times it to perfection, as you might expect. Aware of the prospect of a third, but his job is done. He levels things out to a three on three. And now knowing they have the ramp for him, that's going to force a rotation. Frozen goes down towards lower. That's really slowed them down. They're kind of committed to this ramp position at the moment. Forced into it. They have actually quite a lot of utility on the T side. They can smoke either window and single or the double doors. We'll see there's a smoke on window. I think... No, it's not a gap. I was going to say that. It looks like an opportunity for Frozen. Well, execution down towards lower. Molotovs to flush out those close-range positions. Frozen, does he dare push that smoke? Oh, he's going to blow it up with a nade and stop the bomb from getting planted nearly. He was so close. Now it's on Carrigan. One versus one as he does get the first kill, but that bomb plant, he was seconds away from happening. So Pius able to get the last one. He was nearly the hero that he wanted to be. Henry, it was a second away, but the bomb did go down. Yeah. And Son Pius to clean up the round. My God, what a first half. Some huge CS2 gameplay there. Frozen popping the smoke towards the window. He denies the plant. I dare say he wins the round. Yeah. But it will be a recovery of sorts ever Falcons. Pretty impressive display in those last two rounds towards the end of that first half. It looked like FaZe were running away with it. But after winning the pistol, it is Falcons recovering. Five rounds on the T side. Nothing to be sneezed out whatsoever. And bear in mind, no halftime breaks here, ladies and gentlemen. We're right back into the action any second now. It will be FaZe switching over to their T side campaign. I can give you some early insights to the buy as well. The technology has finally arrived in CS2. Yes, give us the give us the, the, the rundown down here, yeah. Okay, so right now we have got a P250, a smoke, a Molotov, an HE, a flash. All sorts going on here. It's Rob's majority of the utility. Suggests to Meanders they'll be Molotoving Hut Roof, flashing in towards Upper, and making their way through with that smoke down towards Main. We'll see if that comes into fruition. We're actually going to be getting towards Lobby and investigating the prospect of Ram. There's that waterfall smoke towards Main Entrance. So the Molotov now, do they use it towards the Ram from itself? Into the post plant setup. Some pies for the first kill, but a couple for phase in response. An absolute nuke of an HE is deployed, but the round is not done. It's an equal situation for now. The bomb in a horrible, precarious spot here. Two versus one should be job done here. It's labored, but they find the final kill. We'll never know what intention they had with that Molotov, but towards the ramp, trading out the kills. All 10 players taking part in the battle on that side of the map. Yeah, that, that, it never really stopped once it got going. The HE looked like it was going to make the difference. I can't believe he got the double kill with it, but um, 
It isn't quite enough. Look yeah, at how still. they are. Yeah, that this should have been round winning. You but... think if you get a double kill in this sort of scenario, you've won the round, but apparently not. Madden will be disappointed. He said it seems like everyone went down in this ramp room, and there was no way Boris was going to pick that one up. Out of position, out of health, out of time. And it's going to be a force by and responsive from Falcons. Buying up everything they possibly can. SMGs and pistols. Fast work towards outside. Traditional wall of smoke, Sir Anders. Oh my goodness. Mage is just a boatload of damage as they try and cross over there. Perfectly placed HE, some follow up spam damage as well. Sets up these MP9s for success here. Could be something to work with. Madden bravely takes the first swing. We'll take it. Four and four is absolutely fine. There's no damage has been inflicted elsewhere. But that's the only player down towards the lower bomb side, I'm afraid. They'll have to retake from the ramp room, which is still possible. And Magus has bravely found some positional control down towards lower. Has to get himself tucked in dark, I assume. He's getting real close to that door, but he can't be the one to open it. That's obviously going to give it away. So he's just waiting, hoping that there's a mistake on the other side. 50 seconds. They're going to put up a smoke. They've got a Molotov as well. He's going to be put to the test right here. Flash is coming through. Oh, it's chaos on the bomb side. He needs the first strong kill, and he's going to get it. But now they're on top. He's sweeping oh! up another headshot. It's Mask. Triple. He's absolutely wrecked them. Robs. He was waiting for the rotation outside. <laughs> what a sequence from the Dane. Yeah, a dazzling display of skill. Three kills when it looked like he had nothing to offer. He tucks himself in, in the lower bomb site and hits absolutely every single shot here. The force buy does work out for Falcons. Four players surviving here. Rops with nothing to do all the way back in T spawn. Mages for three kills in total. And there we have it. This game is back on. No way Rops can do anything with this one. They'll go up and salvage the weaponry of the fallen FaZe clan as we find Galil's. An MP9 and Falcons back in the driving seat here. This is the game we wanted, Anders. That's been yes, that's like is. that's probably a highlight of the day, to be honest with you. This, oh, that final kill. Absolutely disgusting. That's more like it. Falcons showing signs of life here. The force behind the CT campaign. Always a difficult one, but uh, they make it work. It was down to the bear in mind, Mages did the majority of the damage towards outside as well. He got that he HE did. towards outside. He did the spam damage, goes down towards low, and gets a triple kill as well. So he pretty much carried the entire round there. As we'll see a force buy of their own. Phase. Known to have some deadly deagles within their ranks. We'll have to put on their best display of skill here, but it's going to be snappy finding that opening frag. Takes down Big Man Rain. Currently on 8 and 11. And they'll start to peel off the choke point here. Knowing they've got a nice advantage, confirming they're up against the Eagles. So uh, an injection of energy as well into Falcons. Starting to fall a little bit behind in the game. So quite nice that they were able to turn it around. Still going to be careful you're not running into that AK of Rops. He's had himself another brilliant map. 14-4 on him. So he's quite lethal at the moment. Could see him out there lurking for a frag somewhere. Getting many opportunities at the moment, which, from Falcon's point of view, it's fair, fair game. Just let him get close to a bomb site before you try and take too many fights here. Make you can see he's keeping his distance. And the clock slowly working against phase. 40 seconds. Are nicely done. Frozen the next target. Five versus three. And even a chance for a bomb plot right now going to be potentially quite tricky. He even spots more people slipping down towards the lower part of the map so they can make some intelligent rotations here. Madden going to be the first one to try and reach them at the corner for 25 seconds. They do line up. Anything but a Galil. Probably he does get the double mode down there, but the Galil not quite enough stopping power. It's awkward for Boris, finding himself in the middle of yeah. everything. So Bomb Plant all of a sudden back on the menu. That wasn't his best work, and it has given them some insight to the round. They, they know the low bomb site's clear at this point. The bomb has been planted. And sure, they're, they're relatively low on HP, but... If Carrigan can make anything happen here. First kill is his. Oh my god, it's down to one versus one. I dare say Brokey has the advantage as well. They steal the round away. It's a five on three. That's unreal. Oh, that's a fumble as well. I, I don't think Boris should be in anything to do with that fight. No, he's in a position like by that railing. He just there's no escape, right? He's yeah, got exactly. no cover. Like all he had to do is delay the plan as long as possible. I think they thought the round was done. They they had some open runway here. He gets an awkward fight from the two of them, and all of a sudden, Brokey is let off the leash, and he closes things out in emphatic style. That is brutal. Just as we said, Falcons are back online. Job was done. 
to be a very close game. That is an absolute gut punch of a round to concede. They'll take a tactical timeout. A moment to stew over that as uh, they'll presumably force by back themselves. Famases, Deagles, MP9s. The war of attrition continues, but this one more important than ever. If they lose this round, Anders, it's full eco territory on the CT side. It'll be 10-6 down, presumably 11-6 after that. Might be a done deal. So uh, definitely worth the tactical time out of this stage. And the problem is with Nuke, you don't really have many aggressive options. You can lobby crunch, of course. You can stack outside. But uh, FaZe are not going to be giving you many opportunities to find early kills. We'll see what they've got in mind. Some pass I mean, will be down to the M4. Same for Snappy. Uh, but still, yeah. Just to reiterate, you lose this round. I'm not sure they can bring this game back to life. Hate to make it worse as well, but Boris is 3-11 and 11 right now. And that is, yeah, that's concerning. It we, is. It, that, all the games I've commentated of him, I, I barely said his name. Yeah, it's it's a bit disappointing. Like, again, coming out of the, uh, the Paris RMI, there was so much hype around it. I think for good reason. I was, I was casting some of those early games there, and it was just very, very exciting to watch. But this is definitely a little bit... Because that, that last round, just even one kill for him up in that position would have changed everything, right? If he would have just, you know, at least traded one of them, it would have been exciting all of a sudden. But going down like that... Very, very painful. All right, then. Well, so far, so good. Instead of five on five at the very least, they haven't been absolutely demolished. Look at the needs though, around on that 16. CT side. Uh, well, yeah, a smoke and an HE. It all comes down to this boosted round. It needs at least two kills. Boros, time to impress us here, my friend. Is there any way he can make this one work? It's an overlooked position at times. Oh, Boros. You needed one there. You needed one, man. Snappy on the flank. I think he got timed by yeah. Kerrigan, who was a little bit later than everyone else. Oh, that was off. They, they, they overlooked his position as well. I don't think they were even going to check it. And he gets wrecked. 3 and 12. As mentioned, this is the all important round. They are fully invested. In terms of loss bonus, Anders, they're going to get $1,900 per CT player in the oh, next round. Oh, no, Henry. Oh, um, no. So, yeah, you're 10 6 down. Hold on. Jesus, Rob's okay. Perfectly that timed. 5 1 3 that they lost has just completely yeah. pulled the rock out from under them. That's yeah, so definitely. devastating. Well, that's round. Madden, I, mean, I guess you save your MP9. Maybe you can upgrade this to an M4 somewhere on the map. Has he got a kit? No, I was going to say maybe there's some tomfoolery afoot. We don't get nearly enough of that, but uh, Nuke is the perfect map for it. Maybe that's also why people are extra. Super careful when they're in these kind of scenarios to stay stay near the bomb. Madden still coming while alive here. He's certainly a man that wears his heart on his sleeve. I think that's fair to say, right? Oh, no doubt. Wants the most out of his teammates. He's delivering today. He's actually put on a pretty decent showing. It's uh, some of the other ensemble cast that haven't turned up thus far against FaZe. 10 to 6, as mentioned. $1,900 per player in terms of loss bonus. You have no choice but the full EK. You can't even flirt with the idea of a PT-50, which costs $300. You can't even purchase a flashbang. You have to invest $0 here, and then you get $2,400 into the next round. And, well, you're going to have $4,400. That means M4, no helmet, no kits, no incendiaries, and that's how you have to win the next round coming up here. So, yeah, and it's taken away. We're going to have the Zeus. Which has had a lot of attention recently. I've been using it in my games. I've, I've I'm a bit no, like Rob's. I've done Henry. it three times so far, and I've managed to get three kills with the Zeus and pistol rounds. You used to be the anti I know. advocate. What's Rob's happened? converted me. I think he's going to convert everyone. You've joined the dark side. Yeah, you'll see me using shotguns next. Okay, Imagine that. Well. But yeah, it's on the pistol round. It's absolutely sick. Like I can't believe how much success I've had with it. Well, you've heard it here. You've got Henry's permission to use the Zeus now. Yeah, it's exciting. Basically, the expensive. British rocks. That was not my bingo card for 24, but... Well, yeah, it got patched. You can recharge it now for whatever reason. I don't think that's really a mechanic we'll ever see used, but uh, here we go. As mentioned, this is the full eco. Some open runaway for phase. No reason to take these jewels. Rain will happily oblige, though. And start mowing them down. Just padding those stats. Get them, Rain. Nice work. Rob 16 and 5. He is absolutely running away with this one. Frozen, 17 and 9. Who else is up there? Rob, oh no, sorry, Brokey, 16 and 6. Ugh, they've just had three players really turn up today. Reigns, 12 and 3. And top fragging is Madden on 13. Still Boris, 13, sorry, 3 and 13. He's supposed to be your, your prodigy. Yep. Your upcoming star. The one you're kind of building the roster around, right? Like from the previous team, he's the only one to survive. You think there's a reason for that, but... 
yet to stand and deliver. Might take some time, I suppose, but normally these individuals that have that amazing skill ceiling, you'd probably expect them to carry their own their own weights. Oh, Rain spotted one, but he knows he's been spotted in return as well. Just give him an HE in response here, but collecting some utility from Spawn. This is the round, and Boris finally gets the better of Rops here. Fourth yeah, kill. To be honest, even even that, I think Rob had basically outbrained him in that moment. I think any other time yeah, you replay that ten sure, times, yeah. like Boris is going to be dead. Should have been. But yeah, good job. I mean, th that's a really important kill. Keep it going. More of that if you want a chance at any kind of a comeback here. It's feeling like a bit of a stretch at the moment, but if they get this one, it's eleven-seven. Not out of the question that they could find a way through. Four versus five. A lot of yard presence for the CTs as they're sending bullet after bullet through the smoke without really connecting with anything. And just as the smoke's fading, all right. At least they know that someone's walking down below, but FaZe, have they got one more trick up their sleeve here? 40 seconds. They are still leaving Kerrigan behind towards the lobby, so can catch rotations, can also maybe leave a path to exit, back up the vent and go to the A-bomb site. Both are viable options. Two people down below, three above. I feel like they've got this one locked in, surely. FaZe, they're gonna have a hard time getting back out of this round. Yep, they're gonna try and use Kerrigan, getting up out of the vent, and it's work to get out of the vent, but unfortunately, Madden is right there. The smoke did not go down in time, so should be a bit of a cleanup. Some Pius on the other side, and Brokey. There we go. Nothing much he could do here. I think that was a great call for FaZe. It's cool to see them try and, and, and sort of pull the switch to the A-bomb side right at the end, but they couldn't quite get the kill on Madden. No, apparently not. That's a very convincing round there. Boris opened things up, finding the kill on Robs. And as you mentioned, though, he kind of was out position. I like Robs actually had that fight going in his favor. I think the round kind of basically comes down to that particular duel. They had the man advantage, didn't have to rotate anyone down towards lower. Some pious death from above there with the M4A1S. Madden to close things out. And finally, some signs of life here. Falcons giving up a huge string of rounds. One more required for match and indeed series point in this best of one. Madden, what are you up to? Robs will find him. He was trying to sneak up the ladder. Thought he was safe. I like I like the audacity of it. It's a hell of a maneuver, and it won't cost him too much. He's still got a four on four as Robs oversteps the mark towards the hub position. Outside smokes are deployed, and the snapper to try and deal with it, but lost all vision. Mages did a ton of damage to the Deagle Fort. With the outside smokes deployed. We'll see if he can do it once again. The first bullet connects towards Rain. See, they're trying to make their way over quietly. It's getting a little uncomfortable now. The bullets keep being sprayed through that smoke. Here we have it. Four and four. No CT presence down towards lower whatsoever. We have got some Pius with the AK-47 towards Garage. Boros with a lot of work to do here. Four to 13. Still no one down towards lower. Here he comes now. 20 bullets in the AK. Hasn't taken the reload. Should be fine, he says. Now that you've said it, yeah. now you know it's going to be an issue. 40 seconds, oh sorry, yeah, 40 seconds, just about. All right, good little spray. We'll take down Rain, reopening the door a little bit early on that shot. And Brokey will punish him for it. Down to 30 seconds here, Henry. The bomb is going to get planted three on three in the after plant. And FaZe, if they yeah. win this one, they're in a really strong position. They might be able to pull on through Brokey. That's where he does some of his best work up close with the AWP. And Snappy's dead no longer the so oh, Shadow actually shot the Shadow, I think. I can't believe it. Yeah, he might have shot a little bit early then. Okay, well, they've got kits, of course. This round certainly favors FaZe, but it's not impossible for the Falcons. They need to find this next kill quickly, but it's not going to happen. That might secure things here. No real reason to peek until he touches the bomb. Time is ticking away for some pious... Nothing he can do. He knows it as well. Round's over. That's going to be map points. Four phase. No defuse yet. It's all done. He's going to lose his AK-47 as well. Unfortunately, good effort. But it will be phase now with a lot of open runway. To find that 13th round, it will take five in a row for Falcons in their CT campaign here. Money's not terrible, Anders, but we're averaging around $4,000. So uh, we're going to see a mixture of Famuses and MP9s here, a couple of M4s. But uh, his Robs, I can't believe that's how it kicked things off. Uh, Madden thought he'd slip the net, but uh, anything but, unfortunately. Wasn't the reason they lost the round. It was still a 4 and 4 match. Just managed to bring back the trade, so it wasn't the end of the world. Uh, but a nice clinical finish here. No chance Empires could even get close to the victory, as now they need to present a perfect round, and they've got very little to work with here. The SMGs, bare bones utility. 
and a ramp push. We said the options are limited in terms of CT aggression, and Brokey's going to go down as well. That nade gets him for sure. <laughs> That's a home and grenade following him around the corner, but he's not done yet. Frozen up on the silo, able to take down Magus. He was lingering around out in the yard since the start of the round, really. And they have the bomb picked up on Kerrigan, so we'll see. Frozen Kerrigan can manufacture a miracle round here. It's a two versus four that they've managed to get a little bit closer with here. You can see Kerrigan bringing the bomb quite far away, and there's still plenty of time for Falcons to make a mistake, so I think that's why Frozen and Kerrigan on the other side, they've called a bit of a slowdown. Oh, that's a bit, no a bit of noise being made. Don't need to do that. All they need to find is one more kill to level the playing field. Some pious, very defensive. Playing for Intel here. Carrigan, no stranger to that approach. Trying to lock him in. Frozen sneaking up. I don't think Snappy was realizing that's an MP9 as well. Ooh. Frozen, he committed to it. He might have been able to do it. 30 seconds here. And Carrigan, rough start to this game for him. He's trying to make up for it a little bit, but still, it's a one versus two. He at least gets the bomb plant. He gets the headshot as well. And some pious, he knew that he was down below. Carrigan setting up a flash, and he might go straight for it here. Just Huge. tucked into the corner. Sun Pius on the other side. He wants to fight. Oh! 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 down, shut down. And Carrigan That's able to win this one for his team. A stunning clutch from the in-game leader there. That's how you get it done. That's old school as you like. Isolating those fights, understanding the communication your teammates are given to you, and a little bit of a sound cue from the vent as well. Great showing from FaZe. They go 2-0 and zero now. A huge alleviation of stress and pressure there, Anders. This is the start they wanted. And boys, what did you make of that over on the desk? Henry and Anders, I thought that was spectacular. That clutch at the end by Carrigan, love to see it. We know he's been one of the most storied IGLs for, for so long now, but one of the other traits that uh, we often should bring up about him is that he still manages to frag out, not all the time, but in clutch situations and, and, and when it happens, it doesn't look fantastic. I think one of the best qualities Kerrigan have as an in-game leader is that we know, as you said, that he's not necessarily the best fragger anymore, but his calling, individually calling, it doesn't really get affected by him having a rough game. We saw that here. He wasn't showing up. He wasn't getting any frags, wasn't playing well individually, but the calling coming out of Kerrigan was still on a, on a high level, so he doesn't really get affected by not having a great game himself. Yeah, Absolutely. I was about to say that because I, I didn't get a chance to look at the end scoreboard, and yeah, Kerrigan was just not having an impact with the frags across the match but then if in the last round he has a clutch like that to take them over the finish line what, what you can't say anything bad about that oh absolutely not and again for Carrigan, it's not like he doesn't understand how the game works obviously he is the IGL off phase right it's just that obviously as the years go by your aim isn't exactly your mechanical ability isn't what it is as usual but it doesn't matter Carrigan, someone who's going to be always sacrificial is one of those guys who's going to throw himself in first looking for his entries and it's like I die, doesn't matter, I get traded, I have my team behind me, I'm still going to be calling. So overall, um, another day in the officer phase, if you ask me, I think there was a very, very clinical showing overall. Uh, the first half, a little bit more competitive. I think Falcons sure. showed a little bit of life. In the second half, there were windows, there were opportunities for Falcons to at least maybe potentially tie things up, get a double digits, but they let it slip. Now we'll get to more into details about the, you know, the small little minutiae of what really happened there, but there were opportunities here for Falcon to make it much more close. I 100% agree with that sentiment. I think Falcons showed up in the first half they played a, a decent level of counter strike i'd say especially the last couple of rounds in the first half gave me belief that this could be a close game that this could be a competitive one back and forth frozen had a monstrous first half as well you see him in the picture right here oh, that yeah. wasn't even enough for face to run away with the game in that rubs the same you have your two hot hitters in rubs and frozen playing well and that wasn't enough to keep falcons off the base so i agree with you falcons played a, a good level counter strike in the first half unfortunately for them as we're going to speak about later they had a couple of moments they had a couple of key rounds in this game that had it gone their way we would probably still be watching this game right now unfortunately for them it wasn't meant to be yeah, 13 to 7 in favor of FaZe over the Falcons. I think it's a very fair point to raise that, yeah, that, that scoreline is quite strong in favor of FaZe, but there were moments there that Falcons could have capitalized on, and they did put up a pretty good fight regardless of the, the end scoreline, Blair. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, overall, I, I feel like it's like Falcons didn't completely capitulate, so to speak. I feel like the, because, okay, it's, when you're playing against a team like FaZe, best of one, everything on the line, right? Your, your weakest link, your weakest link is, you know, sorry, the, the, your weakest link can completely just rip you apart, so sure. to speak. And it would be a miss of me to not point a few fingers. Okay. Boros went yeah. five and 16. 
5 and 16, while Carrigan went 7 and 14. Th that is not the sort of scoreline I'm expecting from a player of Boros's caliber and what we know he can do. And while, yes, he has, you know, there are times where he does step up to the plate, he needs to be more consistent. When you have someone like Sun Pius as the AWB player, you have someone like Magisk, the best rifle they have in the sure. team, if you ask me. Boros needs to be the third part of that trifecta. He cannot, he cannot be allowed the luxury of, you know, having performances like this, especially in games like, you know, where you get the win, you're going to be 2-0 up. So I have to point fingers here. And it's it's not even he was unlucky. He was just missing from the server. Yeah, and it's a conversation that has two sides to it, because I agree with you, Boas is right now fighting for a contract, fighting for his right to stay within the team. I think yeah. if Falcons are not making this major for some reason, then I think Boas will be out of this team uh, within, within no doubt. So for that, he's still fighting for it. He's still fighting for a contract. Another one is how much is Snappy actually setting up Boas on a map like Nuke? We spoke about it coming into it. He's playing on the CT side towards ramp. That's not what Boas is supposed to play. He's not a static player that likes to play that role. He needs to be fulfilling his role by moving around, constantly finding fights, and using that incredible aim and the mechanical skill that he possesses. So one thing is how much is Boras not performing as an individual? Another thing is how much are they trying to set him up? Because I don't see that from Snappy. He's the one occupying outside. It should be Boras. Rops was the player that really stood the sorry, so not stood the test time, but really made a stand on their first matchup against Nine Pounds. This time, our standout player was frozen. It's nice to see both of those players reuniting on this phase lineup and being able to produce top results. If you had any doubt about Frozen winning phase clan, I think the last couple of games, even Akatovica, have proven that he's uh, a strong signing. I said it coming into it. You know, it's it's hard to say when you speak of a legend like Twist. I think Frozen, you know, the past couple of years have been a better individual player than Twist, and it may even be considered as an upgrade. Take nothing away from Twist. He's had a fantastic career, still a great player, but I think Frozen is the real deal. Yeah, I, I remember when this, uh, when the line of change happened, obviously losing Twist was a big, mm. you know, a punch for the side of FaZe, but, but the moment I heard Frozen's coming in, I'm like, this is great. That's fine. This is great. It's, I'm happy for Twist. He gets to play with his NA homies, uh, you know, in, in Liquid, and for the fact that Frozen finally gets promoted alongside Rops on the, with his character lineup, I was very happy for it. And he's shown up as well. He's been, he's been the most consistent player for FaZe ever since he's joined in. If you look at the overall average in the past uh, three events, Include the third one they're playing right now, which is not easy when you need a new kid on the block. Sure, I'm sure you know Carrigan and Faith, the rest of Faith have made him feel more comfortable with his spots, etc. etc. But he is delivering, unlike a couple of other players on the side of Falcons. So both of these teams started this matchup in our Swiss format 1 to 0. Of course, now Falcons are going to be 1 to 1. Faze, look, they've come and done the business 2 to 0. That's exactly the start they wanted and not even necessarily needed. I think if they went down early, they would have bounced back. But to get to start off in the RMR 2 to 0, that, that's exactly what they wanted. That's 100% what they wanted. And if you're phase, you know, you're like, all right, job done. You just need one more best of three. You should be feeling pretty comfortable. For Falcons, it's still not all doom and gloom, right? Look, you fell to phase. Mm. It's okay. You still tried. You made a few mistakes here and there, things which hopefully should be fixed. But looking at the way they played the first game, I still have, uh, I'm still very, very hopeful for Falcons. Yeah, I would agree. You know, there's a couple of moments that we can we can highlight. Round 14 was one of them happening in this game where it could have been different. It could have applied a bit more pressure towards phase clan. We're seeing it coming in right here. That's not the one. That's not the round. That's not the map, one. Not yes. round, you know, but this was a good round as well from Syria. But round 14 was... <laughs> I like a, how you're trying to save that. <laughs> round 14 was one where, where Magic pulled out the deagle, right? Where yeah, he's we'll yes. single-handedly single saving Falcons in a scenario where they should lose the round. You're thinking to yourself, okay, Face is running away with the game. Magic comes out with a fantastic clutch with the deagle, mm -hmm. only for them to lose it in round 15. Had Two Falcons v four. won that 2v4, had they won round 15, I think we would still be standing right here, potentially even speaking about a game that came very, very close. And and that's the problem for me when it comes to Boros, right? Like, if you if you go back to the, that, that round from, from Magic, given it on have the clip. I'm sure people watching the game would remember this. Sure. He was in the lower bomb side, uh, FaZe in quite clear him. He gets a three kill, nice shots there. You have all the weaponry now to work with. One rifle save for FaZe. The next one, 2v4, where it's Carrigan and I believe Brokey, right? right? The two players, Brokey, yes. But it's a 2v4. They head into the lower bomb side and it is going to be up. I think we should be able to see the round. Here we there go. we go. The, we've, we've got round 15 now up on screen. This is that, the one that, that's spray whiff from Boros. Yeah completely whiffs a sitter and then Carrigan and Brogy stitch together this 2v4 and from then on I think Falcons just won one more round. If they're able to convert this in more convincing fashion they could have you know put pressed phase a little bit more and maybe got a few more rounds. And that's that's two moments from Carrigan that regardless of his scoreline were so key to the victory of phase. I mean, yeah, he was doing a good job, you know, keeping Brokey alive, I guess. It was, was Brokey doing the, the heavy lifting in this one. Kerrigan got a single kill in the situation, but you're right. Good enough. Came in clutch, good enough, was enough for them to win the round. There's a massive difference between FaZe going up 9-6 to six at this moment. 
the other way around, it would have been 8 7, face saving 8 8. All of a sudden, you have a game where Falcons, on paper, are favorites to win the game. So it was a, a game changing moment right there. Brokey, again, we've got to give him credit. We label him as a bit of a wild card, as a bit of a the X Factor player within Face Clan, and he did show up in this instance. Blair and Pimp, any final thoughts before we head to a short break? I think it's just we got what we expected from the side of Phase. Uh, again, for Falcons, I don't want to be too too harsh on Young Boros either. You know, Smart Snappy did mention we've seen some problems. They're obviously going to be they're learning as they go. It's still a very, very young team with a lot of potential, if you ask me. I think Madden stepped up to the plate. Maj Majisk was looking very good as well. So overall, I'm still not going to... It's not nowhere close to doom and gloom for Falcons. I expect them to go through. For, for Phase, though, job done. Very convincing. A Copenhagen major with no Kerrigan doesn't Ooh. sound right to me. I know, I know they haven't made it just yet, but getting off to a 2-0 start is, is a good sign for him, good sign for FaZe, and they've been playing good counts right today. They're very close and they're looking very good. All right, everybody, that wraps up FaZe versus Falcons and seven best of ones down here on day one of the PGL CS2 EU RMR. One more to go. It's also a very competitive matchup, at least I hope, and on paper it's looking that way. G2 versus Eternal Fire after a short couple minute break. Follow. Fine, so here we have. Here we have, here we have. Break the door, hot, cut. One more. Do that. I think I'm, I'm clear. What's One more door? hot, that door. I have, I have, I have, I have, I have, I have. I'm reloading, I'm reloading. I have, I have hot, that I have hot. Should be main outside. Alright, uh, I killed the outside player. Last is lobby lurk. I hit him. I hit him hot, yeah. <laughs> sick. <laughs> sick. Nice to see you guys. God, this is a, I love this fucking prac, bro. Fucking A simulator. Estonia now. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Level up your gaming space with metal posters from Displate. Swap them whenever you like. Hang your Displates in seconds. Get official art from your favorite games on a uniquely designed metal canvas and choose from thousands of posters. Join over 3 million collectors now. Your wall upgrade is here. Shop now at Displate.com. Players are changing, countries are changing, the game has changed. Times it to perfection and simple to go! It's all off, who's on top of the box? He's got three and he's looking oh. for a fourth, that is incredible! And Rain, he's not away! The best tournament, the best bookmaker.
What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to the PGL CS2 EU RMR. We've seen seven best of ones so far on the mainstream, and it's time to close things out with our final matchup of the day. G2 versus Eternal Fire. Both teams are 1-0 and zero in our Swiss format, and it should be a competitive affair. At least I hope so. Blair and Pim, what are your initial thoughts? I agree with you on that. I feel like, low-key, this could be a pretty... Uh, I'm still going to take G2 as favorites, obviously, okay. right? But I think Eternal Fire have punched way above their weight in the past couple of months. They've done it on land, they've done it on, you know, against some very, very good opposition as well. And G2 are a team we know can blow very hot or very cold. Depending on that, this game could be a banger. It could be a banger if G2 don't reach the heights we know they're capable of. The question is, Pimp, how likely is that? I think it's it's very likely against Eternal Fire. I'm not going to lie. We <laughs> oh, have wow, the, okay. yeah, honestly speaking, we have the players being presented in front of you right now. I think a lot of them are, are well-known names and, and names that we have to 
to get familiar with as well for the future. Uh, obviously, Voxic is back playing good Counter-Strike. We saw that in the very first game. Eternal Fire in general are playing fantastic Counter-Strike. I agree when you're saying they're punching about their weight, but we got to be honest, what they showed in Katowice, that was one of the best playing teams we had up until the point they lost the two games. They lost to Face Clan. There's no shame in that whatsoever. And Navi, and Navi as well in a very close game. They could have gone both ways. And if people didn't watch the Face Clan game, Eternal Fire was arguably the better team in that yes. one. They should have won that game. They could have won that game. It was so, so close. Came down to a couple of maps on overtime as well. So if you're Eternal Fire right now, you're going in against G2. Yeah, you're not the favorites, but you're playing with nothing to lose and no fear whatsoever. Eternal Fire right now is the best version of Eternal Fire we've probably ever seen. And also, like, if you look at his two teams and the, and the matches they've had today, right? Eternal Fire, it, it was a bit of a... I'd say it, it was a tough match. It was a tough match. 13-11. Yeah. Not the most convincing one. Especially with someone like Wikadia who got off to a very rough start. But for me, that actually presence I have a good picture you're like sure. you have you get off to a rough start one of your potential new star players in the lineup goes 0 and 10 to start off the game and get they turn it around and despite the fact it might have been a little bit messy they get the job done on the flip side you had uh, a G2 have a bit of a of an appetite, so to speak, with Into the Breach. They whetted the appetite, they're now ready to go, because that was nothing. But a good sign there for all the players of G2 and the one question, the one criticism we've been uh, hand giving the way of G2 all this time is, Monacy needs a little bit of help, guys. Like, just help the kid out a little bit. This time, everyone on the side of G2, they top frag while making Monacy the bottom fragger of the team, because they couldn't find anyone to kill. Sure. So that, at least, is a good way for G2 to get warmed up for this game. G2 up on screen now. Monacy, Nico, Pimp, what are your thoughts on G2? How do they need to approach this matchup against Eternal Fire? What are their keys to victory? They gotta be cautious, you know. They gotta gotta be respectful. As said, I think Eternal Fire right now is, is playing Counter Strike at almost the same level as, as G2. Uh, for my money, they could have done exactly what G2 did and, and made it into the playoffs. So mm. they gotta respect their opponents right now, no doubt about that. What Blur said was a, a key moment for me as well. The fact that Nico had a great showing in the first game. I know it was against a weak opponent. It was against ITB, but if we can get the Nico back that we know at somewhat similar level as in CSGO together with Manisi who's been blowing up the server ever since CS2 came out then we're cooking then we're looking at a team that is very dangerous the map of Nuke is a map that Eternal Fire loves to play we saw that in Katowice as well they played exceptional good Counter-Strike so if I'm G2 right now I would be a little bit afraid I would be cautious I'd be respectful but of course going with the vision to win the game. I'm actually going to uh, agree with you on a lot of the points you made right there, but one thing I want to touch upon is the fact that for G2, sure, there's there's two things, there's a difference between you know playing scared and giving respect, right? Sure. You of course have to respect your, your position as well, but let's be freaking real. I mean, you have Nico, mm. you, ha you have you have freaking Monacy in your team, you know, you're G2, you, you've been winning championships uh, championships in the past year, year and a half, with you know maybe a couple of changes in the lineup and whatnot. You should be coming in as favorites, you should be thinking of yourselves as favorites. When they added Nexa into this lineup, we expect sure. Hunter to be unshackled, right? Finally, he can start fragging out because Nexa's there. It's going to be perfect. You know, they have that uh, because they played together in the past. The synergy is going to be better. We haven't seen that. And yes, that ITB game, I don't want to take it away from them, but that was basically a freebie being handed to them. It's also a game where Hooksy, uh, for one of the first times and probably last times in this tournament and in the major <laughs> circuit, goes up against an in-game leader that is worse off individually than himself. So that's a good sign as well for, for G2. There's no weaker link on the server than Major, and that's not to take anything away from him but mechanically speaking we had the same argument in Katowice he's arguably one of the least skilled players out there he's a great in-game leader he's a great influencer within internal fire but he's a weak point that you can utilize it's a weak point you can against go after if you're Nico and the same could be said for Hooksy so you actually have a matchup right here where Hooksy should be individually the better player gentlemen the game is ready to go can I push you for quick final G2, predictions easy. G2, G2 Blair uh, actually I'll, I'll go with EF okay, okay my okay. analyst desk is split Anderson Henry who have you got Oh, it's a good question, Paula. I'm going to have to side with G2 on this one. I respect it from Pimp, though. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final game of the day on the A-Stream at least. It's been a hell of a day. I've enjoyed myself. We're looking for a nice, competitive, close series here. It will be Eternal Fire to kick things off on the T side here of Nuke once again. And uh, towards Rampro, Woxic will lie in wait. Kalex, what is he lining up? Getting himself a smoke lineup here from the roof. Yeah, waiting it out for a minute, but... I guess it gets himself the perfect range from the door to open fully. It's down to the margins, isn't it, when you're playing at this high level? Let's see, they've wasted a bit of time. Monacy right. started to get there, no bullets connecting yet. Nico, he's trying, but the smoke is right in front of him. Hunter on the other side, the duelies, oh. they're ripping them apart. It's too much to handle. Major goes down, and it's on Kalix here. Can't even get the reload in in time. Hunter will find him a quad kill to begin with. Zip. 
Oh, I hope he's enjoying himself. Yeah, what's very sick from Hunter. The Julies, a bit of a mainstay in CS2. They are starting to creep into fashion towards the end of CSGO, but now you see them in pretty much every CT pistol, especially on the likes of Nuke. Uh, no bomb planted, Anders, but a force by nonetheless. We are going to have tech lines out in full force. It was the Julies of the hero of the previous round. Hunter make light work of that upper execution there. The smoke thrown from Squeaky, a couple of flashes over. Doesn't get them anywhere near a victory. Eternal Fire now on the back foot. First smoke deployed to enable some control towards outside. They're going to try and send multiple players down towards the secret area. That Molotov to dissuade CDs from rotation. But you could see Nico wasn't having any of it. He still wants to get down there and be part of the action. He gets a face full of lead courtesy of Major. Yeah, and the Molotov had weakened him from earlier. So he was going to be dead by just one bullet there. And Kallax with the Deagle will find the headshot. It's a bit awkward right now. Nexa. He's got some crossfire potential on the other side, but it never really gets activated. Oh, <laughs> my God! Kallax, what are you doing? Three kills so far with the Deagle. He's completely returned upon G2, just Hunter left. He's going to try and at least do so many here, but my God. I really like that from Eternal Fire. It had a lot of moving parts there. So the outside smoke's pretty standard stuff, but there's the Molotov down the vent as well. Nico took 30 damage en route trying to get down towards that lower position. He knew what was coming, Anders, but it meant that the Tech-9 had one tap potential at that range as well. So it was a really nice little set piece, a pocket strap. If you like from Eternal Fire, and of course, if Kallus gets three one digs to go with it, uh, that's all you can really ask for. It's going to be down to poor old Hunter, the hero of the last round, five and zero, drops a smoke deep in T spawn to try and provide some self preservation nice. here. But Eternal Fire bounce back with vengeance there. Beautiful as they manage to completely dissect the lower bomb side there, no problem. All the headshots found courtesy of Kallax, and we are going to see presumably the force buy back in response here. I've seen a scout purchase from Monacy and some deagles otherwise. I don't know if it's too early to celebrate, but think about how many of these projects, Henry, that are around for a long time and don't really ever sort of fully function, right? Like NIP and Big maybe, where it, like, they keep switching players. I think Eternal Fire were close to running into that same category, but it's kind of cool to see them put this together now and, and it kind of working out. I think, uh, you know, the fact that they've they've built this pretty competitive roster is definitely somebody to look forward to. <laughs> okay, well. You don't normally see people fumble that boost. No. What's even, up with that? even in my games, we're doing that, no problem, but it's fine. I don't think the sound cue gave too much away. But uh, a boost in towards the ramp. Two players in up up. Hunter will provide another smoke here towards Squeaky. Here comes the heart Molotov. And towards ramp we go. So they are walking into the lion's den here, Anders. Nico, oh, sorry. Nico behind the first box. And Nexa looks like he's taking the initial aggro. So he wants to actually get a kill, them to challenge. That's when Nico will swing. Yeah, and if it goes on long enough, the scout could even rotate in. There's the kill. Now the second punch here. Nico not quite getting the headshot, and slowly they're beginning to open it up. The scout did get here, but I think it might be time to fall back, although Modesty yeah, they've headshot in between. That's ridiculous. They've done very well here. They've got the man advantage. They've thrown his spanner in the works here. Eternal Fire didn't see that setup coming. You don't normally see it set up like that. It's the boost to play taking the aggro, then Nico to swing out. Modesty to find the scout headshots. Speaking of which, Nico needs to find one himself and the Molotov will completely destroy his position now. Taking significant damage, Monacy will have to retrieve the scout. Lower bomb site. There's not Actually, that much time left. Going to be interesting finish here because they're going back and towards up and making a lot of sound on route and Monacy hears them. He'll be looking to deny the plant here, Anders. Yes, he will. Only 15 seconds. Walking up right behind oh. the Julius. There's the headshot on Major, but the bomb is down below. It is getting planted as we speak. And Hunter just holding the high ground. He would love a chance to find that headshot on Kallax, but not going to be giving them a free. Instead, it's on the outside. A bit of a flashbang. There would have been a chance maybe for Hooksy to chime in on the other side. I think he gets his kill still. Maybe. Question of timing, but now that Warksick's taking care of Hunter, it might just be too late. Even if he gets this one now with no kit in his back pocket, it might just be too much to ask for. That is such a close round. I think if he'd had something more exciting, the dualies might not be the best weapon to try and go for that kind of flank. My God. It wasn't ideal. Um, there's an argument to be made as well. Maybe he waits an extra couple of seconds, presents some trigger discipline. Maybe he can uh, deny the plan, run the clock down further. But uh, it felt like the double kill was possible. Didn't quite work out. If he gets that kill. They certainly win the round. It's unfortunate for Monacy and unfortunate for G2 as a whole, as they are now down to a uh, full eco. It's 2-1 Eternal Fire here. Joining us 
This is uh, the second game these guys have played today. Eternal Fire took down quite an underwhelming NIP there, currently 0-2. Yeah, they did. Um, and G2 took down Into the Breach in a very convincing manner. That was uh, a 13-3 game in their favor. Looking to replicate the success of FaZe here and get a 2-0 to kick off day one of the RMR. Hard day for Into the Breach in many ways. Yeah. Um, <laughs> their second game here at the A stream was really brief. So, yeah. And the internal fire and IP game was, um, that was interesting. NIP with a chance to maybe win it, but Turkish team coming out on top. Santaris taking a peek out in the yard. It's just pistols on the other side, so whatever you do, just don't give away this one AK. They're going to love that if they can steal it away. Bomb to be planted inside. They didn't even need to get any kills to get in here. Yeah, apparently not. A peaceful round so far. Let's get him in a little bit. What is what's going on here, lads? Do you know? Do you know how to boost? <laughs> is he trolling? Have you tried him? boosting before? <laughs> he must have been trolling. <laughs> I don't know what was going on there, but it's all for naught. Doesn't matter. The round is already guaranteed, as we all know. Just waiting for the conclusion to come through. There should be no frags found for the likes of G2 here. Just hunt up. Oh, he'll be taken care of by Maja. There we have it. So on fire, put their best foot forward here after losing the pistol. They post three rounds in a row and actually looking pretty decent at this stage. Managed to best the force by and the full eco now as uh, G2 will have funds available going forward. We'll see if they can actually hold on to it, though. They will fully invest. And we have got a Monacy AWPs. Two and four currently. A couple of players haven't fragged just yet. Nico and Hooksy. To be said, Nico hasn't found... His absolute best form in CS2 as of yet. Everyone thought the latest patch, he would be buffed, especially on that CT side, but uh, hasn't quite come into fruition just yet. We'll see if he can start to come to life here. Hooksy defending that squeaky door position. A couple of speculative shots towards our spots. It's Nexer in the ramp room who will be tested momentarily. One of the best aimers in the game, Zantares. Next, duck down, waiting for the cue. There he is. <laughs> Santaris, you called it out. He was going to be ready for that one. Instant headshot, four yeah. versus five to begin with. Hunter trying to see if he could just dive down the ladder, just see if he can get there in time to stop anyone. But I like the fact that Major's out here, just a little bit behind, catching rotations potentially as the bomb is getting planted down below. Hard call right now for G2. If they don't get a, a, an opening kill right now, they might have to save. Look at the smoke up. What do you even do here? I think they're already starting to walk away towards CT spawn on the other side. Yeah, maybe they get a couple of kills, but they're not going to be able to win the round here. Eternal Fire, what a way to get started. 4-1 in their favor. This is a team that seems to be getting better and better as well. Like, you're right. that This team has been in a whirlwind of roster changes the last year. It seems like the same names in and out, and they never really make quite a real dent that we always talk about. It's been quite annoying, like. They've got Zantares, they've got his great talent, but now this is the roster that's actually starting to turn some heads. Like, over in Katowice, they didn't make the playoffs, but they definitely had some great games out there. They took a map off phase, map off Na'Vi, took down Falcons 2-0. Um, they actually had some really impressive games out there. They're looking like a cohesive unit. We're finally seeing Woxit come back to life in Counter-Strike. It's been about two and a half years um, yeah. since he's actually been able to put anything down on the server. And he's actually looking more consistent. He's looking like he's actually a valuable part of this team now. And it's not just the Zantara show. And of course, uh, we can't forget to mention Wakadia as well. What a absolute beast he has been for Eternal Fire as a whole. And uh, great start, as you mentioned. This is about as good as it gets after losing the pistol. You win every following round. So, back to the wall. G2 have to recalibrate. 4-1 down. They've got the Monacy AWP, but pistols by the looks of things otherwise here. So, Monacy will have to step up. Still on that two-frag scoreline. Round six. Kalex still with an absolutely lights out scoreline, seven to one. Obviously, three of those kills in the round with the deal, really high impact. Him and uh, Maggi are both playing. And it's all down to that pocket strand. It's like a really nice little simple execution towards that side. The Molotov down the vent. No, Do a bit sick. of damage to the rotating CTs, meaning only one could get down there. That was Nico. And it kind of set them up, laid the foundations for the four rounds in a row. Modestly taking matters into his own hands, however. 
in towards Squeaky Door with the AWP. The Wall of Smoke's completely deployed, though. And down towards lower we go. Three players. Make it four. Will be met by some CT presence here. They've actually got quite a lot of manpower. Down towards lower. Could be interesting here. Nico in towards Garage with the M4. Very minus Monacy of the AWP. He's down there now as well. So a chance. Pretty decent one for G2 to bring this round back to life. Yeah, some good grenades though could dislodge this, this particular setup, but I mean, it is doable. Yeah, we normally talk about the Molotov. On this side, the boost certainly viable as well, especially if you've got big man Zantares at the top of the tower. Monty makes himself known in more ways than one, gets himself a double kill there. Fancy footwork, rotating around that lower bomb side of Nico. Bear in mind, he's been lying away this entire time. That's more like it. Two and a half kills should be enough for G2 to survive this round. The grenade doesn't quite connect, and it will be Monty and Nico working in tandem there to make the round a reality. G2 back on line with two. There are so many other AWPers in the world that even if they get that first kill, you can run them down. Like, you can just put pressure on them and they will fail one shot and then they die. But Monacy is just not one of those AWPers. Look at how confident he is in the second fight. He just runs straight in. They open the door, it blows them up. And that's when they, they kind of knew after they were like, okay, we have to leave Monacy alone. Like, you just have to. There's no choice. And the secondary option of running towards Nico was not really any better. So, huge round from G2. Much needed round. Well, here we go. Money's absolutely fine and remains to be so after losing the previous. The Eternal Fire four rounds in a row. They still have around $4,000 each in terms of residual cash. Outside, Wall of Smokes deployed once again. The HE to vaporize the smoke itself, but no significant damage done. Woxic has made it down somewhat unscathed. 74 HP. Let's put him in one tap territory against his M4s. But now, how do they make this one work? What does Woxic do next? He's yeah, kind of just suggesting we, we've got lower control, but this is a classic fake. They'll be doing upper execution handers, just trying to pull at least one player down. CTs are not taking the bait whatsoever. It's nowhere near enough as they hold strong. Yeah, smoking off mini. Good little flashbang going for the ceiling. Wow. Cardia opening everything up. Hooksy at Hunter dead if, without even any chance to reply. And that's the round <laughs> pretty much over and done with. My God. That had nothing to do with Wox. It's a little fake down lower. They just ran out up, uh, found two of a nice flashbang. And uh, yeah, the CTs, like I said, one dislodged from their positions. Hooksy and Hunter. Oh, Wox actually bested Nico in that duel. I can't believe it. I thought he ca caught a glimpse of the time. It was so ridiculous. All right, well, he, just, he couldn't win it anyway. That's wild. What a round. Yeah, that's so sick. I was gonna, I was about to say, it's not even one of those really elaborate A executes where you got the Molotovs going back towards the default, um, the behind silos. Like, they just had flashbangs coming through the ceiling, right? There were no Molotovs to set it up. There were no interesting grenades beyond the flashes. So, it's a kind of an expensive round. They lose a lot trying to hunt down the rest of the kills here, but um, still, five to two in their favor. After losing the pistol, Anders, on the T side of Nuke. You'll take it. You take it all day long. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Money was already decent for them as well. They get another $3,500 per player by winning by virtue of Explosion. So yeah, money money's no problem at all. And uh, I guess the only bad news is that Monacy is looking incredibly sharp still. And he saves the AWP. And an AK is in the hands of G2 as well. Which player has got it though? It's going to be Nexa. He's playing that ramp room. Kind of where you do want it as well to have the one tap potential to take more confident jewels. If you so wish. There yeah, so go. just... Avoid Monacy at this point. Like, that's going to be the if game. Can, it's difficult, though. He's such a dynamic player. Look now, he's towards outside. T Red getting aggressive, knowing that he's probably got to carry the team over the finish line because no one else really showed up as of yet. Yeah, Hooksy 0 7, Nico 2 and 5. Hunter's had some moments, but bear in mind he got three on the pistol as well. Not to say those, those kills don't count. I don't really like it when Carson say that, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. That round was like a bit of a lock in after he found that sequence, but still. Needs to get going in these gun rounds. Hooksy's 0-7 at the moment. Jacob did bring it up on the desk as a, you know, as a talking point. Was talking about sort of major as a, as a balancing point for that mage B, but not really at the moment. It's a three-round so, lead. They're starting to get towards the ramp room, actually opening this up quite nicely. Ah, they've got some nice variations of their strategies here, Eternal Fire. They definitely convinced him it's going to be an upper execution there, but reading it well, G2 have actually re-coordinated themselves back down towards lower. Three players here, and... Madge is calling an absolute blinder. Feeling the presence. Back towards lobby they go. 
Gontares, last player in the ramp room. If the timings work in his favor, he can sneak away just before they arrive. Oh, they've got nothing out of this. So the CT's now in a world of trouble. They've lost track of the T's. Monis is in the vent. The AWP, good luck, my friend. <laughs> he to get one. The kills, unbelievably so. Hooksy shot in the back, but he did get a kill on the board finally. Hunter back here. This is only 17 seconds on the clock, but they're going to clean it out. The trade continues. Oh my god, the bomb out in the middle of everything. Nexa with the spray down from the high ground there. And it's G2 to win the round, but it was chaos all across the board. It really was. Entertaining round there. And I think Wakadia thought he got that final or penultimate kill. He, he brings out the bomb. Straight away, I, I think he assumed he, he connected the headshot here. This was wild from Monacy. Like, I'm impressed he even got one kill out of that. Like, it definitely makes things very uncomfortable for the T side. Next up, a nice double spray down there. Just what the doctor ordered here for G2. Five to three. And we said Monacy has to be the one to try and carry them through these rounds. And he's absolutely everywhere right now. Outside, down towards the vents, finding kills towards Squeaky. As this time, positioned by the heaven area of the upper bomb site needs to be deployed destined for the bomb site floor no one to receive them Alex certainly gets a taste of that one though courtesy of next in the ramp room takes another 58 points of damage almost a max damage HE so what's the what's the call there tunnel fire sitting up the number one smoke they've been delivering the traditional wall of smoke time and time again ideally Throwing it every single round, keeping the CTs guessing. We saw them just send Woxie down before. Obviously, yeah. he can send four players down as well. And it's Wakadi up. The try his luck this time. He spent quite a lot of time on this at the moment here. Only one player to go down so far. The bomb is in the yard, but much further back, and they're setting up more smokes. These ones are landing towards hell over by the windows. But while they're doing all of that, it's major to be discovered on the other side. So, yeah, sure, they've got a lot of control That's, here, but... It's great, though, from G2. Nice reactive play. You can feel the outside smokes being deployed. You need to take some territory in response, pushing two players towards a ramp to guarantee at least a trade there. And they've got much more than that. They've got the man advantage. They've isolated the players towards outside. They've allowed them to have it. You see them just disallowing entrance towards the heaven. Santaris, though, has done well to find a timing, though. They're not looking at it right now. Might have needed the kill on top there. He's getting shot at the back. It's next to pick up the kill, but Bomb going to be planted here with about three seconds they left on the this. clock. It's not going to be a lot of time, but it could be one. There is a chance for it. Woxig with the AWP still alive. Do you believe, Henry? I'm kind of believing. Like, they haven't got any utility. If they had just a smoke or a Molotov, you might really give them a fighting chance here, but we'll see. Kalex. He stunned us in the second round with that Desert Eagle sequence. We'll have to do the same here again. Players all around him. Monacy. Perfectly timed. Takes the aggro just as his teammates are going around the corner. If the bomb was in an open position, you might give him a fighter's chance here. Great shots from Ricardia, and presumably they've got the kip, and it'll be absolutely fine. G2, no nonsense this time. Well handled. Even on a five on three, like that's a difficult round to yeah. retake that lower bomb site. You don't know what you're up against there, but they communicated in such a efficient manner that the fact just as they're coming around this uh, the secret corner, that's a monocy drops in the vents loudly. Knowing that they can't watch both positions at once, Calix split in half as we go for the first tactical pause for Eternal Fire here. Finally, showing some signs of weakness. It's been a great T-side campaign in this best of one. Next up, like we said, after losing the outside information and control, pushing towards the ramp room and indeed trophy with Nico. They get some fantastic kills, and that was stunning from Monacy. Bacardi up. Gave it a good go, but uh, unable to find the third kill, and the bomb wasn't really planted for him either. He would have been in a tough spot to try and win that round. Still, do they want to buy into this one? It doesn't look to be the case. Calix will present a Tech 9. Same story for Maja and Zantares. We're getting to the closing stages of this first half. But of course, correction from G2. After losing the... Well, after winning the pistol, I should say. They gave up four rounds in a row. Yeah. I mean, they're making up for it slowly but surely. They still have a couple of players that have hardly been activated, right? Hooksy on one, Nico on two kills. So True. they've got a couple of players out there that could still be put into the game and make it interesting. I like this. Molotov down behind the wall, a little bit of a nade, and they absolutely catch Woxic out. Now, they don't know that a lot of the couple of players are crossed, but they're going to find that out pretty quickly. Nexa able to call in the information right away. So they have a great read. They're getting all the kills. Honestly, missing none of the shots at the moment as G2 will tie up the game and make it a 5-5 five five scoreline here. 
Yeah, the fact that Monesi is just such a rock on this team is very, must be very comforting for the team to play around, just knowing that there's one guy who will just always show up. It's ridiculous. Going into the 11th round now. That one was, you know, a bit of a stretch. This one, not going to be a perfect round. They're going to be missing some utility, and they've got a couple of Galils also being brought up onto the stage. I'd like to see one of those pocket strats again. Let's just get like, a nice execution going early. I'm seeing smokes being deployed at this stage. This is the sort of round you want to be kind of setting up a set piece. Smoke's already going down, and all five players around this, so there is something behind this. Waiting for the CT reaction to come through as they pop the smokes here. Oh, brutal grenade. Couldn't have done more damage if he tried there. Nico, will he show us what he's made of? Has he got a chance to find multiple kills here? Certainly does. Gets the double. Significant damage inflicted towards Woxic as well. He limps away with just three points of health for Kalix. Trying to pick up the pieces here. Still plenty of time, but CTs don't really need to be part of these battles. Monacy caught off position. Three versus three will look to be a fantastic start from G2, is slowly but surely falling apart. They must have been so close to catching Nico going into the smoke at the start of the round. That was toe curling moment. But a three on three up on the high ground here. Hunter going to be careful he doesn't get caught. He nearly did. Actually, though, he was low on health already. He was dead immediately. And now the pressure is on here. Madja getting. Out duel, the two versus one isolated out there. And Kalix, 35 seconds. I don't even know what you could do at this point in time. He's trying to take the fight here, but Nexa will be able to bring him down at the end. So G2 recovering the round. Looked like they were about to lose control of it, but this is you know, pretty important. Yeah, it's looking much better. It's a uh, bit of a bumpy start for G2. Not looking their usual selves, but uh, slowly but surely getting it together here. Nico, a bit more confidence pushing through the smoke, gets himself a nice double kill. A spanner in the works there with Monesty caught out of position, but uh, well handled towards the end, especially from Nexo. He's done a pretty solid job, to be honest with you, with the AK-47 towards ramp. You can see Nico looks a little flustered, which has been the case the last few months. But uh, great round from him. Two and a half kills. Job's a good one. Final round of this first half. Not much to speak of in terms of the eternal fire. Set up an arsenal. Tech nines, glills. Cheeky little Mac 10 there for Madja. We talked about pocket strats before. You're definitely going to have to deploy one here. You're not going to be working any picks for the Tech 9. So, need to make these CTs uncomfortable. Molotov them out of position. Flash them to hell and back. Eternal Fire set themselves up towards an upper play here with Cardi at the chance of the kill. Doesn't quite convert it. And now Hunter, he's got a prime position to start mowing them down the turret. Finds a couple of kills here. Significant damage though. Wakadi and Kalex down. There's 10 points of health each. The bomb's going to be planted by Woxic. A three on three. Some chance here, but it doesn't look good whatsoever for the Turkish squad. Doesn't Kalex stuck in the corner? Woxic not ready for it. Didn't really realize. Oh, no. oh, yeah, it's so awkward. Oh, yeah. I don't think he's ever getting up this ladder oh, now. No way! See? What have you done? That is so sick. What a way to leave the first half. A Zeus drop-down kill from the heavens. Monacy is a god. The Zeus is going to be a mainstay of the game, especially in CS2, Anders. Let me tell you, this is going to be the year of the Zeus in 2024. Wow. Yeah, I was not expecting it. <laughs> we need to see that from his point of view. <laughs> what a disgusting way to end the half with. What a demoralizing way as well. Just before halftime, you've absolutely rocked him in this round. Desert Eagle comes out, and he jumps behind him, takes the full damage, and gets the maximum distance Zeus as well. That's so sick. That's uh, such a modesty way to close things out. And after winning a huge spell of rounds there, like G2 might have been done for. But uh, towards the end of that first half, they managed to post five rounds in a row themselves and actually close out the half with the lead. Seven to five matches pause for now. Get ready with the second momentarily. No breaks here, ladies and gentlemen. We'll have a look at the setups. In terms of utility on the T side, we are seeing a single smoke for Hunter, a flash in the hands of Hooksy. Nico with that P250, love to see that. Hopefully he can start coming online in the second half. Very important pistol for both teams, of course. Looking for that 2-0 scoreline, eternal fire, putting up a hell of a fight. Pretty much everyone showed up. We haven't seen Woxie do too much, but bear in mind he's the, the author of the squad. CT side of you can expect him to do a little more. Yeah. T side, you can't really sink your teeth in with the sniper too much. And here comes the play. Four players oh, yeah. towards secret. Hunter outside of a smoke. 
Smoking main, potentially. Yeah, deep one. Wakania, I think, is kind of realizing, yeah, that puts me in a little bit more trouble. They're trying to see if they get the dive down. That's actually the bomb, but they do get the return kill at the very least. Still a four versus four, and Major starting to get a little bit of a sniff towards the lobby. Looks he falling back and, yeah, recovering the bomb, trying to see if they can get a little bit further away. Hunter's going to be found, and Major's even coming into the play here. Monacy, finally, some kind of say in return. The bomb gets planted. And now the pressure is on the CT side all of a sudden. Monacy could have been edged out with that kill. Nico down below. He's looking for another headshot. He can't quite find it. And the, now they're defusing right away. They're putting all the pressure on. He has to run for it. It is a 10 second defuse. It's still happening behind there. Yeah, He's just so do. far away. Nice attempt from Nico and Monacy. But yeah, the bomb just planted in a slightly awkward position at the end. Well, at least the bomb is planted. Not all is lost by any stretch of the imagination. A few kills found as well. They can actually bring up two AK-47s they wanted to, or Galil's across the board. Impressive shots from Zantara. You'd expect no less. Interesting strat as well. You don't normally see that. You see plenty of main smokes uh, towards a lower drop, but the fact is Hunter that throws it from outside, bounces it off garage, lands a main entrance, and keeping the, the door closed itself is a nice way to surprise the CTs there. Doesn't necessarily work out for them, but as mentioned, the bomb gets planted. They've gone with a 2 AK-47 approach here, because Nico and Monity got a couple of kills each. Scout doesn't connect. How to see if Wok, if we did say the sniper would have a chance to put on a bit of a clinic here in the second half. Not a must-win round, but I don't know bad if that. Nico. I don't know how he hits the shot so cleanly. It's like the reaction time is so low. He's getting jumpy. Madness. Absolutely mad. Not that much damage being done at the moment. Looks like they might have found a way to cross. Nico, no. oh, I said that. I cursed him instantly, although the return is not that, that bad. Okay, so that's Magic from main entrance with the MP9 that found Nico on cross. Yeah. That's actually nuts. With the SMG to do that much damage, you've got to see that from his POV. That's wild. I think Nico had already made his way basically to the, to the top of the stairs, yeah, but the right. angle is so deep that he just catches him anyway. Very impressive. Not out of the woods just yet, though. Eternal Fire. They've got the man advantage, but still two AKs in play. Monacy. With Kevlar, but... 30 points of health. Needs a CT mistake. Ideally, Nexus hoping the CTs will be pushing the lobby. 35 seconds here. I don't think they have anything to do. Might consider saving the AKs here, Anders. Maybe not anymore. Hell of a shot from Hoxie. Yeah. Wasn't ready for the re-peak, unfortunately, there. Another attempted at 20 seconds. Going to be careful on the CT side. And now the Nexer is dead. Maybe you could group up and find oh. him. My god, it's just the timing. It's so stupid. One versus three, and he's turned it into a one on two at the very least. Does have the bomb on his back, but he's simply out of time. He's got nowhere to check everything. He goes for a little bit of a spray. He will get taken down at the end. You can tell how scary oh, okay. he is. Okay, I like it. Uh, Teabagging is old school. We're bringing it back. Listen, if we're bringing back the Seuss, we might as well bring back Teabagging. <laughs> I remember that was like a, a few years ago, that was like a big talking point. It's like, oh, it's really disrespectful. No one should be doing that. In I know, game. we all got quite upset about it. It's just a video game, Raj. Just a video game. And what a game it is. Wakadia, nice work here. Uh, it was close. Monty hit some absolute bangers, to be honest with you. I thought they were going to save the AKs. No harm in giving it a go, though. Monacy, the sort of player that can make those rounds work. But, but now they'll have to sit back and wait. They don't have much to speak of whatsoever. 7-7, seven, seven. some Tech 9s, no Kevlar, no nades, just hoping to keep the CTs modest with a couple of one digs. Vicious position there from Nico, but that's tend to hit those shots. It's Calyx. Can smell blood in the water here. There's the chance to farm some serious cash. Nico. Honestly, trying to provide some sort of distraction towards that side, but it'll be ramp where they finish up with the looks of things here. Seeing if that outside presence will initiate the push from the CT side, but they're not taking the bait. They're getting plenty of chances to, to flex those deagles. They're just not connecting, unfortunately, on the other side. Definitely not. And this was all four. Bit of a ruse to try and get the bomb down towards lower, if possible. So maybe he gets another kill here, but not meant to be. Walksick will make light work of him to close things out. Eternal Fire take the lead here in the second half. Eight to seven. That was the eco bear in mind. 
I feel like this is important, right, for them to to come out of this round with four people alive. Just, you know, make a bit of cash on top of it. Being on that CT side, if they get reset so close to the finish line, you never really know what can happen. So I'm sure the Turkish team would really love to be able to cement a bit of a lead here. One round won't really cut it. Got to keep it going. Could see Santeros have to rebuy back into the round and down to zero dollars. Oh, they're going to be rushing straight for it. Leading the charge. AKs on the A-bomb side. Oh, honestly, he's broken it wide open. I can't believe he's still alive on the other side. This round is over. I don't think Santaris could do anything. You, I said in the first half, like, Monacy knows he's going to have to carry this game. And he's certainly delivering on that expectation. What a way to crack things open on the upper bomb side there. Emphatic force behind it. Nice spray control. He almost takes down the third and the former Zantares as well. Great call from Hooksy there. Just when things were starting to get a little bit problematic. Hits him with that show stop up. Upper execution. Normally you'd have to run through fire and into the HE grenades to try and get through the HUD like that. But he just had such a clear path to make his way in. And the HUD player, unable to see anything. Just couldn't really participate for the longest time. My god, that's devastating. Nico goes down. He'll be frustrated with that. But uh, no problem. It was a very clean round otherwise. There's Monacy. Getting that double kill upon arrival of the upper bomb site. Nice spray down. Effective utility providing that path towards success. Looks like we might have a tactical timeout in the follow up round here. Uh, there is a B stream, bear in mind. We've got the next game coming up for them as well. It's Virtus Protein on Fnatic. Now, that's quite an interesting game. Yeah, that's Fnatic actually fun. looked pretty good earlier. I'll say that much. So, watch out for that one. That's going to be the, the third. There's another match on the B stream afterwards as well. This is our last one of the day on the A stream. Woxic. This is old school. You don't normally see him taking these sort of risks these days. He's more of a static orb up. Maybe for good reason. As he goes down with no problem whatsoever. Monacy absolutely wrecks him. Yeah, Monacy spotted him and they even had Nico out there as well. You could you could see Monacy on the X-ray take a deep breath before he just went for the wide swing to absolutely knock him out. That's actually so disrespectful. He's like, I know you're holding the angle with the AWP, but I'm not going to care at all. I'm just going to win this He didn't even fight. have a chance to fire back. <laughs> he got nothing. That's... Pretty impressive once again from Monacy. Five versus three. Huge round here. Resources will be drained from the bank accounts of Eternal Fire. They give this one up. It's looking likely that they will. Matchup. Recovers the AWP. Got a chance here. He's actually pretty handy with the AWP. If they run a double AWP setup, he'll be the one to utilize it. I was going to say there's a chance, but unable to convert. Towards Seeker we go, and there's absolutely zero presence from the defense down towards lower. Monacy is the difference maker at the moment. Yep. 18 and 9. Like he's, there's so many rounds, more than I can count at the moment, where he's the one to just open it up. They lose Hukadia at the meantime. Not that it really makes a difference in terms of who wins or loses the round. They were already winning this one, but still, it's more expensive for Eternal Fire, which is not what they need at the moment here. Bomb going to be planted. G2 now going to be taking the one round lead. And the problem for the CT side now is, again, that economy. That's why I tried to make such a big deal of it uh, a couple of rounds ago. They won that first round, and it was uh, you know, four people surviving on the CT side. That's where they should have started to build some money, but quickly it's caught up to them. See how much they want to hunt here at the late stage. It's kind of hard to find people on Nuke at the, at the, the wrong time, so you can see every one of the CT side quite far away. But yeah, this is... This could be an unfortunate turn of events here for Eternal Fire. They just might run out of cash. And gas, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, looking problematic, but they do save the AK and the orb. I said the money would be running low. It wasn't completely broken. I think they're averaging around $3,000 per player. So if they are going to force buy into this one, this is the one that really counts. Like like I said, I respect it from Woxic. Like that's uh, kind of a look back in the history books, him getting aggressive. Madge has got, got him on, the, on a leash right now these days. He kind of plays very defensively, just gets his one kill. Doesn't really have those heroic clutches anymore. Um, and Katowice, he actually looked pretty good, I'll be honest with you. But um, yeah, getting bested by the AK-47. As you can see, he was flustered in that scenario. As we get into a very important round here. Number 18, Monacy boosted up. Looking above the utility. See if any CTs are trying to sneak across towards T-Red. Get much for it. 
Where is Woxic positioned right now? He's actually making his way towards Secret, I believe. He'll be the linchpin of this round. They're gonna have a chance of winning it. Comes down to him. Bear in mind, although we've got a pretty decent buy here, Eternal Fire aren't fully invested. They've kept around $2,000 on three players here. And Woxic dropped a little. See if he can hold on towards outside once again. This time in a more defensive position, not a T-Red. Molotov will, okay, take him out of the position, but off he goes. Yeah, if they didn't Molotov him out, there's a good chance he can get that kill and just try to escape. That would have been a really good play. A good grenade usage from G2, trying to just get a bit of map control. And now they're sliding two people down. He's still waiting for them at the next corner, so... If he's quick with it, he get the kill. He doesn't have any grenades to slow them down, so he has to be fast with a shot. And he is. Nico didn't even know what hit him there. Sticking around now, under 40 seconds. And Kalix, been playing a really good game so far, but he's traded out against Hunter this time. And Shadow showing. Yeah, Monacy, he knew that was going to happen. It's managed to go down two versus three and 25 seconds. Can you even make this round work? Oh, maybe not anymore. They're trying to flush out the CTs on the other side of the squeaky area. Time is of the essence, but Monacy working with Hunter, the best performing players in the G2 outfit so far. 13 seconds remaining and maybe no chance at all because Hunter would have to do something unbelievable at this stage to keep the dream alive. And then maybe go for a double up setup on the CT forces as well. I saw them pick it up. Let me just jump and source 2TV. And uh, let's see if they are going to be running it. Yeah, indeed. So they've got two ops into the next round. That is a, an old school CSGO approach. It was in meta for maybe a couple of years between 2017 and 2019. Um, but you don't see it too often, but it's certainly viable. No one's really deployed it too often in CS2, but we'll see who's rocking it. As mentioned, Magia, the secondary orb technically of this squad. We'll play the more turret-like positions. Maybe he goes towards ramp or something like that. They've also brought out an Org, so they've got all the scopes now up and running. Org is a very nice weapon, especially on Nuke and Anubis. Yeah, so Magic does go towards ramp. Makes sense. I don't hate it. I think it's, uh, no, it's, it's worth really, giving it a really try. nice position for it. The problem is if like, they get the bomb down towards lower, if they do an outside execution, like they're dropping right now, retaking the lower bomb side of the double orb setup. Incredibly difficult. Yeah, that is usually what uh, where, where that kind of strategy comes to an end. Nico, he stood up right inside of the smoke, and Santaris just somehow not quick enough to get the kill. We can't I'm not even sure stand. what's going on here. Yeah, double, couple of good ones. A nice little flick there. Roxy goes down, and Wicardia would have found the same fate, but somehow he gets saved. Kalix there with the Orc. Right position, right time. Monacy and Hunter now. Once again, that same duo, two versus three. They got a lot more time this round on the clock, so maybe they can do it, but I like this from Kalix, very proactive. Might be hard to read on the other side, although the timing is against him. He nearly had, if he'd stood still, he might have had that kill on Monacy, but now it's back on. Yeah, it's so unfortunate for Kalix there. Another tight two on two. 35 seconds, Monacy, 21 kills. Hunter will join him once again. They're healthy, they're well equipped, they have utility. Information on their side. CTs don't have much to work with. The flash towards ramp. Trying to avert the crosses of the CTs and just about gets away with it. 15 seconds now. Monacy will have to go for the plan. Smokes down. Trying to bait them out. And now he will be dropped. Surely a missed shot though from the AWP. Magic coming right through. This is pretty sick. He's making sure that he can't win the round. I want to know how Wakadia got that first kill. It was it was showed us with the smoke. Did he see anything, or was it just a blind shot? That I have to find out. <laughs> My God, Monacy, <laughs> they just have to avoid him and, and just try and run down the clock. They can't really kill him at this point in time. No, certainly not. But that kill from Wakadia coming through the smoke. He was in mini. I have no idea. Maybe he was just backtracking through the smoke, and that's how he could see him. Otherwise, if it's just raw timing, that's so stupid. Well, this one is coming right down to the wire, ladies and gentlemen. Both of these teams, one and zero so far. Looking for that 2-0 spot here in day one of the RMR. It'd be a great place to be. It was Eternal Fire that took down NIP. Kind of an underwhelming looking NIP. They've gone zero and two, unfortunately. And G2 managed to best into the breach 13-3. Looks like we won't be seeing any of that Paris magic potentially here in Book of Rare Standards. No, it's a bit rough, isn't it, for Into the Breach? I agree. Um, but yeah, they've run into some tough teams, so that's maybe part of the explanation. Best of freeze now for them. 
And are we best of threes as well for the team that gets to 2 0? G2. After losing that previous round, they're on 10 to 9. What is this from Zatares? It's aggressive to say the very least. They say pull one back there. That was as audible as you like, but they're making it work. Calix will find the man advantage. It's Hooksy that's gone down. And Hooksy's 3 and 16. I didn't even notice that. That's kind of a rough scoreline. Like, I know he's the in game leader, but. Gets eternal fire. I think he'd be able to keep up, but it's been a pretty rough one for him. But still, a three versus three technically favors a T side, especially with the positional control they've got towards outside here as well. Hunter and Nico working in tandem, trying to get full control of the heaven position if possible. Calix gets himself in a compromised position. Commonly pre fired, commonly flashed. I want to see. Controlling the extremities of the map here, and they're not going to commit towards upper just yet. They're really giving space for Eternal Fire to look for more information, but it looks like the CTs are kind of just stuck in their positions, which I think is going to be working out in their favor at the moment. A bit of a smoke up that will block off Major Calyx now. If they peek in from the high ground, at least they're not going to be worried about the squeak door. There's the flash to set it up. Let's see if they can get the wide swing against him. Good shot from Calyx, and but he's ready for it. Major managed to relocate from the other side of the smoke, so he's good for it. Calix, the absolute hero of this round. Three kills on him in the corner. That was really good. The, I think, in theory, they had a good idea of what was going on there. G2, they smoke off the one player. They flashed in. All they needed okay. was double swing against him, but they couldn't. Anders, Go we on. have arrived at the breaking point here for G2. They're 11-9 oh, yeah. down. They're averaging... $3,000 per player on the T side. Monacy has 24 kills, 11 deaths. Hooksy has 3 and 16. There is a chance that Eternal Fire are up against an eco here, and they'll have match points. I'm having a look at the Source 2 TV right now. In terms of investment, some. They've gone for Kevlar, Tech 9s, and a few smoke grenades here. The chips are down, Hooksy. What have you got for us? What's the call? It's going to save the day here for G2. And not face match points so early on here. Calix, great fancy footwork of that MP9. Gets himself on the T-roof. Holding on strong is Madger as well. Their in-game leaders delivering on all fronts. Look at what it means to them. Here we go then. The match point up against pistols only. What has Hooksy brought to the table here from a tactical perspective? That many Tech Nines, even if you go slow at the start of the round, they can be pretty overpowering if you just push the pedal down at halfway through the round. We'll see if they're going to be finding a way to do that. is certainly going to be setting up the Molotov towards the hut. Some smokes oh, outside, but they're taking so much damage trying to cross. That's painful. It really is. They've made the call, though. This is full commitment, Anders. Thankfully, no CTs there. Woxic, oh, he needs to be very careful. Bro, chill. Lovely shot, but I think he goes down here. Yeah, I didn't like that play at all. I'll... Mike Cost in the round here. Calyx trying to pick up the pieces. Three versus three. G2 have got something to say about this one. They don't know Hunter. Yeah, he's going to get shot at the back. They had no idea someone to walk past. They might have been saved by that. Yeah. If Hunter turned around, he would have had to kill, kill on Santaris instead, and it would have been a very different round. I do agree, though. Woxy, that was so... Un he was so hungry was to get that kill. Audacious <laughs> is the word I would use. Maybe many others would, but uh, we'll give them that. They win the round. It's okay. The fact that, like, my, the problem was against Tech Nines, if he goes down, the orb's in the open, and yeah. they can recover that and get a plan down, and maybe the round falls all right. But uh, everything seems to be fine right now. Seems to be the operative word, because we'll see if Monacy can do anything with this. He has got... HP to work with, and the bomb on his back. Looks like he's got a plant at the very least. Loves a fake plant, though. Yep. He does. Got to get them a lot closer, and now they know they can run in. Even just one person, it's fine. Just run for it. Oh, he's he going to lose the round no matter now. what. He has to save the gun. Oh, he's out of the open. Oh, my God. He's so sick. The, <laughs> <onto Santaris. laughs> the fact he's still taking jewels is wild to me. Like, he's lost the round. He's got 27 and 11. He just, but it doesn't really matter, right? Eternal Fire, they're still at match point but it's, right now. But it's still quite a hollow victory. I know what he's up to there. He's just trying to show them and style on them. I don't care how low my HP is. I don't care that the... Round time has expired. I'm still going to challenge and make things very uncomfortable for you. 
The money will be low now. Technically, that was just a partial buy from G2. They saved the M4. That's absolutely fine. Monacy went above and beyond for them in that round. 27 kills. But only one round separates Eternal Fire from success here. Again, with this aggressive lobby crunch. They've got up the T roof as well. This is bizarre. Monacy reads it. Another frag to add to his tally. 28 now. We saw Madden with the same approach and similar results, unfortunately, in the previous nuke outing. Kallax gets dropped. Like, I love the call from Eternal Fire. Like, they're playing to win this round. They're looking for that knockout punch. They're not playing a default passive round and waiting for the T's yeah. to execute outside. They wanted to get full lobby control and they almost got it. If they just held the lobby and did go with the ladder, they actually have a very promising position. But Hooksy, okay. that's what we needed. That's the kind of shop that can save the day. Is it enough, though? They've got a five versus three. I mean, if you look at the money on the CT side, right, this round is everything to them. They're going to have to try and maybe fight for overtime if it keeps going like this. Magic goes down. Woxic, not quite the two for one that he probably needed to make this a little bit closer, but you know, could still be done. He's got a on the other side. He's been playing pretty well. He might have been better off taking the re-peak there. The Molotov was shallow. I, I think he should have gone for another. But... Uh, That'll be for normal. We'll see if G2 can stick the landing on this one. Oh, that might be enough to do it with Cardia, only with the MP9. Woxic! A nice idea. The bomb not planted. He ruffles their feathers. A dink connects to the MP9. Now, back in the day, Woxic, one of the best clutches with the AWP we had in Counter-Strike, but not to be the case this time. A much-needed round from G2 that actually resets the economy as well. An interesting idea there. We've seen that double... Ramp rush in the CTs a couple of times now. It's very audible, hasn't worked out for them thus far. And it does cost them the round here. I think they're eco territory. So this is uh, looking likely to be an overtime game, quite frankly. Hoaxy, that's the shot that saves the day. Yeah, it was. Honestly, still just, it doesn't matter what they're doing right now. They can't find a way to stop him. I've rarely seen anything like it. Yeah, he's got 29 kills now. <laughs> If they get overtime, like, God, the turn off up, a lot of trouble here. They'll take their second tactical timeout. Averaging $2,000 per player, I suppose, at bottom of the barrel loss bonus. That's $1,400. Two players have $1,400. That's going to be Zantares and Calix. And they'll get 1900 into the next round. So even if you take the full eco here, Anders, you're hovering around, what, just over 3K. So that's... It's not enough still. I think this one has overtime written all over it. This round is a gimme. Nothing to be discussed here, I'm afraid. USPs, no armor, no nades. Let's get on to round number 24, shall we? Yeah, they're all grouped up towards the ramp at the start of the round. A little bit of an adventure. A couple of people going down below, but the quick bomb plant. G2 absolutely calling their bluff here and saying, yeah, we're just going to finish this round. So you're not wrong, Henry. On to the next we go. That's all that really needs to be said. We'll try and look for some kills. It'll just be for the stat line more than anything else here. 11 to 12 going to be the score line at the end of it. Gotta say, eternal fire again. I think, okay. <laughs> what is wrong with Monty? What are we witnessing right here? <laughs> he has 31 kills. We're not even at the end of the map yet. This would have been a sick scoreline in MR15, right? Like <laughs> yeah, right. Like a 30 bomb yeah. was considered world class. Back in MR15, it's ridiculous. In MR12, we're still in regulation as well. Final round of the only map we have to play. Best of one nuke. It's been a recovery mission for G2, but they might have done enough here. As mentioned, the money was battered and bruised on the CT side. Managed to find... Match points, but it all comes down to this. Round number 24. Everything on the line. Can Eternal Fire somehow close it out here? With two MP9s, three M4s, and not very much utility. Just a single decoy available for Magia. Opted for the firepower instead of the utility itself. Can it be done, Anders? It doesn't look good. Yeah, but all it takes is one good entry for Eternal Fire. If they get one of the opening kills here, they can they can maybe play a little bit more safely. And maybe there's a way through. Good smokes landing three of them outside, including that waterfall. Just Oh, wow. Okay, there's the shot. There's the entry. 
I want a scalp to take as well. Nico has nothing to say about this one. They've got a five versus three, but the flashbangs are very effective to say the very least here. Damage being done. The round's on a knife edge right now. We're back to a three versus three. Hunter delivers the goods here. They've got control of up up, but taking a lot of damage for their troubles. Calix. Oh, he can't save the day. Monacy is playing on another level right now. He had the jump on him. He had the sneak up. There's no way that Monacy knew that Calix was coming, but his reactions are on a completely different level at the moment. Santara setting up for a retake. Got to try and see him go for it. Otherwise, it's going to be overtime here. I don't have the kit either, so it'll be really rough. They're running out of time. Hunter gets one. Monacy with the other one. He ends regulation at 33 kills and brings G2 into overtime. What a performance. Stunning scenes here from Monacy. Completely manhandles the opposition. A one-man army delivering an excessive amount of frags. 33 in regulation. Instrumental in the success of round number 24 as well. That, that presence of mind and is like it looked like Calix at the perfect flank. He did perfectly like... timed. Monacy none the wiser, but all of a sudden, Spider Sense starts tingling. He turns around and finds him. This is the moment. So sick. Unbelievable scenes. It must be so discouraging to be up against one player who just there's nothing you can do. You have to pay every time a couple of kills just to try and, and fight him. That was a five on three as well. They managed to pull back to take us to overtime. They might have to do the same thing once again. First two kills for the Ryan. Bacardi has dropped in the process. They got a four on three here, G2. Plenty of time on the clock. Wanna see a Nico removed, however. Yeah, Calix doing great work once again. He's up to 20 now. Plenty of time on the clock, but yeah, they are so they've, far back on the map. They've fallen back into this double orb setup as well, just to note. Makes the retakes difficult, but we won't even get there. We've got a nice man advantage here. Outside smoke's being deployed from T-Spawn. There we go. Second one landing. 45 seconds. And the AWP put into play. Grenade. Oh, if it goes a bit deeper, it just gets the kill out. Right, but it doesn't matter. Santaris being activated. He's been playing pretty well, but not even at his A game, right? If he starts to get up there, and then that's a big step in the right direction for the CT side at the moment. Yeah, indeed. Let's uh, do a little check-in. Well, our friends over at the beat stream, Virtus Pro taking Fnatic over in their winner's game as well. VP currently up 8-1 to one on Ancient on the CT side, Anders. So uh, they're looking good for a 2-0 start here. But okay. uh, here we are, Zantara is showing us what he's capable of. Another impressive sequence of events there. Honestly boosted up with the T-side orb. Speaking of which, we've got Madja trying his luck towards the ramp. Hooksy finally showing some form here. Get a couple of bangers towards that trophy position. Six kills now. They've got the advantage. With a 25 and a 5 and 4 in their favor. It's Riccardi up. Holding towards up up. Let's G2 recalibrate. We know they still have the majority of the utility here. They actually have five smoke cylinders. They can do anything. Good position to be in, no doubt. See if they find a way to actually exploit it to perfection. Some initial smokes just to get the crossing. A deep Molotov. Oh my god, again, it's Santaris. This time it's Hooksy, the victim on the other side, but he found Nico just like that earlier in the game. Oh, there's a gap, potentially. Not quite. Very thin and brittle smoke, though. Santaris knows it. Just trying to get the intel. There's the opening that they needed Nico to get that one. 30 seconds left here. They're really running it down low. Hunter, though, will pick up a card here. And now the pressure is on. Waxy knows they could be coming outside. He's got to be aware of it. Calix no out way. there to help him. But the bomb is definitely going to be planted here. There's not much they can do. No, it's over. Might as well save the AK. They'll be able to buy, of course, next round. But you can't purchase the AK-47. There's no real reason to throw the AWP away. And that's going to be G2. Managing to find some very important frags. Especially Nico timing Zantaris just he went in towards Zappa, gets the backstab in, and the upper bomb site completely collapses at that stage. Woxic communicating with Calix, they'll both be hiding away in towards CT spawn.
I guess you could go hunt them if you really wanted to, but uh, there it is. GT tying things up at 1-1 as they keep four players alive here as well. Monacy still on 33. Some of the other teammates chiming in at this stage. It's Hooksy. They got a very important kill towards that. Ramprum took that match with the AWP. A double orb setup doesn't do too much for them. But uh, there we have it. G2 find their first of overtime. I like Nexa guarding the potential drop down defuse at the end. Like he knows they're going to have case. enough money. Yeah, you might as well. You don't want to see a G2 route at this stage. We've seen too many already throughout the yeah. history of the org, you know? Yeah. We don't need any of that nonsense here. Final round of the first half. They will relinquish control of the double orb setup. It's going to be Woxic who, I'll say it, like it has been pretty underwhelming on the CT side. Hasn't got much done, but his teammates have stepped up where required. And we've got AKs across the board. Like, Monacy hasn't even used an orb on this T side. He's just been an absolute monster with the AK-47 as they set up for an A execution. There's bottle flips to get the Molotovs ready. They're going to be burning out my entry here. I don't know if that's going to be... Yeah, they're going to land a little bit further behind, so... He's quite happy to just be stood here for a minute. Putting down some counter grenades of his own. That one landing on Hooksy quite nicely. Still down to the early kills. Flashes going through. Hooksy, the first man in to get the kill as well. What a double opening hunter to claim the second one, but... Everything's working to perfection at the moment. Monacy couldn't even really see what he was shooting at there, but Wakadi is dead anyway. Wow, that was... That was expertly played. We need slow motion replay of every one of them. Uh, shout out to Hooksy as well. He only gets the one kill there, but the flashbangs he provided from the yeah. heart, the double flash, like you can turn from the first, but you catch the second. Everyone was blind as you like there. And uh, he gets the first, does significant damage to the second as well. Nothing Woxy can do. And that's been the case of the CT campaign. Smiles all round as Monacy is absolutely destroying them out there right now. So 2-1 on the T side. Bit of a death sentence here. If they just get one round on their CT campaign, that's uh, double overtime guaranteed. Two to close things out. If you're not aware, if you're just joining us, it's first to 16 in MR12. You can see those flashbangs absolutely destroy Eternal Fire. Nice work there from Hooksy. Had a difficult game, but uh, he's instrumental in finding success there in the final round of the first half. They'll switch over to the CT sides. Nico. Had a rough one here, not a bad showing by any stretch of the imagination, but we expect so much from him. At this yeah, stage. but I think this is this is becoming a problem now for Eternal Fire because the longer this game stretches out, the more Nico's kind of waking yeah. up, right? Like they needed a win before Nico started to come alive. Hunter's been playing well. Obviously, Monacy is on a whole different planet at the moment, which is which is a, the major problem they've been running into. But again, if it stretches out even more than this, then Nico is going to start to wake up. He already is. And by then, it might be too late. There might be nothing you could do. I feel like already just trying to win against Monacy at the current stage is <laughs> proving quite tricky. So 14 to 13, ladies and gentlemen, as we are heading into the second half of overtime. It means Eternal Fire will be on the T side. G2 on the CT side. Yeah, 123 kills. Worth recognizing. He's one of those players that's had a really tough time at CS2 and sort of yeah, been very vocal about it. He's spoken about it in great depth. Like, uh, he's working harder than ever. He's aware of it. But uh, this has been a great showing. There's no doubt about that. Can yep. they find match point now and turn this game on its head? Next up, can't make it happen, but guess who's behind him? The final boss of G2, Monacy. AWP in hand, Kalix. Seems ready to take the challenge here. He's got himself in an interesting spot. Early kill. Seen a lot of this round progression from both CD sides. Nico will come and investigate. If he comes in with the pre-fire here, this could be everything. Alex needs to be on high alert. Honestly, holding the angle for the swing. Just waiting for it now, but Alex, he might defuse the situation. Just slowly walks away. It's so close. They spend a good 15 seconds on either side just waiting for it. And Monacy, he might have found a good bit of opening. He's just the gun barrel. That's an easy shot on the Woxic. Four versus four all of a sudden. And we're down to 40 seconds here, but might be a chance out of the vent. Santaris, he's been spotted already. Hooksy feeling the pressure now, and he can't land that shot. Monacy, though. Unable to miss anything at the moment. And oh, Nico bomb. walking in from behind. It's worked out. That's the bomb on the ground. And Wakadia down here. He needed his teammates to stay alive. He's alone now. And they've fallen back. They're leaving him the bomb site. They say, we don't really care. You can have the site. You just can't have the bomb that goes with it. 18 seconds now. 
and it's slowly whittling out. He wanted to fight, but he's not going to get any great discipline on G2 here in this one versus three. Nico, the one to find him. Like I said, you needed to win before Nico get, got here, and he's officially here now. 17 kills. He started to catch up. You can see now Eternal Fire looking a bit more desperate. And a five and four, they had the T set AWP, which we talked about. You don't really see it too often for good reason. It, it means you're, you're quite static and a pretty amateur display from Woxic as well. I like, look at that, like, I'm glad we brought the replay. Like, he should be more than aware. A player of his caliber should know, like, okay, I'm going to expose myself and peek this angle. I need to do it quickly. Jiggle peek it first, like, pre fire with the orb. You don't stick your massive barrel out first and slowly crawl into the angle. Um, that's a catastrophe. Oh, here we go. Straight to the ramp they go through the fire. Magic's already dropped fairly low. I like that smoke from Nexa. Once they, it's fine. Like ramp is prime real estate, but it's not a bomb site. You can let them have it. If you deny an entrance towards lower, this is perfect. Like you've managed to keep everyone alive. You've called for the rotations. Got AK-47 to the CT side as well. You just need one more round. So, Tunnel Fire, good job getting ramp control. They have to kind of execute towards lower because everyone's here. All five members out. You don't see this too often. I'll be honest with you. This is this is quite a unusual situation. All five at ramp, yeah. executing down towards lower, and it's Nico down behind this silo, joining next up. They've got a solid defense here. Can they convert it? Okay, they grenade out Nico from this one. The Molotovs go down below. They don't really touch Nico at the moment. There's a bit of a peak, draws all the attention away. That leaves Nexa with a chance to maybe do something here, but they lose Nico at the same time. Still a good kill for Nexa, but it might not be enough. Watch sick. Finally coming alive. That's a deep angle that he's taking towards the squeak door back there. Two versus three. Bomb no! getting denied. Hooksy cleans for the smoke. He takes down the enemy captain. And it's a two versus two. 30 seconds left. Everything on the line here for Eternal Fire. They need the bomb plan. They try it again, but Hunter is on it. And now Woxic, the pressure on him, the weight of the world at his shoulders here. One versus two, he's way out in the open. I can't believe he's not spotted. Hooksy caught sleeping behind the wheel, and now it's a one versus one. The drop down, 14 seconds. He finally tries to pick it up, but Hunter is on top, and it's G2 in overtime no! with a victory. Sick! Fucking sick, bro! Sick! Ah, oh, there it is. A sigh of relief for G2. It was a difficult game. It goes to overtime where they get the well, job done. It doesn't matter how close it was. They've got 2 0 here. The RMR alleviates a lot of pressure. It was Monacy that stole the show. What an amazing performance that was. And speaking of amazing, we've got three lovely gentlemen to break that one down. Thank you, Henry and Anders. What a matchup that was. Eternal Fire put up such a good fight. We went to overtime, but the power of G2, but specifically Monacy, was too much to bear. You could hear Hooksy uh, going to Hunter and going like, sick effing sick, bro. He was looking the wrong way. He should be saying that to Monacy, because that was lights out effing amazing from Monacy. But here's the thing. Despite how ridiculous that performance was from Monacy, you know, just that dragon G2 kicking and screaming across the finish line. How many times have we seen that in the past couple of weeks? It's not once, it's not twice, it's not three times. He needs more help and that's not happening. This is against Eternal Fire, man, where G2 were the favorites. They're supposed to win this way more convincingly. First and foremost, I agree with you. Second of all, we gotta give uh, gotta give credit to, to Monacy. Another fantastic display coming in from, from Monacy. I know a lot of the rounds he was left in clutches, unwinnable clutches, yep. where he did, I wouldn't say stat pad a little bit, but where he got more kills that was without impact. But just as many times you saw in that game, especially on the T side, he would constantly punish EF for flanking. Yes. He would constantly find the player coming in from behind. We're thinking, all right, round is over. Someone is gonna die in the back, EF has control, they're pushing, they're being aggressive, they're being assertive on the map, but Monacy was always one step ahead. He would always find the game-defining kills, even with the Zeus in this instance. Look at that, it's a great reaction. It's, it's, it's a well. great reaction, it's a fantastic display for Monacy, and as you said, Blur, how many times haven't we seen that already? And also, I gotta be honest, it's starting to piss me off a little bit. If you're G2, <laughs> to piss everyone off. Yeah, but if you G2, do not waste prime Monacy like this. He's coming into 24, he's coming into CS2, playing the best brand of Counter-Strike this kid has ever played. If you're G2 right now, I wouldn't necessarily say you should be embarrassed, but let's let's work towards the goal then. Let's not waste Manis's prime right now. It's it's I'm ambitious. It's a little bit annoying to see. However, for G2, nice to be to you. 2-0, sorry, 
thanks to my team. Yeah, it, it does feel like for Eternal Fire, they had G2 on the ropes multiple times, even in regulation, and I feel like they let it slip a little bit. Montessi, you know, despite, like you pointed out, there were a couple of rounds from just saving his weapons, but the fact he was just unkillable, right? Mm. Just that demon haunting Eternal Fire. And that final round comes to play where you can see Eternal Fire kind of choked that a little bit. It was a 3v2, some very weird decisions being made by the individuals, and Montessi, dude, he had over 30 kills in regulation. That's Yeah, he ended ludicrous. regulation 33 to 11, I only got three more across overtime, but just... How dare I? Only three more? Only oh, no. no. Yeah, I shouldn't say only, that's, that's incorrect to me. And he got three more in overtime as well to finish with 36. 112 ADR, mm. just huge. And it's so funny because, let's say Monacy didn't get that sort of result, we'd be speaking about Hunter, because that's a huge score from Hunter as well, but Monacy's was just so, Jeez. so out of this world. And it's, it's nice to see Hunter play well. We, we called out Honda a couple of times, yes. saying that he's not been living up to the expectations moving into CS2 as well. Obviously, right now, the big conversation point is, is Nico. He used to be the best rifle in the game. No longer the case as of right now. Obviously, Donk is in, but also Nico is, is just in the middle of the pack right now. So he's taking away the attention from Honda, but I would agree with you. Honda seems to be slowly but surely coming back. He was doing all right in Katowice as well. One of the few players showing up on stage against FaZe Clan as well. So yep. hopefully that's a step in the right direction for Honda. But we still have the question mark attached to Nico, And that's an issue because without Monacy, T2 is just looking like a middle in the pack team. Which so is not the sort of team they should be. Just just quickly, I do want to mention with regards to Monacy. You know in CS, there are so so many things that are observable. You know, that, that shot, amazing. And uh, just specific plays that are so easy to read and you just see them. But, but there are these other sort of like hard things to identify identify where you're like, how is he doing this? And Blair, when we were backstage watching this match, in one of those final rounds, Monacy at one point, he's holding ramp with the orb, he's playing quite up close. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have the x-ray. We can see what's going on behind the scenes, so to speak. And there's a point where he's holding it for a long time and one or two of the Eternal Fire players are sort of peeking or, or kind of like holding that angle as well. And, and, and that engagement goes on for a while, maybe 15, 20 seconds. And then as soon as the Eternal Fire players turn their back and start going back towards lobby, back towards T-Spawn, Monacy's just starts creeping, starts sliding, those types of things. I think those are the magic of CS and the magic of the best players when they're operating to their highest skill ceiling. And we, we call it the timing, right? And it's and for for the for the untrained eye, someone coming in new to the game, you're like, oh, so you mean luck. That's not the case. No. It's, it's, it's about intuition and understanding of the game to a very high degree, which you don't expect to see actually from someone of uh, Monacy's age, you know, someone that young. His game sense is incredible. And, and, and to describe that round, which you described, uh, which you described right there, it was like 50 seconds. At 50, he was holding for like 20 to 30 seconds. Now, 50 seconds left on the clock. It's like, if they've been holding all this while, usually teams are on a 50 second, 45 second mark. They make a call to like switch it up, go back to the upper lobby hit or whatnot. And it's just all these little, uh, little information, bits and pieces he picks up. He assimilates in his mind, he calculates the odds, and then he goes for the play. Of course, it really helps that he doesn't seem to miss a single shot with He's the He's like AWP. a young pimp. Yeah! <laughs> I don't know about that. No. I mean, you were pretty good back then. You were pretty good, so. but I don't know, yeah. Monacy, he, yeah. he's, he's, if he can play like this throughout the RMRs, sure. I mean, G2 are in a fantastic spot. Well, there's a difference between being at the Armour and being at the Major. I agree with you. You know, for G2 now to be 2-0, it will require a, a lot of bad Counter-Strike for them not to qualify for the Major. So I wouldn't necessarily be worried on, on behalf of that. But again, in terms of managing the expectations for G2, we're looking at a team that we expect to be contending for the trophy. We yes. expect them to be in the playoff in Copenhagen. So with the level they're showing right now, as a team, no bueno. Uh, individual, Monacy showing up, you know, yes, fantastic. But as I said, without Monacy playing this level of Counter-Strike, it does feel like G2 is just a middle in the pack team. You know, between fourth and eighth in the world, which is not good enough. And, and, and I don't want to take uh, before we move on from you know this the series. Obviously, good, G2, you're G2, fine. G2 got the win, right? We have Eternal Fire. I want to give a little bit of credit where it's due. The CD side from Eternal Fire, uh, despite the fact they reached map point, they're even quite able to close it out. What I really like for them is against some of the buy rounds when even they had a buy round or whatnot, they were just going for this lobby crunch, just in your face counter strike against G2, which unfortunately at the very very end kind of petered out. They got punished for it, but it was working out so many times to just catch Nico off guard, catch Hooksy off guard with utility in the hand and whatnot and Monacy's like guys I'm, I'm left alone you know with the op and I got to give them credit for where it's where it's due and even at the end when they lost losing the final two or three rounds it's not because they played scared maybe no, they got a little no, too over no. eager they were in their faces maybe a bit more control aggression and this could have been us cheering on eternal fire for going on through to a 2-0 stage I think that's the main point I want to take away from EF as well they played to win the game they yes. weren't afraid of, of making the right move they weren't afraid of playing and had it not been for Monacy as I said constantly being aware of the backstep coming in for them they would have beaten pretty much any other team at this tournament with the way they played today. Again, we talked about ITB being 
being O2 by looking like the weakest O2 team as well. I'd say Internal Fire by far the best team who's lost a map today. They look incredible. They play good Counter-Strike. They definitely deserve some credit. However, it's a bit heartbreaking because we did see it in Katowice as well. Against FaZe Clan, they ended up losing a map in overtime. They probably should have and could have won. Same could be said right here. They had T2 exactly where they wanted them and they still ended up losing. So in terms of EF and their development, so to speak, close out these games, you know, close out the games against the likes of FaZe, close out against T2, and then we may start to talk about you as, as a contender to make the player for the major. That's how well they're playing right now. G2, of course, now 2-0 in our Swiss format, a tunnel fire one-to-one. So G2 just one win away of securing a spot at the major. With that being said, let's remind you all at home with regards to our results that have occurred on the mainstream over the course of today. You can see half of them up on screen now. We started things off with nine pandas getting... Oh, no, this is over the second half of the day. We've got nine pandas getting their win over Saw. Mm. Bet Boom bouncing back against ITB. And then we saw FaZe Clans, a FaZe Clan overcoming Falcons. And of course, we just saw G2 taking the dub against a Tunnel Fire. It's kind of surprising how the first two games are 13-1, 13-1s in FaZe. Pretty convincing win over Falcons in the final game. We thought, you know, it should be probably G2 taking it, but I think that was the most exciting game. Plus, watching Monacy drop a 30 kill in regulation is always a joy. I enjoyed, I enjoyed the Monacy It was fun. Show. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at our secondary stream results as well. Secondary stream is still going on by the way, everybody. So once we're done here, make sure you tune into that. Things... I think it just got done. I think BB just took down Fnatic. Okay, yep. so yeah, there is one more match on the secondary stream. There were three more match three matches before then. Amcal taking out NIP. That one went into Triple OT. Let's not talk was. about that game. That was the worst game of Counter-Strike we've seen it so far on game. day one of the RMR. It was ugly, it was messy, and NIP now 0-2. The woes continue. At this point, I don't even feel like talking shit to NIP. It just feels cruel at this point, honestly. I don't want to talk about them. They don't excite me at all. They bore me. It's been a team that's been around for a long, long time. They even said themselves, you know, come by 2025, we want to get back at the top level. For now, it just feels like a team that somehow, some way, managed their way into this part of the major. But honestly, with the way they were playing today, there's no way they're going to make it. But I do want to say one thing with BP, though. The, the first game they had earlier today, and even the second one against Fnatic, I think they are looking lethal. They don't yeah. look like... They were looking... There were some question marks for them in, in Katowice, right? But it feels like James, like, just whipped out all his boys and, like, guys, you're going to make it proper. You've got to make it clean. No close matches. It's nothing like, you know, 13-11, none of that BS, no OTs. Just clean, convincing wins coming from BP. And that's a great sign for James and his boys. You can see our overall standings now. We've got a top three at this point, FaZe, VP, and G2. They're flying high, mm. two to zero apiece. Once again, to repeat myself, that means they are one win away from securing a spot at the Major. And we've got Na'Vi, Enterprise, one to zero, because they are about to play on our secondary stream. Make sure you tune into that after this. Then we've got the rest of the field, one to one and zero to two. I think the main headline for today is that we actually had the favorites playing good counters, right? We had the favorites winning. Let's play with the idea that Navi is going to take down Enterprise, which I think is very likely to happen in just a for couple sure. of minutes in the B stream. Yep. In that case, we have the four top dogs actually winning their games, playing against each other in that 2-0 game. Having you, you know, having watched a lot of Amas, having watched a lot of major qualifiers throughout the years, there always seems to be some sort of big upset on day one. There always seems to be some sort of big upset with these best of ones. And now the MR12 is coming into play as well. I'm just happy that we don't have to listen to all these goddamn excuses from top teams saying, ah, it's the best of one. And now with the MR12, mm. and they're gone in me. And that's why we lost. Hell no. If you're the better team, if you're the better best of one team, you, you win. And winning. it's just a different format. It's a different way of approaching a game. And I actually like the fact that we don't always, as in every single time we watch a game of Counter Strike, has to be a best of three. It's a skill. And some of these top teams are showing us it can be done. It can, so it can, it can be convincing. We saw so many 13 ones taking place as well. I do want to say, just looking at all the results as it panned out, the favorites of one. Obviously, Navi should be winning as well. A lot of one ones. And, us and, and the usual suspects in O twos, right? But honestly, despite the fact that I have zero expectations of NIP, I expected them to be 1-1 at the very least. So that for me, Paula, is the disappointment of the day. Overall, it's been an electric day one. I mean, I know things have gone the way everybody sort of predicted, but it's nice to see that I think that's such a good point that you raised, Pimp, because yeah, for, for so many years, if, if not the history of Counter-Strike, we've always seen top teams or any teams make excuses on best of ones, like, oh, best of one, anything can happen. But no, they're show, uh, t teams here at the RMR are showing, if you come in and you know what you're doing in a best one, you can take advantage of being the better team. Yeah, going outside, walking outside, anything can happen. That's life, you know, so I, I just never... <laughs> Jesus Christ. I just 
just never bought <laughs> where into Where do you that. live? In Denmark. I just never bought into to that whole argument. I'm aware that it's a different caliber of a game. I'm aware that it's a different dynamic of a game as well. I'm not saying that a best of three is not necessarily better to find a better team in, than a best of one would be, but it's a different skill. It, it's a different way you have to approach the game. It's a different skill set that you as a top team have to deliver on. And if you can't do that, if that's an issue for you, then that's something you got to work on. So for my money, I've never really cared about it. Again, I'm not saying a best of three is not necessarily better than a best of one, but hearing all these excuses and, you know, making up arguments that that's why, and, and not necessarily only the teams, but also the fans out there, you just get sick and tired of it, which is why I'm happy the best of one teams got it to show. I'll, I'll play devil's advocate here. I Go obviously feel that I prefer you know, best of threes, you know, over best of ones, especially best of seven, well. that matter, yeah. But that being said, like you said, I don't, I don't, I don't give a damn. You know mm. what, what the format is. You need to win the game that's in front of you, and you, and most of the teams got it done here today. So, overall, good day for the for the favorites, so to speak. Yeah. Absolutely. If there's nothing else you'd like to ask, gentlemen, I can close out this main stream and remind everybody to head on over to our secondary stream. We've still got Na'Vi and Enterprise in a best of one. One other reminder, too, I'd like to show off these shiny pins that I've they're had cool. on the table the whole time. Yeah. So if you don't recognize these, it's because they're brand spanking new. So if you want to order tickets for our Copenhagen Major happening in about three weeks, these will be gifted to you if you get a Thursday and Friday ticket. Yes, those those Thursday yeah, so this is super sick, limited stuff. Make sure you get involved. Um, Blair, you're stealing my my pins, brother. Well, very simple. For every single day you attend the event what in Copenhagen, pin? you get a pin. That's pretty goddamn cool. So you I come mean, on Saturday bodies. and Sunday have their own as well, have but they've well. they they sold out. So yeah. yeah. Each day has its own pin, and uh, yeah, these are special uh, special for the the extra early bird. I like the multi one. The Molotov one is fire, as the kids would say. Hey, hey got him. It's the Thursday one, huh? You better show up Thursday. Yeah, absolutely. With that being said, everybody, uh, Blair and Pimp, thank you so much for your thoughts and opinions. Everybody at home, make sure you tune in to Navi and Enterprise on our secondary stream. Do not forget that after that as well, head on over to social media where you can see how our matches are going to be forming for tomorrow. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you then. Door is cutting mid. Door cutting mid. Flanking. Door is still. Guys, I'm going up. Lane is really low. Yeah. Flashing, flashing Even one. Coming hot. Wait for Nixon. Wait for Nixon now. Please. Wait for Nixon. One hot. Wait, trying, wait. I'm one trying. in hot. I'm waiting a bit. Dead nice. hot. I'm, I'm on his side. Come on. Heaven last. What is P? What is P? Chill, Ilya. Nice, Ilya. What the fuck? I didn't expect it for sure. Oh my god, bro. What the fuck? You fucking idiot, dude. <laughs> I love you, but you're an idiot. Oh my god. 30 seconds, Victor. What do you want to
Thank you.